Hey now! It's your boy PSA Sitch here with another Sunday, Sunday, Sunday show with everyone's favorite harmonica tuning enthusiast, Adam Friended. What's up? That's funny. I saw, uh, hey Carl, I saw Carl in the chat says, Adam is tuning his harmonica literally as you were <laughs> doing it before I pressed the button. Oh, really? Yeah, he, he called you out. Oh, he did he? Out. Holy. Yeah. <laughs> He knew it. He knew it. I don't know how to tune a harmonica. Are you tune that thing? You don't yeah, tune what do you the thing. like there's nothing to tune. It's just a plastic yeah. thing. Like what you know, saw it down? No. Nothing to do. Anyways, uh so today, this is a very, very interesting, uh very interesting video. Uh this in this video, Philosophy Tube essentially uh let's see, how should I say this? Mm. Essentially persuades everyone that socialized medicine is bad. <laughs> By accident, yeah. I <laughs> did you. That, that's did an you catch that? Takeaway, yeah. Did, did you catch that when you were watching this video? I'm like, this is really weird. Well, only for really, only for trans people. She's really only targeting trans people. So, mm -hmm. socialized medicine is bad for trans people. I think is the ultimate takeaway here. Not well, really. I mean, other. She doesn't really go into other medicines. So, well. But here's why, to me, like, it's so bizarre watching this, because the complaint that she's laying out is all about how, like, this, the system, so, okay, so this entire video, she's doing a bit where she compares, she's kind of doing, like, a Catch-2022 thing, where she's naming herself Yossarian, she's naming all the people she's talked to, like, the crazy military people from Catch-2022, I don't know why I'm saying 2022, Catch-22, 20, 22. I know, hmm, Catch-2022, okay. If this, it feels like this is the year of uh, Catch-22. but um, And it's interesting because she's kind of going through how incompetently run and horribly run the system is and how all the people involved in the system are kind of incentivized to be bad. And I'm watching this like, you're just advocating for why social... You're just explaining why socialized medicine is a terrible idea. <laughs> like, this is so weird. <laughs> a socialist is sitting here because she had a bad experience with socialized medicine and explaining why socialized medicine is bad and she doesn't even realize it. Yeah, that is a, a bit odd, definitely. <laughs> the there whether or not it's bad though kind of depends upon your perspective because mm -hmm. she does kind of get into how a lot of general practitioners are putting the brakes on the gender dysphoria, uh, dysphoria craze mm. because, right. you know, potentially they don't, you'd like to think that they're, they don't want to hurt people. Like do no harm is a Hippocratic oath. Right? right. But at the same time, you know, they're, they're kind of weary of all the changes going on with gender dysphoria. So I think there's some incentive that, they want to slow it down as well. So, which she well, points out right. in the video. Right. Well, yeah, you're right. I should, I should clarify bad from her perspective because you're right. It's interesting. Right. It seems like under the, under the sit, well, this is obviously she has a very one sided view of it. And you think, I read a, oh my yeah, goodness, no, but, this is the most biased video I've seen on the internet. I, I read a lot of literature uh, that was saying that a lot of people in the NHS system who had to deal with trans people felt like they were pressured to just sort of like push them along the pathway. Right. So they had kind of like the opposite uh, experience that philosophy tube had. But it's funny because she's complaining how all these doctors are like trying to prevent her from getting this care. And they're kind of trying to prevent her from getting this care because of, you know, under her idea, the way the government system is run where in America, where it's profit driven, the doctors are like, "Are you going to pay me?" Of course, you can transition. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it's like it's just so it's just so ironic. It's like, oh, I guess she's suddenly in favor of like free market capitalism all of a sudden. Well, you could. This is odd because the free market system actually makes her argument a lot better that the profit motive is what's going to ultimately end up in thousands, if not tens of thousands, of detransitioners who you know are doing these kinds of procedures and ultimately are going to come to regret them. So mm -hmm. that's a good old fashioned profit motive where, you know, this video is an hour and 27 minutes long. Of course, she's going to go into the Tavistock 
uh, clinic <laughs> being shut down, the the famous uh, gen- children's gender clinic in in Great Britain that everybody's talking about. How you know they fast tracked a lot of minors to get gender uh, reassignment procedures, and they ultimately came to regret it. Right? She covers that in this video, right, Sitch? Uh, <laughs> okay. well, hold no. On, hold on a second. No. Look, the whole video is based on how, you know, they used to get like 30 people a year who had this thing called gender dysphoria. Now they get over 2,000. I think it's almost <laughs> 3,000 people a year, right? And that, and they only have one uh, children's gender clinic to cover 3,000 people a year now. Mm-hmm. And they shut the one gender clinic down that they have. <laughs> this doesn't make a lot of sense to me, Sitch. How's this? How's this happen? Look, aren't they supposed to be building more of these? Well, this, it's interesting. She doesn't talk about two things. She doesn't talk about the, what you're saying, the Travis Stock Institute, Travis which Stock, is a huge yeah. scandal um, that she just completely skips over. But and I don't know when she made this video in October. I think like near the middle or end of October, the NHS completely changed how they look at and deal with gender dysphoria hmm. they completely changed it but in a way that she would hate because essentially what they did was they threw out the they took the affirmative model and they threw it in the trash can yes <laughs> and they said okay listen we're gonna have it so that gps can now like start you know trying to diagnose whether people have gender dysphoria or not but they're gonna actually try to like convince people that they don't have gender dysphoria first <laughs> right yes so, and i'm like i was like how is how's like uh, uh abigail so i was forget her name abigail's like not how she's not talking about this she's gonna lose her mind on this like yeah this is, this is like her nightmare she didn't bring it up at all well that's one of the reasons why this video is so incredibly biased so yeah we're gonna have to throw a lot of jokes in because there's some parts of this video that just are very like sad and emotional well obviously i don't want to joke about emotional stuff yes. but there are also parts that are kind of long and tedious so i mean i someone right. needs an editor i think just you know all good artists need an yeah. editor we I, I was trying to look for places that were specifically to skip but i couldn't really find any except for in the, like right in the beginning part or skipped a couple of minutes in but if it, you know, if some parts drag where she's kind of going through like her long story of trying to talk to those people, we can skip ahead because the end of this video is insane. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> it's totally like, crazy. Like, you know, we, we watch the whole part of it and it's like, okay, you know, the lead up, there's a lot of stuff that's wrong and you disagree with, it. but she saved all like the insanity for the end. I was literally the first time I watched this video, uh, I finished, it's like, you know, such a long video. I finished it late at night. It's like late at night and I'm just screaming at my monitor. I'm screaming in rage and insanity at my monitor at how insane the things that she's saying are at the end of this video. It's like mm. my mind was melting. I couldn't believe it. We've covered a lot of philosophy tube videos. Philosophy tubes has said some very dumb things. Uh, the highlight. I, th- I think the dumbest thing she said before this was how come if I sell, if I'm a waitress, or a waiter, because I think it was before she transitioned. Um, <laughs> if I'm a, a waiter or a waitress, and I give someone a, a beer, a server, there you go. If yeah. I give someone a beer, and that beer costs $8, and I'm only getting $8 an hour, you know, how come that happens? Like, she yeah. couldn't conceive of the fact that, like, well, you know, the person has to pay for the cost of not just, you know, the beer, but the restaurant, the electricity, all the other employees, the location. It was like the million costs that a business owner accrues. It's not just literally you handing them an $8 beer and then you get that $8. Right. But so to me, that had been the highlight of, of her stupidity. But she tops it. She tops in this video. She's saying, like at the end of this video, she's saying some of the dumbest stuff I've ever heard in my life. It's shocking. It's shocking because usually, you know, I've just disagreed with her. I've never been like, are you stupid? Like, this is just mm-hmm. baffling. How dare you ask that question? I guess that's the, I mean, real, that's the real question. Are you stupid? It, the things she's saying at the end of this are just insane. Yeah, they don't. They're understand. completely insane. They really have no concept of risk, like in any forum. <laughs> right. 
right. they don't have a concept of the business overhead risk. They don't have concept of the, you know, wrong diagnosis risk. <laughs> they don't have concept of risk in any way, shape or form. Mm -hmm. It's like a huge fundamental Achilles heel. It's, I guess, I guess that's what it is. They're just like, oh, you know, because I, you know, am happy transitioning, you know, everyone else is going to be happy transitioning. Yeah. Like she, at, at the end, at the end of this video, she just basically advocates that there should be no medical oversight at all yeah. into any of this and that you should just be able to walk up to your doctor and say, Hey, I want transition. And they say, Okay, here's a prescription for hormones. Here's an appointment time to get surgery. <laughs> That's what she's advocating for at the end of this video. And it's just like, what the fuck? What are you doing? So pretty right. crazy. Someone joined the watch together. Did you send out? I, I might have sent a, a link out to someone. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> is it? Is it our friend Carl? It could be. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, we're talking about the NHS, so they're very excited. Of course, but... yeah. I, you know, I understand. Carl's got firsthand experience with the NHS. Mm -hmm. Of course. Well, that's what I'm curious too, because like, okay. Well, let me go wait till Carl comes in. Cause this Carl is... hates the NHS. What are you talking about? But well, does he want to move know. to a private system like in America? You should read that book. Is it, I think it's the price we pay mm -hmm. on healthcare. After you read that book, you're just you'd be terrified of the American system. <laughs> be like, oh, well, that's kind of the problem. Is it feels like everything? It feels like every system has like massive flaws, and you're kind of trying to figure out like what's yeah, the least which is, bad yeah, one. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. It's like I don't know. What's up, Carl? Oh, hey guys, I was waiting for this update. <laughs> How's it going? You've been on in forever. Yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, it's been ages, isn't it? Actually, it yeah. has. Yes, I don't hate the NHS. <laughs> Good. Give us well, a, uh, what's the lowdown? I don't like the NHS either. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm. It's an institution, right? And yes. if if it's good, it's good. If it's bad and doesn't work, then okay, it's bad and doesn't work. Mm -hmm. And so it's it's not the the problem with the NHS is it's it's really turned into a national religion for this country and there are there are massive pressures being put on it that are never being addressed and will never mm -hmm. go away and so the whole thing is doomed to collapse basically or totally impoverish us which neither one's good is it well do you want so do you, are you in favor of of some kind of government run healthcare system I don't know. I think you, the be, the best way to put it is government funded. Mm -hmm. um, right. But it, it it is a good idea in principle. But mm -hmm. the thing is, it also requires a level of commitment and kind of national homogeneity for it to be plausible, right? And we are rapidly losing our national homogeneity, and so it's um, becoming tenuous. Yeah, I hmm. get that. Well, in, in oh, order well, yeah, for so it to like, be funded, um, everybody has to be on board. And as the population splits politically, it's harder and harder to get that funding. Yeah, and it's not it's not only that either, because you've got the problem that, frankly, we have about 350,000 new people arrive in this country every year. And let's assume that, say, 5% of those uh, require health care. Well, that's... Another what, you know, fifteen, seventeen thousand people, something like that, who are taking out of the system without paying into it. And so every year you've got new people who have arrived who are taking advantage of a service they didn't pay for. So it's bankrupting us, frankly. The so are immigrants and refugees not paying taxes? Are they a net drain? Well, let's assume they got a job that very day that they arrived off the airplane. Right, obviously. It's still it's gonna take them. Yeah you know, a period of time sure. for to, to recoup any uh, money that they take out of it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's assuming that they do. And then you've got the issue that a lot of them claim benefits or that they just don't work or whatever. And it's just, hmm. like, okay, this is totally untenable. Right. So, so you think you'd be in favor of like having like the hospitals and doctors are all private, but then there's like a, basically the public option pays for the stuff. 
No, I mean, I'm not. No. I'm not against the idea of the NHS. I'm against us being irresponsible with the idea of I the see, NHS. I see. Right? You, you've actually got to be really quite protect uh, protectionist to have something like an NHS sustainably. Mm. And if you, I mean, and it's like this worked. Like go back twenty, thirty years, there was no great catastrophe with the NHS. It wasn't underfunded. It wasn't, bird, you know, like bending and breaking under the demand that's being put in it because that's really the problem it's demand constant non-stop demand and uh and no one for some reason can talk about immigration so we're, is it we're it, fucked are doctors public employees they are right it's not just being financed by the government the gov their actual government employees correct Yes, um, although large sections of the NHS are actually outsourced to private companies. Okay, okay. So it it could be that I imagine the doctors themselves probably are employed directly by the NHS, but it could be that you are dealing with a private one. Who knows? Hmm. You'd, you'd have to look at the case. Interesting. I will say, like, you know, I was sort of you now I was in favor of public option mostly in America, but I was kind of like neutral. I wasn't exactly sure. Whether I was for or against having completely government-run healthcare, I think it'd be mm -hmm. too difficult and dangerous to implement in America without doing testing, you know, on a state level first. But watching this video has has convinced me <laughs> against having has radicalized me <laughs> a government-run system because this just seems like a disaster, and it seems like a disaster in a way that a private system would not have these sorts of problems. They have yeah, different because, problems, but not these problems. Well, yeah, a private system um, has the Thing that will keep it alive no matter how many people turn up in the country which is a barrier to entry right the nhs yeah. is free at the point of use and so there's no barrier of entry and mm -hmm. so well you know anyone can literally arrive i mean health tourism is a real problem for the nhs you know if someone comes over from like pakistan okay great now they can invite their sick mother over i know she, she's turned up and now she can get health care it's like okay but who's paying for that oh i'm paying for that great you know, why the fuck am I paying for that? Can any you know? like EU citizen just go to the UK and use the NHS stuff? Yeah, anyone can. Oh wow. Okay. That's kind it's of It's totally, totally free at the point of use. So you can literally just jump off a plane, go to a hospital, and they'll start treating you. Mm hmm Yeah, haven't you ever seen Sicko? Doesn't he do that in Sicko? I believe he does. He doesn't go to I Europe, seen Sicko. I don't think. He goes to Cuba. <laughs> I, don't I think he goes somebody to somebody goes to england and use oh yeah you know you're right they do yeah, yeah you're right they he does go to england because yeah. i thought of that i'm like we need to vacation in england more do some bungee jumping or something right well it's just yeah, more like there's literally with, no barrier with philosophy tube it's like she's going through like everything has to be done from this top-down approach where like the government has to make a, a mandate that changes all of the behavior of all these doctors and hospitals and it's just so completely different in America where each hospital and each doctor is kind of independently making their own decisions so they can, you know, adjust far quicker to, you know, whether they need to be more doctors like she's going or through they need to change treatment where it seems like in the NHS, it's just, this is beho this behemoth that's so slow to move and change. Oh God, you have, you have no idea. It's, <laughs> it's, it's insufferable to be honest. Have you had any problems accessing healthcare, Carl? Yeah. Well, I mean, even i mean no matter where you go you've got to wait a long time mm -hmm. you know and, and for I mean, anything uh, or just for something well, yeah, honestly for anything like it like if, if go back like five years and it's not too bad but last year the conservative party allowed a million new people to come and live here mm -hmm. and there are only you know 60 70 million people in the country so like a million people in one year and then you've got i think it was seven hundred fifty thousand the year before that and then 500,000 every other year, practically. And it's just like, it's just full. It's just always fucking full. So, mm -hmm. yeah, you, like the other day, I had to go for a scan with my wife and we were waiting two hours. Mm -hmm. She had an appointment. As in, they were like, be there on this time right. and that'll be the time of your scan. And we still had to wait two hours. Well, I've okay. had that happen in the US too. Yeah, <laughs> well, if depends upon the situation though. I mean, if you have a I think like... But... It, it seems like um, more that in the U.S. It's, you can get appointments a lot quicker. I mean, sometimes you still wait forever once you're there, but because the doctors like to schedule like you know a million people at once, unfortunately. Yeah. That but was anyway. good behind, but anyway, 
Oh, yeah, let's jump there was into a, this. There was a thing the other day. I, I saw... Hang on. Um, mm-hmm. A thing? Let me find you... Let me, yeah, for a chart. So you can just see <laughs> the NHS waiting times. Have you covered the Tavistock Child Gender Identity Clinic closing? NHS yeah, to close it, the Tavistock it, Child Gender it's, Identity it's, Clinic. Closing only to be uh, reconstituted in multiple different areas. Mm. Um, but this was from 2019. I'm sure I saw a more recent one, actually. Um, I have an article yeah, on the BBC from July. but Yeah, that's probably... But it's a record waiting times, basically. And that's what well, they're always going on about. And it's like, mm-hmm. okay, well, you know, that's because we have record population in this country. Oh, right. here we go. Yeah, because it's supposed to be like everyone's supposed to be able to get treatment within eighteen yeah. weeks or something. Yeah. So if you if you get this one up, right? Um in fact, and you can see on that chart, right, mm-hmm. nineteen ninety seven is when the Blair government came in, and you can see the demand has skyrocketed because it's under the Blair government that mass immigration began. And it got worse and worse. And and the numbers of people coming in each year got larger and larger, practically, from uh then till now. And so it's just fucking staggering frankly so you can see before Mm -hmm. when we had very low immigration it was actually pretty manageable and it was actually quite well run you know but it's just and it's not the the people who work at the nhs's fault either there's nothing they can do yeah well well it's weirdest in this video too like when you're listening to abigail go through all this it sounds like the problem seems so obvious it's like they don't have enough money and they don't have enough doctors period Mm-hmm. And yet she's trying to make an argument that that's not the problem, that they're all just like transphobic. Yeah. Right. The system yeah. hates trans yeah. people. It's yeah, just no, like, it's just it. so obvious what the problem is. There's just not enough it, money doctors. But the thing is there can never be enough money or doctors. Mm-hmm. Like it's just not possible. So, you know, what are you going to do? Have they done, um, is there a study that shows like, you know, how many people come in the country recently use NHS services and then they can kind of like overlap that. The, there probably the is, time. but that's the kind of data they tend not to want to release. Well, the government obviously wouldn't want to release that. Yeah, no one wants to talk about it. Right. This well, is, and it's mm-hmm. a, it's a massive blind spot in the left's perception of the problem with the NHS. Like the the problem is so clearly just demand, and so well, one thing you could do to reduce demand would be reduce the number of people who are able to claim on the NHS, and you could do that by simply reducing the number of people you're allowed to come and live in the country. Right. Yeah, or you'd, yeah, or you'd have to ex- you'd have to expand the medical facilities at the the same rate, which I'm assuming is not happening at all. It's not. Um, let me find because I mean that's no one wants to. Pay so th- this is anything. another <laughs> this is another one. They're like, oh, the those Tories have cut the NHS budget. There's mm-hmm. never been an NHS budget cut. There has never been an NHS budget cut. Now, you can this this is uh, the King's Fund, which is the NHS budgets. Uh, the government's, you know, um, it's just going up. Thing. Yeah, it's just going up. And the, you can right. see in the COVID, it got an extra bonus during the COVID sure, sure. pandemic, right? So you can see that's added on. But it's never been cut. It's always been going up. And it will always go up because it has no choice. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's jump into it. Staffing, equipment, and supplies. And they give that to patients Thank for you. free. In this way, the NHS is funded mainly by the taxpayer. But even if you don't make enough money to pay taxes, you can still use it because, again, the point of the service is that it's there for everyone, which it definitely, definitely is, as okay, well as home, the right this to This is you- perfect. This is so fucking perfect. It's like, look, we have this dreamy ideal. Yep, and wouldn't totally. that be great if this dreamy ideal, you don't have to pay for it because other people will pay for it. And it doesn't fucking work. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> wouldn't, you love to, wouldn't you love to have a conversation about the tragedy of the commons with philosophy too? <laughs> I mean, how would that go? Well, this isn't this isn't even about the tragedy of the commons, to be honest, because it's not that the NHS is being mishandled because no one cares about it. It's purely because there is an ideal, but there is also reality. And actually, reality will destroy every ideal if given the opportunity. And so <laughs> there we go. Mm-hmm. If the if the immigrants coming in though end up paying over time, does it balance out? Well, I mean it would, except now, next year, we have three hundred and fifty thousand new immigrants. Right. 
Right. And then the year after that, another 350,000 new immigrants. So even if those ones from the previous years did start paying in the very next year, uh, you know, for whatever they were taking out, well, brilliant. But these new ones haven't, and these new ones haven't, and these new ones haven't, and it never fucking stops. Right. Yep. Do you do you listen to Peter Zahan at all? His to talks who? about Peter Z- uh, Zahan? Zion? No. No, He's, I haven't. Uh, spoken. Yeah, he I, I talks know. about demographics all over the world and is really he has a, a pitch that we're going to pull back the u.s is going to pull back as the world police and global shipping is going to kind of become a thing of the past and and it all relies on the demographics of certain nations like he says russia's demographics are screwed china's demographics are screwed america is in pretty good shape but i don't i can't remember what he says about england like letting in a lot of immigrants is not such a bad thing as long as you know you don't have cultural problems which i know you'll make the argument that you you are having cultural problems because they're a completely different religion than you but it's that's honestly that's not like the biggest problem in my opinion the biggest problem is just purely resources right england is a small and old country uh we (laughs) we don't the housing market in england again you can you can go back to before, shortly before the Blair government opened the borders, right? And you can see that, say, in 1992, a house in England, on average, was ten uh, was yeah um, four times the average yearly wage. Now it is ten times the average yearly wage. And this is why, like Zoomers, is like, well, I'm never going to own a house. It's like, yeah, you're not. Now, do you want to do something about immigration? And they're like, no, that'd be racist. Okay, is- well, you're never going to own a fucking house. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I'm always trying to get. La- I think actually last time you were on, I tried to steer the conversation to affordable housing, and you steered it right back to immigration. <laughs> it's like in in America, yeah. this is the thing when you have They're a conversation together. about immigration in Great Britain, it's a completely different conversation than it is in America because we don't have the space constraints that that you guys have. No. Like we have no, plenty but- of land to build more housing. The thing that's standing in the way is the nimbyism. Not in my backyard. Yeah. Nobody wants houses built close to them because they're worried about their property values. So, yeah, you but, could build a house miles away, and you could build a bunch of you know really low income housing in the middle of fucking nowhere, and house whoever there. Who cares? We, we don't have that. We yeah, yeah we ha- we literally do that in Southern California. Like <laughs> they build brand new cities all the time. Yeah. So yeah, I don't I don't know the situation in Great Britain though. It's the land is we, the. The limiting resource, right? Our infrastructure was all built in like the seventies and eighties as well. Oh, and so okay. wow! Yeah, you know, like it was built when mm-hmm. we had like twenty million fewer people in the country. So, like everything, everything is falling apart. Like the the sewer system in London is Victorian, right? Mm-hmm. And so, <laughs> London it just it's this Im- immense beast that is constantly under its own the pressure of its own weight, and it it kind of it's just spreading outwards it's like this weird black hole that's spreading outwards and everything everything is overcrowded all the time i I went to krakow in poland a while ago right i wouldn't have believed i was in a capital city because it wasn't packed wall to wall with people Mm. like you had space on the pavement to just walk past people it was crazy use the nhs we also have the right to begin treatment within 18 weeks of referral and that right to free medical treatment <laughs> right, within 18 guys. weeks includes free medical transition for transgender people of all ages. If you didn't already know, that includes me. I'm of all ages. Oh, get your, that includes get millionaires. Your five-year-old get free transitioning. I'm a trans woman, and we'll be using the NHS's treatment of me as our case study for today which will reveal some more general things about how the service is run and the challenges that it's facing in the 21st century. If you want to medically transition, Very ladylike. then you can start by going to your local family doctor. In oh. Britain, we call this person a general practitioner or GP. Your GP will send you to a gender identity clinic where you'll be assessed by specialists to see if you fit the criteria for gender dysphoria, a diagnosis that is definitely real and which definitely makes a lot of sense if you are diagnosed. So that's your foreshadowing for the, <laughs> the end of the video when she says it's not real and doesn't make any sense. And anyone should be able to walk up to their doctor and say, transition me. 
No, 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 no. I, I, I say we side with uh, Philosophy Tube here. Mm. It's not real and it doesn't make sense. Good point. <laughs> Very there transphobic. Incredibly there based. Go. There you go. <laughs> with dysphoria well, that's what she's like it, she makes this argument that's so baffling where she's denying any sort of biological essentialism to gender identity and i'm just saying her like how can you even exist as a trans person if you do that like and why would you even exist why wouldn't you just why wouldn't the like it, she's opening the door to basically just say oh we should just have conversion therapy i guess like if anyone could just change their you know gender identity why should we have anything yeah, it's, it's so baffling. Just go and change then, your identity. Not my problem. Yeah. Why should, it's like, it would be cheaper and easier and less painful. If, I'll let you use other... If it's there's some something to the argument of social contagion... Oh, mm -hmm. yeah, totally. Is, that a, is there a biological component to social contagion? Are certain people more susceptible to social contagion? Than Probably. Yeah. It's bound to be the case, isn't it? Yeah. Not us, though. We're Wim, uh, women seem massive more. individualists here. Well, I think women seem a little more. They do. And I that's mean, probably, they, they that, do that with kind of anorexia and bulimia and all that stuff. Yeah, but, and that probably and suicide, I think as well, and that contorts with the idea of you know the women identifying as trans increasing uh, far more than men, which it wasn't the case in the past. How many and, bulimic yeah. guys do you guys know? None. <laughs> Like, lots of, yeah zero it, right i think young people also have this problem uh -huh. yeah sure sure you know particularly in fact why well, i mean i didn't know any anorexic guys growing up so i don't know that age no. is a component of anorexia but i guess there could be right well just social no, but, contagion in general yeah for, probably more know, prevalent among younger people there, there are obvious um perks and benefits that you know social you know, attention from the institutions that you get for being trans and so it's ob it's an obvious incentive for young people if they want to feel special and get like oh you know you're you're so hard done by blah 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 whereas i was just like told no shut the fuck up you're the problem uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> so you know but i was a young man you know so of course i was told that mm -hmm. let's see where's anorexia so I'm assuming the but guys, I think like, guys could be susceptible to different social contagions. So like, obviously oh yeah. there's huge social contagions with suicides. And I think the suicides affect men and women, maybe even men a bit more. I'm Possibly. not sure. For example, if you want surgery, they'll send you to a surgeon. If you want hormones, they'll tell your GP to prescribe hormones for you, which your GP definitely will. Once you're in the medical system, you can also change the legal sex that is recorded on your birth certificate and your passport. In England, you cannot change either of those things without first obtaining a doctor's permission. But it all starts with a friendly visit to your local NHS doc, who will be only too happy to provide you with world-class medical care from the finest system in the world. Oh, she looks very angry here. She, I'd only listened to this video, so I didn't catch Oh, you the, did? Okay, yeah. I didn't see all the facial reactions. I didn't catch the, the no. major anger here. I don't know, given how she can afford to go private. Yeah, right. So um, the rate for anorexia in men, it's 10 to 1 in women. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. So, so, and for women, it's like 0. 0.4, so very low. Right. Chapter two, basic training. Several years this ago, is, I went before to... we go on, this this is a problem for what percentage of the population again? Uh, well, what, what it there used have to been, be? There have been <laughs> millions of missed cancer screenings. Yes, because of COVID, millions. Yes, millions of people are going to die from cancers that would have been preventable. But what, how many how many people are trying to get trans surgery on the NHS? Two thousand. It was. It went from one hundred and thirty eight to two thousand three hundred and eighty three between two thousand ten and two thousand eleven. Right, so, right. Way, so, way more important. Oh no, than no way. Of people getting cancer screenings. It was. It was one hundred and thirty eight in two thousand ten, two thousand eleven, in two thousand twenty twenty one. Mm -hmm. It was the two thousand three hundred eighty three. So. Yes, it's it's up considerably, but 
Yeah, the cancer screenings have to be in the tens of thousands, right? No, millions. Millions, yeah. Okay. Now, so I found a website that has like a running tally of like wait times for people with gender, you know, issues. Uh, that was from May. It says there's a, currently 11,000 people on a waiting list. 11,000? Yes. Wow. And, and when I looked at the, uh, when I was kind of researching this, I saw, you know, what you were saying, Carl, it's just there are millions of people that are way behind on cancer screenings. And that was part of the big problem with, you know, the all the stuff with COVID kind of pushed a lot of people mm -hmm. with cancer, mm -hmm. you know, down the, the ladder. Right. And it's, it is kind of gross to some extent that all this, instead of this being about like the, the entirety of the NHS, it's just about her issue of, you know, getting trans treatment. Yeah. When there's like a lot of, you know, yeah, I mean, people do kill themselves with gender dysphoria. It's not a joke, but like compared to the rates of people that have cancer and heart disease and COVID yeah. and all these other things, it's, you know, significantly it's, less. It's one thing choosing to take your own life because you feel like you were born in the wrong body. Mm -hmm. It's another thing to die because your treatment that you pay for wasn't screened. Right. Right. Like you, you don't have a choice but to pay for this treatment. You are literally forced, compelled at gunpoint, as Ben Shapiro might put it. <laughs> and so, like having an angry tranny, like leaning over the desk, being like, "You know, I'm not getting my my gender surgery quick enough." It's like, you know, I just don't care. Shut the fuck up. Go and get it privately. You're rich. You're mm -hmm. part of the one percent. What do you want? Well, for her, I mean, for Abigail, that's true. She makes there are two thousand other trannies like me. I don't care. Yeah. Like there are millions of people gonna die. <laughs> right. <laughs> For fuck's sake. Well, I think as I said, the numbers are obviously, you know, this is a a, a much more minor issue. Um, but when it comes to people that are like <laughs> suffering from severe depression, it's not like they don't have control over, you know, themselves. Does yeah, she... I don't think it's the same as having terminal cancer. Does she well obviously it's not the same, but she makes a I don't claim... think it's nearly as bad. She but makes a I'd claim. I'd much rather in here. be depressed than have terminal cancer. Well, she, I'm assuming most people would take that then, uh, option then the, if it was the afforded to them. In my sure. Favor. sure. <laughs> she, she makes a claim Sorry, that people God. die of of gender dysphoria. Obviously, she's she's implying that suicide is the thing. But if they're not well, what, even yeah. diagnosed with gender dysphoria, how how does she know that they're not that they don't have other mental issues that they have self diagnosed gender dysphoria for? Right. For but mm. right. Yeah. Yeah. So my GP I, it's a little bit of a trans, bogus claim. If cancer right. kills you, you know the cancer killed you. Yes. Yeah. And asked to be referred to a gender identity clinic. The first thing she did was refuse. Not exactly off to a great start. <laughs> I won't name her or any of the real people I'll be referring to today. Instead, I'll call her Lieutenant Scheisskopf. Isn't it kind of a BS move to, you know, spend all this time, quote unquote, investigating the NHS and doing all stuff, and then you don't actually name any of the people involved? Like, what's the <laughs> point of that? Good question. I, I, like, it just seems like, oh, well, I want to be able to kind of badmouth them without them, you know, fighting back against me, essentially. Yeah, that's a good point. Which, they, you know, if you're trying to enact change in the world, you got to put yourself out there. They probably the would day, come like, out. What's the worst they're gonna do? You know, cut your dick off. <laughs> that's that's literally what your the plan is, isn't it? Like, well, it, it it's it's what? kind of it, it's cowardly because it's like okay, you have <laughs> philosophy tube, uh, you know, a YouTuber with a million subs, you know, is well, trans, so they have that like comedy trans, gold. So you know, has can't believe, you, can't believe you're moving on from that. That was good. sorry, God, it's okay. <laughs> but um, so you get what you get the joke there. I got the joke. I, I'm just. <laughs> Sorry, I got it. Karen. But um, obviously, no, have, have... Carl hasn't seen this video because she, she, I have not. She's very specific about how they don't cut the dick off. So, Carl, get it right. Oh, they? <laughs> they cut the balls off. Yes. Right. Oh yeah, good point. No, good point. Yeah. <laughs> well, some of them do. I, I, you know, I'll be honest. I haven't looked into the. Nor am I interested to look into the uh, surgical <laughs> history of Abigail Thorne. <laughs> no, but what I was gonna say is. You know, you have someone who's like a, a big YouTuber. They make a lot of money independently on Patreon. So it's not like mm. they can be threatened, you know, to lose their money from the government or anything. And if, if they're not willing to go out there and fight for a cause and name people and try to get the system changed, then why should anyone else? Yeah. Mm. 
Come on, it's Shy such a hassle, told- though. I, but it's like you know, if, if you're going to be a leader of a quote unquote movement, you got to you got to put yourself out there. Yeah, I that's agree. the whole point. But the the thing is, as well, the this allows a certain kind of plausible deniability, and re- it recuses herself from having to take any criticism or flack. Like, right. if you name that person, that person can come out and go, that's not true. Here's the here's the receipts. Exactly. Here's the evidence of this. Here's the evidence yeah. of that. Here's the evidence yeah. of the other. But if you just say, well, you know, it's just unnamed people said and did all these <laughs> terrible things, then, well, who's that? You know, no, no one's going to hold her account to account. Right. Exactly. True. Yeah. It's kind of the point, well, right? I come back in a month and said that if I was still trans then, she would refer me. GPs in England aren't routinely trained in... Which, there's nothing wrong with doing that at all. That's a good thing. Yeah, the the doctor's saying, well, okay, you know... I mean, the doctor's not psychic. They don't know what, you know, they haven't read your mind. Okay, they're like, well, you know, wait a month and see if you still feel the same way. That's that's a totally acceptable thing to do. Abigail would be like, listen, I'm being paid to be trans, right? (laughs) I'm literally... I I earned literally tens of thousands of dollars because I came out as trans. Of course I'm going to be trans in a month. It How dare you to, even imply that? It would How be tough dare to go back. I yeah. can literally show you the date and the amount <laughs> on her Patreon. <laughs> we have it in numbers. Trans medicine, hence the separate clinics. So the idea that you are supposed to wait a month before you can go, she made that up on the spot. She also tried to send me to mental health services, which wasn't what I was there for. She only had one. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Her doctor's doing all the right moves here. And Abigail's pissed. Look at that. Just immediately we'll turn her over to mental health services. Well, I, I love the idea that a man in a dress walks into the doctor's office and is like, I'd like you to cut my dick off. And he's like, I think I'm going to send you to mental health services. And then she's on YouTube going, I can't believe you wanted to check my mental health. <laughs> Mm-hmm. One job. Send. Well, no, but like, <laughs> like, why would that be a consideration? Yeah, and and, and even if, like, you know, the doctor is like, okay, you could have dermatophoria, but we had to yeah. like also see. Do you, maybe you have something else that you're confusing for dermatophoria. You should see these mental health people. Maybe you just have what? some other general anxiety disorder or something. Why don't we take prudent steps before the irreversible surgery? Right. Yeah. I mean, it used to be you had to live as a woman for two years and get signed off on, by all these doctors and stuff like yeah. that. This is not really that unusual, to be honest with you. No. Yeah. Send me to the gender clinic. But for some reason, she wouldn't do it. Oh, and spoiler warning, at the end of the video, <laughs> Abigail admits that all trans people, she says all trans people that she knows, when they go to the doctor, they just lie to the doctor. Oh, oh I know. I know. <laughs> so it's what? like, oh, okay. I mean, I guess your doctor was doing, you know, good here being cautious. Yeah. I am not the only patient there? who fell at the first hurdle. This is a 2013 NHS report titled Monitoring and Promoting Trans Health Across the Northwest. The authors investigated the needs of trans patients across Northwest England and how GPs were meeting those needs, or rather they tried to, but they couldn't because GPs overwhelmingly refused to cooperate with the researchers. Only half of the practices they investigated even replied. And that was just the beginning. It was extremely difficult to get beyond reception staff to speak to practice managers. For example, the researcher was told many times that the practice manager was not in, but would be later, only to be told later that they were on leave or did not work in the afternoons. Very few practice managers understood what was meant by transgender people, and were unwilling to engage in this research. Some practice managers, receptionists, and GPs who were spoken to expressed particularly negative attitudes towards trans people. This study clearly demonstrates that most GP practices are not sufficiently prepared or knowledgeable to appropriately address the needs of this patient group. So this is, I think this is dishonest, the way that this is being framed. Because she's, so she starts the story by saying in I don't know when she transitioned last year, year before. So in like 2019, 2020, 2021, she goes to her GP and she has all these problems with her GP. And oh, here's a report from 10 years ago where some GPs, you know, didn't know what trans was, which, yeah, like in the year 2012, people didn't know anything about transgender people. And to compare that behavior to now is completely bullshit. Well, it's like 138. It, now. it was 138 people. So obviously, 
they probably never even had one in their clinic. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Exactly. It's like, like I was reading this report. It's just like this is a report, a 2013 report about 2012. Yeah. It's like, yeah, people in 2012 didn't know what transgender people were. And thought you'd call a doctor and you're like, tell me about your transgender practices. And they're like, my what now? Yeah. But I mean, if there are only like 2,000 on the waiting list, that's such a tiny, tiny minority of the population compared well, to the 11, 70 now. million or 11,000 yeah. compared to the 70 million people who are living there. Yes. Exactly. It's just so, like that of all of the problems, I mean, you could probably rarely find a more marginal problem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 2013 was a decade ago, but more recent data and my own experience confirms this is still a problem. <laughs> this 2015 NHS report, which solicited feedback from patients and staff also highlighted uncooperative GPs as a major problem. This 2016 article in the British Medical Journal says the same thing. In so again, oh, that, wow. the, the mm -hmm. second study, even though it's a 2015 study, it's still a study from like 2013. So this is just like, she couldn't find anything recent that actually talks about this. Yeah. I didn't give a fuck. I said, yeah. Oh, look, this activist study says exactly what I wanted to say. Of course it does. But I've got an activist study that says it doesn't. So now what? Shut the fuck up. Well, it's actually funny because even the uh, the 2013 study says um, <laughs> it says exactly what I said, which which Abigail, I guess, lies about later in the video, because even that study says um, staff felt frustrated by the constraints of the system and resources in 2013, particularly financial savings that need to be made across the NHS, which were dictated nationally. Several reported the waiting list was increasing in some cases. Quality standards were reduced as a direct result of these financial constraints. Staff reported that they perceived there were more complaints coming into their organization as a result of waiting times increasing and other delays. So even in 2013, 2014, they're like, we don't have enough money. <laughs> There's too many people on the waiting list. Yeah. It's been that way since, well, the 80s, basically. Mm -hmm. In 2021, the non-profit Trans Actual ran a survey which included questions about healthcare. 14% of trans respondents said that their GPs, like mine, simply refused to help them. That's more than one in 10. Oh, As my 14%. friend Alice is fond of saying, yeah. the NHS is a wonderful institution. Unfortunately, it is run by the British, but I didn't have any other choice. <laughs> oh, so get fucked. I went away. <laughs> Proto Americans suck. No, just like listen, listen to Abigail's accent, if you will. Is there yes. a more British accent? Oh no, this is this is just we're just so terrible. You see, everyone else. Oh, imagine if it was run by the Somalians. It'd be so much better if it was run by the fucking Somalians, wouldn't it? Jesus fucking Christ. Uh, does Somali have healthcare? I don't know. No, of course not, and they certainly don't have a particularly positive attitude about LGBT. Like, oh, just... that's that's for sure. They definitely <laughs> don't have a children's British. gender dysphoria clinic yeah. in Somali. I'll go out on a Probably line. not many. And I, I, the average Somalian doctor probably doesn't think much of, you know, I don't think the option would be, would you like to see a mental health practitioner? It would be, you are going there, you know, or you might be put <laughs> oh, to death. Yeah. I don't know. You know, like, fucking, oh, it's run, but it's run by the British. Oh, yes. Sorry. Just... God, these people annoy me. <laughs> Don't know why I agreed to come on. <laughs> Way for a month, as ordered. And 30 days later, surprise, surprise, I was still transgender. So I went back to Lieutenant Shryskov <laughs> a second time. And this time... The new she Patreon would... check came through and surprise, surprise, I was still trans. <laughs> I, I, I know I'm being cynical about that, but man, oh dear. man, it is just too coincidental in my opinion. I mean, if there's a financial incentive, it's always... You're, I mean, I would wonder just because that's the way the mind is kind of structured, obviously. So uh, later, like she's about to go through, I think at this point, she kind of goes through how long it takes her to you know, be on the waiting list and all this stuff. And uh, Dev, who's DMing me right now, is claiming, this is Dev's claim, mm -hmm. I don't know, I didn't check this, that if you add up the numbers and the time she said she waited, it actually doesn't make sense to when she said she was transition when she was transgender on YouTube. And that she's exaggerating or lying about how long it took. Wow. Who can According to that. Dev can't possibly be Do right you think she that. went to it's the crazy. doctor, though, before <laughs> she came out on YouTube? Yeah. I mean, that's possible, but who knows? Right. 
would refer me. Six months went by. Dun, dun, dun. I remind you that we have the right to be treated within 18 weeks. So at this point, I've already waited double that, and I'm not even in the door. My right. But after six months, I still hadn't even gotten so much as a... Is it a right? I was like looking this up. It didn't look like it was a right. It looked like it was just a goal that it we're supposed to... It doesn't make sense to call it a right. right. It's a guideline. Like, I mean, I don't, how do you say something? How do you say it's a right to be seen in 18 weeks if, like, I think it was like 84% of people were missing that target range oh, yeah. last year or something? Oh, so. yeah. God, how is it that the proto American has to explain to the actual Americans what rights are? <laughs> if it's outside, if it's extrinsic to your person, it's not a right. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. What do you mean? End of conversation. What? As in, if it requires someone else's labor to produce the oh, thing, no, to give he's it to you, he's going the Ben Shapiro route. Negative no, no, positive but, rights, yes. But it's literally the case. Right. That it's but not that's a right. not even that's it's forcing not, okay. my wife, a doctor, to work. I wasn't on even addressing that. I'm just saying, like, like under British law, do they even say that there's a right to this? Because my understanding is that they didn't say that. It just said this was the I guideline. Can't of, of I can't the, imagine they did. But let's yeah. you know, it's just like just sitting there going, I have a right for someone else's labor, and I didn't get that labor. It is like Ben Shapiro is not wrong on this point. Like it's embarrassing. No, it's like a definitional thing. Yeah, it's like a word game. Okay, but then you're expanding the term rights to mean things that are the opposite of rights. Is So what's I mean, the point in having it? But police protection, I guess, is not a right then. No, not really. Okay. Like, it's a privilege. Like, if there are no police, you're not having your rights Well, violated. I think it's a privilege too, but... So, well, it's an entitlement. Anything that the state provides is an entitlement at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. Right. Says right. <laughs> says you right yeah in america the legal definition of a right is a power or privilege <laughs> there we go held by the general public as a result of the constitution statute regulation judicial precedent or other type of law but isn't so it interesting. privilege in the definition but the, the, it, but these are two contradictory things a power is something within you it's something you can do sure. a privilege is something that is bestowed yeah. upon you it so now both. you've got yeah Exactly, but that's the the you know the the two poles have been incorporated into the single word. That's ridiculous. I'm just telling you what the law is in America no, land. Okay, I'm we were saying. born on rights. We this, there were no rights in the world before America was born. Okay, but this is entirely the problem. This no no, it's kind of true actually. Like this, it's not the liberal view of what a right is, and so okay, but we have to accept that we're not liberals then. There are. There We're are super responsibilities <laughs> with every right. I think that's the crux to what you're trying to say. What you are saying. No, no. What, what I'm rights saying Rights and responsibilities is, go hand in hand. What I'm saying is none of these things are rights. They're entitlements. Mm -hmm. It's okay. We can have entitlements. But like you say, entitlements come with drawbacks. Rights are universal. There's, and there's, you don't need to do anything. You know, sure. The government doesn't need to do anything right. to ensure my right to free speech right. normally. Like they just need to not oppress me. Right, they need to not do something, but the the they have to make sure that the police are funded and that we've hired people to look after the streets to enact a privilege. Correct. Yeah, security. Yes, that's the privilege. Letter from the clinic saying I was in the system, so I went back to Shyskopf a third time, and this time she said, "Oh, the letter's still here." This is that's hilarious, actually. <laughs> like, oh, look, the letter's still here. Well, why do she, you think she did that? She's probably well, okay. totally mean in the office, totally condescending, talking yes. down to her. She's like, oh my god, I forgot to mail the letter. Well, there's a there's a possibility here. There's motivation that Abigail doesn't consider, which is that I'm assuming the GPs are aware and have had contact with these gender clinics and they know that they're all backed up to high hell. Of course. And I'm wondering if they're sort of pressuring the GPs to not send people to the gender clinics. Right. Yeah. Well, I just, I just, it's, you know, obviously when you're dealing with people and you're completely rude and condescending to them, you know, they might move a little slower. Doing well, listen, things we or... don't. We can guess that. We don't know that. Okay. We don't know. Abigail could have been a complete delight to this GP. All right. <laughs> I mean, we can speculate. <laughs> we don't know. We can speculate, speculation. right? I guess we could. I mean, I'm speculating. Uh -huh. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking she went in there like a wrecking ball. I mean, this I video seems like a testament to that. 
This is what why, is with look, this attitude? What? Like this, just this entire attitude. Look at the face she's pulling right now. Yeah. Like this, it's, it's this, this person's evil. attitude. Yeah, exactly. Look, I'm, I've got the, the world's biggest problem here. I, a rich trans woman <laughs> was not seen quick enough. Immediately. Oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Sorry, I, your highness. I, she's going for Karen. She keeps. Yeah. She keeps pulling so out the trans, number of trans people that killed themselves or died. But I just I want to compare that next to the the cancer people that died because they didn't get their screening quick enough. I just I mm -hmm. feel like those numbers are probably much higher. And a cancer, I mean, there's no when you have cancer, there's no question about it. The yeah, ment any mental health situation, you're talking about a gray area. So, yeah. Yep. I must have forgotten to send it. Dismissed, Captain. I said dismissed, Captain. Get the hell out of my office. The lesson I took from this was... See, this is the thing. If this... Uh, the, you were totally right, Sitch, pointing out that, you know, she's not naming names here because I feel like... <laughs> I feel to like, back it up, yeah. Yeah, if if she threw a name out, the person would be like, "What? What are you <laughs> talking about?" I sent it immediately. Maybe it was lost in the mail or something. Well, but. I mean, look, listen. They, you know, maybe the person didn't send it because because uh, I keep wanting to call her Contra. It's like it's. I can't. I'm going to say it at some point in this video. So uh, I apologize in advance. Contra points? <laughs> but, is that what you're trying to? Uh, yeah, I keep wanting to say You're trying to avoid it? Now I'm, I'm trying, trying to, avoid to it. say it. I know. But uh, no, uh, yeah, look, it's possible that, you know, Philosophy 2 was a total dick to the doctor and mm -hmm. they intensely didn't do it. It's possible the doctor is a horrible transphobe and mm -hmm. didn't do it. It's possible the doctor is just a fucking incompetent buffoon and they just dropped it in the, you know, on the other side of a cabinet. Who knows? Who knows? Well, not many is doctors are actually incompetent buffoons. So. Well, I actually completely disagree with that statement. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose, yeah. I've had okay. some bad doctors. Okay, yeah, fair enough. Is it transphobic to call her a dick or should you use the C word? I oh, know. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. I, I think the, the C, C word is fine. The C I think word. calling her a Karen is fine. She's earned it. That's <laughs> the Karen. Look at this fucking yeah. Yes. The C word is uh, like DEF CON 5 in America, but just, you know, a normal Monday morning in in uh, Australia. Yeah. Yes. And in England. But... Was that the my hair doctor was. Help either. She has a very so Karen in... hairstyle. Of course. She should have Karen on her name tag. That would be yeah. hilarious. Competent, she couldn't work a post box. Or more likely, she didn't want to give me medical care. Dun, dun, dun. Neither of which is great, to be honest. Look, if you're a doctor, do you want to give medical care to somebody that you're iffy on a diagnosis? I kind of feel like you don't. I kind of feel like you're like, mm, I don't really want to do that. Honestly, you think you're on good terms with someone and then you come out as trans and suddenly they don't want anything to do with you anymore. In a lot of ways, the NHS is just like my dad. I'd uh, just like to clarify that that was a joke. I have a normal and happy relationship with my father, who is a very supportive and loving man. At this point, I moved to a different area of the country and <laughs> signed up. Wait, what was that was so weird. Like, why does she make this like? Classical oh. stereotype, my dad doesn't like me trans joke, and then just be like, oh, I'm just kidding, that was a joke. Actually, my dad's great, because this person faces no oppression whatsoever, <laughs> no yeah. problems with any of the relationships they have in their lives, everyone is kind to them, they're well-adjusted, blah, 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 you know, like, but, but we have to get the stereotype, oh, yeah, no, my dad's bad, actually. Yep. No, he's not, you know, none of the people in your life are bad, you just really don't have a best joke, because, let's be fair, Abigail, you're stealing everything about this persona from other people. Yeah, that's what this is. Well, that was like yeah. when um, I forget there, she was like called for like a housing strike. Oh, it was during COVID. She oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not paying my rent the in solidarity. She makes oh, more money God. than her landlord. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Makes more money than God for fuck's sake. <laughs> I don't, I don't know her Patreon numbers. What's going on here, Carl? I Give us know. a I, see, I assume they're amazing. I, oh, I think she is like. I, I checked yesterday. She has like four thousand, not four thousand, nine thousand patrons. Nine thousand, okay. great. She has a lot, yeah. So Should that's we get nine, the the uh, the graph of a month. how many? Like you know, she got directly after announcing being trans. Does she do the dollar thing or the two dollar thing? Two dollars is a okay. So here. it's at least eighteen thousand. 
<laughs> at least 18,000 a month. <laughs> oh, no, I'm sorry. I 17,000 patrons. So at least 14,000. 17,000 patrons. No, I'm sorry. 7,000. I can't talk. Oh, right. 7,000. Okay. 17. Okay. 17 <laughs> yeah. So at least $14,000 a month. 14,000 a month. How's that? Plus, I mean, know, could you buy a flat in England for 14,000 a month or is that just. <laughs> Fucking yes. Yeah. Well, also, I mean, she has her, her videos routinely get like a million views and she gets, yeah. she has some sponsorship deal with Nebula or whoever mm -hmm. the hell have that deal with. Right. So. Yeah. Okay. They probably load her up for, with that deal. She She's making like 10 grand more than a spot. million a year. Making good. Great. And she's in some play that she wrote. Yeah. Ooh, wow. Carl, yeah. how much for you to transition? You keep bringing up the <laughs> You know, that's a great point. No one's actually, you know, the I need to be more canny about this. Yeah, you come on. How, how much could I make if I transed? Well, I mean, just how much would, how much would you, you have to it. make to trans? I think it's the question people want to know. <laughs> if, would well, you do I mean, it for like 5 million a year? No. 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 It'd be a lot to explain to your kids, right? Daddy's, <laughs> yeah. Daddy's going to work now. I mean, get off the my... wig on, put the dress on, and go to work. Don't worry. It's just about the money, son. <laughs> get off my skirt tail, son. <laughs> I can't even imagine, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah, that'd but be There's tough. no amount of money. Sitch? I'm not five five million a year? <laughs> Are we... no, no. Well, it depends. What what is it? Do I have to like actually take chemicals and do surgery, or just put on a dress? I put on a dress for five. I mean, just <laughs> you just socially transition. That'd be difficult. That'd be rough. I don't know. Give us your trans voice, Sitch. I want to know what kind of oh, how Jesus. our show's gonna pan yeah. out. <laughs> I'd like to hear the trans voice as well, Sitch. <laughs> hey now, everyone. <laughs> oh, it's terrible. No, it's no. Sitch Chan. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> We're you don't gonna... like that? I thought you don't think great. I could pass. No, I think Adam's just a transplant. It's I ridiculous. Think it is too, yeah, yeah. Look at that. Already we've stigmatized you, Adam. I know. Jeez. What about you, Adam? Abigail's... Are you can wear a dress for five million dollars. Abigail's voice is not as bad as some of the trans voices. Some of the trans no. voices are just. I mean, you're like, it's just. I. I don't. It's not any. It's nothing close to a woman's voice. It's like this weird nether world. Sure. Yeah. Right, but that's because it's you know, it's can be <laughs> depending on your biology and the way your vocal cords are structured. It can, uh, yeah, it's difficult. Yeah. Sorry, Adam, are you suggesting that uh, Miss Shrier here has not taken any hormones? I don't know. I'm he's assuming suggesting... they've taken short hormones. But so usually, he, the it doesn't all change. The grift, it usually, it, it doesn't, doesn't change the vocal cords, though, right? I think once I think your vocal does, cords yeah. are grown, they're grown. I don't know if they. Should no, no, no. Grown. It definitely does. I watched. I, I watched oh, a bunch really? of detransition stuff. Yeah, there are women, uh, lots of detransition women who complain, of course, that their voices are always a register lower than the. Uh, right, but that's. I think if you take testosterone, they can grow. If you take estrogen, I don't know if they shrink. Yeah, they don't shrink. That's the well, thing. Well, I don't know. I check. Why does Why does she have a different voice then? You get those big fat vocal cords. Just vocal love, training. She does it in the video. Training, yeah. She does the man's voice in the. She puts on the... her original voice in the video. And it's kind of really? off putting. So, so this is all an act. That's interesting. Yeah. I can't. Well, I, <laughs> you can't say it's an act. What do you mean by that? Well, if you're putting it on, it's literally an act. The voice. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Right. But I mean, I'm prepared to go further than that. I know you are. I'm not. I've got no respect for this person. So. Uh, yeah, it says, it says estrogen hormone therapy will not have any effect on vocal cords or the vocal tract. Yeah. <laughs> once once you've got a, once you've got big, fat vocal cords, they're not going away. Yeah. Right. I really hope that uh, Abigail's at home watching this. She's like, fuck, I've been faking the stupid voice the whole time. <laughs> she says on record that she never watches any response videos. Yeah. Well, of course she doesn't. I'm just teasing. I mean, obviously yes. she's not going to watch this. But like, it would just be funny if she was hate watching and be like, fuck. <laughs> You know, I've put in so much work. I don't. No, women, she would say that we're transphobes for even talking. About yes, this. of course. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Women, women with deep voices, biological women with deep voices. I mean, it's kind of sexy to be honest. I knew you, you were going to say like, that, Adam. Well, I just the, a lot of act. There's a lot of <laughs> sexy actresses that do have deep voices that you're like, okay, well, right. But it sounds different. It doesn't sound like a man's voice. Yeah, there's a different quality. What about Doctor Girlfriend? Like the, well, okay, well. That's a little different. I mean, I if you think, think Dr. Girlfriend's voice is sexy, then I think there's a different issue at play here. 
Doctor Girlfriend is sexy. Don't don't try don't try to. Doctor Girlfriend it. looks sexy. I don't think a Jewish New York accent <laughs> with smoker voice is sexy, Adam. Okay. You you like such that? A, you like such that? Such an anti semite. I know. I know. Well, I'm just a, a woman with a deep voice is actually kind of sexy. So yeah, but there's a like there. <laughs> I'm trying to think of like there are actresses that have like quote unquote deep voices, but it's a different quality to it than a man's voice. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah I, I hear. Yeah, I, I got. I get, like I, I don't I know what, what the physiology saying. is that makes them sound different, but there's obviously some structural difference in the yeah. throat. So, okay. Up with a new GP, and I went along, and I asked to be sent to the gender clinic. But this time, I printed out the NHS rules on treating trans patients and highlighted the relevant sections. So when he said, "I'm sorry, I can't send you to the clinic," I pulled them out and I said, "Actually, doctor, you not only can." You are required to. Real slay queen. After a great deal of. I know that's that's not confrontational at all, right? Yeah. This isn't well, making me it, think well of you, Abigail. It's interesting. She never even considers that maybe the reason the GPs are hesitant is just because they know it's all so backed up. She never yeah. that never occurs to her. She's like, oh no, they're just bigots. Well, that's hmm, why you'd point. want to actually talk to the whoever whatever doctors were involved here. Well, right. Hence why she's not, you know, mm. dropping the names because people would obviously talk to them and. Get their well, side of the story. And mm. if they're bigots, why would they care? Like, well, hmm. I don't care what this idiot does with their body. Like, why would they care? Oh, yeah. They don't like you. Of course. Just send them off. I suppose the only argument would be uh, about waiting times. I mean, they're not being paid by the patient, so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Persuasion. He did, in fact, agree to follow the rules. And he referred me to the clinic. I made sure to get a signed and dated copy of that referral. And the clock officially started. I waited 18 weeks. I waited 18 more weeks. Oh, no. And then I waited 18 more. This is literally the the American argument against universal health care. <laughs> it's just <laughs> she's laying it out here. Here's your I wait know, times with universal health care. I'm listening to this. I'm like, oh, okay, wow. She's really making the conservative argument for. Uh... Yeah. Yes. I'm surprised. So she Vinci said she Piro doesn't respond to this. So she said she waited 54 weeks, which would be obviously over a year. So. Wait, 18 weeks. Times three. Oh, okay. Chapter three: The Theater of War. Okay. There are currently seven gender clinics for adults operating in England. <laughs> Look, four adults. <laughs> mm. Yeah, but you think the like, to her, this is why this is like this whole video is so baffling because you're like, wait a minute, the seven clinics for you know a population of sixty-seven million. Mm -hmm. Like obviously, you know, if the number, especially if the numbers of people coming out as trans increases, you know, dramatically every year. That's the issue. There's just not enough clinics because these clinics were probably built and you know created years and years ago when the numbers were like substantially lower. So that's like 10 million people per clinic. <laughs> yeah, it's like I just it's just so obvious what the problem is, and I don't know why she just refuses to to see it. Right. None of them are seeing patients within the required 18 week limit, and waiting lists are extremely long. <laughs> How long, you ask? Well, at time of recording, the largest clinic in London has 11,407 patients on its waiting list. Last month, they offered first appointments to 50. That means that if you were referred today, you will be waiting for 19 years. So she's leaving out a key piece of information here. So while it's true that first appointments for were 50 that means it was your very first appointment but total appointments were a thousand mm -hmm. and so it's like okay i mean it makes sense you have all these people that need you know to go see doctors especially if it's like them trying to figure out if you have gender dysphoria I, if it's if it's done correctly that's going to be a long session they're not just going to walk in the office and say you're trans and then write you a prescription I mean, that's, I know that's what, what she wants. Though. That's what she wants. Yeah. But no, you know, not come out in a day, mate. Get through 20, 30 in a day. Come on. Yeah, exactly. Like if they're doing their fucking job, that's yeah. not what they're doing. Maybe it's if you incentivize them by having them being paid, yeah. you know, paid by the trans. I mean, yeah. 
Capitalism right. works, baby. There's fifteen hundred patients per clinic. Mm-hmm. And that's not nineteen years for healthcare either. That's nineteen years for a first appointment, of which you may have several, with months or even years between them. You might be wondering, wow, only fifty? Maybe they had a really slow month last month. Maybe that's throwing the numbers off. Nope. Fifty's pretty typical. Because she's making it seem like they only see fifty people, like period. It's like, well, no, they saw like fifteen, you know, a thousand people. But you know, once you listen, once you transition, you should, they, doctors should just cut you off. Say, we don't have time for you anymore. We have to deal with the new people. <laughs> yeah, that's actually better than it used to be. When I was referred, it was twenty-six years. The long waiting times contribute to high levels of. Distress among trans patients. It also impacts our access to civil rights like marriage, death, and privacy. Because remember, in England, if you want to change the sex marker on your birth certificate or passport, you need a doctor's permission. If hey, you have not changed, does it, look, they does allow same-sex marriage, marriage, though, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So it doesn't impact your ability to marry at all. Right. There's something about. If no, it's like if you're married, you have to have your spouse has to sign off on you changing your gender or something. Oh, Isn't really? It? Something weird like that. That's helpful. But it doesn't stop you from getting married. No. Right. That's kind of a good thing, though, right? Yep. You marry a woman and then she wants to become a man. You'd be like, hmm, I I'm don't not think so. Off on that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so, honey. We're well, going to stick it out this way. Well, the problem is in a lot of, you know, the proponents, especially in England, are kind of trying to fight against this is that if you get your if you get your uh, gender changed officially, then that would allow you legally to access any, you know, gendered female gendered spaces. And so it makes sense that they want to have a doctor, you know, make sure you're not quote unquote faking it in order to try to get access to those spaces. So it's not like a it's not a bizarre thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course changed the marker on your passport, for instance, because you're on a years long waiting list to get permission, then every time you apply to rent a flat or get a job, you'll have to show them your passport and they'll instantly know you're trans. Okay. Employers and landlords are not allowed so? to discriminate. Bro, you turn ha. up. <laughs> you you Carl, turn are up. You talking? They instantly know. They know you're <laughs> trans. You fucking turn up. Yeah, you want you want trans services so they know you're trans, right? But like, oh no, your your landlord might figure out you're trans. Like, bro, you turn up. Like, mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, you know, she told you... stories of like cis men <laughs> hitting on her and not knowing, and I'm like, really? Yeah. Okay, I mean, <laughs> sure. okay, I'm okay, sure. <laughs> you don't think the Maybe. landlord's in the dark, Carl? Yeah, the landlord's just like, wow, I had no idea. Abigail, you've got such big hands as you sign this tenancy lease. <laughs> Why you'd be <laughs> renting with the amount of money you make anyway? I mean, that was another question, but you know. Right. Abigail, I have one question for you. There's this typo on your driver's license. <laughs> <laughs> what is, what's going on here? <laughs> Long waiting times are an especially acute problem when it comes to mm. trans children. No, when it comes to cancer. If you know that you're trans at a young age and you're forced to go through the wrong puberty, it can be very distressing. And it okay, <laughs> do you want to, when are we going to bring up that video about how distressing it is that if you go through, if you postpone puberty, you never have an orgasm as an adult? Because to me, I mean, I, or, orgasms are pretty fun. I don't know about you guys, but... <laughs> Like I can't imagine going my entire life and never having an orgasm. Mm -hmm. But what what does the wrong puberty mean? Yeah, well, you know, she she means the opposite. You know, the, not, yeah, the, the puberty not that the doesn't puberty match is, your gender identity. Yeah, yeah, there's there no such go. thing. Every, everyone has one puberty; it is theirs. They go through it because it's their body. They don't have another body that they were accidentally right. put into this one. Oh no, I've got the wrong pair of trousers on today because I picked up someone else's trousers. No, the, it is literally something in you that is generative from your biology. There is no right or wrong puberty. It is your puberty. You have no choice. You've never like accidentally woke up in the morning and picked up the wrong puberty? Not 
recently. I mean, I, you know, I had that like all the time, you know, I was with my sister. Sometimes I, you know, she'd get my erection and I'd start bleeding. It just <laughs> happens sometimes. But it's, it's, you see the, the wizardry at work, right? The wrong puberty. That doesn't make any sense. She, uh, well, yeah, I understand what she's, I understand what she's trying to say. But... Yeah. But even then, okay, well, let's unpack what she's trying to say. What she's trying to say is they were born in the wrong body. And it's like, okay, but that commits you to a series of metaphysical statements that everyone thinks are preposterous, that you, your mind is not a product of your body, that you've got some sort of gendered spirit that exists right. in the ether right. that is then sucked into a body somehow. Oh, it's the wrong body. Oh, look at that. Thank God for modern medicine. Shock, shock, shock. Got to get chopping off and giving you bloody gendered hormones. Mm -hmm. Bollocks. That's not the case. Do you not buy into that there is, there are some small number of people that have gender dysphoria? That I'm not saying there aren't people with mental illnesses. Adam. Right. What I'm saying is nobody's born in the wrong body. Gender dysphoria is technically classified as a mental illness. Obviously, they're trying to change that. I don't know that that's necessarily a good thing, but. But, but I think no. it's obviously a mental illness, right? And I think yeah, people with either. gender dysphoria would say, look, of course it's a mental illness, right? Right. But the point is, the statement, born in the wrong body, is a nonsense statement. Yeah, I understand what you're saying. Because, you're so, yeah. you know, the even the feeling, if you have gender dysphoria or whatever, that's a feeling that comes out of your body, comes out of your mm. brain. It's not, yeah. as you're saying, there's no spirit, you know, that is imbued in you that has a gender to it. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, I mean, I'm assuming Abigail's not making a religious argument in this situation. But she is committed to one now. She is. Yeah, she is. At least in her wording. Yeah. And it can cause, dare I say it, irreversible damage, or not really damage, but it has... Great book, by the way. ...permanent effects. For instance, yeah, there is irreversible I went damage involved here, Abigail. Yeah, that's a good point. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, so what you were saying, Adam, and uh, I don't know if we'll bring it up, but there was... Who, who was the lady in that video? Well, I'll I mean, DMs. I guess, yeah. There was... um. That this is the to president me is like of, a form of torture. Yeah, this is the president of uh, WPATH, uh, Marcy Bowers, and WPATH is like a like a very pro trans kind of activist organization, mm -hmm. and she was saying that you know girls who transition, um, who take you know hormone blockers. I think she's saying both. I know she's saying just girls or girls and boys, but kids who take hormone blockers before they actually go through puberty and then transition. A lot of them will never experience orgasms ever yeah. because by blocking their original puberty, like it never sets into motion all those, you know, physical changes that mm -hmm. allow you to have an orgasm in the first place. Well, you're literally turning them to a eunuch. So. Essentially, yeah. And it's like kind of insane because, you know, how do you yeah. tell like a 10 year old child who's presumably never orgasmed, like, oh, you're not going to have any orgasms if you do this? Like, they don't know what that means. Yeah. Some clinic. Uh, worker comes in and tells them, oh, that's not that big a deal. You know, you can live without it. <laughs> right. Really, really makes you wonder about the question of informed consent. Yeah, I know. How do exactly. you have informed exactly. consent? Right. Yeah. Hmm. Testosterone puberty as an adolescent. And as a result, I'm taller than the average English woman. Also, I can do this with my voice whenever I want to. <laughs> I mean, I think that's terrifying. <laughs> I just so ladylike. I just listen to this, but I mean, with the facial expressions, it is a bit terrifying. It's pretty bad, yeah. Things are positives about me because I really like being tall, and also it's useful as an actress to have two voices and a perfect impersonation of Matt Berry on tap. But <laughs> there are other effects that are negative and also permanent. So, it's especially important that trans children get prompt treatment. If you're 13 I'm not sure I agree that trans. such a thing as a trans child. Yeah, I, I don't know that I buy that either. I'm not committed to that. <clears throat> and there's a year's... If, I mean, obviously, since there is a small number of people who do have gender dysphoria and will eventually become trans, those people are children at some time. But I just feel like the the potential of misdiagnosis is too great. Very. Isn't, isn't it something like ninety percent of gender dysphoria just cleans up after adolescence anyway? I think eighty. So seven percent. Well, like right, the problem is basically. when they in the older studies when they didn't socially transition kids and they didn't give them puberty blockers, it was like sixty to ninety percent, which is a very gigantic range, but. 
would uh it's also a gigantic number right would desist um once they went through puberty so it's, i mean to me i think it's i don't think it was like oh these kids had were trans and then they like grew out of it i think they just were never trans and they just yeah. were confused or something yep Without the long wait to get care then by the time you're seen it could be too late Oh and my your God, life is not forever. over if that happens to you. <laughs> but it will shape the rest of your time on Earth. Oh and that's what a lot of this comes down to. Waiting for somebody else's permission to live the rest of your life. Well, I mean, this would be a good time to bring up the Tavistock clinic closing, right? Because she's talking about kids transitioning here. She never brings it up. Yeah, no. Why? I mean, this would be a great place to insert that. Well, there's possibly two reasons. One, because it closing kind of craps all over her arguments. Right. Uh, it shows that they were, because she's trying to make the argument that the the care was too restrictive, and part of the Tavistock closing was that the the they were too affirmative. Right. Yeah. And so she doesn't want to say that. And then maybe she also doesn't bring it up because it doesn't actually impact her specifically as an individual, so she doesn't really care. But she did bring up kids and how it ruins their lives. Right. But that's only because she wants to advocate for a system where people can just, like herself, can just walk in and do whatever they want. Right. So. Yeah, you know, like a totally sane person would want. Right. Might be fun to go through chemo, just, you know, on a lark. Well, the, the thing is, and she brings up these examples, and they're just complete lies. Like, you don't just walk in the doctor and you say, oh, you know, I want to get my, you know, rib removed. Like, it's mm -hmm. like, well, the doctor's like, wait, why? Like, you know, you have to have some sort of medical problem that they look right. at. I feel like I have a high likelihood of getting appendicitis. Can we just take care of that ahead of time? <laughs> what do you say? Right. I'm free on Friday. Right. Faced with these waiting lists, a lot of trans people do one of three things. Option one is private health care. Obviously, mm -hmm. that's very expensive. So it tends to be the more privileged, usually white trans people who get to do that. <laughs> Look at that, it's racist. <laughs> and even if you can't afford it, that's money that you can't spend on a holiday or a house or a wedding, oh, or it means no. you go into a lot of debt. Option two is self-medication. That means buying hormones off the internet or sharing them with a friend. I found a 2016 article in The Lancet which records that 40% of adult patients who get an appointment at the London Clinic are already self-medicating when they arrive. If that rate holds... Which is completely fucked up and also completely showing that it's it's going to ruin the chances of any, especially kids, if they would grow out of it. They're not going to if you're giving themselves hormones already. Yeah. Like, 40 percent that's off the charts yeah, it nothing, is it's nothing you, you guys are just transphobes eh? shut up just... one in five <laughs> disgusting disgusting how could you say this adam mm -hmm. actually i think it's two and five it's worse yeah <laughs> it's constant across the nation that would mean there are tens of thousands of people doing it although because it's underground who knows anecdotally every british trans person i know except for Two, I think, is either self-medicating or has at some point. If you're a trans woman like me, then self-medicating in England is legal. You need a testosterone blocker and estrogen, and you can order both of those from a foreign country without a prescription on the internet and have them sent here. If you have the that's crazy. Yeah, that's pretty. Conservatives have been in power twelve years now. That's crazy, mm -hmm. man. Mm. You, you parents used to worry about their kids just doing drugs. You mm. sober up off the drugs. <laughs> this is like <laughs> completely just, you know, changing the trajectory of your entire life. Mm -hmm. Is it them legal to get estrogen in the U.S. without a prescription? I don't know. That's well, if weird. you can get it off the Internet and have it mailed, uh, why wouldn't you be able to get it off the Internet and mailed to the U.S.? Uh, no, it's a controlled substance in the U.S. Oh, it is? That's the difference? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Ha ha. She says mm. only testosterone is a controlled substance in the U.K. Because mm. I guess it's like a performance enhancer or something. But It's also legal to share them with a friend who needs them. However, if you're a trans man, 
then things are a little trickier because you're going to need testosterone and it's illegal to sell or share oh, that. No. The government doesn't want trans guys getting... Dev sent me pictures. That, you, know, you know how like Keffels mm -hmm. was either selling or involved in pushing people to a site that, that they could buy like hormones? Yeah. That were... No, I not only were just I don't think they were even like hormones made from like by like doctors. They were just like like you know, bathtub hormones <laughs> bathtub or something. Hormones, Jesus. And uh Dev sent me the picture of the box that they came in, which I don't know how Dev has this. Maybe Dev works. <laughs> Dev De Dev has done these? <laughs> well no, let me just I'll show you the I'll show you the box. You can bring it up on stream. This is like insane oh, no. this is really what the box looks like. This is fucking hormones. Whack, whack it in the Discord because I can't see the stream. Yeah, I'll send it to you in Discord. It's like, there's a, basically there's a little lolly anime girl on oh it. Oh my, no way. Oh, this is awful. This oh, is fucking awful. hell. This, so, this isn't weirdos pushing very strange things on kids on the internet. This yeah. Totally normal. You're, you're not really doing yourself a favor if you're sending like a kid, you know, possibly illegal hormones with a little lolly girl saying, don't look at my giant girl dick. It's not... <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Not really making a good argument for your case at that point. Yeah, that's well, pretty, I'm persuaded. That's pretty disturbing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Too yoked. Rishi Sunak's a short king. He doesn't want to be intimidated by all these trans dudes walking around getting oh, buff. Oh, Dev wants me to point out, one of the pictures says, it has a warning on it, and it says, keep out of reach of parents Ouch. on the box. <laughs> That's not good. Fucking hell. That's not good. Fucking hell. Is this real? Wait, Dev, where did you get these? Where does... Is this like... How do you get these... Are these on like a website somewhere? How did you get these pictures? Of course. How is this legal? How is she it's not... It's not like, legal. Yeah, but if she's promoting a controlled substance... Look, you can't she arrest not, like, trans people. Trouble? It's bigotry. Come on. So yeah. You know the truth. Okay. She's got the, the get out of jail free card? Yeah. Literally. Dev yeah, says he's yeah. doing a deep dive. Okay. Fair enough. You can save it for your video. Oh, a deep but dive. But obviously, sure. taking pills that you bought on the internet can be very medically risky. GPs <laughs> are supposed to help people who yes, do, yeah. though again, some simply refuse. There is a large and growing network of people in the trans underground who help each other out, although, mindful as I am of trans YouTube's community guidelines, I can't tell you how to self-medicate. Yeah, you know, it's like, you know when black people were trying to run away from slavery yeah. Yeah. for the Underground Railroad? It's like the exact same thing. Like, yeah, they're yeah, just yeah. that, you know, yeah. oppressed if by society. Funny trans people could get a break. Yeah. And please note, I'm also explicitly not saying that I recommend it. I'm just saying it is a fact that a lot of people do, probably because they find that option more palatable than option three. Option three mm, is that you die. Music. See, this is so bad. This is like right. evil here. Why? Because it's it? she's she's basically saying, you know, you've got two choices here. You got two unthinkable options. You take this shit that you have no idea who made it where that you just bought over the internet mm -hmm. and you ingest that or you literally die. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, how is this not gun to your head? It is. It is. Who's, the thing is like, who's holding that gun, Sitch? I'm not holding the gun. Carl's not holding the gun. You're not well, holding this, the gun. Who's holding the gun here? I think thing is, is holding the gun. It's annoying doubly annoying because even though it's true that like yes suicide is higher uh in the rates obviously for people that have gender dysphoria or trans it's not like a hundred percent most people that are trans or have gender dysphoria do not kill themselves it's not like you're oh you're just doomed to die essentially but that's the way they always frame it in order to try to justify essentially you know just the affirmative model well you can't imagine, put the gun to their head if you don't frame it imagine way. for a second if you had a girlfriend who literally would say look you've got to pay for me to have you know x perfume or whatever or i will literally kill myself you'd be like wow this is an abusive relationship yeah right yeah i would dump that girl immediately yeah but no no, no we're all being held hostage by abigail Schreier. okay carry on abigail well there's it's, a study it's she... not abigail Schreier. she's oh, the good abigail, abigail Schreier Ford, is sorry. the yeah. Sorry, sorry. Abigail, Abigail Schreier is the, the author of uh, 
irreversible no. damage. Wrong, 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 Abigail. Sorry. Yes, but <laughs> that's awesome, though. Have you read her book, Carl? It's, a, uh, it's a great I book. didn't read it, but Harry yeah. did, and uh, mm -hmm. I, we did a book club on it, and he was very impressed with it. Yeah, that's great. Trans is a good book too. You One probably like the... trans better, Helen Joyce. Joyce. Yeah, yeah. One of the studies that uh, phosphate tube links later in this video, it's it shows that um, for people that transition that suicidal thoughts uh, decrease. They're still higher than the norm, but they mm -hmm. decrease. But it showed that there wasn't a statistical significant difference in terms of suicide attempts after they transition. So they still try to kill themselves? Like it's lower, but according to the what they say, is, it's statistically well, More importantly, it doesn't stop them trying to kill themselves? According to this study that she links later in this video. Well, there's lots <laughs> of different of reasons damning, why people... There's lots of different reasons why people would be suicidal. Depression, sure, like right. all, all all these different reasons. You know, you could right. anorexia, yeah. you could be make you suicidal. Right. Well, there's yeah. also there's a high comorbidity for all sorts of other psychological illnesses for dysphoria too. Yes. Yeah. But to blame it on you didn't affirm when you know the the real question is are they getting proper medical or proper mental health treatment i think is a, a more pertinent question right i don't think you can just blame it on oh these people weren't affirmed as trans and therefore they killed themselves who knows even if they had maybe they turned to gender dysphoria because they had other problems going on yeah Autism have you ever read any of the that. trans regret stories on the subreddits yeah those yeah, are horrific harrowing aren't they yeah well, there's someone suing um, NHS, isn't there? Yeah, yeah. It's um, oh, I can never remember a name. Uh, yeah, there is a young lady suing the NHS, suing yes. Tavistock. Yeah, she was never she was never questioned. Mm -hmm. You know, it was just like, well, we'll just we'll just you know shove you through the system, get rid of those breasts. God, you don't need those. If they get a no. big judgment, will that be paid by the by the NHS? Obviously, yeah. Oh, okay. That sucks. Yeah. When people do die on the waiting lists, every year at Trans Pride, there are more names read out of the people who aren't here anymore. There was a recent death martyrs. in the community of a woman who'd waited more than a thousand days on the waiting list. I've had parents of trans children email me about the kids that they've lost. I'm going to be honest with you, writing this episode of Philosophy Tube has been a struggle because the show is about being compassionate and seeing all sides, but... That's the most laughable line in this <laughs> video, right? I mean, that's just ridiculous. I was, yeah, she keeps saying like, oh, my channel is all about, you know, being fair Logic and seeing all sides and reason, of the issue. Yeah. And I'm like, what, what are you talking... Like, all the videos we watch is a completely one-sided take on everything. Yes. Abigail, have you ever watched any of your own videos? Like, no, of course no. not. No. <laughs> yeah, pull out the people who died because they didn't get proper cancer screening because of COVID or whatever. Yeah, and put those numbers up against the people who, you know, died of suicide because of the Well, trans technically, thing. Adam, that is a what yeah. about it. Is it? It depends yeah. the but context of what you use. But the say. question is how does this universal health care with limited resources allocate its resources? Right. Right. So what about ism is actually quite appropriate here because we need to know who we're going to allocate those fucking resources to. Ain't Terminal right. cancer patients what? or people who think they need to cut off their junk. But that's why it's so weird that she refuses to accept the actual reason for the problem is mm. just resources. There's not enough resources. Well, and also the the ability to diagnose specifically. That's that's the problem. Yes. yes. Yeah. So you're obviously going to devote resources where you know that the diagnosis is is strong, <laughs> not maybe, maybe, maybe right, maybe wrong. Mm -hmm. As a human being, I have a strong preference for my own survival and a strong emotional reaction when I see other people needlessly suffering. What I'm saying is this episode might get a little bit more personal than usual because now... I need to tell you about what I did next. Mm. Chapter four, contact. 
Well, I mean, at I the mean, end of the day, she's certainly got talking about herself like a woman down, isn't she? <laughs> right. It's all about me. Oh, of course, it's all about you. Well, she's like kind of like pushing herself like she's this hero for doing this big campaign yeah. to try to get to the bottom of it. Yeah. But at the end of it, she doesn't really solve the problem or help anyone except herself. <laughs> so sure. like, I don't know, like name Pretty names, sure. maybe. And then you could talk. Nah. The grift ends if she does not. Do you, are you, do you know a lot of selfish women, Carl? I mean, not all women are selfish. <laughs> I know a lot of women, if that's what you're asking. Not all, not <laughs> what all, are you saying? Not all women are, I mean, mm, not all, yeah. some women are very selfless yeah and generous yeah. sure yeah, yeah nurturing they even say sometimes yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah i'm not like my wife but uh yeah is that women as a class are we describing all women well there's a that? lot of gold diggers out there that's yeah, for sure that generalization yeah. we're prepared to make i don't know i don't know though i i like to yeah. i would like to live in a world where the gold yeah, digger sure. class is you know marginal yeah liberal idealism right I just I feel like that's the world we live in. So I don't. I from my experiences, from my personal experiences, I haven't seen an increase in selfishness or selflessness in either men or women. I think it's pretty equally distributed. Really? Yeah, there's a lot. Of yeah, I mean, I know lots. Out of, out of, out of knee really. I mean, look, I'm saying, well, I mean, I, I live in Los Angeles, Carl. Well, you like, okay? You live? Yeah, you live in LA, so yeah. everyone is selfish. So I don't even know where. To, but no, I mean, I've known lots of women who I see them. You know, not even just romantically, but in their jobs, they get taken advantage of. They're the type mm -hmm. of people that like they do all the work. You know, yeah. they always put other. I'm I'm just so. easy, obviously, but sure. um, there there is a certain kind of woman who Abigail is mimicking. Is very selfish, yeah. yeah. Right. I'm not saying there aren't selfish men. There, of course, mm -hmm. are. You know. But wait a minute, you're you're proving that Abigail does have the female spirit. Then. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm, just, I'm I'm impressed. I'm becoming more persuaded about this transition <laughs> as the uh, episode it's goes. Believable. Uh -huh. Yeah. 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 She's yeah, she's passing in the selfish category. Yeah. yeah, the more more of a cunt Abigail becomes, the more I'm persuaded that uh, <laughs> she's trans. Much, much longer than the legal maximum waiting time, I decided okay, legal maximum you... waiting time. Legal? You fucking sound like a retard. Yeah. Bring <laughs> up the meme. Bring up bring up the meme. I can't believe you. Why would you? Legal max waiting time. Well, quick, they've broken the law. Quick, get the cops. Why would you completely duplicate the the meme of the crazy guy with the string in the yard? <laughs> oh, you mean like yeah, the uh, this from is literally sunny the, Philadelphia. This is literally the meme. <laughs> She's got the big chart with all the stuff on it. Yeah, <laughs> this is. So you need to start sending. <laughs> well, also, I mean, email. I saw this article. This is from 2017. It says the NHS is waving the white flag as it acts as the 18-week waiting time operation target. Yeah. This was in 2017 that the NHS was already dropping this 18-week thing. Yeah, because they there's had no to. Yeah, there's no end. It was always a guideline. Yeah. Emails. I found out which trust runs the gender clinic I'd been referred to. And I wrote to someone on their board of directors. A man I'll be referring to as Major De Coverley. Major De Coverley is the trust's head of compliance. It's his job to make sure that they're following all the rules. He's not a doctor, and actually that's worth bearing in mind. The NHS is not administered by doctors. It's administered by administrators. Wow. I wrote to Major De Coverley every week for several months. So again, this is like this entire video just becomes a screed against, you know, having administrative run, government run healthcare. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's just so weird that she, <laughs> she's not seeing what she's doing in this video, but okay. And eventually he wrote back. Dear Abigail, as you've noted in your email, we are unable to offer a first appointment. With oh my God. He sounds exactly like Sean. Right, shocking. The 18 week <laughs> time frame that operates for most NHS services. Although this 18 week recommendation does, in principle, apply to our service, we and all the other gender services nationally are unable to meet this target currently due to very high demand. Okay, so already we know, according to this guy, it's an 18 week recommendation. It's not the law, it's not a right. And he says he gives the answer. He says this is very high demand. So. Is the, has she debunked herself? Is the video over? 
it's high demand. It's not a, it's just a recommendation. All it took was one polite letter from an administrator mm-hmm. to pull right. out her entire position. It's probably <laughs> posted on their website. She probably, probably yeah. could have just looked it up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Here I can bring in one of our big philosophers for today, Sarah mm. Ahmed and her book Complaint, which is all about how making complaints to institutions reveals the way they really work. In his letter to me, Major de Coverley was using a very interesting technique the from the management of Karens or something. <laughs> yes, like, it is, actually. I've, I've literally... brought in the, the Karen philosopher to show you how <laughs> complaining reveals about the... Yeah, okay. You studied philosophy, Carl. Mm-hmm. You didn't take a class on this? On this Not school. on Karenism, no. <laughs> business philosophy a technique called lying (laughs) the 18 week time limit is not a recommendation or a target that applies in principle it's actually a right i pointed this out (laughs) politely just keep saying it and his next i mean she's never she has all these sources why she never just point like just post the law on the screen that if this is a law This is the way right. I feel about this, right, is if, you know, she's washed up on a desert island and some other guy, like, survived, and she's like, right, I have a right to free healthcare. And he's just like, what the fuck are you talking about? This is a, it's a right. It's a right, John. It's a right. Transition me. Like, <laughs> right. fucking hell. Like, uh, you know, dude, we, we both went, yeah, I don't care. It's a right. I, I, it's such a stupid thing to say. Well, I'm assuming she's using the word right and law interchangeably. Mm-hmm. I assume that's what she's mm-hmm. doing. Laws create rights. Well, theoretically, how you, depending on how you define right. So, yeah, right, yeah. Because I don't every I couldn't find a law that just says by law. Like, what happens if you don't get an eighteen weeks? Does a doctor go to jail? Does like the what hospital go to? Do you arrest mm-hmm. the hospital? Like, I don't understand how yeah. it's in the law. Like, arrest the hospital. Yeah, <laughs> they just t- you just show up. <laughs> the building's gone. Yeah, another argument for private healthcare. <laughs> move seemed a little better. If you would like to discuss any aspect of your complaint further, please do let me know and I will arrange for you to speak to a senior member of the Gender Identity Clinic. That sounded like progress. Talking to the guy who runs the clinic, yeah. If anyone can get me an appointment, he surely can, so we arranged the a meeting. Karenism. He picked the I'm time making and place. a video about my okay. karening at this institution. <laughs> Fucking hell. You don't think this yeah. is her being a hero? No. No? <laughs> I Not told very him very one. sternly, where is yeah. your manager? Yeah. Finally, progress. <laughs> I got to escalate the complaint up the hierarchy. <laughs> uh, Keelan Narya Nansawami, thanks so much for the $100. Says, I watched Not So Yurdite's great breakdown of this video, and I uh, laughed my ass off at Philosophy Tube's solution because it was, uh, it was ironically an argument for total laissez-faire healthcare, at least for trans people, because what even is gender dysphoria? But more importantly, S class is the best class. Thank you. Yeah. We did yeah, we, we for over that. an hour. I know. Wow. <laughs> yeah, it was the Sarganinos over here. Yeah. And he never turned up. I honestly cannot stress enough to you <laughs> how absolutely f- sh- all these people are at scheduling. Is this like a is this like a British thing? I can't imagine like being able to just keep emailing some like high official in my government and just they just randomly like, oh yeah, I'll schedule a lunch meeting with you. Like I just can't imagine that being a thing in the United States and like well, I mean, I I can't in, like imagine, rural America somewhere. I can't imagine getting a lunch meeting with some official in the, the health service either. But then I'm nobody and I'm not trans, so I don't have those sort of privileges. Ooh, I don't have that right. Look at that. You, you know, I would I would love to have seen her letter because I would assume she had to throw around her clout to get these meetings in the first place. Yeah, oh, she yeah. probably said, I'm a big time YouTuber and I'm going right. to call you out online if you don't uh, give me a, an appointment. Yeah. They miss emails. They forget to press send when they write their replies. Multiple times we've arranged meetings. They chose the time and place and then they just never turned up. Dun, dun, dun. Trying to reach them is like attempting the impossible. All these little mistakes get made, but they're always mistakes that benefit the institution, never the person complaining. And for this reason, Sarah Ahmed <laughs> coins the term strategic inefficiency. 
literally the just complaining. Complain. We are just fucking complaining. Non-stop fucking complaining. This is oppression. Mm -hmm. God damn it. Strategic inefficiency. Hmm. Okay. <sighs> well, it's Whining. this whole thing. Again, she's just complaining about like, these are things that will exist in any large scale system. Yeah. And if you're advocating for a large scale socialized medical system, all these things will exist. In How is this inefficiency yeah. though? They want to slow down the process because they don't want as many lawsuits from detransitioners. That's strategic well, efficiency. What she means is like, oh, I didn't get your email that said that we were supposed to have that meeting. You know, that would be the strategic inefficiency. I wonder mm -hmm. if she negotiated with them in exchange for not using their names actually interfacing with her good question well yes yeah, so i'm so curious because again like i just can't imagine emailing like high government officials or fucking hospital administrators and i'm just being like yeah i'll just talk to you i'm not busy you know i just can't imagine this yeah but what do i remember if you can remember, deal it's with because it's being run by the british okay of course it's oh the British. If it was run by the Somalians, they would have met that meeting. They would have turned up and been like, "Yeah, of course, sorry, thank God we're not Brits." That really hurt. With. That really hurt you, more... Carl, didn't it? <laughs> no, it's, it's it doesn't hurt me. It's it's insufferable watching upper class leftists going, "Oh yeah, everything's bad about us because we're British." Oh fuck. Yeah, I don't like that either. It's People do that. Like, the America bad crowd really bugs us as yeah. well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Or they can just carry on doing what they're doing. She also says that making a complaint becomes a kind of unpaid job. Because in order to complain about a system, you have to spend a lot of time learning about how it's supposed to work. Oh I don't think I can adequately explain to you just how maddening it is to go through all that organizational hell. And then when you finally get into the meeting, they don't know the rules that they're supposed to be following. So often in this process, I have wanted to say to these people, why am I doing your job? Just dozens and dozens and dozens of emails, hundreds of hours spent doing this in my free time just to get an appointment with a doctor. And so that I can turn it into educational content for all of you fine people. See, she negotiated. She totally did. Yeah. Oh, so you're about to hit your favorite part. She demands to get paid. Oh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> Patreon.com <laughs> slash philosophy tube. I am no longer asking. Sign the f up. Exhaustion can become a matter of attention. So much of the work of complaint is work we would not have to do if institutions were as committed to creating open, accessible, and inclusive environments as they claim to be. This is It's so weird because just the fact that the institutions have a person that you can complain to is a complete you know, modification to institutions. There was a time when they were like, yeah, no, you don't get anyone to complain to. You know, just fuck off. Right. Mm. Well, I'm, I'm wondering if this Sarah Ahmed person has ever worked in an institution of yeah. any sort. Because it's not like, like, yeah, there's all these problems that exist in institutions where, you know, it's very hard for people to hear you. It's very hard for complaints to get registered. But it's not intentional. It's because they're all, everyone's fucking busy. Everyone's yeah. doing shit that's more important. And you, some random person, complain about whatever you're complaining about, even though it's like a super big deal for you. For them, it's like the bottom of the stack in terms of important. They're trying yeah. to keep that's the like going, the hey, wheels we've got turning. a million cancer patients to deal with. Right. Yeah, exactly. They're like, I have to, you know, we're still backlogged. Like, I'm assuming this is all going on when COVID's happening. Yeah. So it's like, oh, we're backlogged with like COVID problems. And this person is like complaining that it's taking them too long to get their gender clinic appointment. And what am I supposed to do about it? I can't like snap my fingers and materialize more doctors that cover this issue. And like, what are they supposed to do? Yeah. They should show up at that lunch meeting and say, listen, I'm so glad we had the time to do this lunch meeting today. Five <laughs> cancer patients died while I'm taking this <laughs> meeting with you. But thank goodness we're here to answer your complaint. Right. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, let me give you like, the names of these of the wives of the husbands that have died. You'll like the uh, first sentence of Sarah Ahmed's Wikipedia is... Um, Oh, Sarah no. Ahmed is a British Australian writer and scholar whose area of study includes the intersection of feminist theory, mm -hmm. lesbian feminism, 
-hmm. queer theory, affect theory, theory, critical race theory, and post-colonialism. Oh, wow. (laughs) She hit like every single (laughs) target. (laughs) No wonder she's written a book entirely devoted to complaining. (laughs) 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 It makes perfect sense now. There you go. Yes, it does. Mm Mm-hmm. Eventually, I managed to reschedule that meeting, and I came face to face with a man who actually runs a gender identity clinic. I'll call him Major Major. He's not a doctor, but he sat there and he nodded and listened sympathetically as I explained I'd been waiting for longer than the legal maximum waiting time, and I'd like my appointment now, please. He told me the exact same thing Major de Coverley had. They aren't working within the 18-week time limit, and they aren't going to. Well, you know what you can do now. I, then? I don't understand. You know exactly what you can what do it now. I... If it is a, if it is as you say, a legal maximum, what do you do? Drum roll, drum roll. You get a fucking lawyer. Yeah. For fuck's sake. Yep. But it's not, and you didn't because it's bullshit, and you're a liar. Well, as soon as you talk to an attorney, they're going to be like, mm, "I don't. This isn't really a good case here." Well, I mean, they're going to get paid either way. So, what difference does it make to them, right? But they're going to be like, well, look, to be honest with you, it is uh, legal advice rather than, you know, it's a it's a recommended time because of practical constraints. Right. The judge is just going to be like, no, that's not going anywhere. You can't sue them because of that. And so piss off. Well, I guess if you if she was willing to pay the attorney, but most attorneys are like, mm, I don't know if they're if they're not going to win. Well, they'll take your money. Definitely. Yeah. Pay, yeah. pay an attorney. I go, what are you doing? Yeah. Make these people's lives hell. Because it's a lie, and she knows it's a lie. Right. I can do it. You're a major. You're major, 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 major. You can just sign things. Sign what? The form. What form? After several weeks of back and forth, it dawned on me that Major de Coverley had arranged this meeting not to actually solve the problem, but to try and get rid of me. Ahmed says <laughs> institutions handle complaints using non-performative speech. In philosophy, performative speech is when you say something... And by saying this, it honestly, this is why this is why I'm not big on philosophy, Carl. It mm-hmm. it just feels like well, the because sp- of philosophy too. Well, no, it just it, <laughs> a lot of philosophy just feels like the spelling of thinking. It's just like defining yeah. things that just yeah. I don't know. Well, a lot of it is just so you've got. I mean, this is why I came in and I'm like, right, the definition of rights is bullshit and doesn't make any sense. Mm-hmm. Like because if like a lot of the thing, the, a lot of the problems that we have come from the fact that we have such flexible definitions for things. So right. defining things clearly actually helps us think. Yeah, but you got to get sure. everyone else on the <clears throat> same page, though, as far as what the definition is. And that's what the hard yeah. thing. That's definitely yeah, the that, hard thing. Th- that is a problem. That's correct. Especially rights. Like, we've argued back and forth yeah. with people on rights. Like, yeah, we, I feel you don't have any rights that you don't, you know, take, basically. Yeah. And uh, a lot of people believe in natural rights just bestowed upon you by the universe or God or whatever they want to say. Yeah. But that's the liberal perspective on rights, right? They're intrinsic to you and they don't need anyone else to be enacted. I mean, I like that perspective. I just, I'm a little more cynical about the world. Like people will take your rights away at every turn if you don't fight for them. So. Sure. Sure. I mean, you can have rights suppressed, obviously. But that's the the question is where they come from and how they exist. Mm -hmm. Right. And if they, they exist within you because of your creator, well, then we don't need to talk about healthcare as a right. We don't need to talk about, you know, anything as a right because your right is just imbued and within you. Mm-hmm. Anything you do basically is your right. Right. But we don't really, I mean, part of the issue is like in America, we don't use that word that way at all because like you have a right to a jury trial and obviously that's something that comes not from yeah. within you. Well, it's a civil right. Yeah. So you can make the distinction between natural rights and civil rights. Sure, obviously. sure. Yeah, you can do that. The, so, the problem the problem is that okay, interesting. it's very easy to conflate the two and watch them bleed into one another. Right. And it like for, for example, the problem I have with any of this discourse really is that it becomes very easy to essentially replace one set of assumptions with another. Like for example, like uh, John Locke believed we sacrifice a portion of our natural rights in order to gain civil rights by entering into civil society, right? right. That makes sense, per- yeah. Perfect, exactly, makes perfect sense. But Rousseau was like, actually, we sacrifice all of our natural rights 
to live in society. And so we only have civil rights. And that's what the left's position on everything is at this point. Hmm. Mm. Yeah, I don't agree with that. Yeah, yeah it's either. fucking bonkers. Because that literally means, well, look, you don't have any rights except what the government tells you you have. And so if the government's like, actually, you've got the right to die on command because I feel like it, then you've got to be like, well, that's true. That's the price I pay for living in a civil society. It's, it's fucking insane. Wrong. <laughs> exactly. But you can only argue wrong from the Lockean perspective of natural right. Yeah. So you're you're mm. working on a set different set of assumptions. And until we like explicitly state these assumptions, we'll be forever like not understanding why the other guy doesn't agree with us. Well, I mean the, the problem is it's like the the rights thing, it's all Sitch's law. It's all arguing about like how something should be defined yeah. instead of yeah, like the concept of the utility of whatever is being argued for. I don't yeah. even think the utility of it's a good metric because they might be able to argue that well, the utility of enslaving a bunch of doctors is higher than letting people die so fuck you yeah but that's the you're reality, not enslaving the doctors though <laughs> like, well they were in cuba well in cuba maybe but they're not yeah, i but, mean in a in a free market society the idea is that you know they can choose to be doctors or not be doctors you're incentivizing yeah, the, them the people you're talking to want to create cuba they do, but obviously we're talking about incentives. That's this is one of the things that infuriates me about Ben Shapiro's argument because his wife no one's forcing his wife to be a doctor. We use incentives in the West. We don't use force. So the barrel of the gun argument is just fallacious. Well, I don't I don't agree that it is fallacious. What it is is a set of value judgments. It's like what do you prefer? What do you like? And well, a lot of people actually like the barrel, barrel of the gun argument. Yeah, because it's, yeah, it's it, it makes people look bad. That's why they like it. It's politically it? useful. It's not. No, no. Like, f like um, philosophy tube here is using the barrel of the gun argument. I have a right, right. to be seen within eighteen days. So we're going to have to conscript a bunch of fucking doctors to make sure that no, I they're not get conscripts. So they're literally not conscripts. There's literally no other way to do it. No, you incentivize them. Anyone can. No, no, no. There's no like in terms no, of like Adam. If, that's the problem. The incentives have not worked. working the way that way yet. Mm -hmm. So obviously and she's still pressing her right. Enough, or you need to change it. But what do you she's mean? still I, demanding a right. So okay, well now we have to you you know accelerate. We have to step this up. We have to pay more. There's no amount of money that we can afford. I mean, I think the problem is a shortage of people. Yeah, and it wasn't a problem though with Ben Shapiro's argument is when he talked about being forced to. I I, I thought his argument was that like even the NHS fits that uh, model that he's talking about. That these doctors are being forced because they work for the government, which I don't. No, think NHS are you saying forced, aren't forced, to, forced to see for certain <clears throat> procedures? Sitch, what are you saying? No, isn't that Ben Shapiro's argument that if you have uh, socialized medicine or medicine run by the government, that it's doctors being forced by a gun? The, yes, and this happened in Cuba. Literally happened. The doctors themselves describe themselves as quote slaves. Look, there, so there's literally, a... there is a precedent for this. But the the problem that Abigail here has is that we literally have a resource shortage, and so what are we going to do? You know, we're going to have to start conscripting people. Well, if there's a resource yeah. shortage, like they draft people in the military if they are desperate mm -hmm. for soldiers, right? We right. have an all all volunteer military at the moment. Isn't our yeah. healthcare system all voluntary in the same way? Right. Yeah. But the like, police so, is all voluntary. Like we're not conscripting officers. So that's right. That's, but that's because we don't need to. So, but like, for example, if uh, philosophy tubes argument was correct, like say in, in the UK, they had to by law, everyone had to be mm -hmm. seen within eight weeks. And if they, if they weren't, then like, you know, the hospital administrators would be arrested or something. And yeah. it was a, it was a, you know, a right granted to them. That would mean that the government, in order to fulfill that right, would have to start forcing people to be doctors, yeah. or they would have to do some sort of crazy thing to make that happen. Well, you could just raise the incentive level, but yeah, but that would still be too slow, you know. Maybe I don't know. And and yeah. even then, there there's going to come a point where the incentives are just not enough to get people to do it, and so you're going to have to force them. Right. If the demand, I just, don't, yeah, there will be a part where the demand out. Well, so there's a part where the demand could outstrip that's the problem, any incentive. Though. Like, force just doesn't work. That's that's where inefficiency really comes in. Of course, in. yeah, right. But that's force why totalitarian governments suck. Force does work 
Yeah, but what are you that saying, doesn't Carl? mean it's right. It doesn't work well. It's that's but where the inefficiency comes in. Yeah. That's the well, problem. Who cares? No, that, no, inef- <laughs> the NHS is inefficient and it's not being com- uh, done under compulsion at the moment. Oh, well, like, it, sure. It's going to be a it, thousand times worse, though, if it's under compulsion. Yeah. Well, you know, probably, but like force does work. People do respond to force. The The problem is not on utilitarian grounds. Yeah, but they the drag of, their feet. No, no, the pro- no, no, but you, you, you're losing all of the arguments if you mm-hmm. put it on utilitarian grounds. Because mm-hmm. all they have to do then is go, well, okay, well, let's keep going until we make it work, which is why people are still communists. Now, the problem is on moral grounds. It's mm-hmm. wrong to force people to do these things against their will. Well, it's wrong it efficiency. How- <clears throat> no, no, it, it's morally wrong, intrinsically in and of itself. Yes. It is I wrong agree. to do. But I agree it's morally it wrong, but it's also wrong like, it's just on like, efficiency it, grounds. Yeah, but it doesn't matter. Like, it doesn't matter whether it's more efficient or not. It's still wrong. Sure. Right. Mm-hmm. So, like, you know, it's a perfectly efficient way to get cotton is to enslave black people, but it's wrong. You know? But so, it would be, you got to admit, though, there would be a much harder moral quandary if it was more efficient and morally incorrect. Um, no, not really. I don't think it changes the moral calculus. Well, you would have people well, engaging in it a lot it doesn't, more I don't, readily. Okay, wait. It doesn't change the moral calculus, but it could change the persuasive uh, ability of it. And the yes. thing is, what, that I think kind of doesn't matter is that if you're talking to like a communist or someone who's advocating for some sort of authoritarian system, they're not going to buy either the the moral or the efficiency argument because they've already made up their mind. So it yes, doesn't matter. Yes, of course. Yeah. But yeah, to them is a right. So to them, it doesn't matter. Yeah. But it's, you know, <laughs> less efficient. Mm-hmm. I mean, you might have to draft people to do these gender clinics. I don't know if the do- if I was a doctor, I'd be like, I don't know how to diagnose one of these people. I'd be scared to death. I'm going to get it wrong. So right. yeah, yeah. Imagine the damage you'll cause to someone. Exactly. Yeah. Well, and also, I mean, part of the issue again is like this, and this is why this video is so weirdly speaking out against social, you know, socialized medical system, which philosophy is so in favor of, is because in America, just. If there was some massive backlog of, you know, trans patients trying to get uh, treatment, you would just be a bunch of private investors that say, "Hey, we should open a bunch of clinics and, and that's charge what, the money and make a bunch of money about." That's it. what they're doing. Which yeah, is what exactly what they're doing. Did you see that clip that went viral of the hospital administrator talking about how they can make forty thousand dollars a year off of these, off of these uh, transgender. Yep patients yeah. and that it's like yeah. a big cash cow coming and they want to make sure that they're doing as many of these procedures as possible yeah that's scary it's shit it's very and it's scary. a good argument against capitalism yeah and, well, if and you the were free a market commie, for everything yeah if you were a socialist like philosophy too it seems like you'd be able to see that argument when you when you but th- you this thing this video really shows how people have like a a philosophy or ideas that they live by until it butts up against something they want. And then that all yeah. goes up the window. <laughs> Suddenly they go in the other direction. Yeah, that's exactly it, man. That's exactly it. But you also so it's, do- it's the philosophy of like self-serving interest, right? It's yes. Like- yeah. 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 Like when you say, I promise you're speaking, but you're also doing the act of promising. Or if you're at a straight wedding and the officiant says, I now pronounce you man and wife. They're saying it and they're doing it. On the flip side, non-performative speech is when you say something and by saying it, you prevent it from being done. Like, we are listening to feedback. We take your concerns very seriously. Non-performative speech is how an institution can appear to be doing something about a problem whilst actually very deliberately doing nothing. Major Major supplied a top tier example when he said that whilst the waiting times are bad, we are working hard to improve the quality of weight. I said, that's like telling me you're going to keep kicking me in the face, but you're working hard to put on softer shoes. I pointed out that by failing to treat patients within the required time, some of whom died, the clinic... There's that claim again. Yeah. Mm. That's the cudgel they use for the whole... Of course. Everything. You're killing people! Nick was doing a great deal of harm to trans people, and at this point, Major Major got upset. He said, I'm a black gay man, I'm a trans ally, I have trans friends, I'm on your side here. Oh, he said, he threw, <laughs> he he did. threw the oppression Carter, said, bitch, I'm black and gay, what are you, fucking white woman, <laughs> get out of here. Uh, yeah, oh, 
Interesting. I know. Why do you think that guy's in that job? <laughs> why do I you mean, think why do you think they booked the meeting with him? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. They know how it rolls. They're like, let's they're like, let's get Dave. He has the, the immunity. Right, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Set the meeting up with Dave. He'll take yeah. care of this. See, they're not stupid, are they? We, they aren't. Nobody, nobody's they know <laughs> they what's know going how this on works. Here. Yeah. yeah. This is all just politics. Yeah. He probably love these jobs. They probably love telling people no. Mm. Which was very interesting because we'd been talking about the failures of the clinic, but he substituted the clinic for himself as a person. Were you attacked? He took my person? complaints about the failures of the system as an attack on his character. You attacked him. And as in character. so doing, he made the conversation about his feelings rather than the failures <laughs> that he's responsible for. Oh, now he's responsible for the institutional <laughs> yeah, you, failures. You made it personal. Yeah. You made it personal. What do you right. expect? She, yeah, she just did now too. How yeah. he's going to fix them? This is also. Well, I mean, this is like this is so weird. Like, is she autistic or is this like dishonest? Like, if you dishonest. if you if you're speaking to someone who's supposed to represent an institution and you say your institution is making people die, obviously they're going to take it on a personal level. Like, well, no, she said you particularly. So him, you know, yeah. like, and it's like right. okay, well, you're a murderer. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> give me my appointment. <laughs> Like, I was like, okay, yeah, I sure. He's like, listen, day. he's like, listen, what am I like? I'm trying, but uh, we need more money and funding and doctors and resources. I don't know what you think I'm going to do about this. I never let this stuff get under my skin. Like, I always like try to figure out, you know, what is holding things up. And you know, obviously, if if the institution doesn't have the resources, that's just like a giant. Okay, you're not getting past anything. They're just going to talk yeah. to me, right? What can be done? Yeah, what can be done? Like making uh, Dave's job hard is not really going to yeah. get you anywhere. No. But Dave, you know, he, he probably could pull some strings for someone who is very nice and and understanding. Right. Which And he would certainly you know, try for someone he liked and wasn't rude to him. Yeah, of course. Sympathetic. Of course, yeah. yeah. But, you know, if you go in there and be a massive bitch about it, who knows? You're going to the back of the line. Like yeah, it's yeah. going to be forever. Yeah. 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 Some people never figure that out. They really yeah. don't. Yeah. They don't. And then they go make the... YouTube videos profiting off of it. Sign That's up to my the... Patreon. <laughs> I'm no longer asking. Oh, fucking hell. All right. Say, well, we were the fools uh... all along. This was the real move. Yeah. It, this is kind of a Chad move, but. <laughs> yeah, you go. Make a bunch of money out of it. Though, yeah. I, though she did say, I didn't play it in the beginning of the video. She's, I think she said. Any money this video she's makes gonna will donate. be donated yeah. to the Oh, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll take a word for it. Yeah. Not her patron <laughs> money, though. But... Take a word for it. Okay. Just, just, don't, don't need confirmation of that. Just, just take a word for it. Fair enough. <laughs> a management I'm skeptical, too. <laughs> ...technique that Ahmed <laughs> and others have identified. The scholar Manta Akapadi talks about her experiences trying to criticize university departments for institutional <laughs> racism. And she found oh my that when God. she raised this. I know, this is cool. What just happened? Oh. What happened? Oh, oh no. She's basing the are so on the march. I know. Like, it's, first of all, it's like bad. Like, at least, at least with this situation, it's some physical service, right? Like, mm -hmm. there's something yeah. physical here. You're complaining about institutional racism. Like, that doesn't mean anything. Yeah. yeah. I was complaining to my university faculty staff. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, fuck off. Yeah, like, oh, my God. Jesus Christ. Problem. The white women in charge of the university departments uh, often cried because they thought they were being called racist. Brush them. Their hurt feelings then become the problem. Hurt and the real feelings. problem, the institutional racism, never got addressed. Open yeah. your eyes, Clevenger. It doesn't make a damn bit of difference who wins the war to someone who's dead. Congratulations. I can't think of another attitude that could be depended upon to give greater comfort to the enemy. The enemy is anybody who's going to get you killed, no matter which side he's on. Having established pretty thoroughly that Major Major was a dead end, I went back to Major de Coverley. And this time he said that if I was still unsatisfied with how my complaint had been resolved, because it hadn't been resolved, I was mm -hmm. free to make a complaint to the Parliamentary and Health Service Ombudsman, which I guess in this example would be like the military police. They're an independent body who is supposed to investigate the NHS when things go wrong. 
That's so not what the military police are. I made a formal complaint are. to them, and they told me that they would assign <laughs> an investigator. the fucking military police are at all. <laughs> They're investigating. Sorry, carry on. I, I grew up on military camps. The, the, the military police are not like a fucking ombudsman. Their desk is probably f filled with detransitioner investigations right now. <laughs> so later, within eight weeks, 16 weeks later, they did. A man I'll be referring to as Chaplain Tapman. Chaplain Tapman was honestly the only person I spoke to in this whole journey who was the least bit sympathetic. He asked me how my experiences had made me feel about Major de Coverley and Major mm. Major. And I quoted Moby Dick to him, which we both found very funny. Chaplain. Look, he laughed at her jokes. Obviously, she he, likes him best. He also had dreamy eyes. Oh, is that it? <laughs> Insanity is contagious. <laughs> I see. Everybody's crazy except for us. You and I have to be careful. We may There's be the only sane people in the entire world. However, after several more months of waiting for him to investigate, he told me his superiors had ordered him to drop the case. I apologize for this negative outcome. One thing I was surprised to hear from Chaplain Tapman, though, was that there were other cases that he was also being ordered to drop. It honestly hadn't occurred to me before that anyone else might have taken it as far as I had. Ahmed talks about how <laughs> official complaints procedures can be individual. I, know, I, know, I, know. I love that. It's like, I, I didn't realize anyone else would have been as ridiculous as I am. You know? <laughs> Somehow I think everyone I thought is, I was right? just going completely fucking nuts. And it turns out that that's like a... <laughs> Everybody does this, right? Yeah, everyone's this crazy. I mean, what do they have to do? Uh, they're just sitting around yeah. waiting for their their treatment. Yeah. Which kind of just means lonely. The NHS has no way for a group of people to complain together about the same problem. You have to do it alone and bear mm. the cost on your time and your emotions alone too, which is another way of discouraging you from trying. I guess if somebody really wanted to, or they you could have engaged a lawyer. Oh, yeah. Except there was no legal problem here. Sure kind of collective complaint. Like they could get together with some friends and go down to NHS England's offices, maybe with some signs and placards and a microphone. So I did. Together with a bunch of activists from a group called Transgender Action Block, I attended a protest outside NHS England's offices. There were hundreds of us who'd all just been... Look, they all committed suicide. They're doing like the suicide pack thing. <laughs> Look, this is all the dead people from denying transgender services mm -hmm. yeah yeah they're all wearing masks too so yeah oh, at least they're safe from covid <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i mean you know if i'm suicidal the first thing to go is going to be my mask right denied health care some of whom had been left in pain between surgeries some of that's do we know sorry just a quick thing do we know what year that that was taking place in? it's got to be covid years right uh, that person well, well yeah you say that but maybe it's not because no one in England wears the mask anymore. Right. Like, you know, well, no I mean, they did like last year, didn't they? Or the yeah. It's gotta be year? like 2021 yeah. or 2020, 20, 2020, 2021. Yeah. Early 21. Like yeah. it was, the mask wearing was very, very it was clearly worn thin with just everyone basically. And mm -hmm. so I'm curious as to what year that was done in. Uh, Listen, it's because, the height of COVID and they got to yeah. make sure that even though Isn't the hospitals the are filled COVID with COVID though? patients that they're not getting there. Or is it? The, well, I mean, maybe, yeah. There, there is that. Or is it the height of virtue signaling for other progressives on the internet? Oh, maybe. Someone in this picture has to have a Let's newspaper. A <laughs> Transgender <laughs> protest. NHS. Oh, there we go. The internet. See, that's what how. That's where it comes from. Oh, this was yesterday. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Hilarious. It's offices. Virtue signaling, then, honestly. There were hundreds of us who'd all just been oh, here denied health care. Some of December 6th, 2021. Right. Okay. So, yeah, no, we weren't wearing, wearing masks then. Well, they were. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they, were. they were. Yeah, they were. Exactly. They some were. people, some people are. Whom had been left in pain between surgeries. Some of, <clears throat> some of whom had lost friends. Wait a minute. And relatives. Abigail but it still. Did they lost friends and relatives? The cancer. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I'm like, to what? How? I'm just going to go grab a drink. I'll be back in a sec. 
didn't get me an appointment. NHS England never even publicly acknowledged that protest took place. <laughs> like, okay, so here's here's Hilarious. where. Yeah, I know. Pretty They're like, but, um, oh, these kids never vote anyway. Just let them protest. <laughs> so wait a minute. So I'm confused because Philosophy Tube in their videos mm -hmm. was already like, you know, had long hair and transitioning. And I assume they were taking like 2019 hormones. pre pandemic, right? No, no. In early 2021. Mm -hmm. So like in April. In March, they were already transitioning. Yeah, and so socially transitioning, though. Right, but so in is January you, twenty. You don't, you don't have to do jack shit to socially transition. You just get a good razor and some lipstick. It it was it was January twenty twenty one when when Philosophy Tube officially came out as trans in a video. Right, and so. The time period that they're talking about is all the, of the time period of 2021 to now. But that yeah. means that, so if this protest happened in December, mm -hmm. according to her timeline, that means that all of the transitioning she was doing was before she ever talked to any doctor about whether she had gender dysphoria or not. It was entirely self-diagnosed and she was entirely self-medicating. Yeah. What's the problem, Sitch? <laughs> well, what's I wrong mean with that? I don't know. That's kind of a, what? It, that's sitch. kind of a bad idea. Don't that's be kind of a square, idea. okay? Listen, people know if they have gender dysphoria or not, okay? You don't How need does to she talk know? To a How did she make? I assumed. How you know, do you a know? Naive me. You, I assumed she talked it. to some doctor about this, but no. Look, she went. She, look, they have tutorials, okay, on Tumblr. You just stumble on over there, of and course, you, and you figure it out. Sorry, what what happened? Look, I listen I listen to a lot of these gender doctors on YouTube and it's just I mean it's baffling to me. I don't none it doesn't seem like they really have a, a deep understanding of human psychology or you know how the mind works. No, of course not. Yeah. No, but they can turn your penis inside out. Which <laughs> is weird, right? I mean you'd think <laughs> I would force it. Yeah, oh, strange man, I, to me, but I'm not a gender doctor. So. I read some bad things about some of those surgeries when I was going to the sources that she was citing. Please, oh no, I don't want to say. I was like, oh no, one of them had pictures. I was like, no, why? Can you look? And they wonder. I wonder why the suicide rate isn't higher. Like if yeah. you if you do this and immediately regret it. Well, that's part of the problem too that they don't talk about is that there are even people who transition that still feel like they have gender dysphoria, but they still regret transitioning because they had a bad surgical outcome. Oh, yeah. Jesus. So, I mean, That's it can the happen. worst. Yeah. They don't give them the odds. And everyone, everyone online, just, you know, when you put, you're probably going to end up killing yourself if you don't do this on the other side of the equation. You're Of course you're going to choose it. Yeah. yeah, you can't make an informed decision then. Informed consent has just gone but out see, the window. I mean, this has just been my experience that with almost any doctor who, especially a surgeon, 100% a surgeon, but even doctors who aren't surgeons that are still kind of recommending surgery, I, it's always been my experience that they softball the negative outcomes when they talk to you about of it. Of course they do. Yes. And I just, they never, I've never had a doctor, well, that's not true. I've had, I've had a couple of doctors who are actually like, well, you don't necessarily want to do that because, you know, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. <laughs> those doctors are few and far between. So did you not go through the transition in the end then? I didn't know. <laughs> I was, listen, I was very close to doing it and I was like, no, it's just too risky. It's not going to be I didn't, Here's the thing. Though. I didn't think I would get that much of a bump on my Patreon for transition. So. Damn. How do you well, get the I bump mean... ahead of time? You got to socially transition is what you do. Well, no, because I, I figured I can't just transition. I also have to become super woke, and I think that would just piss off too many people. Yeah, but. good point. Sitch, you should try socially transitioning for a while and then just come mm -hmm. out and say, listen, I don't think I'm trans anymore, and the Patreon really didn't pan out. So <laughs> just like I'm dumping that idea. I'm detransitioning. So now here's the truth. The reason I've never done a face reveal is I am actually am a famous trans YouTuber. You just don't realize <laughs> it. I knew it. I wonder, would it be worth transitioning just to get the bump from the detransitioning? I feel like our Patreon would skyrocket. Oh, there you go. The yeah. Oh, now story. you're thinking. Yeah. That's... Come on. Look, wow. I'm always now thinking. Now you're thinking like philosophy tube. Yeah. 
<laughs> I'm doing my best. Come on. I mean, it'd be nice to make a million dollars a year just doing YouTube. That would be, be fucking nice. brilliant, wouldn't it? I cried on the phone to Chaplain Tapman. I asked, no, tears of white is there anyone else I can possibly appeal to besides God? <laughs> and he said, I'm not aware of there being a higher authority. That's a solid joke. I That's like this guy. A pretty good dry wit right there. I do like this guy, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, you are rich, so you've got that to fall back on. <laughs> you could literally pay for it. Oh, God. Oh. Oh, yeah, the, wait. The suffering is... of the rich people. Okay, mm -hmm. so here's a million dollar question. Mm -hmm. So when you were when you were up, Carl, I kind of went through the timeline. I realized that she came out as trans in January of 2021, and this protest happened in December of 2021. And so she, so that means that the entire year in 2021 where she was trans, that was all without talking to a doctor. So she was entirely self medicating and transitioning on her own and no, self diagnosing. She no, she wasn't. But now I'm what wondering on a good front, she's an actor. What but now mean? I'm wondering, maybe she Griffin. did see a private healthcare person, and she's just not going to talk about that in the video at all. Oh, really? Griffin. Well, why wouldn't she? <laughs> if she was so desperate to do it, why would she not? If she Griffin. has the money to do it. Grifting. That's I'd... so overused. Do you? But it's I also mean... true. <laughs> well, I mean, in all honesty, to to call her a grifter, you'd have to say that this, like, she doesn't have gender dysphoria or. Or well, the grifting about what? I'm yeah, literally exactly. saying that, Adam. Okay. I'm literally saying right there. There's a. But you can't. You don't have any evidence. Yeah, this, I do. Right? Actually, that's a I giant think, claim that you're no, making. No. Yeah, and it's because I think it was 2018 or 2019. I can't remember which year it was. Right. But um, the uh, Oliver, then Oliver Thorne, did a stream, and it was just casual, just answering super chats. And someone was like, "Oh, have you ever had any gender dysphoria?" He's like, "No, I've never had gender dysphoria." Uh, and then that was it. Moved on. Really? Right? Was, yeah. Totally. I put out the clip a while ago. I can't remember where it is. Right. And so this is only a couple of years ago. Right. He's like, never have, but you know, I know some, you know, some trans friends, blah, 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 blah. And then during the transition, like, well, I could tell you all these stories where I had, you know, these gender, you know, dysphoric moments when I was a child. And it's like, well, why didn't you say it in 2019? Huh? Huh? You liar. You're a fucking mm -hmm. liar, Ollie. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm more inclined to, I find it hard to believe someone would transition just for the money. That seems like a huge thing. Sure. But if you had, say, a background in stage, if you were a member of the theater, if you'd written your own fucking play, you'd be sitting there going, actually, I, for an, for an hour-long video a week, I could put on a voice. You, you used the I? wrong... No. You used on. the wrong yes. word, Sitch. Your statement is almost correct, but you made What's a mistake. My well, you said, I find it hard to believe that someone... But someone would. You need to say, I find okay. it hard to believe, I find it hard that, to believe that anyone. Philosophy tube. I find it hard to believe that, that anyone people. or most people. Yeah. yeah most people. Yeah. Right. I, yes. Yes. I find I'll it hard to believe what, most people. They, they can prove me wrong by getting surgery, I guess. Mm -hmm. I think they have had facial surgery. I don't know if they have like boob surgery or bottom surgery or something. Well, mm -hmm. we'll see. I, I mean, you know, I'm, they can always come out and prove me wrong by saying, well, look, this go. is the surgery I've had. Listen, Abigail. Carl wants. Your, your dick pics or your lack of dick pics, okay? <laughs> then he'll be satisfied. Uh, I probably won't be satisfied. I'll probably think they're just ones he pulled off the internet, to be honest. There I'm, I'm convinced this person is a contributor. He wants, okay, Carl wants full body shots, full news. I don't want anything. I don't, I'm not going to be persuaded, to be honest. <laughs> I don't. I don't think. I don't think that she's grifting about gender dysphoria. At least I don't oh, think there's sufficient evidence. Well, even I mean, with that, client, even well, with her uh, saying that she didn't in twenty eighteen. Straight from the that. horse's mouth. Now nah, I've never had it, and it was just so casual as well. It was. Sure. It was just. Oh yeah, it was totally. It, like, I wish I could find. I wish I had the clip to hand. I didn't. You know, I didn't. No, I'm assuming it. that she's that they said that, but I could believe oh. also that they think they have gender dysphoria and they don't. Yeah, yeah I have. A, I'd be more inclined to believe that than it's like. It, oh, it was so forever. clear that this this was just. You know, of course I don't have gender dysphoria. This, no, I'm talking know, about now, they, not then. No, I I don't know. I think they could have AGP I, for all we know. <laughs> I've heard some very interesting stories, but. What mm -hmm. what I find most interesting is how much Ollie, uh, sorry, uh, Abigail rips off conch points. Uh, the whole shtick is just oh, obviously, points points. obviously, right, right. But the, obviously. But you notice that conch points is like a business with. model. Yeah, but you notice that conch points is no longer friends with Abigail. Right. 
Because she's what just popping her. She's like, listen, because no, I we talked about this because it was like one of the first videos that Abigail. Hey, Sure, Fat Taco rips me off all the time. I'm not. I'm still friends with him. <laughs> <laughs> Get, tell him to rip off your workout routine. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> uh, but... I do. I do. Is <laughs> Dev? I don't. I don't think of Dev as like ripping you off, but I mean, obviously, well, now you do. No, I'm just. Uh, I'm just teasing. But, but, but you know what I mean. Like, it, it's fine, right? Mm -hmm. To like, you know, like do. But there's. I have heard in the grapevine there's more to it, a lot more to it, and it's just like right, okay, this is all quite awful and creepy. They sure. have the exact same business model. I mean, it's trans woman. I mean, even yeah. the style of videos are exactly the same. But like for a lot of costuming and for, for contrapoints, it feels authentic, though, doesn't it? I mean, it well, feels this authentic. is the thing. I mean, I, I have a pretty good track record of either. spotting spotting this kind of behavior and i don't i mean i can't really read it could be either way i don't i don't have a strong opinion no okay well then if it could be either way just uh, just adopt a, a cynical negative attitude towards well you've <laughs> obviously then, got more information yeah. here so maybe maybe i've missed something but i haven't yeah, I watched, seen i watched anything. the stream where he was like no I've, i never had the gender disorder. i mean i would like but to really. see that that would be a that would definitely yeah, be mm -hmm. i'll see if i can dig up the clip i haven't got it to hand or anything. well it doesn't help at the end of the video she says all the people with transgender people lie are faking doctors. it yeah exactly yeah, so. <laughs> she I basically mean, says that i could believe that yep. abigail believes they're trans but doesn't actually have dysphoria because mm -hmm. they don't actually have gender dysphoria but they've convinced themselves that they're trans I, I could okay that. how about this right so you're 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 in a particular community you've mm -hmm. uh you've got eight hundred thousand subscribers you're mm -hmm. doing pretty well but you're a straight white man mm-hmm in a community that doesn't really think well of straight white men. Just come out as gay. That's easier. Yeah, it's not very oppressive. Do you, th do you think it? do you think Vosh it's is also, really it's also not terribly theatrical? No, Vosh is obviously not gay. Like, you could do drag and be gay. I'm not saying you couldn't. I'm right. just saying in the case of Vosh, he's obviously not. Um, well, yeah, but he's not <laughs> Well, no, he says he's gay, but he does. I'm talking about I'm talking about Abigail here, not Vosh. Vosh says oh. he's bisexual or whatever. Oh, no, think... that's right. He said he was gay. I forgot. I don't know. Is that still? Is he still saying that? That was like a bit, wasn't it? No idea. But like, I, yeah, I don't either. I don't know if it's yeah. true or not. But the point is, what like, is the sexual you're, orientation? Of you're Abigail? always playing second fiddle to contrapoints. You do everything you can to mimic contrapoints, except there's one thing you can't do. Right. You. Well, what mm -hmm. if I? What if I put my years as a thespian to good work? Who knows? I mean, they they're... dated. Wait, did they date? That's interesting. Did Abigail? Abigail didn't date. They dated who? Yeah, Contrapoints? Yeah. That'd be I crazy. Heard, I heard. I heard some stuff. You know, I can't verify any of it, so I'm not going to say anything. Mm -hmm. But it, it didn't look good for for Abigail. Lesbian power couple. Ooh, a bit worse than that. Mm, all the drama. Yeah. Well, well just spit is, it out. What's it? Oh, no, because we I want to hear the drama. Script. No. Oh, okay. Not. But the point is, well, you don't know if the grifter someone, term, you don't know if grifting is true either, but you're like saying, oh, that. I'm saying the grifting is true. <laughs> uh, so someone is <laughs> grifting their deep. little heart out uh -huh. with their years of experience as an actor. And uh, they've been working their way up the hierarchy in a community and they've got pretty high. I mean, where's ContraPoints? When was the last time ContraPoints? Have you made seen the video? movie Tootsie? Do you, I feel like this, yeah. the plot you're describing is the, the last movie Contra Tootsie. video was like four months ago and the cover yeah, was weird, terrible. Yeah. That's weird. Where's where's Conch Points gone? I actually like Conch Points, so like I would rather I used to be to, discussing Conch Points is stupid takes. Just kinda just kinda become shittier and shittier with each video. Sure, but at least Conch Points isn't a dislikable person, right? Yeah. I mean I guess that's true. Whereas <laughs> it's yeah, a certain no, level think, of charisma I, that all yeah, but, like. but also like it's not this fucking attitude, Abigail. Right. You know, you transitioned into a Karen, why? Contrapoints like, is funnier, obviously. Yeah. So, but mm -hmm. and and more original and mm -hmm. obviously authentically trans. Yeah. Like Ollie was a good-looking lad. He was obviously comfortable being a man. Like you know that you know it, like and honestly in the stream he's just like no I've never had it. Of course you've never had it. Why would you have ever had it? Look at you, you know. And suddenly, uh, anyway, massive financial benefits aside, let's carry on. Right. Did did Ollie have a sexual orientation before him? Kavaz said someone said that they were bisexual, and Kavaz said that it's all but proven that they were dating, or whatever that means. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
and then they came out as trans. Proven. Yeah, what is that? I don't know. The the okay, so the rumor, the complete unsubstantiated rumor is that after they broke up, Abigail came out as trans. So right. Take that infor- take that juicy gossip as you may. She stole the business plan off her laptop. There you go. But also, you know, didn't take the breakup well, maybe. Who knows? Maybe. I actually heard worse than that, to be honest. But so anyway, we'll carry on. Oh. Carl, you we're gonna be talking hear? in the next few days. What did you hear? Privately. Uh, come on, we like dirt. We it's fine. Adam, I, dirt. Adam, I would love to tell you, but I know you just blab. <laughs> well, I do have a history of blabbing, so I might, know. I'll well, just blab to all the people watching. Everyone who's watching, not... you promise not to tell anyone, okay? It's not it's not that I want to keep a secret from you, Adam. It's just I know what will happen if I can't. I know I can't keep a secret, Carl. Why <laughs> I mean, are you fucking I... why why do you think it's part of your charm, to be honest? Why do you have to rub it oh, in? Wait, is there okay? Is there been like a history of you telling Adam something secret and then he tells everyone? No, you just Adam's, everybody Adam's knows. I'm just come yeah. on, fucking. Have you ever heard the song "Big Mouth Strikes Again"? That's kind of like my theme <laughs> song. <laughs> All right, let's. Uh... But he was wrong. There is a higher authority. There is. And after a few more months of emailing, I found him. The man behind the man. The man who gives the orders. Colonel Cathcart. Colonel Cathcart is the head of NHS England's specialised commissioning. He tells the trusts how they have to handle medical transition. He can't act on his own, but everyone I spoke to told me he's the guy. And when I emailed the CEO of the NHS herself, she also passed me back down to him. I'm Colonel Cathcart. How are all these people responding to these emails? What do you mean? Great question. The CEO of the NHS is just like, I'm going to respond to a random British citizen's email about, Look, you know, she's not random. gender she has care. a YouTube channel with a million just subscribers. So weird. They, I don't know. They're going to know what's up. They're okay. definitely going to know what's up. They're I guess. Like, Look, we it's have to pretty, pretty, pretty. deal with this issue here. And as of now, I'm in charge of you sorry-ass bunch of homosexuals. By the way, a lot of these people's emails aren't publicly listed, and it was kind of fun to go hunting for them. I managed to get in touch with the CEO of the NHS by getting her old workplace email off LinkedIn, emailing that, and getting an automatic out-of-office reply saying, hey, I'm leaving this job now to go and run the NHS. If you need me, here's my new email address. And I was like, yes! I'm in! I told Colonel Cathcart I had been waiting for much much longer than the legal maximum waiting time, and I would like to have my appointment now, pretty please. He told me to take it up with Major Major and Major de Coverley, and I said, Colonel, you're not going to believe it, but uh, they've already sent me to you. And then he told me that the reason for the well, delays they didn't, did they? was because GPs are uncooperative. The very problem I'd encountered at the start. He told me that everyone wants to change the system and make it faster, but they can't because GPs won't let them. The GPs are scared, he told me, and one of Cathcart's flunkies sent me this. This document is from 2019. It was published by the Royal College of GPs. It's titled The Role of the GP in Caring for Gender Questioning and Transgender Patients. They really need a more exciting naming system. In it, the Royal College acknowledges that GPs get no training in trans healthcare and that trans patients sometimes have bad experiences. So they recommend more resources in the system and more training. And that's basically it. That's so, it's like all of this stuff seems to go directly against the Hippocratic Oath, the do no harm stuff. So if I was a GP, I'd be in exactly the same boat. I'd be like, I don't, you know, I don't want to refer anyone upstream to this stuff until it's more studied and we actually know what's going on, right? Well, I don't even know why she's even talking about this because she's already past the GP stage. She's on a waiting list to go to a gender clinic. So obviously the, like this whole GP sidetrack is a red herring. Yeah. And the guy who, if, if he said it to her, obviously he's just saying it as a red herring because he doesn't want to, yeah. yeah, well, he doesn't want to take responsibility for, you know, his department or whatever. Right. Blame, yeah, blame the other department. Exactly. That I mean, always works. Yeah, exactly. It's not our fault. There's nothing in here to support Cathcart's claim that GPs are the ones standing in the way of changing the system. In fact, it seems to me that when you actually read this document, they acknowledge several... You know the irony here? You know who is really standing in the way of changing the system? The transgender activists. 
because they're the ones that won't let anybody study any of this stuff and find out what the hell's going on. <laughs> Wow. Like if that might, it might might validate what the GPs are doing, to be honest. Exactly. That's what they're that. that's exactly what they're worried about. That's exactly yeah, right. what they're worried about. But you can't get <clears throat> a solid form of testing until you study the thing. And right. They're the ones driving everyone who's doing legitimate study on this stuff out of business. Right. Or to see if there's not everyone needs a transition. Because I would certainly shave off a lot of patients. Sure, said, well, there you, know, you go. Wait yeah. to go through puberty and see how you feel. Exactly. Reasons why the system should change. It's even weirder, too, that he sent me this, given that it makes a bunch of recommendations from 2019, and none of them have actually happened. So why send me this? Welcome As if it, to government love. Look what it says, right? <laughs> Holy fuck. Oh, my God. All these things on the manifesto didn't get done. Yeah, oh, wow. really. Yeah or solves anything. But then I remembered some more philosophy from Sarah Ahmed. Oh, oh no. No! <laughs> no! <laughs> then I went back to my Karen book. Uh, yeah. Karenologist. Damn. Yeah. She talks about how documents become tools of institutional performance. Oh <laughs> they don't really exist in order mm. to be read. They exist to give the institution a good image. An example might be mm, anti-bullying policies. Your workplace probably has one. And Ahmed talks about how when she encountered bullying in her workplace, she reported it to management and they sent her a copy of the policy, even as they defended the bullies. Documents create fantasy images of the organizations they apparently describe. The document says, we are diverse, as if saying it makes it so. Many practitioners and academics have expressed concerns that writing documents or having good policies becomes a substitute for action. As one of my interviewees puts it, you end up doing the document rather than doing the doing. Furthermore, the orientation toward writing good documents can block action insofar as the document then gets taken up as evidence that we have done it. Colonel Ka this is so weird. So you have a socialist philosopher who's arguing against socialism like how mm -hmm. else is it supposed to, like this is how a government's going to be run it's how these sorts of large institutions are going to be run there's going to be all sorts of documents and committees and people they have to go through and all these procedures that's the only way to do it if you have some sort of centralized power no. but also experience. this is this has always been the rights critique of managerialism like this yes like the, yeah yeah it turns out you're all full of shit and we knew it from the word go okay what now Right, but she's like she's advocating. Uh, she's like complaining about the very thing that she wants to enact in the world. Yeah, <laughs> it's just so okay. Cathcart was just doing the same thing Major De Coverley had, trying to get rid of me. Except instead of using a meeting, he was using a piece of paper. But since he tried to shift the blame to the Royal College of GPs, you know what I did next. Complain to them. You know, I had to do it. <laughs> I emailed. Look, I'm a Karen. Of course, I had to complain yeah. to them. Yeah. I emailed them directly. <laughs> <laughs> I went to their LinkedIn and then found their emails. For fuck's sake! All right, the Royal College of GPs. I know. Just this is like, ah. Uh... Do, do you want know, like the bad badass season? like uh, yeah. dropping beats when I'm emailing yeah. people? Some tight yeah, email. No, I'm know. carrying around. Can you imagine this in a screenplay? It's like, and here she is in front of her computer again, emailing yep. somebody. Yep. Yep. Very exciting. Pestering some dude. Oh, God. And after doing that every week for several months, they let me speak to one of their top guys, a guy I'll call Major Danby. I actually asked Major Danby outright, is it true what Colonel Cathcart said? Is it true that GPs are the reason behind all of this? And he said, oh, no, 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 no. It's the British Medical Association's fault. No kidding. So I oh, this is too. amazing. So layers and layers of bureaucracy just pass the fucking blame around. <laughs> amazing. <laughs> I can't believe you worked this out. If only someone had worked this out sooner. That's, so, hell. that's so true. That's so true. I mean, she saw the movie Catch-22, right? <laughs> She's got clips of it in here. You know, you know what we're dealing with here, right? We are dealing with a person. Mm -hmm. who is privileged, right? And they have never had a fucking job. Right. That's their problem. Mm -hmm. they, did you know they're just passing the buck? Oh, fucking really? Jesus, fuck. Spare me, honestly. No, no, no. no. She wants the, the socialism without all that. Yeah. <laughs> Where everyone just well, does their job perfectly and there's no that's problem. That's not even a facet of, uh, well, I mean, it is a facet of socialism, but like, it's not even a, a 
then confined socialism. This is just the problem with like managerial fucking, you know, any, large any enterprise like that. Yeah. yeah, any large institution, you get this everywhere in everything because everyone's incentivized to just pass the fucking bar. Yep. Yeah. Fuck's sake. I'm not giving up. This yeah, is my almost. white whale. That's right, motherfuckers. That's so sad. Oh my Christ. God. Christ. She couldn't even get a white whale graphic. Look, that Moby. Great me. Mo, Mo, look, Captain Ahab was out on the ocean, like braving nature. Yeah. This is like sitting behind your computer, emailing <laughs> a bunch of people. This is parroting as hard as she can. This is this might be the most depressing. Like even calling it Moby Dick yeah. is just terrible. Adam, I was assigned. What? She slaved away over a hot computer keyboard. Okay. Look, check for many, many days. Check your email. At at three in the morning. Tipping and typing. She went outside an office and pretended to die and got a picture taken of it. God, I would love to look at the emails. I bet the emails are so hilariously inept. I just, yeah. I <laughs> wish that I could look at the emails. Just the. Uh, she has really no understanding, I think, of human nature, which would, that's what would make the email so funny. Oh, she is a, a commie, so that makes sense. Yeah. But no, more importantly, she's privileged. She's a posh kid. Right. Yeah. Don't you know who I am? You better respond to this email immediately. Yeah. Hater at birth. They told me it was Colonel Cathcart's fault. At this point, I was feeling very calm, very normal. Joker makeup was bursting out the of the first person she ever talked to told her the answer. We don't have the resources. Like, yeah. Like the very first person is like, we just don't have the money. I don't know what you want from me. Yeah. Oh, oh, I love it. I love it. I want course. everybody to tell me that. I get, it was like, I just, I don't know what else you want. In as many well, ways I'm, as humanly possible. I, I'm, I wish I could see the emails too, because I'm wondering, like, did they all say like that? And then they also blame someone else, and then she's just kind of leaving off that part, or right? Like, what's going on here? Like, it's a copy paste from their website over and over yeah. again. Look at the expression as well. Just the 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 such faux outrage. Oh my god. Yeah, I just this is so. Uh, it just looks inauthentic. Bad. It's so inauthentic. Well, she's Why an actress, would you so. be would you be bragging about people literally giving you the runaround though? I mean, I feel like she's trying to make some message about. How oh, terrible this is! Master, but... Isn't she? Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. It's like, yeah, you got it's the like, run around. Yeah, welcome. Ooh, what a shock! <laughs> welcome yeah. to the real world. Yeah, but it's like Wait. it's you got the run around for something that you could have Google searched. Like you literally look like, why are <laughs> NHS waiting times so long? Because there's way too many people, and not enough, you know, resources. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, I don't know what what are these people supposed to do. Big like I don't, I don't know what answer she expects. She never tells us that. What What does she expect them to say? Do you think the wait? Do you think they literally made the wait time longer though, because she complained so much? I feel like that happened. Or, well, at the end of this, she ends up getting her appointment uh, pushed forward. So obviously, complaining. Yeah, but something. if they put if they put her off like two years and then they push her appointment forward like a week, right? Who knows? Yeah. Yeah. But no, that that's exactly right. The the squeaky wheel gets the grease. If yeah. someone's complaining, you just bump them up the list, just to shut them up, right? Yeah. Exactly. <clears throat> but what that does is bump everyone else down the list. So right. this incredibly posh person, who's undoubtedly a millionaire, mm -hmm. in my opinion, a total fraud and grifter, <laughs> uh, has actually just sat there and used used the fact that they've got the free time afforded to them by their lavish YouTube career to step on the backs of a bunch of people who can't do that who don't right. have the free who yeah. probably can't afford to go private and who are relying on this who are waiting on this and abigail's just like you know what fuck you fuck you mm. i'm not going private i'm going to make a video about this and make money out of it mm -hmm. i mean she probably it killed four or five of those people <laughs> yeah when you, when you right. put it that's that really, way right you're hurting well, the trans community abigail it, it's interesting because she does bring that up. She's like, I felt bad because I knew I was like stealing an appointment away from someone else or something. <laughs> That's because you were. You and I guess, and, and I never thought about it 
in terms of, until I watching it today where I was like, again, why didn't she just go to a private healthcare if she could afford because it? Because it's not about that. She says, well, I'm video. assuming I think, I think she did. I think she did go to private healthcare and she's just doing this for the video or, or to make a point or something. Mm-hmm. So she actually got her appointment. She went there and she's like, oh, I don't actually need this appointment because I went to see some private doctor. <laughs> but well, I mean, I returned to my trans- grifter thesis. So. Mm-hmm. But the other transgender person committed suicide over the weekend. Oof. It's all right. Abigail got a video out, man. I bet there were like 10, 20,000 likes on this. Yeah. Oh. Listen, this is going to catch fire across the UK. Yeah. This Think gonna, of that noble sacrifice. This is going to motivate change. They're going to change mm. everything mm. in this video. Yeah, no, okay. Oh, wait, they changed all the policies and actually shit on affirmative models for transgender <laughs> people and made it worse under Abigail's perception? Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> because of Abigail's whining? Mm. Better for the world, though, obviously. Well, I, you know, it's funny because she says at one point she talks to a guy who was talking about having like this radical change to the system. And I wonder, maybe did she have some effect on it in a negative way? <laughs> negative from her perspective. Negative pos- from her perspective. Positive. Yeah. From my perspective, the world, yeah. yeah, right. Uh, just a bit of breaking news quickly. Project Veritas has been let back on Twitter. Oh. Really? Yeah. Are you waiting? Is, are you waiting oh, yeah. for your god emperor to tweet? Uh, I'm waiting for my account to be fucking restored, Adam. Jeez, fuck Trump. Oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> I saw somebody tweeted out your account. Yeah, I, I clicked. What did you on get kicked link. for in the first place? Oh, insulting Nazis. Yeah. Oh, that's right. That's right. I was, yeah. I was calling the mean names and uh, Vijaya yeah. Gad was like, whoa, 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 whoa. They're my Nazis. You can't insult them like that. Yeah. I was like, oh, sorry, Vijaya. What did they kick Project Veritas for? Probably telling the truth. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Making the Democrats look bad because, you know, they look like shit. Yeah, but well, they had to give some bullshit reason. Uh, yeah, you know, I mean, who knows? Platform Why manipulation sh- and spam. By <laughs> yeah. He yeah, sued them. Be... Whatever happened with that lawsuit? Good question. Hmm. Huh. I was turning an insect, falling down an infinitely repeating staircase. Things of this nature. I couldn't understand it. We have the right to be seen within 18 weeks. Oh, stop I'd waited right. at this point over a year. Just what the heck is going wrong with the NHS? Chapter five, unequal treatment. No. Oh no, it's not lack of resources. It's racism, guys. No, thank God. I bet that some of you are sitting. What is, what's a deal That's what she with says. The... That's literally what she says. I know. It's <clears throat> insane. What's up with the scar? The, the. It makes her look like she was in battle. I mean, listen, all those emails were, you know. Right. Okay. Just like being in the middle of a war. Because that's the. It's like Mark of the Beast, right? When the scar goes through the eye. It, I can't wait, remember which eye what? it is. but <laughs> Just yeah, remember that's... that Abigail Thorne is a thespian, Adam. All right, of this is okay. because she likes it. That's why. Okay. But I mean, that is Mark of the Beast. <laughs> Doing that thinking, that sucks. But what do you expect? The NHS is in crisis. And you are absolutely right. To show you just how right you are, I'd like to take a moment now to calmly, impartially, explore exactly why the NHS is in crisis. It is true that the situation is pretty... Do you let her get away with that, Sitch? What? No pause? She said impartially. She's supposed to point that shit out, man. Oh. uh, Abigail Thorne is a biased fucker and not impartial in any way. <laughs> Thank there. you. Thank you. Exactly. I didn't know if people could figure that out by watching the stream. This part is going to be biased as fuck. Die Unlike the rest of it, right. of course. Yeah, right. Yeah, well, so I couldn't, you know, I couldn't actually find the like a number on how referrals for adult uh, mm. transgender people had increased or not. They were only talking about for kids. And that one, though, it jumped up from 250 to 5,000. Right, yeah. And it's like, okay, well, obviously, you know, this is going to lead to people being on long waiting times and long waiting lists. So, Yeah, but if you just dump all the kids off, if you're like, oh, no kids, then the wait times are a lot shorter, right? There you but go. I'm sure That's there's a lot of 18, 20. Come on, yes. you're still getting caught up in social yes. contagion in your 20s, yes. obviously. Mm-hmm. 
right now. Mm-hmm. There are over 7 million people in England on some kind of waiting list for NHS care. The majority of maternity units in England no longer meet safety standards. There are parts of England where you'll wait for several hours just to get an ambulance, and public satisfaction with the NHS is at a 25-year low. There are regional... Wow. And- okay, so she's basically just proved that Obviously, yeah. it's a resource problem for everyone and that it's not specific to trans people. And then she'll immediately say, no, it is a specific problem to trans people. Right. Everything that I said at the beginning was correct, by the way. True. Limited resources. Well, you blamed it all on immigration, though. Well, it is. It is just the sheer mm-hmm. number of people demanding access to a service. Mm-hmm. And the service just doesn't have the manpower. Mm-hmm inequalities too. The healthcare that you get in Newcastle, where I'm from, might be of a very different standard to the healthcare you get in Sunderland, just one city over. And that sucks because <clears throat> as much as it pains me to say it, the people of Sunderland do deserve to live. Obviously on the condition that they renounce their football team. Things are certainly a mess, but <coughs> on the other hand, being impartial, I'm sure the health secretary has a plan to fix it. Is that elitist joke or populist joke? I don't know what Sun Su- Sunderland is. Sunderland is a very working class city. Okay, so Uptown, it's an elitist is. joke then. Is Newcastle yes. like a not? No, Newcastle isn't particularly high class. Um, they, no. This person was themselves are uh, just privileged. Uh, right. She's talking football teams. So right. the so so the socialist basically says, you know, the working class people, I guess they can live. Now nah, she she's trying to make it so it's not class based yeah. by <laughs> doing the football team, football, thing, right? Yeah, yeah, but it, I'm just like uh, you. Insert exactly. sports team that I root for. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Everything that Abigail does, though, is of course tinted right. with the fact that she is high class. Yeah, it's yeah. elitist. No, it's like, you know, when the politician goes to speak at a state and they're like, how about those tigers? Yeah. This this is the equivalent of her pulling out the hot sauce from her purse. Because <laughs> she's pulling a Hillary Clinton. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's what this is. God, must be nice to have a purse to carry your hot sauce around in. Yeah, I know. If only we would transition day. Just get a fanny pack, a hot sauce fanny pack, Ad. God, hot yeah, sauce. Yeah, go around del- and look gay. Hot sauce is delicious. Okay, wait. How about this? Fanny pack no, I got it. I got it. Adam, <laughs> you should get you should get a, a gun holster. Oh, that's a good and, idea. And you have a gun, but it's actually not a gun. It's just a hot sauce dispenser. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great idea. Whoever that is this <clears throat> week, depending on who you ask, there are different explanations for all this mess. According to the government, things were pretty okay, but then COVID came along, and it's true that COVID did not help. The pandemic swallowed up a lot of the NHS's capacity, still is, and a lot of frontline healthcare workers burned out or had to be retasked or just died. <clears throat> According to this, people this is, who don't like Brexit. Right. right. So during 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 the pandemic, we were obviously covering this, and at no point was the NHS like it, at no point did it have a full number of hospital beds. And in fact, the Conservatives actually reduced it had something like 120,000 beds, and the Conservatives reduced it to 110,000. And yet it still didn't hit maximum capacity during the COVID crisis. That's right. just not true. But still, uh, presumably the numbers in, about using, people using the resources increased, I would imagine, during COVID. Uh, no, well, they, they did. They did. There was a, a sort of peak, but it never hit peak capacity. Right. It never hit 100%. Yeah. No. Sure. There were certain areas where they had, um, you know, peak capacity, like right. in, you know, certain like particular you know regions but it was it was never the nhs generally is about to collapse and the excess hospital services they brought online just like with the uh the hospital ship in new york never got used mm-hmm. or at least weren't used significantly anyway right but it's a good excuse for the government so well yeah i mean where's that That's it brexit caused a staff shortage and it's true that that probably didn't help either because a lot of NHS staff were from the EU. Emphasis on were. Now that we've left, it is easier for them to go elsewhere because European citizens have freedom of movement. If you're a doctor in France and you want to work- See, it's all your fault, Carl, with your Brexit. <laughs> I love this, they have freedom of movement. Well, where? In Europe, well, no shit. 
<laughs> but they don't have free they have freedom of movement in Britain, do they? Yeah. They have freedom of movement in Russia. They don't have freedom of movement in Saudi Arabia. What the, you know? Stay out of America. We don't want you here. Europeans well, have freedom of movement in the countries they live in. Well, no shit. It is kind of obvious, isn't it? You could fill out a whole bunch of forms and pay a bunch of money to go to England, or you could go to the Netherlands for free, where you've got more rights and the pay is better. And also, they have double-decker trains in the Netherlands, which oh, is wow. really cool. We're having to recruit more medical staff from outside the EU now to make up for the Brexit shortfall, which is happening, but it does take a little bit of time. However, we should also bear in mind that this snowball has been rolling for a while. For the last decade and change, there's been a lot of cuts to public services. And when you slash budgets, not as much stuff can be done. Things run understaffed, overworked, underpaid. People burn out, new people are hard to find. Anecdotally, almost every doctor I know is planning to move to New Zealand. There was already a, a staffing crisis in the NHS before Brexit or COVID. <laughs> Isn't that right? The That's a little strange. That's a little strange. I don't know any doctors. What the you fuck? don't know any doctors? Oh, no, wow. but all my family are poor. <laughs> oh, okay. You, you, don't, you don't know a doctor? Like, who do you, you know your doctor that you go to? What? I haven't been to a doctor in decades. In, in oh, NHS wow. Look doesn't, at this guy. You don't have like a general doctor for at well, NHS, or is it just I mean, like. I whoever? probably don't. What about your wife? pediatrician for your, your youngling? Of course you have I, a pediatrician, right? Yeah, but well, I'd have to ask my wife. I don't know. Where's <laughs> your. Um, but well, that's, the, the point is, that's what wives no, are no, for. No, listen, Carl, you're doing doctors, it correctly. The, yeah, exactly. The doctors, as in, she's friends with these. Yeah, people. right. These so they have some social like, circles, social right? conversation about it, them. Exactly. She just right. hangs out with doctors, man. This is, mm -hmm. you know, what regular working class people do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Of course. Capacity was already falling too. Remember earlier, I said there are seven million people in England on some kind of NHS waiting list. Well, before the pandemic. That number was already four and a half million, so I think the ship had a few holes in before we even hit the iceberg, Captain. Yeah, but almost the doubling NHS it is awesome. bad, isn't it? Of course For it is. Sake. Yeah. Oh, I hate this so much. And most of those are all gendered as for you, too. <laughs> <laughs> all of them. I Honestly. This this just disproves her entire point, though. Because if it's four, if there's four million people on the waiting list, then it shows that there's a say system wide problem with too many people, not enough uh, so resources. From yep. the beginning. Yeah, it's but not as, like I because they're the, transphobic or something. But I sent you the funding earlier, didn't I? And so it's just yeah, it's, a steady it's, graph up. So it, there, there's no amount of resources we can throw at the problem because too many people are trying to access it. Right. That's just the end of the story. Yeah. You got to basically well, what put is, people on waiting lists. You'd have to see too. You'd have to see like you know, what is the percentage population growth compared to what is the growth of medical services. Obviously, hasn't kept up to whatever that is. They just, but, what can they cut out though? Who can they cut? This off? is why we have seven and a half million people on a waiting list, man. Right. Yeah. What are those people on waiting list for, though? I hope it's for not everything. Like a stroke or a heart attack or something. They're it's for cancer and everything. Those people are screwed. Like literally, there's like I think it was two million or something that missed cancer screenings and stuff like this. It's 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 genuinely atrocious what COVID has done to this country. Well, cancer screen uh, screenings, I don't necessarily know. There's a different there's different philosophies on that. Maybe it's best that they're not getting their cancer screenings. Sometimes false positives end up coming up. Yeah, so it's a I good, think I'd Carl, rather it's have a good thing. False positives. Yeah. Look, you just said you haven't been to the doctor in forever. Like you're, you're yeah, not on the list because you're not yeah. worried about it. Yeah, because I'm not like you know 65. Mm -hmm. Listen, you have to get your your balls checked and your prostate checked, Carl. Yeah. Get yeah, that, I probably do. Get that checked. Like, just have your wife do it. That's yeah. <laughs> that's the way to do it. I will. Um, but the point is, you know, I'm not one of these people in like dire need who's been denied it because of lockdowns. Well, that I don't know right. what it is. Like for all I know, they're offering haircuts at the NHS, and everyone's like waiting for theirs. No, it, I don't think it's haircuts. <laughs> maybe they're no, I, maybe they're offering hair laser hair removal. And I don't just, think it's laser hair removal. No, it's, I just that number, that giant number, is just for any service that anyone's waiting for. Right. Yeah. So ingrown toenail. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. have been massively impacted by cuts to local government. Because in England, local government handles social care. For example. See? It's social care. 
Yeah. Let's say that like you're an older person. It's a therapist. Yeah, exactly. Right. These people aren't waiting that's not what she's, for that's a That's not therapist. what she's talking about. She's talking about like, well, she, says, she says what she's talking about. Okay, good. And you have a knee replacement in an NHS hospital. After a few days, you're well enough to go home, but you need a social worker to go and get groceries for you or to just pop in and check on you every now and again whilst you continue recovering. Well, the bad news is... That oh, you guys don't have DoorDash over there? Jeez. There aren't enough social That's workers. Amazing there aren't no even enough has, people. No, no one has family or friends that can do this. They need social workers because the government has to do everything all the time. So, okay. Yeah, that's kind of crazy. Yeah, I was gonna say I don't know. Like, most people in America, like they don't have like access to. If you have surgery, like the government and like worker comes to ch like shop for you. I've never heard. Well, about welcome before. to England, mate. We're okay. part of the socialist republic. What do you need a knee replacement for? You need to get worn out. What? If you fuck up your knee, hmm. I mean, it's a pretty common thing that happens. To yeah, you spend a lot of time on your knees a... or something. No, what? Okay, I don't, I don't know. I just, I don't ever plan on getting an ear replacement. I don't see why I would need one. So people, the car, people have. Uh, I think like the cartilage uh, gets fucked yeah. up in the the joint, or they probably like you know very like various other problems that just happen. Yeah, yeah. Like, no one wants these things to happen, Adam. Right. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. People to process your application for a social worker because a knee replacement. Yes, this is a I very heard common about thing. it in the video. Have you, you know had a knee? Get... Have you had a knee replacement? No, no but, but you I. Know, you... <laughs> you know, people I, get I, hip my age, it'd be pretty well. strange. Look, the entire I'm... hips replaced. Did you know? That? Yeah, this is like a common. Th I just knee I don't know. Like, I've never heard of hip this. replacement. Yes. Yeah. The government's paying for this. Listen, stuff? you're. So, we're, we can't all be Britain, privileged, yeah. Adam, that you and your family have well, such I just good thought, genes look. that no one's ever needed like any sort of like surgery. Look, I've never even broken a <laughs> bone, so I haven't like, either. But I just, I don't look. They're retired. They just sit at home. What do they? What do they need to get a new knee for? Uh, I don't know. Maybe maybe do arthritis, osteoporosis. Maybe they're out yeah, playing. There, there are lots of good reasons. Trust us. Yeah. Okay. Now, unfortunately, knee surgery. Is like has a really, a really strenuous recovery. Let's that, look it up. What what is the most common thing that people are oh, on the waiting list? Oh, just carry on with the video. For fuck's sake. <laughs> Budget cuts. You're not sick enough to stay in hospital, but you're not really well enough to go home on your own. So you just kind of sit there like a lemon. There are a lot of people sitting around in hospital beds who don't need to be there, but who can't be discharged because they've got nowhere they can go, and that means that new people can't come in. Look at this. Your hospitals or hotels over there, Carl. Yeah, that's These cuts are also very difficult to row back pay for on. This, Adam. You got to do what we do. We just take them down to the park in LA. <laughs> you just drop, <laughs> them, drop off. them off. Just release them into the wild. Yes. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that is what they need. <laughs> Basically. One way yeah. that a trust yeah. can make up a shortfall in its budget is by selling its assets off to private developers. And once a piece of the health service is owned by an American private equity firm or a Chinese investment group, Ooh. they ain't going to want to give it back. Ooh. Hell yeah, I can't wait. <laughs> oh, evil Americans I'm owning buy, I'm buy some stock in that company just so I can hold it over Carl. Just so I can be like, look at oh, this. Bro, I out. own your country. <laughs> well, at at, at this point, I, I, it would, like, you, this week or last week, they announced, uh -huh. oh, we've got a bunch of new taxes now. Why? Because we've got to pay for the NHS. Oh, fuck's sake. Yeah, I'm exactly. In, I'm in favor of privatizing it at this point, all right? I'm going to be like, when you pay your taxes, Carl, think that dividend goes to me. <laughs> a job like nursing, for instance, just doesn't pay enough for people to live on. Then that creates massive recruitment problems that are very difficult to get around. On the other hand, being impartial, I'm sure that after over a decade of all these cuts, the British economy cuts. is in cuts. What fucking great cuts? shape. Ah! With all this ambient crisis oh, going sorry. on, isn't it understandable that things are bad for trans patients? I mean, wouldn't it be unfair to criticize the NHS, even ungrateful? Yeah. Wouldn't it play right into the hands of the people who want to privatize yes. it? Yeah, that's what you said, Sid. Yes. Yeah. That's exactly yes. what you said. <laughs> yes. Yes, Abigail. Yes. It's only because it obviously does, Sid. That's definitely an argument that some people make, and I'm being calm and rational and impartial, so I'm not going to say no, but I am very strongly going to say yes 
And okay. my GP didn't refuse to help me because they didn't have the money. It would have cost her nothing to actually do her job. First, okay. That's like a tiny portion of your problem was the GP dropping your letter down mm -hmm. the garbage chute because they right. don't like you for whatever reason. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I mean, like, or as I said, I wouldn't be surprised if they got a phone call from the Jenner Clinic like, fucking don't refer more people here, okay? Don't yeah. you fucking do it. <laughs> That's like, just, just, exactly right. Like, like the, the, the majority of the time that she's been on the waiting list had nothing to do with the GP. It was just the waiting list for getting into the Jenner Clinic. They don't have enough spots. Mm-hmm. The 2013 and 2015 investigations into trans healthcare didn't find problems of budget. They found problems of bigotry. So <laughs> oh. this is like a super, okay, this is very, very dishonest. Because first of all, one of those studies, as I read to you earlier in the stream, literally did say that the waiting times are too long because they're underfunded and understaffed. So it literally does say that. Bigotry. And that was from 2013. That was ten, like 10 years ago, nine, 10 years ago. Right. And the Bigotry. numbers have only exploded since then. Bigotry. I think we've, I think mm -hmm. we've solved this case. I know. It's just ridiculous. And there's, she's not even citing. There was a, uh, a CAS report, a Dr. CAS report, though, some big report on NHS waiting times that came out recently. And it talks about this exact thing. And it, and it Talks about how there's just all these long waiting lines because there's not enough doctors and not enough resources and too many there's too much demand on the system. But she doesn't cite that report that just came out that's about the exact thing she's talking about because yeah, it doesn't did they conform admit with just her how argument. much they hate trans people. Yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> if they didn't, then you can't trust that study. It must be it. She actually does say at one point, like, oh, <laughs> you know, why are all these, these people <laughs> making decisions about this? <laughs> like, oh, okay. <laughs> Because they're the ones in charge. I don't know. What, I mean, should only mean? people with diabetes be making medical decisions about the treatment of diabetes? <laughs> like, I don't know. this argument? Oh, that's, that's so how that awful. works. I guess. In 2015, the Women and Equality Select Committee issued a report on the state of trans health care, which again identified prejudice as a major obstacle. And we aren't yeah. the only minority that gets hit by it, unfortunately. Remember earlier no. I said that the majority of maternity... And also, none of these studies were designed to check for waiting times. They're all like, how do you feel about your services? And then they say, I felt like my doctor was a bigot. It's like, oh, okay. Ooh. I mean, what's that have to do with the waiting times? Nothing. Units in England don't meet safety standards? Well, black women are four times as likely to die in childbirth than white women. Oh, and if you're trans and a person of color, that's a double whammy. Pretty much all of these reports also say that getting trans healthcare is even more difficult if you aren't white. Although why is that? Why are they four times more likely to die? I don't because know. Tavistock's stuffed by the KKK. No, the yeah. black, the black. That's woman. the only answer. Probably because uh, I would imagine mm -hmm. that uh, black people. I don't know in England. I know in America, black people are disproportionately poorer. And so if you select for that, you're actually selecting for uh, a lower economic situation. And also uh, a lot of black communities and a lot of black people in black communities have higher rates of heart disease and diabetes and other uh, medical problems. So All right. It's not like the doctor's like, oh, fuck black people. You know, no, that's exactly what they say. Don't, yeah. don't, don't, don't take this away from her. Okay. It's a poor Sorry. thing. Yeah. The, no, the doctor's like, well, I, hate, I just hate blacks. All if you doctors. have more kids, wouldn't you be more likely to die yeah. in childbirth? Just by I mean, a trans person comes into the clinic, and they're like, oh, God. But if it's a black trans person, they're like, get out. Just by having more kids. I mean, you increase well, your odds, sure. Say it in those terms. They're always like, this report identifies inconsistencies in the treatment of transgender patients of color whose needs are not always consistently being met by the health service. And it's like, guys, if you just called it racism, think how much money you'd save on printer ink. <laughs> I'm not saying that everyone who works just in the NHS is a frothing bigot. I'm just saying yes, you are. it is a... F I, I always love that move. They say, oh, you're doing this because you're racist. But I'm not saying that you are racist. <laughs> <clears throat> what the fuck you taught? You just did. You I'm literally not saying you're all did. racist, but this entire thing is riddled with institutional racism. Right. And if you're say. if you want to show that you're not racist, you have to listen to everything I say and yeah. do everything I say. Fact that the NHS admits not all the problems are caused by a lack of funding. 
And with that in mind. Okay, so she's changed the argument here in a very sneaky way. Yeah, they say not all the problems are from a lack of funding, but they do say a lot of the problems, especially about the waiting times. The only problems I've seen them say for waiting times is a lack of resources. For every report that I saw on this, I, I never saw a single one time at waiting times that said it was because of fucking internalized misogyny or whatever <laughs> the fuck she's talking about. Nah, it's all about not me. It Why doesn't even they make put that sense. On a report? Like, but what, like, what is even her argument? Like, let's just follow the train of logic here. Okay. So she, she think that the people at the gender clinic are all transphobic and they're intentionally not seeing trans people because they want to lower the numbers. Is that what her argument is? And racist. And racist? Because yeah. how else does her argument make any sense? They're trying to talk about waiting times to get into the gender clinic. Yeah. Typical transgender um, uh, clinic employee is typically a racist. <laughs> you, just don't, you don't understand. They just typically hate black people. That's Why would you want to go the see case. them? <laughs> yeah. It's absolutely the case. No, uh, no, um, uh, you did Abigail. it. I didn't do it. You did it. Yeah, yeah. Well, what do you... well I, hey, hey, I'm saying, you know, who's, who's, who's ripping off me? Uh, but, you know, Abigail's pointing this out. Mm -hmm. What do you think the chances of finding a conservative at one of these gender clinics is? <laughs> Okay. Yeah, exactly. Uh, exactly. Posturous. So yeah. what? So the whole idea is just the, so they're bigots. Yes, all the liberals are bigots. Yeah, okay. all the lefties are bigots because they're white. Yeah. Even the okay. guy who was black and gay that she talked to was yeah. Also that, a that's your typical yeah. uh, gender clinic employee, right there. It's <laughs> like what? <laughs> yeah, nah, not buying it. I'm buying it. I need to shut these clinics down because it's okay, racist. Go. There you go. I'd like to take a closer look now at how the trans healthcare system is actually designed. Oh, uh, trans Let's people. say, for the sake of argument, that you are a transgender woman and you want to get an orchidectomy. That's an operation to remove your testicles. In the USA, <laughs> they say orchidectomy, but here we say orchidectomy. <laughs> Why do you find that funny? You could, you could call it castration. <laughs> That's, you gotta use the medical term properly. Okay. You're gonna you're gonna miss a joke here. Yeah, she's setting up a joke. It's a decent joke. Oh, okay, okay. Sorry it's a enough. decent joke. A transgender woman, and you want to get an orchidectomy. That's an operation to remove your testicles. In the USA, they say orchidectomy, but here we say orchidectomy because the whole point is that you keep the D. A trans woman yeah. in England who wants that operation just has to castration. first get an appointment at the gender clinic. Castration humor, Carl. Listen, get the, cast get the castration pig in, okay? She Castr she believes in castrating children. I mean, fuck's mm. sake. Mm. Yeah. Mm. What they just they just make the children so they never have an orgasm. They don't castrate them until they're adults, Carl. Oh, you wow. Yeah, get, how, yeah, how get right. Works. Good point. Good point, yeah. Adam. Good point. <laughs> yeah. Come on, they're, they're not. Yeah. Gotta, gotta be, gotta they're get not those monsters. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. With gender dysphoria, then be on hormone replacement therapy for a certain amount of time, and then she needs two separate psychiatric assessments. <gasps> In contrast, a cisgender man, that is a man who is not. <laughs> we're going to do all of the stuff to you, then we're going to give you the psychiatric assessment. But I think it's a bit late for that. No, no, no. This is before you get any hormones. Oh, right. Okay. Sorry. I thought you said after. This is just to get the hormone. Oh, right. Thank fuck. Which, which is like, okay, that's what you want. That's like, I good. Don't, what's the complaint but, here? I don't know. Like, that's something about like all these people who need all these psychiatric assessments. I'm just like, yeah, I just don't know if chopping bits off of them is a good solution to anything. Mm. See, that's why I want to know who's on that waiting list for what? Because is it all a bunch of people who need psychiatric appointments? Maybe. Well, maybe. I mean, it seems that way, doesn't it? It's not millions of knee replacements. No. You don't know that. Well, maybe. I don't know. Maybe everyone in... I mean, it, it's it's so freezing in Great Britain. Do they even go outside? How do they how do they wear their knees out? It's by living. Yeah. By yeah. walking around. The same around. way everyone else wears their knees. Nah. <laughs> They're sitting down half the year I, inside. I love, this, I love this knee skepticism here. I know. He's Adam has, like, it. genetic uh, yeah. privilege here. He's like, oh, my bones have never had problems in my body. I'm like, oh, I'm good for you. I had, one friend, <laughs> yeah. I had one friend that had a knee replacement because he was a runner. 
So it was. There we go. Yeah. yeah. But you know, I mean, whatever. I, you know, a lot of women get osteoporosis. They get older. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. The most common reason for knee replacement surgery is osteoporosis. Maybe it's his and rheumatoid arthritis. Oh, really? So there you go. Those two things. Ouch. Yeah. Okay, so the knee just wears out. I mean, yeah. maybe I'll have to get one. Maybe I'm jinxing myself. Yeah, stop. Know. You better. You better. You're gonna jinx yourself. This is terrible. I like my knees. That's not a surgery you want. For a certain amount of time, and then she needs two separate psychiatric assessments. In yes. contrast, a cisgender man, that is a man who is not transgender, who has chronic scrotal pain and wants the same operation, can be sent straight to a surgeon from his GP. Right. It's not right. Like, look, what, and? and? Yeah. I, I, <laughs> like, they can go, they can, the doctor can go and say, oh, you have some problem. I can see it on the scan. Or yeah. I can, you know, feel your balls are going to explode or what? Look, I mean, got it's ball something. ball cancer. Yeah, you're, you're it's in something physical, pain. you know? Right. It's like, a physical thing that they can yeah. look at. It's not like, oh, I have to try to plunge into the depths of your psyche to make sure that you have some, you know, self-reporting psychological Holy cow, problem. You have a tumor the size of a golf ball in here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, it's just it's just such a bad comparison. Right. It's hilarious to be honest. It's like you freaking lunatic. Well, it's hilarious that she thinks this is persuasive or a good right. argument yeah. as a philosophy student. Like she yeah. is. I mean, a, one million people watch this video. It's persuasive to someone, Sitch. I guess. <laughs> like it's a difficult procedure either. It's just like getting your tonsils out. Mm-hmm. What? Except they do it at the other end. And the same is Jesus. true across the board. A cisgender woman with chronic uterine bleeding who wants a hysterectomy, that's a removal of the womb, yep. can be referred to a surgeon from her GP. Because there's trans- something wrong with her. Man who wants this- I know the whole concept of you know, <laughs> like do no harm problem. is kind of being. But, lost no, but there's here. a physical fucking problem. Like there's well, a real a, problem. Like, there's, like, there's something that's very detectable. You say, oh, here's your problem. Like, yeah. bang. She's complaining like, that doctors aren't just given license to remove healthy organs like they are with unhealthy ones. Right. 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 What a fucking lunatic position. How do you know they're not going to show up a week later and say, why the fuck did you cut my nuts off? <laughs> right? Well, it's just, yeah, exactly. They it's were so healthy mad. nuts. What are you doing? I'm yeah. going to sue the shit out of you. That actually, is ha- someone is suing the NHS for getting their testicles removed. Yeah, of course they are. Because they oh. did it without even thinking about it. The same mad. operation from the same surgeon has to go through all those extra steps. A cisgender woman who wants to take estrogen for menopause can get it from her GP. Mm-hmm. In fact, pretty soon she'll be able to buy it from a pharmacy. A trans woman who wants gender. the same medicine oh, no, no, no. has to go to the gender clinic and be diagnosed with dysphoria first. This is the one that really gets me. If a cisgender man is worried about going bald, he can get testosterone blockers from his GP. But we can't. This isn't how other countries do it. The president of the World Professional Association of Transgender Health called the British system (laughs) outdated and inefficient in 2021. In Canada, parts of the USA and Argentina, you can start medical transition a lot easier by just going to a GP. Not wrong. That's a he didn't call it wrong. GP, not a GP. <clears throat> the system is very outdated and inefficient. Look, autogynephilia joke. I actually... Like, fuck the joke, sorry. I, I actually <laughs> couldn't find that quote. I spent a long time looking for that. Really? Quote. I find it, yeah. Uh-oh. But so. he didn't say it was wrong. He said it was just inefficient. Well, that's good when the the, the process is chopping off healthy body parts. If, yeah. At uh, uh, best, a good system is an inefficient one for that. That's what like, I am saying. Hell. Yeah. You want to slow this shit down. How many yeah. lives are saved just because the people come to their senses or talk themselves out of well, it? Well, apparently none like, because they're all just ordering hormones off the internet and taking them without a doctor anyway. So. Oh, you're right. Actually, <laughs> they're still screwed. Never mind. <laughs> Right. Damn it. It's two. Speaking only for myself, I find it a little bit irritating that I have to go to a separate clinic to get the same medicine as everyone else. Isn't it weird now that if you, you got a different problem? Yeah. Isn't it weird now? We have clinics you, for problems. Sorry, sorry. It's okay. Isn't it weird now if you caught your kid like smoking weed or doing cocaine, you'd be like, oh, thank God. 
<laughs> Thank not God. Chocolate. They're not doing estrogen or testosterone. Yeah, exactly. It's so it's so weird. Jeez. I'm like, what are you shooting up in there? That better not be testosterone. Don't worry. It's just heroin. Okay. Oh, thank God. Yeah. <laughs> it's just opiates. heroin. Don't worry. It's just heroin. Oh, thank goodness. I have a normal just, kid experimenting argument, with drugs. <laughs> this argument's insane. It's like, oh, she's like, oh, well, if someone has cancer on a body part and they get it removed, like, why can't I just get that body part removed without having cancer? What's the difference? I don't understand. Hmm. Yeah, You know, I am starting to walk back my grifter uh, thing. I think, actually, it's worse than that, right? Because mm -hmm. if it was just... I mean, I think initially maybe it was kind of just grifting. But I wonder about how much of this is kind of audience capture. Mm. Because you are right. She is, she is looking more feminine than previously. Like, the, the shape of the face is slightly different, right? So you could believe this was a woman, right? That you were, So maybe... Well, she said she got feminized facial surgery at some point, so... Right, okay. So, okay, fair enough. That's commitment to the bit. So now I'm thinking more audience capture, right? Mm -hmm. Like, everyone on Twitter, everyone in their comments, like, yeah, this is so great. You should keep doing this. And so mm -hmm. it's like, well, I mean, you know, every incentive is going in this direction. Adulation, yeah. Money. Yeah. yeah. Head pats, everything. Yep. There yep. you go. Listen, I'm going to stand by. I, you know, she might not have done this for you, but I think she convinced herself into dying. I don't think. I think it good. began as a grift. <laughs> then look where it's but ended. who knows? Who knows? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, even if I could go on the same day and there was no waiting list, why do I have to? More on that later. Speaking not just. Because you have to. You, because we don't live in a. I mean, maybe you want to live in a libertarian society where anyone could do whatever the fuck they want to their body. But generally, we want to have doctors say like, well, you know, maybe you shouldn't have the surgery. Maybe you should have the surgery. They should actually like look into your medical problem before they do things that can alter you forever. Yeah. It's not just that. You've got different way. problems to them. Yeah, That's it. Like, End of story. Different problem. She just wants to be able to just walk up to like the Burger King and be like, yeah, can I get a, a bag of testosterone and some top <laughs> surgery, please? It's like, well, no, all wait, problems no. equal. Come on. Just for myself. In 2018, the NHS... You know, I wonder, would she make the same arguments for ADD? Should, like, a kid just be able to, like, you know, take Get Ritalin, Ritalin over the or Adderall or yeah, you know, something I just without so. a doctor? That'd be awesome. Be based. <laughs> it's fucking nuts. Well, I mean, I would get some Ritalin, definitely. As that an stuff's, adult. That stuff's great. <laughs> That's around a consultation in which they asked patients what we wanted to change about the system. In 2015, the Women in Equality Select Committee also asked, both reports clearly record patients' desires for an informed consent system, one in which we don't How need to get happen? a doctor's permission to transition, but we can just get our health care the same way everyone else does. In 2015... That's not true! What the mm -hmm. fuck? No, no one just says, goes to a doctor says, excuse me, doctor, I would like you to take out my appendix. And they say, why? They say, Did you just ask me why? Fucking mm. bigot. I said, take it out. That's <laughs> not what happens. They say, well, what's wrong with you? Let's do an x-ray. Let's do some sort of scan yeah. and see what's happening here. Like, Yeah, I, they got to give you so informed bullshit. consent. And actually, like, I don't know how it is in the UK, but I know in, in America, it was super weird when all of a sudden they made it legal for uh, drug companies to be able to do direct advertising for drugs. Mm -hmm. And that was like a big controversial thing because they didn't want, doctors didn't want patients to come to the doctor's office like, oh, I want you to prescribe me this specific drug. They it's do like, that well, in Canada now? I don't know. Oh, but okay. they do it in America. And yeah. it's like, Canada now, they like fucking the whole point it. is that you're supposed to go to the doctor with your problem and then the doctor is supposed to make a determination about what they think would be best for sure, you. That's yeah. the entire point of going to a fucking doctor. But there's all these great uh, drugs out there you got to learn about. Yeah, but now well, there's all I these internet the internet Andes. I got radicalized. Well, there's all these internet Andes who think like, oh, well, I looked up my symptoms on like WMD, you know, mm -hmm. uh, WebMD, and now I can, you know, just prescribe whatever I want for myself. It's yeah. Like, oh, I mean, okay. You're like, <laughs> yeah, it's bullshit. Clearly same people. 13, that GP report that I mentioned earlier, also recommended an informed consent system. Surprise, surprise, systems like that are associated with higher patient satisfaction. And it would save the NHS a huge amount of money running these separate clinics. I mean, should we have like a patient satisfaction model for someone? I mean, I hate to make the comparison, but it's like, oh, should we have a patient satisfaction model for people that are suffering from like schizophrenia? Like, what do mm -hmm. they want? <laughs> it's like, that's kind of defeating the point of the, the whole service. How satisfied can you really be if you have schizophrenia? It's I like, mean... you know, it's like, okay, come on.
Have you considered putting the lunatics in charge of the asylum? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they can empathize better with the patients, right? Yeah. It has yeah. massive costs for staffing and training and computers. If they just gave us healthcare the same way cis people get, the way other countries do, the way we've been asking for years, it would genuinely save the NHS a lot of cash. Despite I this, see that's defend mm, I disagree. She's become libertarian for this one issue. <laughs> well, they the their detransitioners would be the issue. They gave a bunch of people treatment that they did. Those they don't did. exist, Adam. Look, they do exist. No, and they no, no. can't. That's you can't like, give. How do you give someone informed consent that's never had an orgasm? That's like point zero one percent. Okay, it's you're just no. Yeah. Certain people you can't the... give informed consent. Well, it's funny. She makes this argument. She brings up studies about trans regret. It says very low, but it's like, yeah, but that's trans regret for people under models where a doctor is supposed to like make sure they have it. You're advocating for a system where you get rid of all the barriers of entry. Mm -hmm. It's oh, never yeah. been that's studied, gonna be obviously. It's gonna, yeah, obviously, it's going to change things. The British system say that it makes sure only specialists control who transitions. This supposedly prevents harm to patients, in particular, yeah. the harm of someone transitioning and then regretting it. Yes, the system can be very difficult, but it has a benevolent goal. And if you're very clever, you'll already have spotted what's wrong with that argument. Oh. Cast your minds back to the very first thing that happened to me in my quest to get healthcare. My GP, who had no training in trans medicine, refused to send me to the gender clinic and there was nothing I could do. It's supposed to be that only specialists control who transitions, but in reality... Well, wait, they didn't refuse. They said, wait a month. And then they dropped your paper behind a drawer because they didn't like you. <laughs> it's a little different. <laughs> That's <though>. so funny. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah. Party. Everyone in this system, from the specialists to the GPs to the receptionist who answers the phone, everyone has the power to deny patients medical care by simply refusing to do their jobs. As sociologist Ruth Pierce, also known as literally every medical procedure on planet Earth, but okay. Well, and any job as well. Yeah. Points out in her book, Understanding Trans Health, in this system, everyone controls who transitions, except the patient who's doing it. Okay. The system also doesn't prevent harm. The person whose seen... mental health is in question <laughs> is not in control of the fucking procedure. Yes, that's right. Yeah, I know this is oh. it's it's just it's so annoying that you're, you're talking about a procedure that has permanent effects on your <clears> life <throat> and your body. Yeah. And it's just like, oh, we should just be willy nilly about it. Like, it's not a big deal. It's just like, you know, getting your tonsils removed. Only yeah. it's your testicles. Yeah. I mean, like, like well, the, you know, the 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 patients of like a normal fucking uh, surgery, they're not really in control of what happens. Like the, you go there and the doctor's like, right, you need your appendix out. And you're like, no, I don't. No, the doctor's like, yeah, you do. You know, okay, well, schedule it for tomorrow. No, we can't do that. You know, mm -hmm. you like, the, you you go through the system. The system has to, you know, deal with you. Right. Like she's acting like these fucking cis patients just get everything they always want all the time. So that's mm -hmm. not true. Yeah. Lunatic. You don't just want. I mean, as a cis patient on a waiting <laughs> list of seven million people, yeah, I just wander into the office and say, just you know what. I feel like I should get my knees replaced today. You know, <laughs> they're they're okay, but I want some nice titanium knees. Yeah, and the doctor's yeah. like, "We're not going to do that." I'm like, hell, you are. I'm not trans. You get on it now. Listen, I play a lot of I play a lot of rugby. Okay, I need I need some. I want a strong knees for my enemies. This is like fucking cyberpunk or something. Yeah, exactly. Just going to get an arm replacement. Yes. Yeah, I want I want a, I want a pop up gun in my forearm, please. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I want a pop arm, a pop up gun in my right arm and a buzz saw on my left. Yeah, yeah. And they're yeah. like, we can do that. Oh, yeah. I also want to change my gender. Oh, no, no, no. There's a waiting list for that. <laughs> but the buzz saw, we'll do that right away. Yeah. Well, they're all bigots there, obviously. Yes. Now, if you want your dick to shoot a buzz saw, <laughs> we can do that right away. But... Dean, it causes a great deal of harm, denying patients medical care, some of whom die as a result. There she and goes many again. others are forced there to take risks again. like self-medication. But regret is a much more interesting consideration. 
for all sorts of reasons we don't have time to get into today. Medical regret is actually a fascinating field don't and have, one that's very difficult to do studies on. Your Just videos an hour and 30 minutes. You don't have any Just time, time to visit the time. regret. Not on this particular form of regret. I mean, the yeah. fact that they had, a, you know, 138 people 10 years ago and now it's like 2,300 makes me yeah. think maybe the hmm. regret pile is going to be a lot larger than the actual transgender pile. It just seems that way to me. Because like, what are the units of regret? Wistfulness per kilogram, perhaps? The data we have. How do you mm. define regret? Well, first of all, that's a weird. <laughs> I mean, I know it's a joke, but there literally are like uh, questionnaires and models in psychology that measure regret, regret. <laughs> and yeah. life satisfaction after surgeries and things like. That's not like a an unusual thing. She brings it up yeah. with the knee replacement. Yes, I mean there 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 there's literally women suing Tavistock for chopping off her breasts, and it's like, now nah, well, do you really regret it? You know, do you? What's the what's the metric? Yeah. Yep. Well, so much of the regret could be how it was, you know, the, the anticipation of what the, uh, the outcome would be. So hmm. if the doctor sold him on some sort of outcome that would be, you know, great and it didn't turn out that way, obviously they're going to feel regret. Sure. Just that transition hmm. regret is actually very rare. I found a meta-analysis of 27 mm. studies that looked at just under 8,000 trans patients in several countries who'd had some form of surgery and which found a regret rate of about 1%. Did suicide count towards that regret rate? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I doubt it did. They did not. No, just actually, question. I looked through a bunch of these studies and um, there's a huge problem with this is that half of the studies are like old studies before any children were given hormone blockers. So these are all like, uh, and all the studies were, none of them were kids. They were all adults mm. who transitioned. Oh, wow. Okay. That's a huge so, thing. Right. So you have, these are adults. These None of these people, or most people in these studies, did not receive hormone blockers. They did not socially transition, you know, uh, beforehand. And then on top of that, it's like, for the studies that were more recent, where maybe they were given hormone blockers, the follow-ups are very short because this is like a recent thing. They've only been like a month or a year follow-up at maximum, mm -hmm. you know, not enough to, to measure this. And then on top of that, this is a bullshit argument because this would be a, even if, even if these studies were applicable to today's uh, criteria in today's world, that's under a doctor controlled system. You're advocating to remove all the controls. And yeah. Why is it that the regret of the minority, you will assume, is so irrelevant? Right. Like, sorry, it would not have been even one woman who has had her breast cut off or man who has had his balls cut off who regrets it is too many. Yeah. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> right. Well, and then, and also, like, you know, part of the, even if the regret rates are low, often the problem is, as I said, Suicide attempt rates don't change that significantly. And even though suicide ideations uh, decrease, they're still above the average or norm. Mm. So there's still something there that's happening that's not necessarily being addressed. According to that study, it's 79 people. That's 1%, right? So it's 79 people who experience regret. But if obviously all the safeguards are taken away, that regret is going to skyrocket. Yeah. Right. Yep. The other way of phrasing that would be to say that gender confirming surgery appears to have a satisfaction rate of about 99% according to that meta analysis, which is remarkably high, especially <coughs> when we compare For experimental it surgery. to yeah, it other is. surgeries. And that's the kicker. Because <laughs> do you know what kind of surgery actually has quite high regret rates? Knee replacements, but there's no need for a psych evaluation. <laughs> What's the thing she's got up there? I could totally yeah. see the knee replacement being higher because they they That's totally amazing. sell them on it. They tell them like, yes. you're, you're going to be like a brand new knee. You're going to feel like you're 15 years yeah. old again. And they're like, wow, yeah, it doesn't work out. Yeah. It's a very you know long, painful, I think, recovery process. Right. Um, but what were the odds? Right? Yeah. I know. What were the, what were the odds that actually all of these you know necessary surgeries? Uh, actually, no. These are low, 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 low approval rating afterwards. But this this one that 
is just hip and fashionable and has progressive activists doing all the studies for it. 99%. 99%. What were the odds? How many? Cutting off your balls or your tits. <laughs> Not nearly 100% right. satisfaction. Right. What are the odds? How many questionnaires got dropped behind the cabinet, basically, yeah. is what you're saying, right? Well, uh, uh, how much self-selection was going on in these well, in these surveys? You know, A like, lot, because when I was going through the individual studies, uh, most of them would have very low participation rates. They would send out a bunch of questionnaires, and they'd get back like 30%. And even, wow. like, even one of wow. them that I was looking at, or actually a bunch of them I was looking at, they would even say... At the end in the conclusion section, they'd say, you know, a limitation, the study's main limitation was the sample representativeness with a response rate of 37%, similar to the attribution rates of most follow-up studies. Our study probably suffered from a selection bias. So we must not make a suicide joke. We mustn't make a suicide joke. What's, well, that could be another issue too. If someone does commit suicide, they're not going to obviously They didn't even send back paperwork, their, their survey. You know? Right. Yeah. So- yeah like fuck's sake Not it's good. so obvious this is bullshit right. but the, the argument she's about to make is so goofy do you know what kind of surgery actually has quite high regret rates knee replacements but there's no need for a psych evaluation before you get one of them because it's no, because <laughs> Not it's not a psychological problems. problem. You go, oh, this, the doctor, they take an x-ray and they say, oh, you don't have any fucking cartilage in your knee. Like, what? You don't have to like be like, well, you know, did someone touch you when you were 10? Did they touch you on the knee? Is that why you want to get knee surgery? Like, what the are fuck? You, are you actually fucking mental? You yeah, want knee is... surgery? Don't you know the regret rate for that? <laughs> yeah. Listen, this is why, this is how we know that Abigail's not grifting. She's too stupid to grift. Yeah, that's, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> This argument's crazy. I honestly, I think, I think that she is smart enough to know that she's lying and selling horseshit to people. I think I, she's smart I enough. Get, this is like I, the, you I can make listen. Is, you can I make intelligent knows, arguments. This is not it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, but I, but I think she knows that the audience she has cultivated is not mm. smart enough to understand exactly what you just said, and so it doesn't matter. She's getting paid Maybe. either way. She's yeah. getting validated either way. I think she knows. Right. I don't know. This is just so Call dumb. Call me cynical, but... You don't have to get a psych evaluation for your knee replacement. <laughs> oh, my God. Therefore, chop off your balls. When you get your tonsils out, <laughs> the doctor just looks at your tonsils. Why don't you have to go see a psychiatrist first? Jesus. That's such a ridiculous argument. Another example? Nose jobs. No psych evaluations there. Surgeon just says, okay, tell me what you want, Cyrano de Bergerac or Lord Voldemort? Well, first of all, I, unless you have like an injury most or a medical concern, most mm -hmm. nose jobs are entirely cosmetic anyway, so you, yeah. you don't really need a doctor. To do Go anything, ask for the Voldemort and see what the doctor says. That's what I'm... Also, aren't they done privately? I mean, well, where? <laughs> sure. well, I, yeah. I, I, I mean, I I mean I, if it's cosmetic, if it's purely cosmetic and not uh, reconstructive... Then I yeah. assume it would be. Yeah. If your nose gets bitten off by a dog, they probably pay for it in the NHS. Right. But if you're like, you know, I just want to get a couple inches shaved off. They probably mm -hmm. No, the the NHS does not provide cosmetic nose surgery. Even yeah, but if they classify you're injured? if you're injured, no, that, it's not. No, no, no. It's not. It's not it's called not cosmetic. cosmetic surgery yeah. if you're injured. It's called like reconstructive yeah. or something. So yeah, four to seven thousand pounds in the UK. And it's cosmetic, uh, unless it's obviously for an injury or something, but that's right. different. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, no, you, you would have to pay for that yourself. Sure. So, yeah, no. I'm not surprised the NHS isn't sending you for a psychiatric evaluation <laughs> for something they don't offer. Why would they? You, you Wait, if you go to, like, the, the salon, you want to get your hair dyed blue, do you have to get an NHS evaluation beforehand? Well, the NHS doesn't provide the service, so why would I have to talk to them at all? I mean, I don't know. It just doesn't make sense to me. If I can get my hair dyed blue, why can't I get my testicles removed? Well, this is the thing. I, I, I think this has got to be a grift. It can't just be that Abigail is so phenomenally captured by her audience that it just doesn't matter. Well, None of this matters. Nothing. Well, matters. you'll see. It. So at the end, when she gives her thoughts on gender dysphoria, they're so wacky that maybe okay. you'll change your I don't, I don't think i'll be able to lock. i've got to go really i should have gone. that's okay I I take off. thanks for dropping I was, I was i was enjoying the stream yes but um it's always no, we'll, we'll carry on for five more minutes and that way. Okay. i'll just run off if you're not going to block cis people getting medical care on the grounds that they might regret it 
it's pretty paternalistic to only do it for us. Yes. The argument from regret is supposed to justify having this two-track system. No, it's but paternalistic. Actually, That's it right. assumes Shut up. You're right. the very thing it's supposed to be arguing for, yes. namely that trans medicine and cis medicine should be separate. Yep. That trans regret <laughs> and cis regret... What's a cis medicine? medicine? What's a cis so medicine? ridiculous. It's like ah, mental... Trans people have never got a fucking knee replacement. That's what... Ah. It's like mental health versus physical yeah. health i mean yes. that's it's the split this would be like saying <laughs> oh i want to go to the doctor and be like doctor i feel sad can you give me like a bunch of uppers and the doctor's yeah. like well let's explore this first and you're like no fuck you you bigot just give me the <laughs> just give me the brain altering chemicals i said okay? i was sad yeah. for heaven's sakes yes what do you yeah. need give me the speed okay i'm feeling down <laughs> it's like what, what is this argument they put Should that on never people's charts uh, they got like yeah. drug seeker Yes, they do. Yeah. I know. They're like, they. The, that's part of the thing. The doctor's supposed the to look out for that. The doctors know. Yeah. When yes. they show up, they're like, oh, this is a frequent flyer here. We, yeah. When the person comes in, they're like, oh, like... doctor, I need some more opioids. I'm just in so much pain. Yeah. And you're like, oh, really? Where's the pain? Oh, it's everywhere. Yeah. Oh, my God. How dare you ask, you bigot? Just give me the opioids. Yeah. Life is painful. But be compared. Designing the system to avoid hypothetical regret also assumes that there is a regret. conflict of interest regret. between trans people and people who regret transitioning. But actually, we could be on the same side. There are a small number of people who do detransition. I found one study from Britain that looked at over 3,000 trans patients and found that 13 of them, about 0.4%, detransitioned. And interestingly- In what time of, period? In what time it, period? This this is very interesting. I spent a long time trying to find this study, mm -hmm. and I couldn't find the study. Uh -oh. now, I don't know if you can see, if you can kind of zoom in at the top of there, you'll notice that this quote-unquote study has something very interesting about it. You notice it has a date and time? What's it <laughs> How say? How many studies you see have a date and time on them? I, can, I can't Not say. Usually what, what are the dates? Then? It says Thursday, April 11th at 1630 That's it's because this isn't a study this is like a presentation someone came oh at wow. a conference and the, the reason you can't find it, it's not a study that all exists is like it, this abstract which by the way this is like the worst done quote unquote study of all time all they did was they just took medical records from patients from for a year from 2016 to 2017 they fed them through an algorithm where they inserted keywords like detransition or regret and then the mm -hmm. computer just spouted out like the number of files they could find that no way that. no that's, way. yes way that's what this did and it oh and it took everyone's medical records so this could be like all the people that are just applying for a first appointment are included in this total wow like it's just it's totally fucking insane it's the, that's why it's not a study mm. yeah but also okay this is in one year and the next year and the next year come on let's right you know? Yeah. Detransitioned temporarily and retransitioned later. The study could only find three people who stopped study. permanently. Although there might be more, because if you just stop taking your hormones and go into the clinic, then you're not going to turn up in the data. But regardless, even if it is only three people, they still matter. There you go. They still need yep. healthcare too. And having to go around the houses to try and get it the same way we do is presumably just as much of a pain in their ass. And this is the really maddening thing. Wait. <laughs> she's, trying to, she's trying to ignore the argument, which is like, well, wait a minute. Like, yeah, if they want to detransition now, it's going to be like a hassle. But the whole point of all the barriers of entry is to prevent, is to turn away all the people that don't actually have trans don't don't actually have gender dysphoria. They don't actually need the transition. That's the entire point of all this. And those numbers you've never looked at. It's useless to look at regret rates. You have to look at the, the number of patients that have been seen by doctors and then decided to not go through with it. That would be the actual thing to look at if you were interested in the real numbers. Mm -hmm. The real joke of the juice. If the NHS just gave us an informed consent healthcare system, it would save them a whole lot of money and time and produce better healthcare outcomes for everyone who uses it. That's why I personally cannot accept the argument that we should just suck it up because the NHS is in crisis. And if you take nothing else from today's video, then please let it be this. 
the deadly waiting times for trans healthcare in Britain are not caused by underfunding, excessive demand, or a lack of staff. And when the NHS says that, I'm really sorry, but they're just not telling the truth. Sorry, what? These- you like that declarative statement with zero evidence? Just, that's just not true. <laughs> the waiting even- times are not because of underfunding or a lack of staff. What, where are they from? Just bigotry, man, I guess. Yeah, it's just a bigotry. But why, why bigotry against cancer patients? Well, just, listen, those dirty cancer true. patients spreading their cancer. <clears throat> Fucking what a what a what a statement. Yes. Yes. Balls. Aren't, well, that's the wrong phrase. <laughs> Careful. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay, sorry, carry on. <laughs> Those. Mm. These problems are caused by bad system design. Oh. And once oh. I understood that, what does that, that mean? Wow. What does that even mean? Bad it doesn't mean anything. No, 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 that's great. Because the, the wastefulness of the NHS is a genuine problem with socialized medicine. Sure. Right. Because, of course, there's no incentive right. to prune the system. And in fact, the every incentive is to bloat the system as much as possible, which is, of course, what has happened. And so she's not wrong. By being like, yeah, this is a hideously wasteful system. It's like, yeah, <laughs> yes, it is. Well, but good luck with that. The argument she's trying to make, which is kind of not making it directly because it would be crazy, is that technically it's not a question of funding because technically they could just throw out all the restraints and have people just walk up to the doctor and get this, yeah. you know, get whatever they want without the doctor actually doing the entire thing of being a fucking doctor. Like she doesn't that want a true. doctor. She wants like a a... She wants an app on her phone where yeah. she just pushes a button and it just gives her whatever medical you know treatment she wants without it, like a person looking at it. Yeah, this is um, essentially a cosmetic procedure in right. their mind, right? But like this this isn't meaningful. This isn't like life changing or something. Apparently. Well, it can't it can't be life changing, but the issue is just like well, obviously it is. Jesus, <laughs> like the whole, yeah, like the whole point is just like. You just don't want a doctor. You just want to be able to do whatever you fuck. You just want people, you want to do whatever you want and other people have to pay for it, essentially, mm. the way you want. Mm, sounds familiar. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, listen, if, if that's what you want, if you want to just, you know, be able to do whatever you want to your body, then, you know, at the very least, you have to pay for it. Okay. Yeah. At the very least. Yeah. I don't want no regret on I, my conscience. And this is, but this is what annoys me. She'll never, ever talk to someone that disagrees with her. She'll never There's be no... challenged on her ideas because this is such an absurd argument. Yeah. There's no incentive to do so. No. Yeah, there is. I was no... ready for what came next because Colonel Cathcart sat me down and he said, okay, you clearly understand the system and all of its problems. So what do you Propose private healthcare. Chapter <laughs> I mean, six. Essentially. <laughs> okay. Do we believe that she, you know, she's talking to all these high level people, and one of them actually like, so random YouTuber, tell me what to do. Like, do you really think that happened? No, of course not. If it actually happened, it was an exasperated like, well, what do you want me to do? You know? It was yeah, like exactly. A real, oh, you know, now that you're asking, here, let me give you yeah. my plan. That was rhetorical. Uh, you know, Shut the fuck up and get out of my exactly. office. <laughs> <laughs> this is not the first time that the NHS has dropped the ball. And looking at previous mistakes might help us to learn something. Didn't they do a bunch of lobotomies back in the 60s? I feel like they did. Uh, yeah. I mean, in America. Uh, no, it was in the 30s and 40s. Like UK. Oh, well. okay. But Come on, UK's yeah. got lobotomies on their hands, Sitch. Don't think they're innocent. <laughs> You know they it did a bunch of them. Like, yeah. They did a lot of lobotomies and a lot of shock treatment in America. Of course. They should not have done. But. So with that in mind, I'd like to talk for a moment about the natural births scandal. Sometimes... Oh, this is the boring part, I remember. We can skip the natural births. I mean, stuff if you want, but. cesarean sections were considered... She, ne- she's actually wrong. She conflates she? two oh, different really? yeah, Can she conflates imagine? two different things, which is that it's true that from like 2004 to 2017, the NHS was 
trying to recommend against cesarean sections for some reason. Mm -hmm. But then 2017, they got rid of that. And the scandal she's talking about were a bunch of babies uh, that were dying. They all died in this one specific hospital. And it's because after 2017, this one specific hospital, for some reason that is never really explained, even though it's horrific, the whoever was administrating the hospital was was pressuring doctors to like keep the numbers of cesareans very low. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of babies ended up dying because of all these, you know, alter, you know, birth uh, mm. defects and birth, uh, you know, problems because they weren't right. properly delivered. He was a big House of the Dragon fan. He was like, no, only natural births. From yeah, there you out. go. But that was after the NHS already changed the policy. And when mm, I read the report right. about this, they never explained why they really did this. They just said like, well, this was just the idea of the person running this hospital. Now I'm going to go now. So thanks, yeah, for, thanks, coming on, yeah, thanks for coming on, Carl. Thanks for coming on. It's yeah, nice hanging out been, with you again. Yeah, yeah, it's been great. It's been tremendous fun. Take, Take care, man. Chaps. Take care. Nowadays, nobody wants to do natural birth. Like everybody plans cesarean really? section. Yeah, it's like it's like a huge thing because it's like I think it's a lot less work for the woman, obviously. Well, yeah, because they just what they give you an epidural and then they just yeah cut they, it out of you. Yeah, and not only that, it's like you have to push and do the scene from the movie. Look, you, you want it to. <laughs> it's yeah. weird because there's got to be. I mean, over time, there's going to be an evolutionary pressure there, right? Sooner or later, natural birth is not even really going to be possible because the um, brain is not, going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. Not necessarily, but... I mean, it could happen, though, easily. It could? I no, I mean, you're right. It could happen. Uh, not necessarily, but... Yeah. It, it said... I don't know what the numbers are in America. In England, when I was looking at the study, it said that something like 25% of births were cesarean. So still the minority. Mm-hmm. And the problem was in that one hospital had all the problems. They dropped the number. They were intentionally trying to get the number to be like 10% for some mm -hmm. reason. And so that's why all these babies were dying. Right. Because you get, I mean, evidently there was a lot of infant mortality because of, and also the mothers would die during childbirth. So, I mean, yes, it's pretty common. Right. That's why cesarean right. yeah. section really. Really changed, uh, yeah. really revolutionized, you know, human women. Humans and women not dying in uh, mm -hmm. you know, birth complications when they could do that. Which is great. Yeah. I was a cesarean, but. Were you? Well, it's only, it's not, it wasn't because of me. It was because Lame. my brother, my older brother, <laughs> who was uh, late, mm -hmm. they decided to do a cesarean because he was too late. He, they're like, what the fuck? <laughs> Just get out of there. And then apparently, I don't know if this is true, but. My mom said that the doctors at the time had an idea that if you already had a cesarean, it was better to just do it again. Mm -hmm. That apparently if you have one, it can create complications trying to have a natural birth at, after that. Oh, so, interesting. Okay. Supposedly. I don't know if they've changed the thought on that since, but. So yeah. yes, I was born out of the stomach and not the vagina. Ouch. So there you go. Terrible. That's right. Unlike you disgusting people, I've never touched my mother's vagina. There's a joke in there. I know there's a joke in there. You can search for it. You can look. Anyway. But we can skip the... I don't know what exact part the uh, cesarean stuff ends at, but we can kind of skim through it. It's just so it's not blatantly really off topic. Yeah. It was because of bigotry against women. <laughs> Pregnant women. The best doctor can cut open start a section from forced delivery to learning in trans medicine. The RCGP recommended that years ago, so it'd be Wait. changed. The report from that inquiry would then give us a nice place to start talking about material changes, like apologies, resignation. They didn't oh, okay, feel the ones who died would be if there was some kind of inquiry or truth commitment. Do it for the natural birth scandal, then they can do it for us. One thing. Okay, so she's mad because she's like, they're, sh they, they're able to do some, okay, this is kind of crazy. Because of this one hospital where like, I think it's like 200 babies died or some like mm -hmm. huge amount of babies Ouch. died. A bunch of women died. A bunch of babies had birth defects uh, because of this. And so obviously they investigated it. And mm -hmm. so she's demanding, <laughs> she's demanding an investigation of equal caliber on, you know, these long wait times. Yeah. 
This is in America. We would do some sort of congressional hearing, right? thing that would be good then would be if there was some kind of inquiry or truth commission set up to look at the issues we've raised today, somewhere where the people who were denied health care and the families of the ones who died had a chance to tell their story. So, so actually, there was this. This actually happened, only it wasn't it was for everyone in the NHS because all the waiting times are very long. It wasn't just for trans issues, but she doesn't reference that study at all or that investigation at all, because it says that it was just because of resources and doesn't say anything about transphobia. So she's suspiciously silent on the actual investigation that she wanted to happen that happened. Right. Because if you can't use it to d dredge up bigotry, then what's the point, right? <laughs> what is the point exactly? There's no point then. Well, a bit more to figure out what's going on is the point. But well, We listen. Do we really care about why things are happening? We Look, can't I, virtue signal about them. I heard that Philosophy Tube's channel was very objective. So mm. objective. Oh, that's what she did say so, that. Yeah. Yes. Yes. That was the grift. Mm -hmm. That was the grift. Formal right. than Lady in Silly Costumes makes a video essay. It would be nice, too, if that inquiry featured a majority of trans people on its governing body. There have been NHS reports into this sort of thing before, but uh, they tend to be... Do you... Can you imagine? I know. Uh, yeah, if Daniel wants to come on, Daniel can come on. Can you imagine? Are you talking um, to me? Or are you talking to the chat? Talking to everyone. Sure. Daniel sure. can come on. I'll send Daniel a link. Does Daniel want to come on and school us? I don't know. Why well, did I was Kavah is yelling that I should bring Daniel on in my DMs. Daniel, <laughs> well, can I share the picture of Kavah? What's the picture? Oh, maybe I got a different. Maybe I got a different Kavah response. What picture? Uh, it's some Instagram post from ContraPoints. ContraPoints. Mm -hmm. I trapped a nice English boy into showing me around uh, Edinburgh. <laughs> It's ContraPoints and Abigail, but as a guy. Really? Yeah. Interesting. Right. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. I mean, maybe, maybe. So evidently there was some dating going on. Well, I mean, maybe some friendship at the very least. But... Oh, cis people have investigated themselves and concluded they did nothing wrong. <laughs> yeah, like, okay, so we're going to have only trans people can administer and investigate trans medicine. Mm -hmm. That is that the argument here? Yeah, I think we should apply that to everything. Anorexia, bulimia, yeah. schizophrenia. Only knee, schizophrenic knee repla doctors. Knee replacements. Oh, like doctors that have had knee replacements can uh, weigh in on knee replacement surgery. I think so. What do you think? Well, wait a minute. This is going to be a big problem for all the uh, male gynecologists. There. Oh, yeah. I guess <laughs> we're going to have to get rid of them. Yeah. No more Sorry, male, male gynecologists. gynecologists. Yeah. Yeah. Get out of here. Yeah. Huh. Are there a lot of female urologists? I don't know. I mean, I've been looking for... I mean, I don't know. <laughs> So it's just like, yeah, I'm dying yes, for a female yes. urologist. That's what I really need. Right. The rep you should get Adam that on inquiry. the show. What? should get me on the show? I'm on the show. Yeah. Are you, though? Hit it. Oh, my God. These pictures are horrible. They're selling what? hormones over the internet. Oh, you just, you just looked at the pictures? Yeah, it's evil. Did you bring them up on stream? I brought one of them, but not okay. the other ones too. Don't awful. look at my giant girl dick picture. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Made with right, 5G then... technology? What the fuck is that? It's a joke. Are they... I mean, it's like selling drugs. It's basically just selling drugs. It's not right? like selling drugs. It is selling drugs. Definitionally. Yeah. yeah. But it's a weird kind of drug because, you know, like I said... I've done drugs occasionally, such. It's <laughs> sometimes, you know, it's uh -huh. inter it's entertaining. It's fun. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. 
But there is often a point when you're like, okay, this shit is going too far. <laughs> like I need to, I need to chill out. This needs to go. I need to return to normal, return to sanity. Right. Right. Kava, do you want to come on, Kava? Instead of pressuring Daniel, Daniel, yeah. Daniel doesn't want to come on. It's Why fine. don't you come on, Kava? What's going you can on? Come on if you want, Kava. I like Kava. Kava's super yeah. smart. Kava has great videos. You should check out her channel. Yes. Kava also, I mean, has pictures of contrapoints and Ollie dating. So <laughs> I can bring those pictures up. No, that's not important. To you. That's not important to the audience, okay? I like the dirt. Mm -hmm. And give us a nice... I like the drama. Nice place to start talking about material changes, like apologies, resignations, changing the system, memorial... Look at this. Fire everyone! Do you know they dropped my letter behind the desk? I want heads! Well, there's an interesting thing she kind of goes into. It's like, oh, you know... They just want to talk about what they're going to do in the future. They don't want to talk about apologies. It's like, well, I mean, isn't that more important? What they're going to like do about it rather than just saying, well, let's address your fifis. Okay. Here's an apology for this thing that we had absolutely no control over, which was the long wait times. Did you <laughs> Because see... there's just physically not enough doctors. Did you see my poll on public apologies? I did see your poll. Which on is more apologies. beta soy, public yeah. apologies or demanding public apologies? Demanding public apologies won overwhelmingly. Yeah. Of course. Of course they did. Yeah. Nobody likes this. And yet here you have Abigail demanding a public apology. We need mm -hmm. apologies before we can move on. How about we just move <laughs> on? It's so weird, too, because it's, if it's like some kind of institutional thing, I mean, who the fuck are you apologizing for? Uh, the institution fire the people then you right. don't need to apologize look that guy fucked up and we fired him what are we yeah, apologizing but for but this is why this is so stupid like what who's at fault here no one no one it's the, the that's at fault is that they don't have enough money yeah for the system the, fault, the fault is, is yeah. rich youtubers not paying enough in taxes that's there you go the fault yeah they need more money and they need more doctors. Right. And when, if you actually read the studies that you claim you read, they all say this. They maybe, all say they don't have enough money in doctors. Maybe you should apologize for not just you paying for your own health care. Well, no, it's the it's the system's fault because they don't have a model where I just walk up to them and I say, "Give me hormones," and they say, "Yes, ma'am," and mm -hmm. they just do it. Yes. So it is. There's the there's the fault. Yeah. Oh, now Daniel shows up. Don't let him in. After I already sent the link to Kava. Oh, no. Now they're both coming on? Oh, God. I'm going to take a nap. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Reels, <sighs> damages, public executions, that sort of thing. It would be cool. Oh, look. Public execution joke. How do you like that? <laughs> Terrible. Well, if G GPs got some training in trans medicine. The RCGP recommended that years ago. So it'd be Look at that. <laughs> if the GP gets some training in trans medicine, they got to give them some training in social contagion. <laughs> it's like I know. Well, it so, well, it's weird cuz Abigail kind of gets her It's like what's like the be careful what you ask for. Because mm -hmm. essentially the new policy, I believe, that Daniel probably knows more specifically cuz he's a big nerd. Was that they're going to allow the GPs to make more um, specific recommendations about this sort right. of thing? But they're getting they're moving away from affirmative care model. Right. They're going to try to do all like make sure like well maybe you just have anxiety problems maybe you just have depression maybe you're doing with other things like they're going to like actively try to move away from this oh you they must are. be trans yeah idea. exactly so they're going to be like you're autistic go home <laughs> <laughs> get out of my office right. That's not going to be good for. What do you mean you don't know how Zoom works? You click it, and it it works. Yeah, I don't know what you mean. Look, we've had Dan on before, so. Mm -hmm. Oh, maybe we did it in Discord. I don't know. No, we did it on Zoom. Right. Yeah. Don't be a loser. Great if they actually got around to it. You just There's lots the of people. Link. Who... 
Yeah, you just click the link. Uh, what do you mean? You benefit from that sort of thing, actually. People who have endometriosis or who go through menopause have a really hard time getting GPs to listen to them. So if doctors... <laughs> Look at this. This bitch going through menopause. Like, I'm going <laughs> to listen to this fucking nagging Karen in my office. I, of course I not. know. I know. They have trouble getting people to listen to them because all they're doing is bitching about their, their fucking kids and shit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's totally irrelevant. Nobody cares. I didn't. I'm, you're not paying me to be your therapist, bitch. Look, you want your uterus cut out or what? Doctors actually knew a little bit more about the communities they're meant to be Hello. helping. Hello. Thing on. as well. Look Hiya. Hey now. Oh, perfect. Awesome. You could get in here, but Dan was like. Uh, Daniel's a huge boomer and doesn't understand how Zoom works. You so. click a button and it just does it. You, <laughs> you, you think it would be that easy, but apparently it is not. Oh my god! Sometimes you have to. Anyway, hi, devices. what's up? Hey, how's it going? What do you want? What do you want? What are we getting wrong here? Well, okay. So, what people don't understand about Daniel is he's a huge spurg, and he's really smart. We and he understand knows, that. Like, well, he's, he's not smart because he's asking me. He sent me a screenshot because he doesn't know how to make <laughs> the internet allow an application to open. Oh uh, well, he's not computer smart, but he uh, did a lot of research on the Tavistock situation, right? And the like the cast report. I don't know if you know about the cast report. Yeah, yes. I, I read the, okay. the cast. Report. You read the yeah. cast report. Yeah. yeah. So he's doing a lot of research on that, and he is like currently in Discord. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. sparking out about it so of course it is about everything that we're getting wrong uh at least one thing that he feels we didn't missed. get anything wrong what are you talking about i've never got anything i don't think he wrong. said you were wrong he no he say, wanted me to he had an extra point to, to add an to extra something. point yeah and i can just find it or read it she was talking about uh the medical missing the point of why Al abigail's drug point is stupid uh, most of the drugs used. Oh, I read that. It was just boring, so that's why I didn't say it. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, you can go ahead and so say it. So basically, the, the the problem is these are not the the drugs are not meant to treat these things. Right, they're off label stuff. So, so there, you have to prioritize issue. people who yeah. actually need the drugs before they expire, and yeah, well, just carrying it at right. sort of not off label. Um, uses it's just gonna be bad but for other people. Abigail would never acknowledge that because acknowledging acknowledging that would show that this is still an experimental usage of these uh, medicines and these and this chemical. Yes, and, stuff. and so they would also yeah. they would also like dispute the whole uh, how necessary it is, right? Whether it's cosmetic or elective or medically necessary. Well, and she's really... making the argument that it's medically necessary because otherwise all, everyone's going to Yeah, like basically sure. if you don't get it, you die. That's, right, that's right. sort of the way they paint it. Which regardless of whether it's true doesn't mean that you just get to do it without a doctor. Yeah. Like, that's irrelevant to whether it's Absolutely. necessary or not. Oh, and I also, well, the only other, the only thing I bring to the table really is mm -hmm. the dirt on Contra. <laughs> Which is really tell, all I care about anyway. So. Tell us the difference. Oh, nice. Let's drink, drink some tea. So this is all, I mean, it's more or less confirmed, but some elements are pure rumor and innuendo. Mm -hmm. And I can't, I wouldn't do the, like, there's a very nasty rumor that I'm not going to repeat. So give us the but nasty people one can... first then. <laughs> well, the... What do you mean the nasty? Allegation, the allegation that goes around, like... Mm -hmm. Kiwi Farms and 4chan. This is the type very of reputable sources. Of them. <laughs> very reputable sources. There are autistic people on said sources who believe that Philosophy Tube sexually mm -hmm. uh, assaulted. Oh Contra. my god! Mm -hmm. Based and on this what? is this is not confirmed, right? This, this is, is not at all confirmed. This, this is like some, this is like a fanfic on 4chan. This is schizos on the internet. Oh, right now, the element that seems true mm -hmm. is that they had some kind of relationship right uh it mm -hmm. was probably romantic it did not end well can you really classify just being bad in bed as sexual assault i feel like you should be able to <laughs> I, I well i mean like uh, regardless what, what had happened, that experience <laughs> i feel like you should be able to call that sexual assault was 
the relationship ended very abruptly uh-huh. and very negatively uh-huh. uh, to the point where Contra will not talk about it. People have asked uh-huh. her directly, like, what happened there? And she just will not discuss uh-huh. it. She's on not speaking terms with Philosophy Tube. They, uh-huh. they will not speak to each other. The other Now, the other image I sent you, Adam, is really interesting. It was from an uh-huh. article that uh, Abigail posted on, I think, some online site about their transition. And I think the opening of it was, as soon as I came out, I went to an ex of mine who is trans herself. Mm -hmm. And you're like, okay. And when I told them that I was transitioning, they told me, I'm so sorry for you. It's a curse. Mm -hmm. So this is, oh yeah. So that's supposed to be something that does sound like something ContraPoints would say. Exactly. Yeah. So. Which is really interesting. So that's why I say it's more or less confirmed. But oh, I see. Okay. Because well, he, I, well, I say he, but he. at the time of Ollie, okay, uh, Ollie becoming Abigail has right. routinely sort of nudge, nudge, winked, winked about their relationship with Contra, and meanwhile Contra is dead silent about it. Hmm. And Look it's really interesting. Gossiping. I know. <laughs> I know. Gossiping. But it's like it's just really interesting from this a is psychological. Gossip. This is like news. This is not gossiping. <laughs> this is because, not. Uh-huh. Yeah, sure. However, you can sleep at night. Whatever you need. Because How dare they you. date. Because they date. Mm-hmm. They break up. Abigail emerges out of the ashes of this relationship and copies the mm-hmm. entire aesthetic mm-hmm. and just like gradually becomes another contra. And it's very weird. Yeah. Well. We it's funny because we covered that the actual video where that first started. Yes, we mm-hmm. did with the way. I think wasn't it the one of the Jordan Peterson videos? I think so. Oh yeah. yeah. Well, there was the, there's the Jordan she, Peterson like, one. There's the Social Constructs one. It's it, a it, bad there was one, video. It was the lighting video because oh, you spent yeah. so much time with the lighting. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Terrible. And it lighting. was yeah. And it was like the first time he was doing like a ContraPoints thing. And we were like, wait a minute, is he just copying so, ContraPoints? What's happening here? Yeah, because we, so Danimal and I, and I think it was Tennyson and Gabbles covered one of Philosophy Tube's earlier videos. Yeah, the PC uh, this was, video where uh, where he came out as bisexual and that he never yeah, came he, out as anything else again. Yes. It stopped. He there. comes out as bisexual and it's just a really fascinating pre-transition view of the kind of person this is mm-hmm. just well, he also had like a story about his like struggle with like bisexuality and kicking against the system and that one that sounded made up of course yeah yeah <laughs> oh, and how ouch. and how he, when, <laughs> I mean, when it, he was straight he would have sex with trans women mm. and so like a virtue he had to like or something like what he had to like convince his mates you know that it's that totally straight to right sleep they're with trans like women. uh are you sure about that and they said, they "Well, I'm bi right, now." Yeah, so they turned kinda... out to be correct. Yeah, that's hilarious. <sighs> Prove them right. By the way, I'm not casting any aspersions on PT being trans. I think you guys are fucking assholes. <laughs> First of all, <laughs> We're casting aspersions listen, on that. Listen, uh huh. That was sorry. Mm. I said I think she. <laughs> I said I think she is, or have convinced herself that she has done this for it. I never made the Griffin when, argument. When when PT okay. came out as trans, I think what I said was, I think. It's genuine, but mm-hmm. they're still doing it for attention. It's like a subconscious. Right. It's not that that's a lie. It's just there's some subconscious need that I see in almost every video. Mm-hmm. Is it just well, a cringy actor like wanting? It's like, yeah, it's like an actor. And it's also like, I don't know who this person is. They don't have a sense of identity. They're just almost like borderline. Mm-hmm. They just get sucked into identities every time they encounter a new person. Well, I mean, listen, it's possible they have some weird, uh, you know, contra Skin, skinwalker. Yeah, skinwalker. and they're like, well, conscious becoming trans, like I must become trans too. I don't, who knows? To me, it's well, like Adam, you, you know, know you can't really speculate on the answer. Well, that's I do true. Know actors, yeah, but, yeah, are they kind of you, you know, know weird? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they All could just be a, a desperate desbian. Who knows? theater kids yes well what did you want to talk about dan well i, I think i've already covered it oh okay <laughs> <laughs> with the drug As thing usual. well my point about the drug thing okay. was that yeah it's mostly right. off-label use so blah 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 right. blah blah 
Yeah, I'm glad no. you, you finally figured out how to click a button and get into Zoom. Well, hey, I, you know what? Okay, so it was opening the Zoom app, and then I had to open it in browser. You know, computers are Ooh, the amazing. browser. They're like, you sent me a screenshot. It's like the screenshot's All like, right. should you allow the link to open? You're like, what do I do? <laughs> we <laughs> clicked the thing and it's just loud. I don't know what to do there. You know, computers are extremely complicated. How old are you? Jesus Christ. I don't want to say my age. You're not older than Adam. Fuck. I've I've met him in person. Um, He's old. Shut up. God. My hairline's not back to the nape of my neck yet. <laughs> okay. Well, did you want to watch the rest of the video or you just want to leave? I'd be down to watch some more. Okay. Yeah. Have you seen this video? I've not. No. Oh, I've never yeah. watched a PT video. The end of this is, is a I, yeah, roller the, coaster ride. The way you described the ending oh my makes God. me really interested. Yes. Well, it's, you know, tackling prejudice in the workforce, that sort of thing would be really helpful too. Decriminalizing testosterone might also help. A lot of people do have to resort to self-medication when the NHS fails them, so a harm reduction approach would probably do a lot of good there. That's not something the NHS could do on their own. It would require political pressure to bring about. My dad suggested that I write to my MP about all this, so at time of recording, I have sent my MP... 19 emails, 12 phone calls, and one handwritten letter. God, I wish they would decriminalize Vicodin. Jeez, <laughs> why? I mean, I'm in a lot of pain here. Jeez, why I can't wish they, they would. Do it? I wish they would criminalize sending 19 emails to one person, though. Oh, d- she email cr- should be criminalized. Just any email <laughs> like, to any person. Like, so. calm down. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Jeez. All of which she has completely ignored. I got a campaign leaflet through my letterbox the other day being like, hey, remember to vote for me at the next election. And I was like, babes, you should book yourself an orchidectomy because you've got some f***ing balls. External Uh pressure could also be brought through the courts. Whenever I talk about this subject, Americans always tell me, you should launch a class action lawsuit, which sounds great, but sadly it doesn't really exist in England. That's what Sarah gets. The NHS is currently being... Because England sucks! Losers! Why don't... Yeah. Why don't the English have class action lawsuits? I don't know. I've heard this before because they suck. They're lame. It doesn't have to be a class action lawsuit. Why can't she just have a normal lawsuit? That's just Why can't just a bunch of people sue at the same time? Right. I I don't know. And actually, it's funny because I tried to look this. Well, actually, let me let me let her continue for a second. Being sued by four trans people, though, that's why Chaplain Tapman was ordered to drop my case. He's so she says that there are people that are suing because they didn't receive treatment fast enough. But when I do like a Google search on this, all the articles are about people suing because they have trans regrets. Of course. <laughs> so I, it's just kind of interesting. It's it kind is. of a fascinating little thing. I believe it's, um, is it Richie right now who's suing the NHS? Uh, the animal there's a couple. Around. Tulip yeah. R. This is the yeah, username. That, that's it, I yeah. believe he is because he was basically pushed into transitioning by the NHS. Yeah, that's the guy. They said, they said either we're going to drop all your services or you get uh, bottom surgery. Oh, yes. Right. Yeah, that was yeah. that guy. And then there was the girl who got her breast removed. Yeah, Carabelle. Yeah. Pretty rough. But, you know, that's not, that doesn't happen. Trans gets very low. It doesn't happen. Doesn't it's rare. Play. Carabelle was a little different because she zipped right through it. Yeah, that was part of the lawsuit. Yeah. And it, she was also the... on puberty blockers. That was like the main point of contention for her. Yeah. Yeah, that's what that uh, NHS public consultation that's going on until December is limiting. They're, they're saying that uh, you need to qualify for a trial for puberty blockers and they're going to st- do a longitudinal study on it before they allow wide prescription of it again. As they should. Mm hmm. And it's because like there was one, even the, the people that created the Dutch protocol were complaining. That no one's actually studying or doing research. They're all just relying on their research from like 10 years ago. And I think yeah, both pretty much every that. nation yeah. that has used the Dutch protocol is backing off. Except for the good old US of A. Explain <laughs> what the Dutch protocol is. That's the social transition, puberty blockers, and hormones, I think. Affirmative yes. care model, right? Yeah, it's the affirmative yeah, but, care model. Yes, basically. yes, yes. Affirmative about care a little with, over 10 years ago. Yeah, right. with the entire pathway, essentially. And yeah. now, like, social transition is now uh, not in the UK, at least, under the new NHS regulations. That's no longer a considered a neutral treatment. Right. 
Yeah, they because they used to consider socially transition as like this is a neutral event that will not have any influence on whether the person yeah. continues to identify in one direction or not as being trans right. or not trans. Which turned out not to be true at all. So it turned out yeah, they want to be classified true. as an active treatment measure. Yes. Shockingly, yes. The Shockingly, if you center. tell kids that they can be the other gender and live as the other gender, they tend not to go back. Mm-hmm. Mm. Well, just offering them that possibility is, you know, probably pretty enticing for a lot of them. The Tavistock Center, didn't you do a bunch of research on this, Danimal, or? On the Tavistock? Is it gone I mostly for good, the, or? No, no, it's on, it's on pause until they reshuffle. That's what the public consultation is from the NHS that's going to December. It's how they're going to kind of restructure it to, A, cut down on the wait times, but B, make sure that's the most efficable service possible. In fact, they're... Uh, one of the recommendations is that a medical doctor needs to lead the clinical teams. They need to look at multi-interdisciplinary -inter fields now, including like autism specialists. Right. And, yeah. Um, yeah. Psychology. Yeah. Neurodisability. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. I'm pretty sure didn't the CAS report specifically say that the doctors, because of the long waits, felt pressure to just kind of like push kids through the system? That was some of it. The cast report is mostly a collection of interviews of medical right. workers, patients, you know, people that have worked in the field or experienced the field. Right. Yeah. Superiors say he can't do anything that might affect the outcome. At time of recording, the case is scheduled to be heard any day now, and it could have major ramifications. At the end of the day, though, the big solution is the one that's been staring the NHS in the face for years, the one we've been asking for for years, the one that other countries already do an informed consent system i actually said this to colonel cathcart directly i said hey why not just close the gender clinics get rid of the waiting list entirely let us get our health care the same way everyone else does i mean we don't we don't need a doctor's permission to change our bodies right that's that's bodily autonomy 101 so <laughs> Yes, <laughs> you do. What are you talking about? Only in very neg negligible cases like piercings, tattoos. Yes, but even that's like regulated. You don't go to like your doctor and just say, "Give me this procedure," and the doctor says, "All good." That's like, okay, hey, I guess you got bodily about? autonomy. You can do yes. whatever you want. I've this is un this completely unheard of, and it's insane. How can she be making this argument? Is her audience stupid? They not like. You don't just walk <laughs> ding, to the ding, doctor ding, and ding, say, give ding. me a procedure. I think I mean, I'm they just conflate. The is stupid, but go ahead. They, yes. they really conflate procedures like, you know, getting a nose job to this. And they yeah. say, well, you wouldn't want to ban nose jobs. And it's funny, they'll I've had conversations on Twitter to this effect where they'll say, well, if you want to ban gender affirming surgery what about boob jobs i'm like you understand there's there's ethical concerns with all kinds of cosmetic surgery not mm -hmm. just right. gender surgery because most of these procedures are pretty high risk they have a lot of failure they're electives so they're kind of fraught with ethical problems right and some of them need to be redone with some regularity i know boob jobs in particular particularly you have to replace those implants every 10 years really because they break down yeah, yeah they, go they do sour. not last they go they go bad they start to disintegrate in your what? body and uh it's not Damn. a good thing so you have to keep getting them which means you're mm. you're signing up for surgery the rest of your life right and and that's a lot of i mean i'm sure abigail's about to go on about uh informed consent and i think we're all on the same page on that front that it's really hard it's a nice idea in theory, but it's really hard to give people actual informed consent. Of course. In particular, if they are not medical doctors, because yeah, people are really kids. bad at, they're bad at weighing risk. Like, it's just really right. difficult. Do you think so, people with implants, it's like a tire blowing out one day and they just have like a deflated boobie in the morning. They're like, Shit, I've seen it. I got to go I've get seen this videos. done. I got to call in late to work. Oh, Fuck. That's so gross. I've <laughs> definitely seen videos. Of, uh, collapsed oh boob God, job. No. That's so gross. Yeah. Oh, not good. So oh, that ruins no. your whole weekend. Don't oh. do breast implants, kids. It's it's, it's just not worth it. Oh, well, also, it seems like, listen, as a, as a yeah. connoisseur of seeing pictures of women. <laughs> <laughs> They're just not as good, right? Well, it's it's weird. Like, it seems like most of them they don't look good, and then there's like no. this, the the ones that do look good are far more rare. So I don't know like what's going on there exactly, but 
Well, it's just the shape is just not natural and it's not the same tissue. Like the superior yeah, breast tissue is fairly complex and it's got all these uh, different cell types in there. Of Maybe yeah. they got can't, coupons for can't buy simulate one free and they're just going to shitty doctors. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Mexico, I don't know what's going on. Getting there. their breast yeah. implants. I never. Uh, That's the other thing. It's just it. cheaper. You go, go to south of the border and the standards there are really sloppy. I mean, everyone agrees the system is bad. So let's make it you're worse. You're change the system. <laughs> let's just not have a system. Yeah, exactly. Aren't you? That'd and Colonel Cathcart system. said yes. I agree. Things do need to change. That's why I have a plan. A plan to change the system. Traumatic. We're just going to make the system better. I do love that answer, though. In 2020, NHS England commissioned a new pilot scheme called Trans Plus here in London. It's a sexual health clinic and a gender identity clinic rolled into one. And this is Colonel Cathcart's baby. He told me so himself. He wants this to be the future of trans health care in England. There are more clinics like it on the way. Patients and activists have been campaigning for years to get something done. And it's possible that this might represent a slight improvement at some point in the future. But when Cathcart told me this, I wept because this plan doesn't change the system at all. We still have to get permission from a doctor to get the same health care that everyone else can. GPs still have way too much power. It's still out of step with what other countries are doing. It's still a massive, unnecessary, expensive layer to the system. Patients still have no control over what happens to us. And this is the- They're, they're literally not getting the same health care everyone else is getting, though. That's the thing. It's yeah, they're not. Different. Yeah, in fact, uh, if a cis person wants to get this surgery, they'd have to go to the they, Yeah, surgery. exactly. It's completely different. Like, it's like you're turning not. a severe procedure into an elective procedure, which is why you're getting all the mental health stuff. Right. Yeah, like right. I was saying, I mean, it's it's off label use. Like, 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 like hospitals only have so many hospital beds that they budget annually, and they know, like, okay, we need another wing because we're seeing an increase here. Like, they only have so many hospital beds that they have annually right. that they can budget out. Framing you know. it as denial of care, though. I I mean, politically, I guess it's working for you, but it's just a Is it, lie. though? Because they went the, they went the kinda, exact opposite direction. Yeah, so it kind of backfired on them. Yeah, like, oh, I guess you're right, yeah. How'd that work shut out? shut down. Everything yeah. got rewritten. I'm, I'm actually shocked that not only does Abigail not address that in this video, but I was checking her Twitter feed, and I didn't see anything addressing it there either. You know, oh, it's none interesting. None of them ever have. yeah. Well, I would have thought she would have, you know, used that as like a, a selling point to kind of like go off on the NHS or something. That's but, the thing, well, because Dan, well, you're well, telling they, me you've seen radio silence on this. Maybe they don't know. Yeah, it's well, no, uh, yeah, I think they don't know because they don't pay attention to the news because they just mm -hmm. pay attention to their hug boxes. Maybe. Yeah, of course. Or maybe it, it, it kind of shatters a part of the mythology which is that all the science agrees that you know, well you have to do this affirmative care model for trans people oh that's a good i mean point. it's 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 even beyond youtubers because there was recently a trial in the uk at the first tribunal hearing of the charity status of lgb alliance that was brought on by mermaids and mermaids is a trans children charity yes. in the uk i'm sure everybody's heard of got to a lot of trouble yes <laughs> right but 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 during testimony that during this court case where they were challenging LGB alliance, well, like the leader of mermaids, the leader of the LGB consortium, which is the one that coordinates and networks a lot of LGB groups. It sounds like a you Star know, Wars villain. The LGB yeah. consortium. <laughs> the like uh, leader of another trans. All all of them said that. Now I haven't looked at the cast report. I haven't read it. And just like, well, mm -hmm. this is like probably the most important report that pertains to your field of work that you're doing right. in charity. Like it's hmm. like that, like Matt Walsh clip where he didn't know, like he got the number wrong on kids on puberty blockers. Yeah, it's like, right, like fucking documentary about blockers. Like, what are you like, talking yeah. about? Like, made a fucking right. documentary. You don't notice shit. Come on, right? But it's, but it's like this is like these innocent right, mistakes. But, but this is their guys. people's jobs, and they don't know this. Right? Could have happened to well, anyone. I think I think they're just covering their ears and going la la la. Like, yeah, yeah. They don't Maybe. they don't want to face the reality that. A bunch of people got together and said, this looks fishy. This looks not correct. By the, the way, she said the, that they've been working on. Oh, go ahead. No, what are you saying? 
Well, she said that they've been working on it for years to get these like medical things taken care of. And I understand mm-hmm. that there's been like faults in the healthcare system for trans healthcare for a while. Sure. But like, but like, it's only been in like the past few years that it's been this like meteoric spike, right? In in people entering these services, like it hasn't been that long. Like like people are just getting their feet under them about this now, and she's acting like, oh, we've been fighting this battle for years. And just like, no, this is this is a new thing. This is a contemporary issue of today. For like, twenty this, years, this is I think fighting was. to get yeah, and I think even the kind of demands are different now too. Past twenty sixteen, because you've got people who want novel gender surgeries you've got people who just want the balls removed you got people who want uh both i mean it helps penis, in the summertime you know both a penis and a vagina i know one no just get sheath underwear who's okay. been trying to get that <laughs> surgery uh people who want like just weird variations gender neutralization surgeries where they just Which, have no genitals at all i'm not like i can't even imagine how that's well those happen. were barbie movie fans but yeah um but basically you just have a pee hole that's all you have oh. you don't have a penis or a vagina like hitler that's yeah kind of like him. yeah and there are people who try to get these surgeries and it's like okay you, you're inventing a whole bunch of surgeries and it helps you fit the, the number nugger, you know yeah <laughs> and the, tons more people showing up at your door demanding essentially free surgery at seven clinics in the entire country like how mm-hmm. did you think this is going to turn out Mm -hmm. there is no other option yeah Yeah, they just didn't immediately roll over and give you everything you wanted so you're being discriminated against of course that's me he wants us to just forget about all the horrible things that have happened sarah ahmed talks about how institutions have their own relationships to time what philosophers call temporality When you make a complaint, you look back at the harm that was done. But in all my conversations with NHS senior officers, they only want to look forwards. They don't want to look back. I like that that she says that like that's a bad thing. They only want to look forward. Like, isn't that good? You you want to look forward before thinking? Change the problem? Not mire yourself in the no, past? No, institutions should ruminate in the past, yes. you see, and talk, think about injustices of the past like, all the time mm-hmm. in order I to know. guilt themselves into acting now. I like it. Rather you. than God. anticipating problems down the road. You just got to feel guilty and bad. You should you teach hurt CRT. My feet. You'd be really good at it. <laughs> yeah, there you go. You hurt my feet. Well, fee-fees. I am a school teacher, and, you know, that's all I do. That'd be great. I just knew teach, it. Uh, teach CRT to, to the kiddos. I knew it. Hey, Kev, remember in the PT video we watched, she went over queer temporality? Queer temporality. Wait, what is how, it? How, it's, how, it's how queer people experience time differently, Sid. Is this like, is this, is this like CPT? We have QPT? <laughs> <laughs> what, what well, is, no, it's about... It was, it was about starting your queer life because some people come out later in life so they didn't get to experience that part exactly. of their life as being so, queer. So it's like they're baby queers. Yeah. Which Ugh. also brings us into little space, which <laughs> oh, no. yeah. I don't think I should bring space? up little space. Wait, wait, wait. No, 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 what is little no, space? No, no, no. Uh, no, no. Google it. Is this don't Google like, it. Did Everyone it? Google little no, space. And Adam, you look it up. I don't want to look it up. I'm scared. Little space, I'm on it. Okay. Let me what check is this? it Adam's out. the perfect person that searches. Little you, space. you might get on an FBI list. No, yeah. I'm not going to do it. What is it? Just tell me. I'm not going to. It's like child. It. It's like it's like children play, like pretending you're like. Oh, like people pretending child. to be kids sexually. Yes. Yeah, it didn't didn't oh. Jessica usually you, sick. Did who do that? Jessica you the, probably did. Oh the one yeah, that yeah. Was like I don't suing know. Suing Kleenex to shave her. Yeah, I don't know. But mm-hmm. wax her balls. <laughs> wax the balls, bigot. Wax her. At balls. the warnings they were given, at the promises they made, at the harm that was done. Especially, they don't want to look back at the people who died as a result of their decisions, or the people who were permanently negatively impacted. Who who are these people? I mean, I I'd like to look into it. I'm. Can we look? That's into the it? hard thing. Like, how do you find the numbers of who died because they yeah. were denied gender there, care? Well, she said they added people to the list, and I was like, okay, well, give us those names. Who are those people that you added to the list so we can see what mm-hmm. really happened? It makes me skeptical because, you know, they every year they talk about the 
oh all yeah the trans exactly. mur- all the trans murders right yep like all the people being murdered in the street and you look up the actual numbers and it's like 12 yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly well uh, yeah and like half of them probably have there, there are there are more else. trans people who are murderers than there are people trans people who get murdered yeah. yeah i saw i don't know if that was you i saw someone post that on twitter i, I yeah. didn't look into it but oh, that's weird <laughs> it's nice nice that they want to open more clinics at some point but what about the people who need health care now what about the people who are f- dead even if we only look at the ones who survived tens of thousands of people were kept waiting and suffering needlessly for years they knew about it and did nothing. They're still suffering. This is still happening. People's lives are being destroyed by this system. So we should make it easier for more people to potentially have their lives destroyed by just removing the doctor element to a medical procedure, to an extreme medical procedure. Well, she she said tens of thousands. She's not, obviously not. I mean, was it 11,000 that were on the waiting list for gender clinics? It is, so it's That was in one year. So maybe if you count them all up over the years, but yeah. I don't know. I don't think that many well, people I don't know have how gone many those, through the system. I don't know how many of those people actually have gender dysphoria though, or, you know, right. or I false mean, that's positives. The other yeah. Question. Well, and even, I mean, like you said earlier that like, even like children diagnosed with gender dysphoria, like, like, I, like, like children can be diagnosed with gender dysphoria and meet all the criteria and everything and still come out of it without yeah, this is, needing to course. transition. Yeah. And so, I mean, those kids are in the system too that aren't necessarily going through all the care and they need mm-hmm. that assistance as well. Right. I mean, well, you think, you know, for all her citations, you'd have a citation about this. All suicide these dead number, people. But, yeah. Yeah. But that was know. what was noticeably missing because she mentions it like four times, five times. Right. She keeps going well, back to that it's, well. It's part of the mythology. It is. Right. Yeah. Like they, they have a set of myths that they repeat over and over without citation because they just feel true yeah but they don't they haven't actually ever been measured or yeah Yeah. and once again she's saying that they knew for years but this is like a extremely recent issue like this isn't like an issue that's like been ongoing since like the 90s well and as he even talked about this is a this is a problem that's affected the entire nh system that they've known about for years so i don't what does she expect them to do about it they're supposed to like just spring up clinics out of nothing i see and start handing out testosterone on the street of course like mm-hmm. it's candy yeah see? that makes sense because it's just testosterone you guys mm-hmm. yeah oh there's another thing i, I don't know if you saw my comment in the chat the no. part where she said you can get testosterone for hair loss mm-hmm. uh, that is not true that was a uh, blockers for hair loss it, yeah that's not true either oh that's not true it's not no. the NHS will Does make you pay for work? it out of pocket. I assume it would help some men, but yeah, you it have hasn't. to pay. <laughs> you well, have no, to pay it out second. of pocket. The NHS will not pay for uh, those things. Mm-hmm. Like it would be considered entirely cosmetic. So I thought testosterone sense. caused male pa- pattern baldness. Yeah, that's it why. Does. That's yeah. why you would take a blocker. a blocker. Okay, you take a blocker. That's yeah. what you do. Yeah. But. Uh, testosterone is also a low level carcinogen, which is partly why it's regulated in the way that it is, because it's actually carcinogenic, yeah. which is why if you have prostate cancer, that's sometimes great. what they got to, yeah, sometimes what they got to do take is take blockers. your balls off. Ooh, that's wow. Yeah. I think blockers are also sometimes used, though I think that, that would first. be more risky. Yeah, you try the blockers before <laughs> take your balls off. Uh, I think blockers probably have more really? side effects than just cutting your balls off. Might be yeah. worth it, though. I mean, I'm just saying. Yeah. There's a lot to be said about blockers, man. Some One in four time. guys get prostate cancer. Get checked. Get checked. That's right. And they f***ing matter. And then you're right back There's to the melodrama. in Cathcart's yeah. plan about actually fixing any of it. Not even an apology. Ahmed says the burden of forgiveness often falls on the person making the complaint. We're expected to look forward, like the institution does, and accept that we'll never get justice. I actually asked Colonel Cathcart point blank, who's looking into these cases? When are you awarding damages? When's the public apology coming? (coughs) Who is going to resign over these failures, Colonel? And he hasn't said anything. 
Well, maybe if you named him and put some pressure on him, At that would... time of recording. Yeah, I know. And if we actually do look back, we'll find that this plan is not what patients wanted. Remember, we said we wanted an informed consent system several times. They've been publishing reports and investigations and consultations into it for almost a decade. Multiple times we told them what we wanted, and this is not that. However this plan shakes it's, out, it represents that, NHS though. England. That's studies in that. That's, but, that's, that's, that's how you get what you want, is by them studying and looking at it and figuring out what the problem is. Because the problem is that, I mean, they're not going to listen to you. No, <laughs> stop, stop gotta, studying immediately. The more you study, the less you're going to give us what we want. So we have to stop the studies. Well, and all the sources that she cited about like advocating for affirmative treatment, they're not like citing studies. They're just people advocating for it. It's yeah. Like, okay. I mean, you know, I think medical decisions should be based on evidence and facts and outcomes. How not dare just you? On how people feel about certain things. But I know that's a crazy idea. How dare you? And... And Colonel Cathcart in particular, I'm afraid. Continuing to override the expressed wishes of the people they are meant to be helping. When Cathcart told me his plan, I went back to Major Danby a second time and I said, Major, based on everything I've seen, it seems to me that decisions about the health care of patients are being made not based on the medical evidence, but based on interdepartmental politics and institutional inertia well <laughs> you're in luck abigail because they did decide to start making decisions based on evidence and they said you know we don't think there's enough evidence to uh, do an affirmative care model anymore. oh no <laughs> well, whoops yeah womp, womp. Womp, womp. and he said yes you're absolutely correct So, I mean, at least someone finally admitted it. As I said, this has been a very difficult episode for me. Bravo, bravo. This is, yeah, this, this is, is so weird. This is really, yeah. Because I only listened, I only listened to this, but I really didn't get the, I mean, this is like, someone wants an Oscar nominee out of this video pretty badly, so. Just choreographed perfectly. I mean, she's exploiting what you what should be like a really low moment in her life that's like really damaging and like heightening it through bad acting. Do you think it's really a low? How point? dare you? I don't. I, I mean, I would think it's a low. Like if like okay, so if I take her story to heart and what she's going through and like mm -hmm. the stress, like you you got to be agitated to be sending nineteen emails. I mean, this has got to sure. be like dominating your life and eating at you every day. Like I would think that this would be something that has shaped you. And that you probably don't have a great opinion about that you had to go through this. Well, if it's plan B and you're like, I really, you know, I have a good doctor lined up and I'm going to take sure, care of this out yeah. of pocket. And this is like, well, this may come through and, and may not, but we'll just see, you know, if it doesn't, if it doesn't come through, I have a, a piece of content. If it does, and you know, I save some money. It sure. feels like that's uh, the real direction this was going. I mean, it could also all be bullshit. I mean, she was talking about them sending her paper reports in the email for like PDFs that you can just find online. Like they wouldn't just link her the PDF in an email back. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you know. Surprisingly, <laughs> many of these details are not adding up correctly. <laughs> right. Well, she, this whole thing about like, oh, she still hasn't seen a doctor at this point. It's going on for an entire year. But for all of last year, you can watch she was transitioned in her videos. So how did that happen? That was a Snapchat filter. Social, oh. <laughs> social transition. Okay. You're right. Okay. Get the the FFS first. There you go. There you go. That makes. I sense. don't. I don't even know if PT wants bottom surgery. Yeah, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't think I've ever so heard them talk I mean, about it. Has PT had top surgery? I don't even I think don't so. Know. I think what they have are the results of probably estrogen. Probably. Oh. I thought she had facial feminization surgery and a nose job. She did. Yeah. I yeah. thought she said that at some point in one yes. of these we watched. I remember saying something about yeah, that. Yeah, I got the nose yeah, job I, that didn't. I don't like the nose job. Wow. Yeah, can I just say her nose? Her nose looked great before. She looked great. You know what? I mean, as much as yeah, you I like the nose. Tea, I think she, she looks fine. She looks, you know, passes, I think. Um, maybe yeah. She is okay. Maybe, <laughs> I'm not, not, I'm not sure. great maybe you're not, women, so. judge, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, not the best judge, right. but yeah, maybe not the best judge. Are you it's really fine. allowed to talk about that? The like the <laughs> passing thing. Uh, sure. The, you eh, know, whatever. His husband doesn't mind. <laughs> is Ollie sure. married? 
No, oh, you mean Danimal. the animal's husband. The animal's oh. husband. The animal's husband. Why just say should be home soon? I might have to jump away. I oh, feel no, like uh, right. he, she did get a nose job. Holy shit! I never realized that. Yeah. That's like the yeah. first thing other trans people go after is whether or not they. Abigail pass. did a, a whole video yeah. about their While surgery. Attack, yeah. Really? Oh. Yeah, a whole video <laughs> essay about it, so you can see them in their like bandages and I don't know. If you compare the nose from before, I I agree with Daniel. I think the nose was better before. It was more like interesting. I, never I hate it when uh, pe- I hate it when people with big pronounced noses get surgery to make it into like this little weird thin penis looking thing i don't like it <laughs> is that well, part the- of the problem is just, like often your nose even if it's big it's like it's fitted to your face specifically it's like yeah and i think people nothing but people trouble. tend to feel very self-conscious about their noses it's like one of the more common fixations people have yeah yeah because it's, right. it's so much of your face that's the nose is the true. face what are you talking about yeah, yeah. that's not true well, it some is. people, you know, there's cheekbones and there's your brow and all that stuff. But people really do fixate on the nose. Unless you're Charlie Kirk, the nose is the face. <laughs> Charlie Kirk is that it's the, uh, the it's uh, a tiny face. He's in the, the tiny of... face man. <laughs> tiny like face. he's got a tiny face in the center of his. You, you know exactly. Head. I know you mean. When I mentioned like it, you knew it's all exactly forehead. It's all for Charlie Kirk. It's all forehead. Is that what you're saying? All forehead, all chin, all cheeks. No, it's all like forehead. Tiny face. little foreheaded chin. His face is like a tiny island in the middle of the ocean. Yes, of his exactly. Face. It's weird because, like, if you Google image him, you look at some of the images and you wonder, like, how many of these are slightly uh, altered, I mean, slightly like, photoshopped. Just they're doing it on purpose. You could just slightly like go to like the wikipedia picture and like slightly alter it a little bit and no one would really know just every day just another Shake centimeter it, like, a quarter of an inch yeah. see who knows yeah. no philosophy tube is about compassion <laughs> philosophy tube what is did about you compassion i really kind of feel like philosophy tube is more about gaslighting but i don't mm. that's what i think gaslighting and completely biased unrealistic assessments of reality what is this penis nose you sent me is this like a dick tracy no that's that's uh that's a penis nose that's a dan Aykroyd in uh in his movie nothing but trouble that was terrible which i've never seen that (laughs) uh that's one of the movies that uh, tupac is in oh well there you go cool some 80s madcap comedy excuse me it's early 90s oh sorry 90s all right. Yeah, don't be a racist. But it's hard to maintain those things in the face of a brutal and irrational system. In truth, I I hate what this experience has done to me. It has wasted my goodness and it has made me angry and bitter. And I don't like being that way. Does it it just this feels so, dramatic. so fake. Yeah. This feels well, so fake. It's worse because when I was watching this on my own, I had sped it up, obviously, because it's a very long video. I know. I did the same and thing. The shaky cam, like I couldn't even look at the screen. The shaky cam with the speed up is like nauseating. But it makes it more emotional. I, just, I felt like I was watching and like genuine. a bad episode of The Office or something. It was just, <laughs> well, this is, this is pitched as a documentary, but I do feel like we're watching fiction. So... That makes it a really good documentary. Listen, maybe it's real emotions, and we're just heartless bastards. Okay. Did you watch? Uh, did you watch Two Thousand Mules? Speaking of documentaries that are no, shot oh, yeah, like that's fiction. amazing. No. Yeah. Oh, it's like a, <laughs> it's like one of those History Channel Bigfoot hunting shows. Is like the, <laughs> the like tone of it. <laughs> I love those. It's great. Well, this whole video that we're watching, it's yeah. very much structured like my favorite documentary of all time. Uh, waiting for Superman. Oh no! Which mm-hmm. is like, it's oh, all just this right emotional here. appeal of like, look how sad this is. Look how sad this is. And then no evidence for the actual. Anything. Yeah. Um. Well, for the actual solution that's being proposed, and they just rely heavily on the fact that you feel bad to just go along with whatever they're advocating for. Mm-hmm. Which is basically trans and Garden. kids. I mean, yes, essentially. Yeah. yeah. Look, we got I like the part kids where out there. We need a trans earlier. Earlier mm-hmm. in this video, Abigail complained about what was it, black gay guy? Mm-hmm. Was that what? Yeah. 
yeah. who it was. I missed like the demographic. Was one but... of the people she was talking to who ran one of these institutions. Was and then she complains guy. that he was using emotion to. Oh yes. yeah. Control That's... the conversation. I'm like, Great okay. Point. I know. Um... She never spoken to a gay man. I know. Great. Point. Yeah. Speaking this of the gay men, thing. as yeah. I can report, is mm-hmm. nothing but an emotional roller coaster. Mm-hmm. It's like mm-hmm. emotional blackmail all day. It's like talking to a woman, but somehow worse. Mm-hmm. Hey. <laughs> can Never mind. I love you, Daniel. I don't know. The angry, easy explanation is that the system is bad because the people in charge are bad. and that it. Oh, it's the people in charge. No, she's going to say that's the easy. She's going to say that's not true, though. Because it's about systemic, systemic institutional yes. racism. Oh, okay. It's Won't institutional transphobia. Of them. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to think that way about okay. my fellow human beings. Oh, my God. Look. Existential yeah. crisis here. The people in charge could be responsible for this, but she wants to believe they're good. Well, but this is such bullshit. Like, where was all I, this empathy for business owners? and well business owners owners are bad and landowners too yeah Yeah, and her whenever she talks about them you know and her bosses she never extends this i don't want to believe that they're good though that's the difference okay yeah that sounds like a what about ism yeah i think it's just because (laughs) what do you because yeah that's context okay (laughs) because when i pour a beer and my <laughs> boss sells the beer for this much money. Right. I'm mm-hmm. not getting any of that money. Because he's a baddie. He's a bad mm-hmm. person who's right. stealing from me directly, a human being. I think the reason she like constructed this section is because she has to, because as a socialist who's advocating for a socialized system, mm-hmm. and now she's seeing that the socialized system is utterly failing her in every regard, and she's actually advocating for like a weird libertarian system. Like, this is what she has to do and say, oh, you know, my socialism is failing me. Really? Yeah. I think that's what's really has happening. It's because for a free market where well, everyone can just buy drugs on the street. No, I think it's more that, you know, she wants to do a real hard hitting. I was angry scene. Oh, man. Uh-oh, the cops are coming for somebody. You hear that? Wants the drugs yeah. on the street. Trying to get me. If they found you. my illegal testosterone stash, <laughs> now I'm in big trouble. Would have thought you had enough of that, but I think my old philosophy teacher, Mr. Baker, would want me to think that way either. Oh my god, you know what makes (laughs) me cry? My old philosophy teacher would be so sad. Like, why do we what? God, I'm sorry. I remember philosophy. I like to give people a benefit of the doubt, but I it was my impression. It did feel very not real when I watched it. The first time and it feels more not real the second time but maybe i'm just a, a cynic here oh no shit right this is so performative be nice yeah <laughs> look it it was a delayed response on an email okay <laughs> like, I, just, <laughs> I don't get it what is all this anger I know for people try their best they're dying at they're dying dying in the streets dying. yeah but look She's dying all Listen, those unanswered there's, emails there's represent thousands of another people, dead body in the street. There's mm-hmm. thousands of people in, in the UK that are dying mm-hmm. of cancer, dying of COVID. But there's some very small number that killed themselves from gender dysphoria. So that's bringing her to tears. I mean, I just, this is not, I just, it's not like this is Schindler's List or something. <laughs> I just, I feel like, you know, a measured response would be better here. Right. Let's see. But, well, when you say better, it's not more persuasive, though. If you, I mean, if you're talking about just people literally being suicidal mm-hmm. and there was some chance that you could convince them that they don't have gender dysphoria, you know, through therapy or something. Right. Wouldn't that be the more prudent path than to? If you're a bigot, you know, tell. I don't them. even know if it's convincing if they don't have it. I think it's treating it because sometimes it's it's a symptom of a larger issue, sure, than, rather than just gender dysphoria itself. Sure. Yeah, I was I was gonna say the same thing. I think the the focus sometimes is erroneously on misdiagnosis. I think there are a lot of cases of gender dysphoria that are properly diagnosed but improperly treated. 
Right? Okay. Because uh, I think there are there are cases out there of people who had gender dysphoria. I, mm. I know of a lot of D-trans people who said, I definitely had it. I hated my body. I wanted to kill myself. And these were individuals who went through the transition process and it didn't help or it made things worse. Mm -hmm. And what ultimately helped their gender dysphoria was a different path. And I think moving forward, we need to really think about uh, having a differentiated style of treatment with the, the reality that not all gender dysphoria is equal. Why just you, you say people who hated their body, but I mean, gender dysphoria is not just hating your body. A lot of people hate their body. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I it's just, about I hating well it's it's an aspect of your body right it's hating your being as well your, your being sex. like your entire sex yeah. right thinking like there's something disconnected you did not have any association do, do, with your do sex you, do you honestly look obviously you can't do this because it's unethical but do you think that you could gaslight somebody into believing they have gender dysphoria? I think that would be pretty easy to do. I don't think it'd be well, easy. If, I think it's possible, but not easy. If you, what do you mean by fooling them into thinking they have it? Like just because I think you, you can gender look, you can hypnotize people into thinking they're naked in front of everyone. Like there are people that are su susceptible to hypnosis. You could have someone. You could ha definitely have someone who does not have gender dysphoria, and then you get them. Confused all, about what gender dysphoria of course, is. There's all these experiments Certainly. on, you know, uh, priming people and doing all kinds of crazy stuff. To, but uh, to on the other hand, do... I think, I think you could definitely uh, do things to a person to trigger gender dysphoria. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think a lot of people who have trauma-induced gender dysphoria, for instance, you know, they have a very traumatic rape or sexual assault. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm in their background and it just means they just become totally disassociated from their sex and they just sure. want to get out but of their sex think, and become do you think socially sex. transitioning or or physically transitioning is going to be good for that person or psychologically for that therapy? person the the uh i would say the outcomes are unlikely uh, to, be, to helpful. be helpful yeah exactly they got to get because over the trauma because if it's trauma induced, you have to face the trauma, and essentially any transition is just so a psychological escape and not actually resolving. The right. Issue. So that person, you're adding insult to injury because now you're transitioning them as well, which is like, yeah. oh great, you you got fact, uh, um, assaulted, and now the medical community is going to doubly I assault think, you. Uh, Benjamin Boyce just did a interview with. There is this viral clip of I think her name is Casey. Mm -hmm. who mm -hmm. Casey transitioned Miller, yeah. Casey Miller, who transitioned as a 16 year old took testosterone and then all her hair fell out. Oh, that's awful. And people so on she's Twitter were gone like making fun of her. And, yeah. And that people was, on yeah, Twitter, including like couples were saying like, Oh, yes. you look like uh George from Seinfeld, like just saying nasty things to her, calling her ugly, like me <laughs> calling her. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the same way we bullied animal. They were bullying her. All because she said, hey, just so you know, taking testosterone might cause your hair to fall out. Yeah. And she was so depressed and she had convinced herself she couldn't even tra detransition because she thought she was past the point of uh, going back. Right. Mm -hmm. She's like, I, she's, I, there's she's, no way I'm going to pass as my biological sex, which yeah. is just and she's crazy. Since changed, she's since changed her tune on that. She talked to people and they've persuade right. her that she can absolutely do it but in the interview with management voice it turned out like she had been raped for years by her father oh or wow or something and she mm -hmm. had psychologically repressed it and then to the point she was having panic attacks every time she saw anyone who looked like her father mm -hmm. and it's like and yeah no kidding when she transitioned the dys dysphoria didn't get resolved it, it didn't actually help Right, but that's the entire point of all the hoops and gatekeeping yes, that Philosophy Tube is complaining about is to make sure you don't have some other underlying issue. Yeah, it's the entire point. It's to help. But you. in their in in their view, though, gender dysphoria is like this one thing, and there's only one pathway forward: transition. Right. It, well, they made like it a, into an identity. Yeah, they made it into an identity, an identity, and there's only one answer to the identity, and everything else is genocide or mm -hmm. trans erasure or whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, it's almost like as you know, Carl said in the beginning, they view it like 
there's a trans spirit that has been imbued in their body that is just, mm-hmm. you know, waiting to be burst free or something. It's like, mm, mm-hmm. that's not how it works, but okay. <laughs> All right. Let's get, let's see how much of this action so we can finish. take. Why are institutions so inflexible? Why are they so difficult to change? Is it because ultimately people are nasty and selfish? Or is there a deeper reason? And that's actually why this topic is so fascinating to study. Because this sort of thing's happening all over. We've known that climate change is a problem for ages. We know what we have to do to stop it, but we keep doing things that we know won't work. We know about the threats from rising inequality and increasing extremism. We talk and we talk and we talk and we don't do anything. Why not? Bureaucracy. Well, after a lot of research. Because people don't agree on what the problems and what the answers are. This yeah. is so, like, mm-hmm. yeah. Also, these are there's so very many, like, complex these systems. Yeah. yeah, there's so many, like, this kind of socialist left that these I very mean, dumb do takes do things, of, like, so. everyone knows what the problems are and they just won't fix them because corruption. It's like, no, people don't agree on what the problem is and what the solution is. That's well, the issue. And people are literally doing stuff about it. I mean, there's dozens of yes. companies dealing with climate change and all kinds of shit. Yeah, but it's Elon Musk and he's a bad guy. So, well, whatever. Yeah. I mean, look, there was a problem with Twitter not being free speech enough. Somebody did something about it. So, it's not like <laughs> nobody does anything. Somebody unbanned my man Trump. Yeah. You know? there you go. Some of us are heroes. There you go. But he didn't What's the countdown on his first tweet. When 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 do you, when do you think he's going to tweet? Uh, man. I, I hope so. Probably never, but I'm hoping. You don't think so? I don't know. I think it would be pretty runoff. funny if he, I think he's if he gonna logged in and deleted his, his account. <laughs> <laughs> that would be pretty funny. I was like, wow, that would be pretty epic. It'd be like, oh, look. I all my old tweets social, are gone. Delete. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You can do that, I mean, right? The- all your tweets just disappear if you... Like, what if he just erased all his tweets, too? You could do that, yeah. That'd be so that will be your right. That will be his tweet. He'll say, Everyone come join my true social, and I'll be the only tweet. <laughs> yep. Oh god, he just claims. I think this is this is this shows to me like socialists are very naive about how systems work of and course. how institutions run. Yeah. They don't understand how when you have Nothing a sufficiently works. complex problem, things right. you're gonna take a while to figure out. And change is not really, it's not an A to B sequence. No. It's like everything has to change. And even if you implement a whole bunch of changes, there's no guarantee when the dust is settled that a big change has happened. Well, a lot of these like, systems are just reach a, a point of sort of equivalence. It, it's but, it's funny because the because the like instant gratification attitude that she's approaching this with, it's like she wants it done now and you jump when she says jump. Like that's like, a, a type of attitude that's bred in like a capitalist culture that you live in and right. enjoy and partake in. <laughs> right. Ironic. And that's like a capitalist expectation, you know? Yeah. You just write a letter to Marvel and demand a trans character in the next <laughs> Marvel verse. I don't, I don't think she's really capable of figuring any of this stuff out. It sounds like her reading list is only going to be like feminist scholars, though, which I think obviously is part of the problem. She's only reading. I mean, these are Women? basically like religious texts. I agree that is a problem. Well, I mean, I'm sure there's plenty of, of men writing these feminist scholar books. Look, Mark That's Hughes, That's possible. the taller, the, the, what is it? All those the, French people, all the French pedophiles. The problem yeah. with tolerance or something. Yeah, exactly. Paradox of tolerance. The paradox of tolerance. That's right. it. But you you get it. I mean, you'd yeah. have to be a more widely read person than I mean, she doesn't even buy into property rights, which is just okay. I think I found an answer. Mm-hmm. Oh great. Chapter eight. Computer says no. Oh, okay. I don't think I've understood a single chapter in anything. Stafford no, me neither. Beer was like a clerks. management cyberneticist, which is a very cool job title and probably explained by the fact that he invented it. Basically, he thought a lot about computers and he tried to apply what he knew 
to institutions. The job of any institution, he says, is to take inputs and give consistent outputs. So for example, imagine you've got a very simple system with one employee and their job is to push one button whenever a customer asks them to. In this case, the input is the customer asking and the output is the button push. The system has two states that it can... It's like a dream business for a Karen to walk into. <laughs> <laughs> the employee just pushes a button when you tell them to. <laughs> Mm-hmm. They would just stay oh, yeah. there all day just saying, push the button. <laughs> can be in. Either he presses the button or he doesn't. So we say that it has a variety of two. If you have 10 employees and they each have one button, now the system has a variety of 1,024. That's the number of possible combinations of button pressed or not. If you have 100 employees, now the system has a variety of two to the 100. And if you have a system as big as the NHS, with employees who have jobs way more complicated than pushing one button, and inputs a lot more varied than please push the button, you can see how things get pretty complicated pretty fast. Faced with all this variety, how can any institution possibly deliver consistent outputs? In an ideal world, an institution would have enough variety to cope with any possible input. So for example, in the ultimate clothing store, there is one shop assistant for every customer, and there are infinite different sizes of every single possible item of clothing you could ever want. And I still can't find a crop top I enjoy wearing. Obviously, that's not practically possible. This whole section is just for the crop top joke, just so you know. And that joke was like a a two at best. Mm. Like none of this is relevant. No. It's just a long way of saying that we want to see her wearing either. Yeah. (laughs) Oh no. It's just a long way of saying, "Hey, big institutions are complex." Well, here, let's cool. Let's go to the part that's going to make us. Yeah, of course. Lose our fucking minds. Because you're right. This part is kind of completely pointless. It's like, uh, oh, by the way, I read this book that I want (laughs) to shoehorn the premise into. Allowing. I mean, she probably got it off Blinkist, let's be honest. She okay. Didn't read the book. <laughs> Here you go. Chapter nine. You don't have to be crazy to transition, but it helps. Oh, oh wow. Okay. That's, that's, a, that's a nice title. Kind of oh. a weird endorsement there. Okay. I would have picked something different. Here's the real shit. Uh-oh. We are firmly in the territory of my opinion here. Not everyone agrees with what I'm about to argue. If I'd stayed in academia, this is probably what I'd have written my PhD on. As we've seen by now, medical transition in England, and let's not forget a lot of legal transition as well, hinges on first being diagnosed with gender dysphoria, which is supposedly the feeling of discomfort that arises when there is a disconnect between the sex you were assigned at birth and the gender you are. And I think that this concept, as it is used in the NHS system, is a complete crock of shit. The philosopher Gilbert Ryle tells. So we have mm-hmm. philosophy student, actor, mm-hmm. uh, Abigail, is going to weigh in. It's her opinion that all the science, you know, all the science she tried to use earlier in the video, that's all bullshit. That's all bullshit because gender dysphoria, it's not real. It's fake. Right. It's fake and gay. Yeah. Well, it's a, it's and it's a little more than just like a mismatch between your biological sex and your gender identity. I mean, you're feeling it to such an intense degree that you're experiencing extreme depression and anxiety, yes. and it's like impacting how you're functioning on your daily life. Right. Is this a good time to remind people of the uh, clip Sargon mentioned, which I have also seen? Which one? Where uh, Oliver said, "I've never had gender dysphoria." Oh. <laughs> It's yes. so mean. Yes. I I've I seen think, it. that's all I can say. I've seen it. So seen it a- after you watch this section, and I didn't know about that clip, I think I would I think it'd be fair to estimate that Abigail does not actually have dysphoria. And part of her opinion Ooh. about this is because she doesn't actually have dysphoria. Mm-hmm. So because it's we'll self-serving. Say. Well, we'll say. The the thing is though. A lot of people get depression that they don't really know what the cause is. Like they go to therapy to kind of isolate potential causes. So right. I don't see 
Why? I mean, they're, they're saying that gender dysphoria causes depression, but how do you know that the depression isn't causing gender dysphoria? Well, it's, I mean, that's part of the treatment supposed to be is to isolate and make sure, you know, rule out all the other potential causes. Sure. Yeah, talking, yeah. Talking, talking, talk talking it through yeah. multiple sessions. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. But that's all Over just jumping through hoops by bigotry. You know? <laughs> right. I mean, to some degree, it, it, for a philosophy to, to reconcile their beliefs about sex, they kind of have to throw out gender dysphoria as a thing. Yeah. Because what well, is, I mean, what is yeah. sex? Well, but that's the number one question I've always had about this. It's so preposterous. And I'll, I'll, this habit comes up in this. How can anyone, how can anyone say that gender dysphoria is even a thing if they don't think that there's an innate self, sense of gender or sex in the first place? It's going to be impossible then. Yeah. Tells a story about a guy who goes to Oxford and asks to see the university. And they show him the colleges and the libraries and the quads. And at the end of the day, he says, yes, but where's the university? You haven't shown me that. He's and he's dumbass. made a mistake. What philosophers yeah. call a category error. Mm -hmm. He thinks the university is its own building, but it's not. It's just the sum of all those ordinary buildings. A lot of people talk about dysphoria as if it was its own extra feeling. And I think that that too is a category error. Oh, wow. I don't think it is an extra feeling. I think yeah. it's just the sum of... Oh. And cis people also feel all those feelings. <gasps> Maybe not about the same things or to the same intensity, but they do feel them. Do you, do you like that she cited herself? Cited herself? <gasps> oh, I gotta like read that, that now. <laughs> what, she has got like a paper on this? Have we got it wrong on dysphoria? Yeah. Now I'm curious. She I just I, I love when someone cites themselves like, oh, thank you. This is like a, a, an authoritative source. My a blog post or something. <laughs> I didn't actually read it. I should. It's have. in Trans Writer, which might be like a zine or it something. Sounds like a zine, yeah. Like, hmm. but uh, she's. I mean, it's about feeling all those things to like an extreme intensity that you like basically can't get out of bed or leave your home, and yeah, you're like course. losing friends and losing your like. It's a huge thing, and she's like treating it like how you feel after you watch the ant die and honey i shrunk the kids <laughs> you know right why did you have to bring up my trauma ah <laughs> <laughs> i have the horse dying in never any story is much worse okay. oh yeah i know because he's like watching it and its eyes is eyes <laughs> like his eyes, eyes are like crazed because that was back in the day that's like actually a horse that's sinking into mud and it's freaking out yeah, you could fuck up a horse in a movie and nobody cared. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the good old days. <laughs> oh, I miss those days. If a cisgender woman goes through menopause and thinks, oh, my, my body feels bloated. It doesn't feel like my own. I'm anxious and depressed. Is that not gender dysphoria? No! 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 What a dumbass. Yeah. This is pain, painfully wow. idiotic. I'm just wow. like young, young people are at the beginning of their life. Obviously, menopause is going to cause depression because you're getting closer it, to the great that, beyond. It, it doesn't men. It's not dysphoria. Yeah, that's not what obvious. fucking dysphoria. It's not what gender dysphoria means. You're not like, oh, I'm bloated and I feel bad. Yeah, it's not what fucking gender dysphoria means. What the fuck? Look, how, this is so stupid. This is mind-numbingly stupid. You can have some disassociation. And I think typically when I think of disassociation from your own body, it happens when a change happens, an extreme change occurs very suddenly. Right. Um, and I think that's a lot of why a lot of people have gender dysphoria over puberty. Because yeah, it's like exactly. all of a sudden your body is just springing into action, just things growing out of places you didn't know things grew out of uh, very quickly. And it just, you're disassociated from it and it can cause a lot of distress. But I mean, the reality is all our bodies change all the time. And most of those changes are so slow that we just adapt to it. We just get used to the, the new situation, but it's just I, I, not gender dysphoria to be uncomfortable with menopause. Well, you, gender, but isn't, isn't there an aspect of identity creation to gender dysphoria? Like literally when you're young, you're creating your identity. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
Um, oh, I know. Mean, like when you're when you're in childhood would be characterized as active. Well, right. when you're going through menopause, I guess your identity is changing or changing from, you know, uh, reproductive. I mean, to some degree, and I'm sure that's what contributes to a lot of depression in sure. women at that age. Um, incidentally, women trying to get estrogen treatment over menopause have a harder time of it now mm-hmm. because I mean, so much estrogen is being crisis. eaten up. It's being eaten up by uh, other parties, shall we but, say? Her, like Abigail's arguments was like, "Hey, if I don't understand what gender dysphoria means." by just redefining it to mean something completely different, then can't I also say that if you're bloated, isn't that dysphoria? It's like, no, it means you're fucking bloated. Mm-hmm. What the fuck are you talking about? So like, it's so it's minor, minor temporary discomfort. It's yes, not- it's like, fuck, like, you know, I remember when I got my tooth knocked out and they had to put the little, like, screw into my jaw. It was so fucking painful. I was like, oh, my God. I was, like, I was just, like, sitting on the floor, like, in pain because it was right on a nerve. I didn't feel like, oh, I have mouth dysphoria now because there's all this pain in my mouth. I like, I understand like, oh, it's a thing on hitting my nerve. It makes me hurt. Like, this is so your stupid. Sitch's <sighs> anger is 100% more authentic than Abigail's <laughs> anger over the emails. I agree. Because it's like this insipid, like, let's just fucking, let's just redefine a bunch of shit to win arguments in an insanely fucking moronic way. Well, well it, you know, if, if you have cramps, isn't that dysphoria? No, it's specifically not dysphoria. No one's ever said it is gender dysphoria ever. You're just making shit up. Danimal, did you want to say something? Yeah, I wanted Danimal to say that she's also... <laughs> no, I don't get to speak. Yeah. I want to say that she's also undercutting like the most powerful tool that like people who are actually genuinely interested in civil rights for trans people, like anti-discriminatory laws and things like that. Mm-hmm. Like their most powerful tool is being able to say, look, this is something I can't control. This is an immutable of condition. Course. This yes. is the treatment yes. for fixing yeah. this condition. And like, this is how I have to live my life. Like, I don't have a choice in this. Yeah. And she's saying, she's man, well, you know, I mean, you just kind of do it, you know, like. You know, you, you do really have a it. choice, right? And it, yeah, you do have a choice. And it ties into this argument that everything should be laissez-faire, because if gender identity is whatever you want it to be, and you can just choose whatever, and gender dysphoria is not really even a thing, it's all just elective. Your identity is elective, your gender is elective, the surgeries you get are elective, and you can just do whatever. Um, it's a very chaotic proposal, and I don't see it working out. Well, and, yeah, I don't see a lot of people buying it for one thing, but I don't think it would work even if you implemented this sort of wild west of no, it just work. swapping out whatever organs you but want. It's just it's so fucking stupid. Like she, because she's too stupid to understand that it's as as Daniel was saying. Like this is the only justification for transitioning in the first place. If your gender identity isn't immutable and it's just so easy to fucking change if every person just feels dysphoria every time they're in pain or uncomfortable then there's no reason for anyone to ever be transitioning ever because you just say well you know just get over it like everyone else take an aspirin yeah but no take a salt tablet walk it off yeah just walk it off like this is Mm. baffling do you need new knees and she's on a fucking (laughs) snake couch if a cis man is skinny and can't grow a beard and looks at his peers and thinks oh I, i i should be manlier is that not gender dysphoria? No! Look, I have gender oh dysphoria. God. Look, I can't grow a beard, Sitch. I have no. gender dysphoria now. Sad. Yeah, exactly. Oh, my God. Go to the doctor, say. I got That's gender not... dysphoria. Yeah. But, but, doctor, I'm just looking at all these big buff men around me, and I'm not buff. I think I have gender dysphoria. Oh, my God. You know what's funny is uh, early endocrinology for children Mm-hmm. apparently did something like this where they uh, took short boys and tall girls and yeah. pumped them full of their natal hormones. Oh, no. And it was a huge disaster. Who it was did this? Understand. This happened? These were like them. the early stages of endocrinology for children, like oh, childhood geez. endocrinologists. Really? Yeah. This sounds like something that happened in the 30s. Yeah. <laughs> right. Like that's they, like that uh, kind of time period where that kind of shit would happen. They didn't really understand what they were doing, but they're like, well... Short boys, we want them to be tall, so we're going to pump them full of testosterone. This, and this is tall actually, girls, we want them to shrink, so we're going to pump them full of estrogen. And she, uh, it was very much a bad, bad thing. What she just said definitely lines up with Ray Blanchard's work, which she, in a few minutes, says Ray Blanchard has totally been debunked. I, w- I would not I, be surprised if she has aging. <laughs> I'm 
I'm just curious. I always hear that that Ray Blanchard's work has been thoroughly debunked. It hasn't been, I've, not at all. And I've never seen yeah. any like good evidence of that. They always say like AGP is fake. I'm like, I don't know. I, I yeah. could What's, definitely what? identify some people who could potentially have it or people who are self identified as having sure. it. Sure. You yeah. know, someone's going to make it up. I've seen, uh, also seen posts on Reddit of uh, trans people talking who said, uh, well, women have AGP. Yeah, that's not true. They uh, just look at themselves in the mirror and get turned on. And I'm that, like, uh, that's what's so weird. That's, that's one of their big pieces of evidence that, that he's wrong is that women have quote unquote AGP, which makes no fucking sense. If you think that's about it, Ray for two Blanchard. that's no, that's the excuse no, this, they use to they say have that some he's wrong. Study. Yeah. They right. have some study. They, they took, they, they, they took, or, so, so for those who don't know what we're talking about, AGP is uh, the idea that a that some men are sexually aroused, and it goes even beyond sex. They just have some like arousal about being a woman, envisioning themselves as envisioning a woman, themselves and they a have woman. very like specific tests that they give people to see if they have autogynephilia. Right, and it and it follows a kind of somewhat at least it did in the past a somewhat predictable path of like when they were younger they would cross dress and then as they got older and older they would actually want to transition mm -hmm. and um and also uh ray blanchard he associates this with most of the in his mind it's this came about when he thinks most of the time when someone who transitions but retains uh their sexual orientation so like if someone is straight before they transition and then they're still attracted to women when they transition Mm -hmm. He thinks that they have AGP. He thinks that's a, or a big sign that they have AGP. Right. Yeah. And um, so they have like a questionnaire that, you know, to figure out if you have AGP, you know, and your, and your thoughts and feelings about, you know, sexual arousal towards yourself. And so someone gave those same questionnaires to women who are cis women. And they're like, oh, some of the women score high. Like they're sexually aroused by the idea of being women. So that proves that AGP is fake. And I'm like, what, what the fuck are you talking about? Obviously, Women can get off on thinking that they're extremely feminine, just as a man could have a sexual fantasy about being extremely masculine. That doesn't, how does it disprove AGP? This is completely insane. Yeah, it's not a pathology because it's just, it's not a fantasy. You are a woman. Like, yeah, exactly. You are a female. So, right. Like, it's, it's being it like, makes no yeah, sense I love being a woman. W woman doesn't, it's not a, a fetish. This is also why, and she gets super offended that they're asking her a bunch of questions about how she masturbates. But this is why they ask all the questions about how right. you masturbate because they want to know if you're uh, have gender dysphoria or autogynephilia. Yeah, mm -hmm. Though, I think autogynephiles have gender dysphoria. Yes, it's just uh, they a can have very reason, possibly. They give, yeah. yeah, they can have very intense gender dysphoria. Intense. Right, like the video that I saw where he Ray Blanchard was talking, he. He someone asked me, he said, is there alternative treatment for people with AGP versus other forms of gender dysphoria? And he said, not to his knowledge. So he's not even advocating that yeah, people with AGP don't transition or anything. It's very hard. What to, he to said get a handle on. This is why I brought up like the it. like the sissy boy thing. Like he wrote some paper and did some study where he studied effeminate men. And right. he basically came to the conclusion that effeminate men would likely grow up to be gay men in certain social situations and trans women in other social situations and it depended uh, on that was upon... richard green oh it is yeah well it's not blank it was richard green in 1986 or 87 okay okay so it's a different guy yeah but same field i mean they both ran in the same circles and i think they both ran uh were co-workers so but he's building off of ray ray blanchard's the guy that came up with autogynephilia though right right yeah okay so yeah, richard yeah. Well, green he, he, studying autogynephilia says in certain situations you know someone might transition whether or not they have access to available sexual partners because uh, news alert people like to have a partner <laughs> so you know uh and in some situations if you know, there's an abundance of gay men. You live in San Francisco, you might just be a gay man. But if you're in a place where there's not many gay people, you might your options might be wider if you transition into a woman, which makes perfect logical sense. Well, I mean, I wish someone would fucking just say it, right? I'd have to see the city on this. I'm less inclined to buy this. Uh, well, no, I'm just, idea, is but... that what's, I mean, what is wrong with that? Well, well I mean, I'm sure social 
Dynamics has a huge part in it. Yeah, what the hell? <laughs> it has. It kind of has to. Like even your conception of gender even, and sex is even affected men, by where you live. And look, even men and women, you know, present in a way that allows them to attract the type of people that they want to attract. Is that not true? I mean, it seems no. But I obvious. think like, and I don't remember. I think you were talking about this, or they were talking about this. Like a lot of the ideas about like what causes gender dysphoria is that there's some problem in the recognition part of the brain mm-hmm. yeah. that 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 can that can exist probably and then something sets it off. So yeah, maybe an environmental situation can set off something in the in the like that makes you go down this path, but I don't think it can create that sensation in the first place. Well, I guess you- it depends like how plastic the brain is in that area. What yeah, but did, usually because obviously are- connections can be formed or broken. Yeah, yeah but that would be a pretty areas. extreme thing to like like you'd have to have some pretty extreme like trauma or something to fuck that. Yeah. Up. How I, you I respond think that's to this? Plausible. What is wrong with uh you know a different strategy in a different environment for how you respond to this situation? That's the thing. It might be maybe if you framed it a little differently and said in different situations, it is easier to adapt uh, well, no, your no, no. So, situation, okay. right? Because so let's say is, you have, if wait, you so are the a way that I would boy, frame it would be sure. like that some, like you could have people that have say, like just let's assume it's true that there's something that can trigger in like 0.001% of the population that makes them gender dysphoric in their brain, but it doesn't necessarily get set off in every person. So under what you were saying, it's possible that the person in a situation where they can't get a lot of dates or whatever, that not getting a lot of dates can trigger something that already exists. I'm just saying I don't think it will create the thing. No, that's the first place. Uh, look, uh, that's all I think I'm that's saying. what Adam That's saying, not what though. it says yeah. in the study. It says, you well, know, they have this thing. They're gay. They're attracted to men, but they present very feminine. So I they understand. want so they want Damn. to have sex it with It sounds though like that's the theory posited by the researcher right yes that is the theory it's about posited the, by the researcher okay. yeah. so it's so the the data is there look, it's just if you, a theory if you, and it could be true or it could not be true that's if, just look, a theory if you are a a gay theory a man <laughs> attracted to other men that you yeah. want uh-huh. to have sex with okay yes uh-huh and uh-huh. You, are you following danimal you present hard. yeah you, danimal here back me up okay <laughs> like and you, uh, well, hey, in what, what way, Adam? I don't hey. look. If you don't, <laughs> if you are not uh, particularly masculine, you are not going to be attra- uh, attractive to a certain number of gay men. But if you present as a woman, you might be attractive to a certain number of gay men, and also you might even get some straight men who are interested, right? Oh, sure. Yeah, there's the twinks, there's the otters, you got the wolves, you got the foxes, well, there's the bears. Those are the masculine, hairy ones. So yeah. why why is what I'm saying so, why is what I'm saying so, like, seems, you guys are because completely I, I, rebelling okay. at the idea I, I'm, that a oh, person not, might say, like, listen, is more I don't buy the idea that there's a, some percentage of gay guys who are basically like, well, I can't get, gay men to fuck me so i'm gonna transition to a woman i just don't think that that's happening i don't know that it's necessarily going to be that conscious i think it's possible that as Mm -hmm. you experience your environment your assessment of your own gender might shift or your your assessment of what you need to do to be fulfilled what is what is the whole purpose i just don't i don't buy that it's like a common thing i don't know it has nothing to do with different body types it has nothing to do with getting laid Gender has nothing to do with getting light. No, okay. the gender dysphoria doesn't have anything to do with getting light. It's a completely internal sense about that they feel like there's some mis- this incongruence between them and their gender. It's not about getting laid. You can you can no. be gay or straight no. and get laid. I guess, okay. I, guess, I, guess <laughs> I guess to I me, mean, I would say like getting laid is a strategy that can influence people's sense of meaning. And so if you are successful, if you are in relationships, it might be a good way of coping with other possible what issues was the, that you have. What was so the let's say you that the person in the study had had a what's that? Claim. What was the evidence the person in the study put forward? They interviewed a bunch of of effeminate gay men. And I think I it was the longitudinal study from when they were boys to when they yeah, were Yeah, do you we have the expert right here, Danimal will be happy to like <laughs> And what they and they said they said I transitioned so I could get dick. Like I don't want to what do you, 
Maybe no, what most they of them found ended up was... just being gay. Yeah, but so maybe that what just, they that found proves my those... point. I don't understand. No, maybe what it was found was those who did end up transitioning had basically zero success. Yeah. And we're in situations where being a gay man was just not tenable. Okay. And so they transitioned. Well, I mean, it's... Hey, it turned out there a, for a it's, gay guy, you know? It's, it's hypothetical. Easy, I know... Of, Listen, I'll say it's possible. I, I just... I, I think that... Some people think that, who no, no, transitioned this, because this of is, that reason. This is why I don't like this, okay? Mm-hmm. Even if this is occurring... It's muddying up the water in such an unnecessary way. Oh my god! Oh, no. You don't like you're really hurting like the entire like your argument by even bringing forward this thing. What, what, is, useless, what is my like, what is my yeah. argument? I think it's I mean, called like the sissy boy study or something. Sissy because boy. if this is like one percent of people that are transitioning or something, some very tiny amount of people that are, we I don't know if it's and they just say oh well listen you're you know, you're just a bigot. Here's a transphobe. You think you re- you think this is just a bunch of gay guys that want to get dick and they can't, so they're transitioning to women. I think you. What whenever we talk about these things, you have like, what? to talk in groups and be like, there are some that are gonna be this kind of typology, and some that are gonna be more like this, and you just can't are you saying lump when, everything together? Are you saying when people transition that very low on the list they think about oh i wonder if i'll be able to get laid in my new state of being or do yes you think that's it's part like- of the pr- wait yes that's literally okay. part of the problem that's part of what we in that clip that the woman was talking about where they're telling kids well you're not going to have a, be able to get an orgasm and they say i don't care or they say oh well you know maybe your genitals won't work sexually enough and they say i don't care that's part of the problem is that often when kids do transition they don't think about sex. So that's why I don't buy any of this. This doesn't make any well, sense. Well, that's to me. children. I yeah, think the that's study children. Would have been it's completely on different. Adults. Okay. Yes, yeah. obviously. Ch- this is why the child transitioning thing is so bad because they have no idea what they are. Sexually. Okay, whatever. I just, you, you're going to anyway. have to send me this study. I, I'm very skeptical of it. I mean, that's insanely fine. skeptical of this study. And I think it's, it's just really, well, I just, not I want to get, argument. I want to get to the, the meat. Because I don't necessarily understand why. Listen, I just it's fine. We're gonna move st- along. No, I don't want to move along. I want to know oh, like why. Look, I, I just I look at science as like a, a an investigation that leads where it leads, and you seem to be looking at this like no, we can't make this argument because this blows a hole in this other argument over here. I thought no, science was like we just study doesn't. and figure out what's oh, no. what I'm saying. I'm having I'm flashbacks. That- so I'm saying it in conversation. Yeah, I'm saying it, I'm saying if you have like Kavaf, you uh, don't cry before you leave. Then you're yeah, not coming you back oh, on the show. Oh, so. no. Okay, I'll <laughs> so new rule. I'll work on it. I'm saying that if you have something that you're investigating, that's mm-hmm. like the causation or something, trying to figure out why something happens, and 99 percent of the time it happens because of one of some you know some reasons, and one percent of the time it happens for some other reason. Okay, mm-hmm. and if you focus on this one percent. And we all know how the conversation is going to go. Everyone's going to say, oh, well, you know, if, if this, you know, that just means that all these people are transitioning just because they're gay guys that want to have sex with men, essentially. They just want to open up their dating pool or whatever. And that's going to become the argument that's put forward by every single fucking person on the right to fight against, you know, the trans uh, issue. And then surprise, surprise, the studies come on. They say, uh, that's really not applicable to like 99% of the people. Oh, well, guess what? You've just actually given the trans activists a huge boon because you've made the argument fucking stupid and easily discredited. That's my problem with it. Do you do you accept that potentially people could be transitioning for different reasons? Of course they can. Be, okay. And they are. Yeah. So but, 50% but as I transition said, I don't believe that I don't believe that the majority of people that are transitioning, you, you know, that they don't do it because they don't have some issue in their brain. They're either they're, they're not trans and they're making a fucking mistake because they're being led down a path by accident or because they actually do have some issue in their brain that makes it so they can't recognize themselves properly. Not like, oh, you know, I want to fuck more people. But people separate out autogynephilia and gender dysphoria. It's like two separate Auto, things. Autogynephilia people are not transitioning because they want to have sex. Right. No one's saying that. I think this is specifically about one subtype. But autogynophiles do transition. Yes. yes. Okay. Oh, man. Well, they want to. Or they often Well, they want do to. They transition later in life, quite often. 
Right. Well, so, Danimal, first, how are you doing? Oh, I'm doing this good. Is, is it what, the Sissy Boy this... Syndrome? Is that the book you're talking about? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Th- so the so the the thing is, you got to remember about the Sissy Boy Syndrome is that it's not actually a study on anything that has to do with like transgenderism or autogynophilia. It's a study on homosexuality and how okay. it develops. Okay. And and well, I'm just saying that like applying it to because it's not specifically looking and filtering for things that In other have words, to do with. We need more research. Yeah. yeah what's the matter? It's, with, it's used. It's used as that. a read. Let's do it. Okay. More research okay. is great. Let's I think do we some can research. all agree on that. But I just sure. like you can't. People are so sensitive about. Oh no, the research might come back and be against mm-hmm. me. So no, it's not that. It's that we've had more looks into this since then. I mean, this is nineteen eighty. This is a nineteen eighty nine eighty six is when he did mm-hmm. this. Oh no, actually, I think it was the early eighties to the mid eighties. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Why well, I, I brought it up because. I believe Abigail is literally making the argument from that book right here in the video. She she's making the pro. Is this the argument the book makes? Yeah, listen. So that's even that's even better reason to dismiss this. If a cis man is skinny and can't grow a beard and looks at his peers and thinks, "Oh, I I, I should be manlier." Is that not gender dysphoria? No! If a cisgender woman has hair on her face and thinks, oh, I've got a mustache, I look like a man, I want to get laser hair removal to get rid of it, is that not dysphoria? No! I think the only plausible answer here is yes. But when no! cis- The only plausible answer is obviously yes. Oh, if you want, on, uh, If you want to look more like your biological sex, like if you want to present more feminine and you're a biological woman, th- how is that dysphoria? That's the opposite of dysphoria. It's like you're trying yeah. to you're trying to not get misread. Yeah, that's the whole point. Well, it's and it's not. Even I mean, I think like some. Misread. I think some it's like women being attractive or ugly. Yeah, and I and I think it's possible for. I think in theory, a woman could have gender dysphoria about being not feminine enough, but it would have to meet certain criteria, right? It'd have to be so intense that they like want to kill themselves. Right, but this is what like, it'd be closer to like a, would, ge- a body dysmorphia. Dis- kind yeah, of thing. you call it yeah, body dysmorphia. Go- well, you would know. No, no, no. So, like, this is part of what Abigail's like a moron. She doesn't know what she's talking about. Okay, like, there could be a lot of people who say like, "Oh, I don't like my nose," or "I don't like my, you know, my knee is slightly crooked," or you know, this is probably like most people probably have some thing about their body that they're like, "Oh, I noticed I have this slight thing about my body that I don't like." That's I'm sure like most people have something like that. That doesn't mean those people have dysphoria. Dysphoria literally means that that the severity of your of you feeling bad about this part of your body is so severe, it's preventing you from existing in the world in a healthy, productive way. It's making you feel depressed and anxious and possibly suicidal. So if a girl is like, oh, I have some hair that I have to dye or shave or laser off, they're not stop making them want to kill themselves. It's literally not dysphoria. Right. So there's got to be a suicidal component for you to even call or it. Or just it has you. not suicidal. It has to be like just something extreme that is impacting your life in a severely negative way. Yeah, it's a, it's the intensity and the severity of the feelings. Yes. It's like causing you to maybe lose friends, lose your job, but that's the, not right, and that's, relationship. That's the definition yeah, of girl... every mental illness. You can have like you know someone yeah. could be like, oh, you know, are they. Are they manic or are they just high energy? Well, that depends on the severity of what's happening in their of, of the symptoms. So it's just, I don't, it's just, it's so Abigail is so irresponsible, so fucking stupid. She has no clue what she's talking about. She isn't and investigating I, and I like any of this. The, no this background whole, on any of this. And the, this whole postlude is following her very tearful recollection of all the people who've killed themselves. Right. And then she's going to say, actually, you know, this whole gender dysphoria thing is fake. Yeah. Um, yeah why you did guys they kill themselves? yourself for nothing. They why just did they kill themselves because they didn't get what they wanted. So please give me, <laughs> give me, give me. Well, that's the thing. I mean, it could be something completely different and they're just fixated on gender. Like they could be depressed over other I mean, things. it could be, but in her mm. own line of reasoning, that doesn't make sense. No, but I mean, it, p- put up why the is people it so for important? heaven's sakes. Why is it so important to transition if you don't even have gender dysphoria? Like, well, what's the big, big whoop? So you can be she, popular. 
Come on. She would be. She's so she's trying to make the argument like I don't know, like if if a woman has you know facial hair, if they couldn't get rid of it somehow, mm-hmm. they couldn't just shave it off, then they would kill themselves too. Like that's kind of the argument she's making. Yeah, but they Which kill themselves for good reason. Nonsense. Yeah, I know. It's just like, like, because I don't know, lots my sister's of women, had a hairy lip for years and doesn't bother her. I, <laughs> yeah, lots of women have facial hair and they just kind of plug along. Fun. They don't kill right. themselves. It's, I know. It's just, it's, it's, it's just so weird. This is so crazy. <laughs> this people feel those feelings. It doesn't have its own clinical label. No, they, and they don't have to be diagnosed with it to get treatment. Because the treatment is like, get a fucking razor and shave my fucking face. What are you talking about? That's the treatment. That's no treatment. I don't have to go to a doctor. Doctor, can you can you give me a razor, please? Remember, it's if a so cis woman goes through menopause, just... she can get estrogen from her GP. If a trans woman wants it, we have to go to the gender clinic and be diagnosed with gender dysphoria. When we feel that... Because a woman naturally body is pro- is used to producing and having estrogen in it, mm-hmm. and a man's body not it not doesn't not to the same nowhere near the same fucking amount. It can also, have detrimental effects on you. So yeah, menopause, you have to go to a fucking doctor. Menopause is a medical condition. You can just diagnose at the doctor's office. Yes. You yes. Just, you you met you like oh what symptoms? Yeah, I got hot flashes. Can't sleep at night. Uh, and then they measure your hormone levels. Like, oh, your hormone levels are way too low. We're going to prescribe you some estrogen. Like, it's a medical thing. It's not a yeah. psychological state. Yeah, exactly. You have to differentiate. They can, you're right. They can just literally measure your hormone level. Exactly. If there was some magical, again, if there was a magical brain scan that could see gender dysphoria, then they wouldn't have to do all the fucking talking. Okay. But we don't have that. So they do have to do that. This is so dumb. We have the, the sissy ceiling. boy study. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> hey, we should argue about that for another 20 minutes. Thank you. <laughs> Please, no. It's, it's treated differently. And you might be saying, well, when cis people feel those things, that's body dysmorphia, not gender dysphoria. It is it's a different thing. It's not even that thing. either, though. But that's what I, I know. Mean. It's not even that. But Abigail doesn't know what the fuck she's talking it's about. Slight, it's slight discomfort like, yeah. at most. <laughs> yeah. For yeah. most people. Yes. Asking why is it different? To which the only answer is, well, because you're trans. No, it's different because those people are going to fucking kill themselves. How do you not know this? You were just going on and on about all the people committing suicide. That's the difference. And that's exactly my point. Functionally, in the English clinical system, gender dysphoria just means the thing that trans people have. And in that case, you might as well just call it mad tr- disease. And it's not. I mean, can <laughs> <laughs> we call are it you that? Are you open to that? Let's go for it. Well, it's actually it's kind of funny. So we're not going to get the, demonetized. In the uh, DSM four, it was called gender identity disorder, and kind of the way it was phrased meant that simply having the desire to be a different gender was like the mental illness. And all the you know transgender people kind of complained about this, and so to be more politically correct, they said, "Well, the desire to transition isn't the medical problem or the mental illness; it's the dysphoria that's caused by not transitioning. That's the mental illness, the medical problem." And mm-hmm. you know, so there's technically, just, you know, Abby was kind of right in that it is just sort of a, a word game distinction that they're making. But on one hand that I think they didn't realize is that by changing it to dysphoria, it actually is far more limiting because at the time period, no one expected there to be like a future where a bunch of people were just going to come out as trans and then claim they don't have dysphoria. So if they had kept the old uh, categorization, maybe they could have. I think it was also meant as a way to separate it out from transvestism. Yeah, that's probably part of it too. But because I know this is Riley Dennis's idiotic take, like, way back Ugh. when Riley Dennis was like relevant was oh we love Riley you know, Dennis she she Ooh. would claim she didn't have dysphoria and that you didn't need dysphoria to transition who Look, was I Riley just... Dennis's partner Miles something I don't remember her name didn't they get she was kind of hot but I don't remember her name <laughs> I think they got married was she but uh, no. transitioning to be a guy they were gonna like yeah yeah he was oh she crisscross. was a guy oh they did really that's so sad 
Oh no! Wait, she was a lesbian. No, it was a lesbian relationship. Yeah, I thought it was. Yeah, like, no, oh, I, lesbian I meant like partner is in like YouTube partner. Oh, 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 oh YouTube okay. you guys. <laughs> you had a YouTube partner. <laughs> yeah, Miles something or whatever. He oh, I thought her actual like girlfriend at the time. Who was no, in some no, no, videos. no, no, no. Yeah, he, he was some, in a some... lesbian relationship. <laughs> yeah, he had some. <laughs> He had some terrible tweets about people just need to get over if they regret having top surgery because you can just get your breast back through surgery. Oh, yeah, my God. That. Yeah, you can just get implants. Get over it. Yeah, you can't terrible. really, though, because you're removing all the breast tissue. There's nothing there to rebuild. Right. Oh. Not just the concept itself that raises my eyebrows. The history of it is also questionable. Oh, thank Being you. Being trans used to be considered a mental illness. Doesn't she it's mean the her story? Well. Gender dysphoria still is considered a mental illness, but... Transsexuality, as it was then called, was added to the Diagnostic Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders in 1980, and there was immediately a campaign to remove it. So the American Psychiatric Association got together and said, we got to update this, and they assembled a committee. There were 12 doctors on that committee. As far as I can find, all of them were cis. Side note, one... Now Those they're all trans. Doctors don't know these what days, to... so uh, <sighs> look at like the W path people. They're all trans. I know. Well, back in those days, the amount of trans doctors was probably like yeah, it's probably in the double digits. But... Yeah, in the entire world, you know. One of them was Ray Blanchard, <gasps> a name that all the trans people in the audience will know, because oh, no. Blanchard has since been disgraced and his. <clears throat> Theories about oh, us really? have been thrown out by the medical community and thoroughly debunked. Untrue, ah, untrue, complete see, lies. Look, look who they're citing. But ContraPoint said so, so it must be true. ContraPoint said it in a video at Com some point. I mean, point. if by disgrace, she lies. means a bunch of mean internet blogs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Including by other YouTubers more talented than me. Mm -hmm. Come back to me, Contra. Mm -hmm. Contra, come back to me, please. It'll be different this time, I swear. <laughs> you have my this number. This <laughs> was the committee that pretty much invented the modern concept of gender dysphoria. So I was reading this person's paper, Zowie Davy. This person mm. is like fucking crazy. And well, on. they'd have to be if they have a name like Zowie. Zowie Davy. There's um, where are my notes? Okay, they say, um, oh my God, this is like insane. They're advocating that biology has nothing to do with sex. Mm -hmm. And so that- uh -huh. so That makes a lot so of that, sense. Therefore, the gender diagnosis, gender dysphoria diagnosis doesn't make sense because- Wow, it's almost you know, like that thing I said. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So they said, I would argue that the criteria proposed by the DSM-5 are derived from stereotypes applied in gender identity clinics serving trans people rather than empirically developed from biological imperatives. And then she cites John Money and his oh, gender God. constructionist research suggests that biological imperatives are few in the human and consist only of procreative imperatives. That's so bad. Uh... So this fucking... So while Abigail is like Ray Blanchard has been thoroughly debunked, is citing a person who's citing John fucking money. Yeah, who has been oh, thoroughly debunked. Who has been annihilated. Holy shit. And the person that wrote this article, this is like from like 2015 or something. It's not like they didn't know John money hadn't been discredited in 2015. Uh, and then they continue, they say, oh, this other behavioral aspects, such as sartorial preference, which is a fancy way of saying clothing, aggression, empathy, and intelligence, among a number of other characteristics, are not sex-specific. Aggression is like one of the most highly correlated things of course, to yeah. males, specifically. What do they mean sex-specific? Like only one sex. Well, obviously, I don't know what they mean by that, right? Because I don't think anyone has ever claimed that that right. only men can be aggressive. It's right. just that the distribution is consistently that men are men are more aggressive as a yes, group on average. Yes, and that's one of the easiest ones to recreate. Some developmental psychologists. This is very dishonest. What they do? They say some <laughs> developmental psychologists, such as Maccabi and Jacqueline, nineteen seventy four insisted that the normative gender behavior is related to sex differences in a biological 
sense alongside socialization. However, more recent research, Eagerly 2013, stipulates behavioral sex difference firmly within a social role model. Okay, so they cite this person they're like, look, in 1974, they thought it was bio biology, but now in 2013, it's behavioral. Except if you actually click that link, the reason that that Eagley book is is says 2013 is because they reprinted it. It's actually a book from 19 fucking 87. Mm. And if you look at actual modern research on sex differences, every single one, or not every single one, but most of them, the overwhelming majority of them all all follow the model that there are both inherent biological sex differences that manifest in behavior and also sex differences that are socialized through culture. And that's like the common thought process that everyone has nowadays. But they mm -hmm. intentionally cite this in this weird way to kind of make it seem like, oh, it's just old thinking that it's biology. Right. So the this is this is the person is one. Right. And this is the person that Abigail's citing is like, oh, this is proof that the people that did the DSM are, you know. John Money's research did come out uh very decisively. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of it reading through this paper result. now. Yeah. It, half of it is about just like the politics behind citation. Oh, like yeah. It's not even about. It's not now. It's not about the actual science. It's not like serious. No. Like what, what we're doing to help people. No, no, no. no. <laughs> to be fair, yeah. the title is the politics of diagnosing. Is yes. that yes. Uh, Abigail's true. paper you're skimming? This yeah. is Dr. Zowie Davies it. paper. Yeah. Oh, okay. And I like their, I found their name on Twitter. Their name on Twitter is Dr. Zowie Davy dismissed with gender critical patriarchal ideal. Ouch. By the way, okay. this is this is a person in the UK system. Ken Zucker had his uh, clinic shut down this year in Canada. I wonder because this was kind of like the tenor at the time when Ken Zucker had his clinic yeah, shut maybe. down. That would make sense. They Do also ever... say that they're a trans feminist and. Uh, they put Black Lives Matter in their pronouns in the bio. So oh, so they're good people. Okay, yeah, exactly. good. Let me just make sure. Yeah. Oh, is that what we even cite Zucker four times? Yep. <laughs> anyway. As it is used today, this team of 12 looked at the history of diagnosing trans people, looked for patterns in the medical literature, and came up with their new diagnosis, dysphoria. Unfortunately, there was a major problem with the data that they relied on, uh -oh. a problem which also makes the diagnosis extremely difficult to actually use. Uh -oh. How do you diagnose someone with gender dysphoria? Or transsexuality, or mad disease, or whatever we're calling it this decade. When you get to the gender clinic, what does the specialist actually do? Are you ready? Are you ready for Abigail Thorne to take a baseball bat to basically all transgender people. Is she gonna come out as gender critical? Oh no, it's worse. Oh no. Ouch. Well, they ask you questions, of course. Oh no, self-report. This person who has the power to decide what the rest of your life will look like asks you questions to make sure that your answers fit the ones they have in their textbook. And can you guess what the problem is? We lie! Or not even necessarily lie, but just we tell them what they want to hear. There you go. We shouldn't admit that. <laughs> <laughs> it seems like it seems like 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 Matt Walsh just like sat up in bed and he's like, Whoa, oh, yeah, this clip. <laughs> oh, my God. I didn't even. Th oh, my God. Nobody sends clip to Matt Walsh. She will be masturbating vigorously. <laughs> like a week. Fuck, she admits no, right here they lie. Oh my god! You're. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. It this clip would be so easy for someone to just blow up and be like, "Well, there you go. They're all fucking lying." Yeah. I mean, this has been sort of an open secret in the trans circles for a long time. I know, but it's just yeah. so like. But there it is it, again. You know, it, if doctors like, have to rely we just on research on online, right. what do they want to hear? And then you memorize your answers and you go to the doctor and you just spit it out. Great, but that's the problem. If, if the doctors have to rely on, on self reporting, and then Abigail's here, like, oh, well, you know, we should just do away with that because everyone lies anyway. Well, it's like, what the fuck? 
Yeah. The, the other problem is, is to protect you, you fucking moron. That's the whole point. Danimal, did you want to say something? Can you imagine going say, in and lying about your symptoms of like cancer or something? I know. Yeah. Well, right. Yeah. People do do that. That have uh, I forget, everybody what was it lies. When people like to have the constantly faking their illness. Mental yeah. Munchausen's. Munchausen. Is that Munchausen? Yeah. I have Munchausen by proxy. I try to trigger sitch once a week. <laughs> and you well, said that just it, just that the previous clip that Sargon and Kav talked about where like PT was saying like, oh, I've never felt gender dysphoria before. Right. Like it it even makes that kind of I'm just I'm not gonna lie, it makes it ring a little more suspicious. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That she's like, Oh, you know, it's you know, I lied <laughs> <laughs> to get through. Yeah. We all do it. And how much I wouldn't speak for how much of Abigail's story is a lie? How much of the story that she gave to her audience is true, or is it just justification for a decision she made? And they're like, Well, I want you all to accept me, so I'm gonna rattle off what I think you want to hear. Mm -hmm. I would be so so fucking pissed. I would be so fucking pissed if I was a trans person. I saw this, and like I think most I mean, most trans people are genuine because they do want to seek like the most best treatment to assist them. And they're not lying to their doctors. You know, they are genuinely answering the questions well. And then here's this person be like, oh, we all lie. We all do it. You know, You're like, fuck her. There's a lot of the, the online culture, I think, does not help with uh, the trans activist circles no, because no. they'll they'll sit in these communities and they flat out encourage it. They encourage coach you. Lying. Yeah. Yeah. They'll say, okay, Wonder you're going why. into the doctor. Make sure you say this, this, and this. Otherwise, they won't give you hormones. And they'll coach them. And if why someone comes so in and says, I think I might have gender dysphoria, they're like, yeah, you totally do. But here's what you should say to make sure you get. It's a very unquestioning uh, community, very toxic in that sense. Of course. Yeah. There's a documented history of trans people doing this since at least the 1950s, and we're still doing it. A 2015 study found that about 30% of trans respondents admitted to lying or withholding information during their NHS gender assessments, because of course we do! If you wait several years for that appointment and you finally get in the room with a person who has your life in their hands, a person who is almost certainly cis, and they ask you, so, when did you know of course you're going to say, oh, ever since I was a child. Yeah, I wore my mother's dress. I called myself Wendy. Like, all I want is to be a 1950s housewife and marry a man. Of course you're going to say that. That's a very gay thing. Just saying. <laughs> is, this, is this a little, are, are we reading this as a self-report? Uh, yeah, it's a massive self-report. It's a huge self-report. Yeah. Mm. Well, I just, I feel like... A little bit of a confession, maybe. Well, mm-hmm. you could just be locked into consistency bias once you're this far down the road. Like, what she's mm-hmm. saying is not... I mean, this would be the case for any kind of situation. Like, you've, yeah, but, they've already made the decision they want to transition regardless of whether or not they have gender dysphoria, so... Right, of course. But the, and I, this is, like, why this is baffling, that Abigail would make this as, like, a fucking video. Because... You know, when we watch, you know, John Stewart going on and John Oliver going on about like the trans. Oh, stuff, I know. You're like, so certain. You know, they say like, oh, you know, my three-year-old girl had these feelings about like, and, and here Abigail is just taking a sledgehammer to all of those narratives saying, no, they're all fucking lying. Everyone's fucking lying. It doesn't matter. And Matt, it's just like, holy shit. Doesn't, doesn't John Stewart literally say in that clip, why would they lie? Like you could marry yes. that. Why would they lie clip with this? Oh, we always yes. lie. That's all we do is lie. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> it would be so. Thirty percent of us are just big liars. Yes, yeah, according to this study I found on the internet. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh God, John Stewart's interviewing the wrong person. Yeah. Someone mentioned uh, lying about cancer, and I just remembered a story I saw of a person who was assigned to do gender re- uh, affirming surgery, mm-hmm. and then found out they had cancer. Mm-hmm. And then decided to lie to their doctor about having cancer so that they could get their gender surgery. Oh, they wouldn't do it That's if they did so cancer. Crazy. Or so they no. put off they put off chemo. Jesus mm. Christ. And everyone in the thread was saying, What are you doing? You're crazy. 
Uh, but they're like, no, uh, this is really, this is more important. I need, I need my, I, I've waited forever for this surgery. I'm not going to delay it anymore. Yeah. That's it's just, like, they're on autopilot by that, by that time. Yeah. I'm not saying you should lie to your doctor. I'm saying it's a fact that it happens. It's always been a problem and it's always going to be a problem. As long as we have to pass a behavioral assessment to get healthcare. To put it in cybernetic terms, we ourselves reduce the variety of inputs to the system because unless we give the right inputs, we don't get to live. It's a running joke in the British trans community that the assessments for gender dysphoria are ridiculous. But to be honest, the questions they ask can also be very humiliating. How do you masturbate? How often? What do you think about when you masturbate? What do you wear? So what, I mean... What do you wear? What are they asking? What? Are, what are the, Why are they asking these questions? Well, they're trying to figure out, you know, if you're if you're uh, an autogonophile. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, if you're or, just like wearing panties, you know, or you're just uh, a transvestite. But look, she doesn't want to answer those questions because they're embarrassing. I mean, there's plenty of medical procedures where you're answering embarrassing questions because you're like your health is on the line. Yeah. I mean, if you're going to make life altering or potentially life altering decisions, I think you can take with a little embarrassment, like talking to a doctor about, you know, you're, you're, you're applying for a sex change. Yeah. I'm sorry. Like the order of decorum is out the window. They're going to talk about your penis. They're going to talk right. about your sex life. Motherfucker. I've asked the fucking sex POV question. That's more uncomfortable than half the shit you're talking about with your doctor right now. So fuck you, Abigail. Well, I guess a lot of people feel insulted that they might have AGP instead of uh, gender right. dysphoria. So that's a well, well, yeah, because it's like can cause gender dysphoria. Well, and also, I mean, like reducing it to AGP is like saying, like, well, you just have a filthy kink, you know? Right. So that I mean, that's can't feel good. <laughs> right. Well, that's part of the problem too is that because when like the psychological or psychiatric way of thinking about like a it's not a fetish, a uh, para paraphilia. Mm -hmm. Yeah, paraphilia. Yeah. Yeah. Like when we think about that, like colloquially, you think like, oh, that's like a guy who likes to jack off the shoes or something, right? You don't think of it in terms of like, <laughs> like the psychiatry, like, well, no, 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 no. This is something that's far more severe that, you know, has a, a broader effect, you know, on their whole personality. Yeah. Uh, when you, who do you have sex with? How often? What positions? Tell me about your childhood. Were you abused as a child? What toys did you play with? Were you abused as a child? Which other children did See, you... See, that's... They're asking that question because they want to know if you... Uh, you know, obviously, like the woman who was sexually assaulted. Right. And, yeah. Right. So, I mean, they need to know this stuff if they want to give you good medical I know. treatment. Do you choose to play with? Were you abused as a child? Well, listen, Abigail is an uptight privileged british karen who's like oh, i have to talk to a doctor about sex things when i get my sex reassignment surgery oh, yeah when you're getting a, a a mental evaluation yeah like you yes you got to talk about these things when it's you're getting a mental so weird evaluation. to be upset about that i know i know it's like listen when i had to like my doctor grab my balls and i had to turn my head and cough it was so oh, why do i have to put up with that it was so embarrassing <laughs> Well, the doctor yeah. had to stick the finger in my asshole to check my <laughs> prostate. Oh, oh. Why? Then he turned around and said, my turn. <laughs> <laughs> then he took it a little too far at that point. <laughs> got out of hand. After right. That. Well, that was the problem. It got out of the hand. Philosophy <laughs> tube's Gosh. monocle popping out. Yes. <gasps> Did you just ask me about my masturbation habits? Oh. But Jesus. Did. did is this not a little bit self-reporting that she doesn't really know? If I feel like we know more about the situation than her if she just doesn't realize that these questions are about something. Abigail, they serve a purpose. I thought you were there to get your balls removed. It feels like you need to grow a pair in the first place to answer these questions. Yeah. Oh. Ta -da! But no, you're right. It's it. Well, here's the thing. Is Abigail just so ignorant about her own <laughs> trans? Yeah, her own medical treatment. Right. Or is she just being obtuse for the point of the video, like intentionally? Look, we know or more about this. Dumb. You know, she could be dumb. dumb. Just be fucking dumb. She just no, walked into dumb. the clinic like, you know, I just walked in. I figured you just 
do it. Look, they tell yeah. them what to say. They don't Push tell the them why to say it. That's the thing. Like mm, we maybe. we know the the specifics, the substance of all of these questions just because we're arguing about them on the internet. That's what's so bizarre. Like they they don't even know why they're supposed to answer the questions these ways. Right. They just know this gets you the result that you want. Well, and it's funny too because by the fact that all these people are supposedly lying, then that means they're going to have to ask you more questions that are even more probing because they're going to try to sift through oh, who's yeah, lying yeah, yeah. and who's being truthful. Yeah, so. They have ways of asking questions to figure out if you're lying to. They, they, they figured that out in these questionnaires now. Right. Oh, hey, guys, I got a jet. You have That's a good it? One. Okay. Have a good See you later. That's it. That's it. Thanks I got to go. Coming on. On. It's got his hubby. Right. That's yeah. good. Wow. Let's bring so, it home, cheese. So long. <laughs> cheese. Bring me some. God. I will. Fucking lactose. Want some of that brie. Mm, brie cheese delicious. doesn't have that much lactose. Come on. Man, what no. are you talking about? Okay, hard cheeses are not that much lactose. It's nope. enough. Okay. It's enough. It's enough for you for your little sensitive. I don't got yeah, I got baby like no. Gut. I have like you're right. This is why <laughs> Sitch gets triggered about the sissy boy study so so badly. <laughs> I feel insecure about my inability to digest dairy products. Look, even the sissy right, did boy. Did the animal ever figure out how to leave the call? He did not, know. Even the sissy boys could eat cheese. How does that no. make you feel, Sitch? Oh, my God. I remember back in my school days, they used to go, girly Sitch, girly Sitch, he can't eat his cheese. That's exactly can't right. can't chug that milk? What are you, a homo? Yeah. You can't <laughs> chug milk? What are you, gay? Yeah, I was exactly. Like, yeah, exactly. There's nothing that says straight like chugging a bunch of white liquid. What? I can't what even kick him out. Oh, really? Oh, no. Why not? It says I can put him in the waiting room, but I can't. Oh, go. look, remove oh. right there. There you God. go. Bye, Danimal. Bye. I reported the sexual experience. Too. Fuck when did guy. you start having sex? Tell me again, specifically, in detail. How do you masturbate? On and on and on. <gasps> it's humiliating enough as an adult to be interrogated like that by a stranger. <gasps> oh my God. <laughs> this is so bizarre. This is, is she like so bizarre. She must, she's like never talked to a doctor about anything that would be like quote unquote embarrassing before in her life. Yeah, there's like, a lot. So I mean, every time you go to the doctor, it's like something embarrassing. What the right. hell? I can't imagine what it's like if you're a trans child. Oh my God. Oh children. no. Look, Think of the children. Can you imagine? I mean, the doctor probably cuts the masturbation stuff out <laughs> on the fucking child. <laughs> Jeez. Well, it, you know, it's funny too, because like uh, the person who conceived of all this uh, fluidity of sex and mm -hmm. gender, uh, John Money, you know, famous for having the, the giant kids failure. Yeah, a giant failure. It was it's famous for having the kids, you know, uh oh, create know. fake sex acts on each other and mm -hmm. you know, do master you know you know, do fun like group stuff. masturbation sessions and things. It's like, you know. Right. Okay. That's terrible. Okay, yeah, yeah. And it's not like you can say, hang on a minute, where's your evidence that any of this is medically relevant? Oh my I god. I mean, you could ask them, the, and they'd say, "Well, let me pull out my stack of uh, credentials and studies." Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Wait a second! I saw a YouTube video that that study was debunked. Oh, <laughs> uh, here's uh, a contrapoints video. Call me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay. <laughs> I would love because that. they have the power to deny you health care. <gasps> And if you're the committee in 2013 going through- Why are you assuming you need this health care in the first place? That's the whole thing. It's Look, to see if you actually need it or not. It's not to deny can it Can you to imagine you. how fucking embarrassing it would be to have to report back to your patrons that you like were denied this because you don't even have gender dysphoria <laughs> or anything? Like, like they're like, listen, you're not even really, you don't have AGP. Like you don't have anything. Right, right. <laughs> you just showed up. Yeah. Oh, how embarrassing. What how happens if ten years from now, uh, Abigail detransitions like down the road? 
comes oh, out as gender no. fluid or something. I, like, I never was a woman. That I'm can't, like in between. That can't happen. That can't happen. Not after this video. Well, yeah. I mean, just the the sunk cost, that's never going to happen. Yeah, right. Yeah. Impossible. He transitions, sues her doctor. <laughs> but somebody in Great Britain could say, listen, we're not going to pay for gender reassignment surgery on this person that doesn't have gender dysphoria or autogynophilia or like, right. look, you're not even gay. <laughs> like, what well, the hell? Also, Abigail's a moron. Like, she doesn't realize this. She, she just opened herself up to potential lawsuits. Because of the lying. Yeah. Yeah. Because you could have some kid who starts transition, regrets it, and they say, Oh, well, I saw in this philosophy tube video that uh, I lies. should lie, you know, yeah. to the doctor. I mean, she said I'm not supposed to, but, you know, wink, 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 wink. We all do it. Right. So, not very intelligent. Yeah. Through the reports, assessments, trying to find the patterns, you've got no way of knowing how accurate that data is. Which raises well, serious. Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Well, they yeah. were creating those criteria. People weren't lying to try to get treatment because it wasn't like a fucking yeah, I mean, fad. So you, you can't know. you can't make these criteria with the assumption that everyone's going to lie about it. Right. It doesn't work that way. You well, have also, to if, assume people are going to be mostly truthful to the best. Yeah, but and, and also so, her and that no one's trying trying to be diagnosed. That's the exactly. Thing. This is why she's like her art. She's so like dumb. Her argument doesn't even make sense. Her argument was people are lying to match the criteria. How could they lie to match a criteria before the criteria exists? Yep. It doesn't make sense. That's exactly right. It's it's a social club. You want to sign up, so you say the oath. Oh, I see. And, I see. and then you, you join. And right. it's not a mental illness in the same way another mental illness is. I'm not going to the doctor and faking symptoms to try to get diagnosed as schizophrenic. Mm -hmm. like, that would be cool know. if you did. Yeah, that would be cool, but most people just don't do that. No one really wants that hanging over them. Yeah. What do they give you for schizophrenia? Maybe it's like a great high. I don't know. Lithium. I think the drugs kind of suck. No, lithium's for uh, bipolar. Oh, okay. Damn it. I'm pretty sure schizo drugs are crap. Make you uh, tired all the time. Quetapine. You want some of that? You want get some of that Q? That Q peen? <laughs> but uh, yeah, there's just not as much incentive. But for some reason. Yeah reason gender identity the incentive is lie to your doctor so you can get yep. the drugs you want and then you can uh, transform your body and your identity and join this super special club of people who cannot be questioned <laughs> you too can date contrapoints <laughs> questions about the reliability of their conclusions there's no way of knowing whether gender dysphoria is a real diagnostic pattern or just a collective invention. I remind you that getting trans healthcare in England and a lot Can of... Can I be what? a little pedantic here? I mean, yeah. they're all kind of that, right? Yes, yeah, everything... Okay, everything's mental, technically a collective invention, sure. Mental illness like, in particular, because there's so much overlap between right. conditions. Like, they all have similar symptoms and you just kind of differentiate in weird ways right. and it's not always necessarily a, a solid right way to do it because psycho the the psyche is just not easily organized the way a body is that we know of you know maybe yeah. at some point we, we haven't figured it that out it's kind of uh, one strange. way I describe it is it's sort of a black box. Yeah. In that I we in kind of dartboard here. we kind of know how it how to tinker with it, but we don't really know the mechanisms. Beneath. Yeah, and that's a good way of saying it. But the way that she's phrasing it, it's just like, oh, well, then no one should transition. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it wouldn't make sense to have a right. a biological treatment for no, something like that. The legal transition too requires you to go through that interrogation first. That's the real reason the waiting lists are so long. There are very few specialists who conduct these assessments. Apparently, it's hard to recruit people to do the job of asking strangers how they jack off. But even if there were a million of them, even if the asking strangers how they jack off sector became the biggest employer in the country, I just don't think it's a valuable clinical diagnosis. I don't think it even makes sense. Well, I'm glad that you as a doctor degree in psychology and in this issue are so well informed on the topic to uh give your opinion on it it's all fake yeah, it's yeah. All fake. just give me drugs 
listen, when a guy looks at another guy, he says, I wish I was buff like that guy. That's just gender dysphoria. Yeah, totally. And it's also a little bit insulting that I have to do that, but a cis person doesn't. I'm like the emperor's <laughs> new clothes with this shit, man. Gender uh, dysphoria? Cis, cis people do go through that. If a cis person says, I have gender dysphoria, right. yeah. they have to go through that whole rigmarole and they Nate, might go no, on no, the no. other end and say, uh, you know what? Maybe it's not for me. They don't have the trans spirit, okay? They don't have the soul. Look, if they, yeah. she doesn't have gender dysphoria. Isn't they don't she? have the body thetans. There you go. If Abigail doesn't have gender dysphoria, she's cis, right? I would say so, but that would make us a true scum for saying so. Oh, okay. What's I don't even know what a true scum is. True scum is you someone that believes you have to have dysphoria to be trans. But you're true yep. scum. I am, yes. Okay. Yeah. Why trans medicalist. I, was, I hate yeah. oh trans medicalist. That's a nicer the, way of saying it. The nicer way of saying it, yeah. But they both get maligned and uh terms. the new the new gender circles are very against it. Mm -hmm. I see, and I think you should just be able to transition if you think you got a better shot at getting laid. So where, what is, <laughs> what is, where do I stand in this? You're like the opposite. Uh, you're on, you're on philosophy tube side, I guess. I well, guess. Okay, sure, yeah, I guess. There you go. Let the sissies be sissies. Well, no, this is why I think that the questions are important because. You really, you really want the therapist to give you a heads up on whether your right. chances of getting laid are going to be better or worse. Like, do you think you'll get a better? Mm -hmm. They're not no, body be. count after the surgery. <laughs> Why has there been no or body less? count uh, studies on? Uh, well, that's trans an important people, huh? metric, I think. Yeah. How many sexual partners did you get? You do know what? That would be actually Adam. There you go. Mm -hmm. That would be the study to commission to see. You know how many? What what is the body count for people after they transition? Do trans women and if, worry it, if about it's going body down? Count? If it goes down, would less people start? Would more people stop transitioning because they can see like, oh, well, you know, you're twenty percent less likely to have sex after transitioning. Or you whatever. know, everything you, I've seen indicates that trans women do not worry about a body count. They just okay. yeah, that's been my experience. As well, but they are do, quite promiscuous. Do trans men worry about their body? Count? Trans men hardly get laid, so I don't know. Oh, so they don't have to worry about it by default. It's uh, it's mm. way trickier because uh, but if you don't do bottom surgery, which a lot of trans men don't, because phalloplasty is just a nightmare. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, your chances of getting laid are pretty bad. Mm -hmm. You might be able to get into some lesbian circles. Can't you just like fake it with? A um, but gay men are not going to want to sleep with you. Oh, okay. If you want, if you want a guy, right? But see, and that's a, that's the issue, and then they don't want to talk about that, especially for, yeah. for trans. And then, like, and then, if you had a phalloplasty, it's like game over. That's not a functional sexual organ, so right. And it's, it's just like, a, a thing hanging there. Yeah, because it's like you know, if you're if you're a trans man, you know, you're like you know, gay guys want a penis, obviously, and uh, you know, women, obviously, you know, they don't, you know, they want to fuck a guy with a dick. And if they're usually, if a woman's okay with, you know, fucking a guy with a vagina, they're not, you can find someone who's like bisexual or something. You're just drastically limiting your dating pool. Wow. But that that's so. the point because a lot of the trans men are like sexual assault victims or something because, you know, they don't want any sort Some of Some of them may be. There might yeah. be a higher I don't know the numbers. I don't know there there might, the there, yeah, I wouldn't say but majority. But this is why, they, certainly this is why some they ask of it. those questions because they want to yes. act it. Right. But like I said, I think a lot of, in my experience, a lot of trans men just kind of meld in with lesbian groups. Sure. Okay. They get they get pretty accepted. Would they get a better deal as a butch lesbian though? Maybe Some of them so. do, yeah. They just kind of, uh, well, there's sort of in-betweeners who are demiguys or they have these, these gender identities that are right. sort of flexible and so they hang out with lesbians and they're just kind of butch lesbians but mm -hmm. with a little extra testosterone right but see that's the problem is like you you'd want the doctor to have this conversation be like listen if you if you know if you become a trans man you know you're it's gonna be a lot harder for you to bang you know have sex with women thank you that. sitch thank you thank but they're you not gonna say that yeah, they should but they're right. not yeah right 
Sad. Very sad. I know it is sad. Gotta have these. See, but the thing is, you know, with trans women, there's enough horny guys out there that they're like, whatever, just holes a hole. Yeah. <laughs> you know? so, I don't give a shit. You're gonna get lots of yeah. action. Yeah. yeah. There's nothing there. Now we're bullied and insulted and harassed and shoved around all day long by insane people. And we do our duty, mission after mission, 35, 40, then we're told it's not good enough. With all that said, why not just ditch the concept of dysphoria? If it's grounded in philosophical error, based on unreliable it's data, not. incentivizes patients to lie, creates a deadly bottleneck in the system, and adds this whole extra expensive layer we don't need, why not just get rid of it? We could still use the word if somebody says, how are you, Abby? And what I want to say is, I feel bad about my body and the way that it is perceived by myself and others in a way that relates to my gender because there is a gap between what I want and what I have, then it's probably just faster to say dysphoria, or honestly, most of the time, it's faster to just make a noise like, <laughs> but I, I, from the way, from how she defines dysphoria, I, I just do not think that she actually has gender dysphoria at all. Mm -hmm. At all. I, I, th I think someone actually suffers from gender dysphoria would never in a million years think to compare that to, you know, shaving your lip or not being buff. It depends upon where the distress comes from. Because, I mean, you we pointed out the definition of dysphoria many times, and the desire part of it, she definitely has. You can have a desire think... for something, but without having a the distress element to it. Yeah, well, it depends the same upon, thing. look, how, how bad do you want your Patreon to be? Like, six <laughs> figures. No, so. but like I can I can desire something, but but without it like causing me like suicidal distress if I don't have the desire fulfilled. You know, she can desire to transition without having dysphoria. Yeah, and it could be a fairly intense desire and not be rooted in like a self hatred necessarily. It could just be like, yeah, you feel sort of neutral about where you are now, but you have a very intense longing for this right. this thing that's out there that you're trying to reach sure yeah and i just again i just i don't think anyone that actually experienced gender dysphoria would would say what she said well i've never experienced gender dysphoria so well uh, as know. someone who no does that mean in a year <laughs> you're going to transition right. and we're going to clip you saying I've i'm never not going to i'm go. not going to transition he must be no, just, doing just going to transition first He's i doing am it for the money obviously i mean obviously i'm interested you are interested in, the in transitioning no i'm interested in the motivation <laughs> behind transitioning right like i i know there have been studies that the people's sexual orientation is more fixed than their gender identity according to so yeah whatever whatever you're attracted to doesn't seem to change no even though people will change you know their their sex their biological sex or their right gender whatever well, so I'm saying, it's something it. it seems like it's a different thing that's causing it yeah there have been calls for years internationally to ditch There's the Zoe clinical again. use yep. of dysphoria and just give trans people healthcare without that extra step of a diagnosis. There are some practical hurdles. To <laughs> without, I love this, without, without any extra step. Without any step is what she's saying, without any diagnosis. She just, yeah, listen, if like, how does this work for kids though? And she, you know, she doesn't say that. Like, should a kid just be like, listen, I feel like I'm trans. Give me the puberty blocker. You know, just say, you know okay. the answer is yes. Just give it to them. Because oh they God. know. So disgusting. They know. I just, you, you can't, you have to have no understanding of human psychology to make a video like this. It just. Well, that's why she's a philosophy student, not a psychologist. Apparently, and apparently Abigail got some flack for this video for that same I issue. I bet. It's just like. This is and posted like, I'm disappointed. So many people are against childhood transition. I'm like, I don't know how you're surprised. Wait, did she still, tweet that out? I believe it's a tweet here. I can oh find it. Really? I want to see that. Well, the <laughs> does does she understand? Like, does she even believe in the subconscious or any of that stuff? I don't know what she believes in. To be honest, does she believe in like? consistency bias or I mean obviously she talks about bias a lot I don't know if she understands why bias exists or any of that stuff I, I think she believes 
that the things she wants are good. <laughs> well, everyone does that, right? Obviously. And uh, anyone who doesn't want to give her what she wants is bad. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it's a very coherent and uh, straightforward philosophy. Yeah. Every two-year-old has that philosophy. Yeah. That's like the first philosophy you get. <laughs> Most people are socialized out of that philosophy. Some people are pampered and spoiled. What do you, how do you think she scored on the marshmallow test? How do you think Abigail did with the marshmallow? When <laughs> Last to two well. seconds. <laughs> when, the, when, the, when the researcher sets down the marshmallow and says, listen, if I come back and that marshmallow is still here, I'm going to give you two marshmallows. <laughs> how long did she last? <laughs> no, nah, it's gone. Look, I'm going to set these. I'm going to set these hormone blockers on the table here now. And when I come back, <laughs> right? If they're still here, you get the the gender affirming surgery too. <laughs> someone, someone in the comment section of this video says, "As an NHS doctor, I just want to say how profoundly sorry I am that we are failing you and so many people right now." It fills me with deep shame and rage. That is 100% a fake comment. You don't think this actually, is a real NHS doctor? No, hell no. Mm -hmm. I'm going to the comment section right now and saying, as an NH <laughs> NHS doctor, I want you to know that I helped drop your <laughs> letter behind the fucking filing cabinet. <laughs> we laughed about it on our lunch break. <laughs> And we did it because you were just so mean to me. Yeah, you were By so mean. By mean, I mean you just, I didn't like the way you looked at me with your, you looked at me down from mm. your high horse. How about this? Contra points paid us to lose your letter. Oh, the conspiracy, the, the plot thickens. Contra oh, that'd be good. Come on, maybe we can start some shit in the comment section. No, 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 probably, no, 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 no. Probably be banned. Yeah. That would be funny though. <laughs> to be sure. The diagnostic requirement is very baked into the NHS and British law. In 1999, there was a landmark legal case. A trust in Lancashire announced they weren't going to fund transition anymore on the grounds that it was merely cosmetic, and they were sued by three trans patients who said actually it was necessary to alleviate their gender identity disorder, as it was called at the time. The patients won, which meant that we have a right to free transition, but it also codified the idea that we need to be diagnosed with something first. <laughs> like there's just, she she's, just wants it all. She's so chap. The cake, everything. <laughs> you want it free. You want no diagnosis, yeah. but you also want the protections that are entailed in being diagnosed. Right. Nothing else works this way. Listen, she wants this is insane. She wants to speak to life's manager. Okay. <laughs> I mean, according to her, she's literally just said it is basically cosmetic. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you were getting it and you don't ha have gender dysphoria, how is it not cosmetic? Let's talk about prepping for five dollars. Says, if the lying is true, it means every study she cites is compromised. Yeah, exactly. Because all those studies rely on self-reporting. <laughs> so, I don't think reporting their lying, satisfaction. Though. Why? Yeah, but why is uh, why is she would wasting? Have a pretty time. big incentive to lie about their satisfaction of course they do it's some cost fallacy right of there of course of course yeah big so time. why is she wasting all our time with these going over these studies if they're all just lying the nhs tries to cure illness rather than maximize health wait what was that citation to ditch the clinical use of dysphoria and just give trans people health care without that extra step of a diagnosis. There are some practical hurdles to be sure. The diagnostic requirement is very baked into the NHS and British law. In 1999, there was a landmark legal case. A trust in Lancashire announced they weren't gonna fund transition anymore on the grounds that it was merely cosmetic. And they were sued by three trans patients who said actually it was necessary to alleviate their gender identity disorder as it was called at the time. The patients won, which meant that we have a right to free transition, but it also codified the idea that we need to be diagnosed with something first. Whoops. The NHS tries to cure illness rather than maximize health. Those are not necessarily the same thing. So 
gender dysphoria provides an illness that they can respond to. Practical hurdles can be overcome, though. It would take some work to change the system, sure, but it's not impossible. We could have a system that gives us free healthcare and doesn't rely on diagnosing us with mad disease. Other countries already do. Again, and this is the question I kept coming back to with Colonel Cathcart, why not change the system? I so question, just cited a study about Argentina. Mm. Does Argentina yeah. give free surgery? I don't know, I'll look it up right now. I'm skeptical that yeah. just I doubt Argentina it. just says like, oh, here's free gender surgery with no uh, doctor. Uh, my guess is if anything, it's just a laissez-faire, like you want to pay for it, go get it. Yeah. Right. No totally. one's going to ask questions. No, uh, no, you know, don't ask, don't tell. Yeah. Because a lot of those South American, like Brazil and other countries have a lot of transsexualism. Mm -hmm. It's just don't they all part work of the in sex work. It's like, that's a lot of it. Yeah. yeah. I think that's how it is in most cultures where it's prevalent. Right. It's one of the few jobs they can survive on. I think so, I read something where mm -hmm. they were complaining about you know western trans people appropriating this their suffering when they're basically all just like sex workers and are doing it for a job so which is sad obviously it looks like by, this yeah, thing that but, they linked it doesn't have anything to do with surgery it's just saying that you can identify under laws whatever sex you want and the government will recognize it doesn't doesn't okay. have anything to do with treatment so weird i mean I, I don't see how that's relevant but okay <laughs> oh boy another citation that isn't relevant right. in a philosophy tube video <laughs> <laughs> oh wait no hold on the bottom all persons oh. older than 18 years oh so you have to be over 18 will be able to access total and partial surgical interventions and, and or comprehensive hormonal treatments to adjust their bodies, including their genitalia, to their self-perceived gender identity without requiring any judicial or administrative authorization. So, so, say, so what about medical? Well, is this, does that mean that they pay for it or are they just saying you can do it? I don't know what the healthcare I'm, I'm, Argentina is. Mm, maybe someone knows better. Right. <laughs> I don't know if Argentina is the one I'd go for anyway. <laughs> like That's a, an example of like progressive ideals, but they 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 have to do what you know. She has to reach for whatever is out there. Yeah, it's called cherry picking. Don't you know how it works? Right. <laughs> Other countries do this. You know what cherry picking is? Uh, of course. Of course. We're all intelligent. People. I'm not talking about actually picking cherries you guys should know you're not no what no it's a metaphor for something is yeah, that what you're telling me called finding evidence that makes your case but just ignoring evidence that doesn't oh wow yeah. i thought it had something to do with like masturbating women or something but I can't I'm believe i'm here i'm here being mansplained on i know yeah. i'm glad you elucidated Stream. that for us how are you going to be educated if no one mansplains you it's true <laughs> don't don't tell women that i told you this but women love when they're mansplained too mm -hmm. oh it, it gets them all hot and bothered really this is a part of the live stream where kava cries guys get ready oh, it's coming okay. we're getting close <laughs> you just have to bully me about something there you go i don't kava it honestly seems like it would be impossible to make you cry to be honest with you i don't think there's nothing well, i could say probably not you mm-hmm <laughs> oh, Sitch could? Sitch could? Uh, yeah. Sitch, uh, maybe. I think yeah. when I do cry, it would be over something like a close personal friend said to me. I, I honestly. A person think, on the internet being mean to me is like, we're whatever. We're not a close personal friend. Not, Listen, if you yet. go back, wow. if you go back to the live stream that yeah. all this is based on. Yeah. Uh -huh. And I believe Aiden will back me up on this because I think she message me and apologize like she had been drinking on that stream so oh my uh, god why are you talking Aiden, about this Aiden just... drinking are you 
it's not. I would have never thought. First of all, there's yeah. nothing wrong with drinking. Okay. Yeah, Sargon was right. You can't keep your fucking mouth <laughs> shut. Holy shit. Well, listen. And did you apologize? How? No, he didn't because he's probably a bad person. Well, and I don't apologize. I'm trying to. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Okay. That's, that's good to know. Let's move on with the video. I don't see yeah. this. Hold on a second. Here. Yeah. Stop it. No, airing look. Aiden's yeah, what is DMs. Here? Come on. Fuck. People. People um, constantly bring this up, though. Like this, you constantly bring it up. <laughs> yeah, but I st- listen. I am an innocent person here. This oh, is not my, my fault. God. Like, uh, for- pure and innocent, Adam. Yes. Look, never I made don't, a mistake in his I life. just committed the crime, but I'm innocent. Okay. Whose fault? Listen. Whose fault is the crying episode? It's not mine. Okay. <laughs> Look, okay. someone gets a little tipsy and. Why and, does and gets a Abigail have like a shark? What is that supposed to mean? What, what does the, the shark symbolism? represent? Yeah, what's the symbol? That's a good question. I'm not sure. At first, I thought it was a dolphin, but now I see it's a shark because it has teeth. So is it supposed to be like, you know, sneaking into the the system, sneaking into the gender? <laughs> I don't know. Shark in the water. <laughs> yeah. What does that mean? That is a very dolphin-looking shark too. That's so it's a mean. shark, and it's a red couch. Representing blood. Yeah, she's pure. So I'm working. I'm working this out. Over there. Yeah. Smelling the blood in the water. Oh, is that what's it, going on? Yeah. You guys. I've are, just interpreted it. You guys are psychoanalyzing the video. But what about the poop room? She's in like a poop brown room. That's empty. <laughs> that res- represents all the the fecal matter that's been presented in this video so far. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Perfect. I have a theory about what's really going on here. Oh, thank and to you. explain it, I want to draw on some philosophy of disability. Oh, my God. In her uh... book, The Capacity Contract, philosopher Stacey Clifford Simplican compares two different ways of thinking about what it means to have a disability. One is the so-called medical... It's like she reads all the people that are just totally boring and up their own ass. Like, she could read people that are actually interesting. Medical model. Yeah, but then you have, have to read things if that aren't philosophy. You have a medical. What's that? She would have to read things that aren't philosophy, then. But there, I mean, there are philosophers that aren't just insane. Okay, I'm just, yeah. I'm just being silly. You're not getting sad, are you? Come on. Huh? No, no, no. It's just getting late. Medical problems. And the other is the <laughs> social model. You have a disability if, for example. You use a wheelchair and your building doesn't have a ramp. The problem isn't your body. The problem is that the building wasn't designed by you. I know this is so painful. (laughs) This is so painful. I don't have a disability. The world should just conform to everything I require. The problem was you, not me. This is so These are fucking deep, pathetically fragile. Deep thoughts. Yes. Deep thoughts. Oh my It's God. really just society's expectation that you have working legs. That's the problem. Why can't I just this is like the like peak I wasn't I didn't ask to be born, mom and dad. <laughs> like, well, no one did. I mean, I don't know what to tell you. Simplican says that the medical model can be very appealing to able-bodied people because it soothes our anxiety. I don't want to think about... No, it's applicable because society has to make generalized, you know, buildings, equipment, structures, (laughs) services, procedures, and we don't have infinite time and infinite energy and infinite fucking money to tailor every single thing to every other single individual person. And there has to be a lot of generalized decisions made. That's the answer to the question. It's not some fucking head up our own ass philosophy of, well, this makes us feel better about our normative structures of positive heteronormativity. I mean, there was a it's totally efficiency. Yes. Like you just have to be efficient and then make accommodations when they're plausible, like possible and right within reason and you can't yeah you just can't accommodate everything well even the some things are special cases even the intuitions that she's citing are kind of modern intuitions because there was a time when people would just stand around and laugh about the cripple trying to get up the stairs right yeah. they, they like they thought that was literally funny i miss right. those days yeah 
So I just, the whole idea that the, like those anxieties didn't exist at another time. Like yeah, right. today point, we yeah. do have those anxieties, but they haven't always existed. Right. About the fact that this is unfair or that the systems I'm part of exclude people. I definitely don't want to think about the fact that I could acquire a disability and then I'd be the one who is excluded. So the medical model allows me to imagine that there is a very distinct line between them and me. A there line is that a is distinct located line between you and them. In their yeah. bodies where the problem is. And that also presents an obvious solution. Get them out of here. I think that gender dysphoria That's does a similar thing. Because here's Hold the real on. secret. That's not the solution, though. Mm -hmm. The solution is let's think through the way things are now and what simple accommodations can you put in so that we catch like 99% of known disabilities. Right. Yeah. Like that's the solution we came up with and it works pretty well. Yeah. How many people can't get in a building? Hell yeah. In in most public places, it's it's just not that much of an issue anymore. It's great. Yeah, but as listen, as a as a tri gender uh, unicorn adapted identifying wolfkin, mm -hmm. I find it incredibly inappropriate that buildings don't have doggy doors large enough for me to scurry my way under. Yeah, and it's incredibly offensive. Does it give you boxes. dysphoria? It does. It does. Oh, and the listen, litter boxes. Don't start with litter boxes. We need litter boxes. Right. Why? Yeah, you know what? That's a great point. Listen, I'm not disabled because I require a litter box in the bathroom to take a shit. Okay. <laughs> That's not my disability. That's it's your just problem. society. That's society's problem. Okay? I get a lot of distress society normalized pooping in a toilet. Right. Why am I and my specific needs not catered to by everyone else, regardless of cost or time required to do such a thing? Mm hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Good of the universe. If you want to change sex, it's possible. For all of human history, we've had this divide between men and women. But if you want to cross that divide, if you want to transcend it entirely and be neither, it's possible. Are, are you ready for Abigail mm -hmm. to be so stupid that she literally disproves her entire fucking argument by accident? Oh, I've been waiting are you for, ready this for this moment. I'm dying. Okay. In particular, hold in one hand all of masculinity. Thor, Leonidas, Beowulf, James Bond, Andrew Tate, Jordan Peterson, all of them. And in the other, hold just two milligrams of estrogen a day and tell me which one is more powerful. We live in a culture that... Oh my God, you stupid fucking idiot. It's almost like it's biological and not fucking sociocultural. And you just fucking admitted that because oh, you're so she did, yeah. dumb. Oh, my God. She said it's all biology. Yeah. Guess what? It's all the estrogen. It doesn't matter. You could you just if you pump Andrew Tate full estrogen, it's going to change his fucking behavior. Congratulations, mm. idiot. You just acknowledge that it's biological. Why is Jordan Peterson on the masculine side? He seems like 20 percent soy to me. There you go. Yeah, he's he's definitely got a high feminine. I think he's even said it that he's he higher on like the creative openness, feminine and, side, uh, negative he, emotions. Look, negative emotions. He sits neurotic. with his legs very crossed in like a weird way. <laughs> yeah. How dare? He's you. definitely feminine. How dare you? Are your legs crossed right now, Sitch? Be honest. No, I'm actually sitting very bizarrely. But oh, okay. As I oh, always nice. do on my stream valorizes men, treats them as the default. But when you're a trans woman, you can take all of that and just... With chemicals, idiot. <laughs> but you need the chemicals. <clears throat> yeah, it's almost like it's biological, idiot. How are men the default? Well, I think she's just saying like culturally we right. treat of men. As the default, and you haven't you read the the Bible? Okay, God yeah. took a rib out of Adam and made Eve. Yeah, this so. is this is where my rights hypothesis is dead on. People get the rights that they fight for. 
like the suffrage movement was fought for by women and right. they obtained the white rights they wrestled them away from men men had the rights because they they made it that way right yeah and you can be happier for it in a male-dominated gender hierarchy where it is assumed that men are better than women and that masculinity is superior to femininity, there is no greater threat than the existence of trans women, who despite being born male and inheriting male privilege, choose to be female instead. What's, what does that have to do with anything? Okay, first of all, two things. If you're going to get someone to read some like head up their own ass dumb fuckery, mm -hmm. Try to get someone whose voice doesn't sound like they wrote the head up their own ass. Don't fuck. <laughs> okay. Look, she's got a small circle of bread tubers who will read saying, things like, for her. And then secondly, that's the dumbest fucking thing. One of the dumbest fucking in a video of dumb fuck things. That's one of the dumbest fucking things I've ever heard. I can't. You're where never is gonna stupid, find. Oh, here, I'm gonna see. I I don't see men as being very threatened by the existence of trans women in fact not at all yeah pretty much any culture where there's a lot of uh males who are treated as females like all those historical examples i like to bring up mm -hmm. they're pretty much all patriarchal right like and very male dominated it's well, those societies that let sort of these feminine men cross over basically just ban them from the Right. banish them from the sex because you're right. not manly enough the, the the people that write this head up their own ass garbage they've like never actually talked or interacted with the people that they're trying to judge true because if they actually talk to them they get a very simple answer they'd say oh i don't like trans women because they're gross <laughs> that's, that's what they, that's the answer that they would give you basically you said that. yeah it's oh they're gross it's weird it's like this is why this is so stupid. And it's why hate... disgust, yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. And that's why 100%. I hate this head up their own assery. It's so obvious that people that don't like this, like a lot of the trans stuff, it's a disgust mechanism yep. that's triggering it. It's that's... not like some, oh, you're throwing out, you're you're choosing not to participate in the patriarchy. Like some fucking idiots walking around the world with that thought process. Like trans women are choosing to reject the patriarchy. This offends me as a man. Like who? No one thinks that thought except for feminine, radical feminists with their heads up their own asses. So true. Yeah, I was wondering, because now we're back in the realm of psychology here. Like, does she even know the Daniel Kahneman, you know, thinking fast and slow model? I, I fucking doubt yeah. it. Yeah, Jeez. exactly. Yeah, it's completely driven. Right. By. Nobody's walking around going, oh, look, the male dominated gender hierarchy. This woman really is challenging that. This and is I being feel... subverted by this trap. <laughs> yeah. I'm very offended by it. I'm all about power. <laughs> how does yeah. and how does this explain the turf phenomenon? Yes. Fuck yeah. Knows. Well, because that's the same thing. Very the, they don't a want a man in their or, yeah, exactly. They don't want a man in their space. So there it's disgust. It's the same exact intuition. They're like, yeah. ooh, a guy in the female locker room, ooh, get him out. Here. Well, I think it's slightly different. Because I think with guys, the thing that sets off the disgust mechanism is like the fear of, oh, I'm going to be attracted to, or I'm going to mate with like mm -hmm. a trans woman who's not going to be yeah. like a cis woman. Mm -hmm. Or with women, I think it's probably more like a fear. Like oh, they're yeah. Gonna sexually Perhaps. assault me or something. Yeah, it's fear of a sexual assault, which right. is probably pretty ingrained. Is that a disgust fear, though? I mean, there's some disgust, but I think it's mostly like fear and intimidation. Right. Like, I think yeah. women tend to be both. I think biologically tuned and socially tuned to be cautious, to to be in tune with risk. And one of the biggest risks is you're caught alone with a guy. Yeah. I this is like a book. Like I'm I am curious to read this fucking citation. This transgender rights. Like this is such a oh my god. This quote makes me want to like off myself in Minecraft. I don't know how you can read these books, Sitch, because they're, first of all, they're so fucking boring. They are, yeah. Yeah. They say all the things that you expect them to say. Yeah. It's you just... can kind of skim them once you start getting it. <laughs> You're like, okay, <laughs> all the patriarchy. Are... Yeah. Challenging the patriarchy. I found a Reddit post about it. Oh, nice. <laughs> ...choose to be female instead. 
by embracing our own femaleness and femininity, we in a sense cast a shadow of doubt over the supposed supremacy of maleness. This is so fucking... <laughs> no, first of all, no guy <laughs> is, is sitting around thinking about, oh yeah, I am part of the masculine gender hierarchy. I mean, there's mm -hmm. also... I mean, the higher the status hierarchy is more between men than anything, right? So, and what man is going to feel like? Oh no, my masculinity is challenged because there's this guy over yeah. here who wants to become a woman. They're like, "What a loser!" Yeah, it's like I'm a way free, more masculine than him. Yeah, it's a right. free pass. You're like, "Oh, this is not threatening at all." Yeah, I could kick this guy's ass, and more women for me. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. yeah. No, but th this is the problem. All these fucking idiot, like radical feminists that write this garbage. I don't like, I don't think they've ever talked to a man before. <laughs> I don't think they've ever interacted with a man before. It's like, I mean, wouldn't it be more of a challenge to a supposed patriarchal system to try to redefine these things that we call female and feminine and say, like, those things are not really feminine? Like, feminine men are not somehow inferior or less male but they are just male, right? That's sort of the gender critical take on the whole thing right. is, is to say like, well, this stuff that we define as good or bad or weak or strong, those are values that we've just forced on the matter that don't actually match reality. And we should be teaching feminine men to accept their maleness, mm -hmm. not necessarily a celebration or a, or even a running away from masculinity, quote unquote. That right. was the goal at one time, yeah. Obviously. Now it's kind now, of Now do weird. I subscribe to that view? No. I'm a little more of a, a gender positive positivist. What I does think. that mean? That means I think gender roles are healthy. They they produce healthy societies. Mm -hmm. How dare you? Um, I wouldn't force them on anyone, but I think in general societies should just Accept that the, those are the lines most people go down, and to keep them as cultural norms is good. And then we just deal with people on the fringes as individuals. Right. Yeah. No. Yeah. I agree. Completely. I agree. Yeah. Yes. <sighs> I'm trying to find this quote in the book, and I typed in like male hyphen dominated, and it's like there are 217 results. <laughs> of course, there are. <laughs> male dominated. Uh, male dominated. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to try male dominated good. gender hierarchy. <laughs> and like, like, there it. are. I think that some cis people are made a little bit anxious by that. N untrue. For different reasons. <laughs> yeah. They might be anxious. They, they might be disgusted. They might be scared. Right. They might be indifferent. Yeah. There's I'm a lot of. Towards emotions. indifference. I like to imagine that male and female are naturally occurring, stable categories, and that we are just the exceptions that prove the rule. I think they like to imagine that there is a clear line between us and them. And the concept of gender dysphoria draws that line. It locates the problem within our bodies and also creates a class of specialists who can patrol that line and decide who gets across. You, oh, wait, there are some trans you people. You literally said it was in your body by saying well, it was more powerful. The, yeah. the chemicals are Jordan Peterson. Yeah. But th this is so insane. Look. Yeah, and again, it's like consistent. physical surgery and chemicals right. to treat what? It's not in your body? Where is it no. located? It's located in the ether. Okay. Like the estrogen is going on your body. Is it though? So. Maybe they're just flushing it down the toilet. I don't know. I mean, I don't know how women's bodies work. Maybe when like women ingest chemicals, it just goes right out the hole. Well, as we do know, women have. women don't poop. So oh, they just absorb it all. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Maybe, Maybe it just all comes out in a cloud. <laughs> it just goes through your pores. I believe it. I believe it. Adam, you can confirm. You're married to a woman, right? Uh yes. Allegedly. Yeah, Allegedly. hypothetically. There's a mosquito in here that keeps fucking attacking oh, no. me. Like, <laughs> try to get it like seven times. It's very frustrating. 
you live in Florida. You have mosquitoes, right? Uh, yeah. I'm usually trying very careful not to let them get inside. But yeah. Yeah, and it sucks. One time I found a bunch, like I had a plant mm -hmm. that, you know, I put in kind of a bowl of water so it could Oh, get... uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, oh, no. And I was like, oh my God, there's a bunch of mosquito larvae in there swimming around. Yeah, you, you dumped that out. <sighs> I did. I killed them all. It was great. Oh, God, I felt so good. Insect genocide just feels great. It does. True. Yeah. Especially mosquitoes. There's a couple cute bugs, but mostly. Yeah. Mostly. I don't kill spiders. I'll kill anything else that's in the house. Yeah, Fuck I don't spiders. kill spiders either. You should. How could you? Spiders are great. Yeah. They Well, okay. It's twofold because on one hand, they kill all their bugs. But on the other hand, they're the second largest carriers of Lyme disease. So. Ouch. Really? Yeah. I guess that makes sense. They are arachnids. They are arachnids like ticks. So. Ouch. That sucks. Start I hate knowing spiders. this now. Just don't get bit by spiders. What's wrong with you? People who like that line being there. <laughs> there are some, not naming names, who say, I'm a real transsexual. I've been Contra points. diagnosed with the mental illness that is gender dysphoria. <laughs> not like all these tenderqueer non-binary teenagers with their green hair and their Lucy and Yak dungarees. True. And I'm like, babes, you've been diagnosed with baloney. Stafford Beer famously said that the purpose of a system is what it does. And what he meant was there's no point claiming a system's job is to do something it consistently fails to do. It functions how it functions, it gives the outputs it gives. With that outlook, I don't think anyone can really claim that the NHS's current system exists to help trans patients. It might occasionally do that as a side effect, but in my opinion, its real function, its main output, is control. NHS gender clinics exist as part of a larger system that is gender itself, and they reduce variety within that system. Parades Man, aren't designed paying, to teach us anything. We're playing it fast and loose with these sources. It's of just, course, yeah. Just playing like five sources at once. I'm like, I'm guessing none of them say anything. <laughs> well, and you're talking about more biological sex, I think, in the medical situation. But I can't find that quote, but there's a chapter in that book called compliance is gendered struggling for gender self-determination in a hostile economy wow that's that's a thing <laughs> sounds thrilling also can i just say i don't understand these movie clips and why they're in there because she's trying to say that like they're not the, adding anything she's trying to say that nhs operates as a catch-22 and right. actually okay. it's funny she says it and she doesn't make the correct like she like doesn't understand catch 22 right at the end yeah yeah the clips don't really add anything and they aren't helping the argument at all so no. it would be much stronger actually just to take all that out it's an emotional argument okay yeah, it's emotions right. you just don't have any emotions what is the catch 22 she's, she's so female right she just thinks of emotions catch 22 you the in the in the book, it was you had to be um, crazy to get discharged from the army. Right, but if you wanted to get out, you were obviously not. You crazy. were not crazy, yeah. right? Yeah, so. I know, but I don't know the what. What is her thinking? What is the catch? Oh, you'll see. Is? She she says it doesn't make any sense. I she said it once before, but I don't. It was like so, oh, she says it at the end. Yeah, but I don't remember it because it was like what? That's not really okay. It's not really a catch twenty two. Yeah, it does. It didn't seem like it. There is it's like you have to have you actually have to have the disease to be treated for it it's like oh wait did she just say it and i was reading something so i missed it no no I, she hasn't said it yet but that's oh, okay you're just yeah that's kind of the i'm like that's not a catch 20 like wait a second here <laughs> that's just reality <laughs> like, you have to have a, di a disorder yeah. to be treated for it that is true yeah yeah that's definitely how it makes sense. they usually don't treat people for cancer that don't have cancer that's, right. that's like a thing it's like it's not a catch like twenty two. Yeah. yeah, that's not a catch twenty two. You have to have cancer to be treated for cancer. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's designed sucks. to hum humiliate us. Terrible. They're designed to make us suffer the indignity of doing something entirely pointless, so that sadistic f shite scoff can demonstrate he has power over us. The more pointless the activity, the greater our humiliation, and the more power he feels. And we can sit here and pretend all we want that there must be some more noble war effort type purpose to all this walking around in f***ing rectangles, but there isn't one. We do parades so shite scoff can feel like a tough guy. Look, this is they. Not only that, this character is dumb. Like, 
the whole purpose of the exercises is so when you're in a situation that it counts, you're able to work together as a team. It's not right. so the one guy can feel good about himself. <laughs> well, maybe in the book, mm -hmm. like that's the point, but in the broader context, generally with army exercises or military exercises. So this is yeah. the whole institutional transphobia argument then. Mm -hmm. Like even though the individual actors are not somehow cackling villains, the institution itself is somehow designed. Yeah, to serve a purpose. To just richly humiliate. Well, I mean, well, in this clip, not, it is. It's and not control system. people. In this clip, it is an individual. It's this individual is getting off on power tripping. And Abigail is saying that like, oh, somewhere, some NHS guy is like getting off, like watching trans people scramble around to get doctor's appointments or something. Like mm -hmm. how ridiculous is this argument? Well, I think it's, it's in the institutional argument though, saying it's like, not from the, the institution, clip. the system itself. Well, yeah, the clip is only metaphorically I guess. connected. It's a metaphorical in, truth. In, it's, and it's been forever since I saw Catch-22. In Catch-22, is the guy like a power tripper? I don't. I, I haven't seen the new one okay. ever. I only saw the old one like a million years ago. This is a new one, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, I never saw the new one. I saw the old one. I'm curious oh, to that's see what it before. In my opinion, the concept of gender dysphoria pathologizes transness, so people can avoid the endearing truth that there is no line, and that really we aren't so different. And so that some of them can avoid asking themselves the big question. If can, there's no line... Can Sitch have a baby? That's the big if, question. Yeah, that's a question. <laughs> if there's no line... I believe. And then no one should be able to, no one should be transitioning if there's no line. Yeah, because you just yeah, obviously. There's no line, there's no difference except we will literally kill ourselves if right. we don't get the surgery. Like that yeah. seems like a pretty big difference. No, no, no. Um, that's all me. just social construct. I'm, I'm, Life and death is a social construct. I mean that that too. I just personally I've never felt that. So it would seem to be. Yeah, why are you <laughs> so eager to be the same thing as you are already? doesn't make any sense it's because right. i'm scared to question uh, i need to go on uh egg irl <laughs> why are you so scared of of questioning like being dead you've never been dead it could be we great. all know about eggs right i might have made that reference without mm. okay your eggs egg new eggs you know like the trans people you mean yeah yeah i got you what I don't know what it means. They call like new trans, like people that just become trans, they call them eggs. Oh, they do. Well, they call it's people who are not yet trans but are about they to crack. Think, yeah, right. So, cracking eggs is slang for convincing people they are trans. Wow. Nice, right? Is that something someone should do? Yeah. There's whole there's a whole subreddit around it. Oh man. Hmm. Oh man. It should surprise no one. The gas lighting's working. Yep. They're almost there. They're ready to crack. Given that human beings can change sex. Mm -hmm. Okay, first of all, you understand taking... Oh, no, don't go down. You... Don't go... <laughs> I know. The camera's starting to pan down. Taking hormones doesn't change your fucking sex. What the fuck you change you your legal about? sex in a legal sense, but yeah, you take, yeah, you change your you, that your sexual identify, like how you're identified on your license. Like, we don't change your sex. But yeah. Do you want to? That's the real uh, thing. Everyone's just so terrified. They're like, "Oh, if I accept this, I'm just gonna go trans myself." Did not expect a red pill, blue pill. I know, right? Moment here. It's so cringe. Well, and it's funny because literally Abigail's playing into this supposed straw man of like, you're just afraid they're going to go run around transing your children. And Abigail's like, yes. <laughs> we yeah. should. Yeah. We should yeah. definitely encourage more people to sign up for yes. this long wait list that mm -hmm. I've been waiting on for like two years. They're pretty close just, to cracking. Just overcrowd it more. Just yeah, right. Keep recruiting. So we don't have to watch the last part of it, but well, is what, it just an where's ad the or catch twenty two part? Oh, maybe she says it here. I Chapter should have known. 10. 
that the ending of my story would be as absurd as all the rest of it. <sighs> One day, I got a phone call, and they said, come in on Tuesday. I don't know whether Colonel Cathcart did something, or whether someone ahead of me on the waiting list died. <laughs> they just said it's on Tuesday. Or maybe because this is just been going on for so long, you just got your appointment normally. Right? <laughs> I know. That's possible. I, I don't know. Somebody died for me to get this appointment. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> well she was crazy. She never says what went down at her appointment. Right. Would yeah. that be like useful information? Of course. I'd like to know. Probably absolutely nothing. They asked her about how often she masturbated and she just stormed off and off. <laughs> Have you ever had sex, mate? <laughs> oh, if they it, asked me like, like in that voice, I'd storm off too. Okay. Boy. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and I thought I would be happy or excited. But to tell the truth, I was angry with them and with myself. I was angry because why did I why did I get that phone call? And then someone else didn't. Look, survivor's guilt. It is by luck and a hell of a lot of privilege that I am here to tell this story. And the arbitrariness of that system compounds the survivor's guilt. <laughs> For a hell of a lot of people, by the time they finally get oh an appointment, they've either already self-medicated or they've gone private. So there's hardly any point in even getting one. It seems that the only way to get trans healthcare in Britain is not to need trans healthcare. And there is actually a specific name for that kind of logical trap. It's called a catch 22. That's the name of the movie. Oh my God. Da, 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 da. Roll the credits. She said it. What was the fight? Like, okay, well, first of all, we will give you before trans we talk about healthcare. If before we talk about how whether that's a, trans wait, 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 wait. That's before we talk about sense. whether that's a catch twenty two. It's okay. not. I know, but before we even talk about that, what was that build up? There's a name for this. Yeah. Dot 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 dot. It's called dot 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 dot. Like, who doesn't fucking know what a catch twenty two is? Like, this is a common like saying. Well, I don't think people often people misuse it though. Yeah. Well, well, yeah, she misused, misused it, it right, right here. <laughs> I don't think anyone knows what a catch twenty two really is. Look, if if people can give me trans, if I if I don't have gender dysphoria and that's the only way for me to get trans treatment, like yeah, I'm, okay, wait, I'm nervous, I'm okay. scared. Like don't Name. don't trans me, okay? It seems that the only way to get trans healthcare in Britain is not to need trans healthcare. Mm -hmm. What does that even mean? It means that if you don't want it they're willing to give it to you which but that's I, not true that's, that's not, not even true. true yeah no it's that the only way to get it is to get it some other way therefore you no. don't need it anymore so here's the problem she, what she's trying to say is that by the as she said by the time you get the appointment by the nhs you don't need it anymore mm -hmm. which but isn't a catch-22 catch it's not that would be in like the isn't isn't it ironic song? Okay, that wouldn't be Catch Twenty Two, but she has to somehow like shoehorn it in here and mold it to this stupid Catch Twenty Two narrative that she's been structuring throughout the whole video. So yeah, ay ay ay, it's called a Catch Twenty Two. They don't look. They don't teach Catch Twenty Two in philosophy classes. You're right. So. There you go. You gotta forgive her. Catch Twenty Two, the most. Prevalent one is, you know, you have to have job experience to get a job. Yes. But you also can't get the job. Can't get until job you experience. Have the experience. Yeah, exactly. Right. That's right. that's the catch twenty two. Right. Yeah. You need the experience and you can't get it. So yeah, I never watched Catch Twenty Two. That's a Slaughterhouse Five guy, right? Kurt Vonnegut? I don't think so. Catch is 22 is not Kurt Vonnegut. Oh, I always thought it was. Maybe it is. I don't know. I don't think so. No, you're though. right. Joseph Joseph Heller. Yeah, he's got like one book. He's like a one book guy. Oh, really? Yeah, I don't think any. Awesome. Kurt Vonnegut has like a million amazing Yeah, he books. did. I thought it was one of his. Yeah. Clownhouse 5 is good. 
Yeah, I like Ice uh Cat's Cradle. Ice Nine? Yeah. Cat's Cradle's amazing. I never read uh Cat's Cradle. It's good. <laughs> oh shit, what? What? I just when you respond to celebrities and the tweet gets a bunch of likes, it always mystifies me. Oh mean? no. Who did you reply to? Uh, Kanye West says, testing, testing, seeing if my Twitter is unblocked. And I said, Kanye nope. West is unblocked. On he is unbanned, yeah. I said, no, nope, it's still blocked. <laughs> that was it? <laughs> yeah. Nope, can't see it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. I saw that Elon Musk tweeted out a picture of him as a... Uh, is uh, one of the broke back cowboys and CBS saying, "Why can't I quit you?" Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's pretty funny. But anyway, that is hilarious. So that's the end of this video. The rest of it is just him. I'm sorry, it's her what talking you... oh, about. God, you're so bad. Terrible. It was, it was literally an accident. Wait a second, Elon Musk. <laughs> Wait a second. I mean, what's the big deal if gender is completely meaningless? Yeah, you're right. He, I she... guess. Yeah, who cares? They, they, them, who cares? Yeah, it's right? all sir, sir. Who gives a shit? Yeah, fuck you. It's yeah. all arbitrary. Ladies, yeah. let's finish up this video. There you go. Hold on. I feel it's like just there is actually a specific name for that kind of logical trap. Why do you keep backing it up? I like the big pause. It's called. It's called. <gasps> a catch. Catch 22. 22. It's like. <gasps> first of all, it's not a catch 22 what you're talking about. Second of all, like what? Like what's a big aha moment here? Aha! <gasps> you're wrong. <laughs> Aha. Sometimes when you're on a waiting list, you resort you to other to. means. Sometimes when you're on a That's waiting catch, list. That catch 22. It's the best there is. You have to wait. I hope that sharing my story does some good. <laughs> I don't think it did. <gasps> I mean, it did. I'm it, sure it will. It was entertaining, at least. I mean... It will crack many eggs. There you go. I do. I and do. And validate think, many people. Yeah, mm. it's probably actually going to be a net harm in the world. I do. I honestly believe <laughs> that. But I think it's funny. Yeah, I came came into this video not knowing what it would be about because I haven't seen it before. Mm, crazy. It's funny that it uh, confirmed my suspicions that I've had about Abigail. Abigail. That it's know. bad. I mean, I feel like... No, that Abigail probably doesn't have gender dysphoria. I never did. Who cares about yep. that? I'm, I'm just thinking all I mean, the eggs I that are going to crack. I care in that this is the selling point right. that a lot of these activists use to justify using mm -hmm. the, the system the way they do and persuading and pushing for more and more open policies but then under their breath saying, yeah, but it's not really a thing. We just, we just want it really bad and we want right. it for free. And we don't want anybody to ever say like mm -hmm. that you can't have access to it whenever you want. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's almost a, they want to be a separate class. It's really strange. They want to be an upper class. They want to be like a sacred class, yeah. you know, a caste system where if you're in the membership of this club, then whatever you say goes Listen. and no other group is treated this way. No other group gets these kind of considerations, yeah. but they do. They get it. They want to roll transgenders class, but get access to everyone's skills. And that's just not the way the game works. Hmm. Scary. I'm going to tell you the real shit. On YouTube, everything has to be clickable and shit. Uh-oh. We're not going to This gonna is going to be all like well, yeah, boring, no, emotional stuff. No, it's Curiosity Stream. This is the sales oh. part of the video. Curiosity oh. Stream. Yeah. Curiosity Philosophy Stream. YouTube. Look, I made a play. Here's my patron. Look, I made a million dollars. My yeah. list of never ever patrons. A lot of Carl's in there. Listen, you guys just go to the gender clinic. Lie, 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 lie. There's really nothing in it for you. You're not going to make a million dollars, but hey, it worked for me. <laughs> Look at her. Go to, the, go to the prince. Is it about like trans issues or something? I think it's a gender bending type play. Oh my God. Does it count if she's the one? 
I don't know. Anyways. It's just too much for me. There are people that just, you know, one aspect of their life is their entire life, but I just, I could never be one of those people. Yeah. Not good. Not good. If you've ever, you never looked at uh, their transhumanism video, did you? Um, I think I tried to, and I got bored, and I just—it was super know. boring. But there is one shot, mm-hmm. very important shot that Uh-oh. she's very proud of, right? Where the camera pulls back, mm-hmm. and you see the rest of her costume, and then circles around her. She's trying to demonstrate some metaphysical point, but circles around her, and then you can see her bare ass. Ew. You know, it's extremely close. Why what? Would, why would yeah, we I'm glad to, I didn't see that. Yeah. Why would we want to see that? <laughs> Let me find the picture so I can send it to Adam. Um, it's extremely it? Please don't. sensual. Please don't. It's not bare. She's and, uh, wearing, I was like, going to say, uh, like, and, it, and, and you know, I oh, hate no. to say it, but the rest of her, it. her face looks very feminine. The rest of her does not. Does not, yeah. Are you saying Well, I wouldn't ugly... say very. I'd say somewhat. <laughs> it hmm. looks like a, a dude in a leather gimp suit. Yeah, it's not great. Oh, really? It, she's they're, they're it dressed bear? like um. Is it a like a bear ass or is it? It's no, 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 um, no. It's like you know what Silk Spectre was wearing in the Watchmen movie. Yeah, that's what she's wearing. You know, like a oh, like a leather unitard with like the the big boots, very high the on high the cheeks. Boots. Yes. Ouch! Not Sounds a great look. Utterly painful. Not a great. Look. And it was just one of those moments where I watched. A a philosophy tube video and i thought this person's really in love with themselves i mean is that and like sexually aroused by themselves <laughs> you're saying oh this is is this confirming the agp in your mind this this confirmed at least on my agp there you go notions i'm like there okay you there's no way you're not jerking off to this right <laughs> that's it's so unnecessary yeah that's so <laughs> oh god that's so, so bizarre but you know, obviously, it's the weird thing is that other people are forced to participate in this. Yeah, Oof. someone said Flossy Tube looks like Weird Al with a nose job. Hmm. I have I uh, definitely of. compared Flossy Tube to Weird Al. Yeah, at various points. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so let's especially when they some... first got the nose job. Super chats. Sitch is going to be very offended by that. He's a huge Weird Al fan. Weird Al's great. What? Oh, get wrecked! I've How I've heard you. the the movie is really good. I hope so. That it came great. out. It looks it looks hilarious. Yeah, yeah. Get out of here, Adam. Adam's a fucking weirdo. I don't like Weird Al. I hate fun and goodness and enjoy. Weird Al is a musical genius. True. Change my mind. True. Are the most most one of the most accomplished musicians of our time. Oh my god. So true. Everything you're saying, so true. Hmm. All right. If you're gonna transition to super chats, I leave. might. Go Before ahead you go. Out. Yeah. S-class, right. Are you can definitely you... S class? Yeah. S class. Well, now I don't care. And Never yeah, <laughs> I'll I'll plug my stuff. Um. Yeah, plug your stuff. No, you can't. So no. I run a I run a YouTube <laughs> channel. It's Only just my A-team. name. No, <laughs> just my username Kava. You can find my channel. Um, I do a show with some friends called Three Homos and a Pussy. Mm-hmm. Uh, we just cover name. like gender and sexuality issues. Mm-hmm. I also have some video essays, and the next video essay that I have written up, but I've not recorded yet, is actually on this topic, which is uh, my typology of trans people. So hmm. I'll be writing that out. You're doing your own Ray Blanchard? Basically, yeah. And my own like thesis on how trans and gender dysphoria and all that interact. Right. Cool. So my full thoughts in one place. Check it out. I had Kava, amazing YouTuber on screen, but I changed it to Kava, semi-okay YouTuber after <laughs> you came out as S-Class. So. <laughs> I like we you too, Adam. We should have asked you sooner before. I just, uh, you Before know. I put it up. Kava does do amazing videos, so it is kind that of a loss true. for a team. So I can't, I just, I can't believe. Like, I don't know. Can't believe what? What she just uh, Kava is very intelligent, and to BS class doesn't make a lot of sense <laughs> to me. So 
Well, it's easy. First of all, S class is the much more sophisticated, mm. intelligent uh, of classes, and you don't like Weird Al, which is pretty psychotic. It's weird to me that you're. That does pull me in that direction. I'll have well, to this say. is this is bizarre to me because. It's weird that you're both an elitist and a Weird Al Yankovic fan because those are the two <laughs> of the most contradictory positions I can think of. I mean, maybe if you're a simp, mm -hmm. and by simp I mean simpleton. Mm -hmm. What is simp short for? If it's simpleton, I assume. Is it? Oh, okay. I think well, it's I mean, more like sympathizer. Is it? I don't. I would think so. Yeah, I don't know what the it simp. Is. I mean, when people call someone a simp, it's not using the context of it. The, the the context is you are overly sympathetic for something. Oh, people are there begging you go. me to ask you the three questions. The simp to say simpleton just means like you're dumb. Stupid. Yeah. But to simp for someone is to like pledge allegiance yeah. overly enthusiastically. Origin oh of the word. But no, you know what it is? It's uh I'm more the logical, cool headed type. And I'm sorry to say it, A team just has not demonstrate that lately De demonstrate Ouch. what cool headed well that's true i mean i can't lie <laughs> <laughs> that's actually factually correct so but look i'm getting but better it's still cool you're yeah yeah, yeah. I, I mean i'm too. i'm improving and, and you know and what you here. you've been Sitch the one who's really plugged my videos and stuff so Sitch i appreciate is like that. taking steps in the opposite direction so i mean Sitch is gonna start freaking out next well, yeah, so losing his mind. Been, so. I, start doing I did hear about the last uh, stream. I did not partake because I don't really partake. care about Ukraine, but I heard it was a mess. Watch that. I watch that. Last me, though. I wasn't. I wasn't the one losing my temper. Or anything. Watch that last stream. It's oh, funny. Not you. It's no. the last stream is hilarious because you had to be the rational I mean, one. Well, no, we we walked <laughs> no, away no. right afterwards thinking saying yes to having jimmy on at the same time was a giant mistake but i swear we're just like the luckiest motherfuckers alive because it actually turned out to be great <laughs> like it wasn't a mistake at all because if jimmy... well it depends how you define mistake did it get actually, a lot of views i would prefer to have a, a better conversation as opposed to having some like clip that people laugh at jimmy for yeah. Uh, so many people covered it, but the only reason they covered it was because Jimmy left. And Jimmy wouldn't have, if Jimmy just came on by himself, he probably wouldn't have left because he was leaving because Dave was here already. Like, it was see this too many it's clips that emotion, anyway. that emotional reasoning. I don't, I don't oh, agree. Okay. He would have, he would have left if he was alone. Well, anyway, I, I gotta head off and so. get ready for tomorrow. Take but, care, um, Kava. Thanks for coming thanks on. Thanks so much. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Of course. That was fun. Bye. Bye. Check out Kava's channel. I put a link in the description. Oh, yeah. S-Class. Maybe someday she'll actually get a decent name for her podcast. And, uh, <laughs> you I know, mean, like, uh, was it three, a pussy, three homos and a pussy? No, it's a terrible name. Like, listen, first of all, you got to pick a name that people want to tell a friend. And Right. I mean, sure, you can tell your closest friend about this podcast, but you can't tell like some acquaintance at work. Oh yeah. There's three homos and a pussy podcast. Mm -hmm. You should check it out. Right. Well, ironically, it would be a good name if they were super woke and appealing to like the woke gay community. They'd eat that shit up, but yeah, just, just not the like community a, they want to hit. Right. Yeah. So it's all it, that makes a point that it's almost like false advertising. So, Oh, Originally, look, Ye yeah. treated, tweeted Shalom with a smiley face. <laughs> what a piece of shit. Look, he's, tr oh he's trying God. to make amends. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. <laughs> That's hilarious. Sure. He's, he's just jealous. He mm -hmm. wishes he was the chosen people. Mm -hmm. Like we are. Uh, simp, simp is an originally a shortening of the word simpleton. However, in the connotation used now to mean soft or overly sympathetic, it was popularized in rap in the 1980s and 1990s. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, it was described as like an equivalent to a knockoff pimp, a simp. Oh. So there you go. Maybe that's sort of like the derivation. Anyways, let's read some super. So unfortunately, 
the first super chat, whoever sent it, someone sent like two dollars right in the beginning. I don't know who it was, and I can't see the super chat. So if you sent the first super chat, uh, DM me or something. Is whatever it, you said. Is it even lost in the? Can you look it up in the? Oh, you're right. Wait, maybe I'll, I'll go check. look it up. You go yeah, ahead. you go see if you can see in the monetization thing. Uh, Zara Richards, thank you so much. Zara Richards for two dollars says not late enough. There you go. We aimed. Listen, we aim to not please here at the Sitch and Adam show. Yeah. Uh, Guru Ralph, thanks so much for being free will seeker for five months. Says, hey now, it's my birthday. Free will seekers about to head out to eat a very expensive steak dinner. Awesome, nice based. That's always fun. This is the Wooster for a dollar ninety nine. Is that oh, the one nice. you missed? Yeah, what does it say? Trump is back. Well, there you go. Trump LFG. Is back. What does LFG stand for? Looking for a group. <laughs> I don't oh. know. I don't know what it, I don't know what it means in the in that context. Okay. But let's fucking go. That's it. Oh, uh, there you go. Why can't I log in? Let's to fucking go. Stream Labs. Doctor Diddler for five dollars. A team is great and amazing and that's not what it says oh my god how much i love a team and yuck s class sucks s class uh, dr can... dealer for five dollars says oh. a team likes to cross dress and downs gallons of disgusting flavorless yogurt by itself yuck s class is the best class tasks. God, i almost got it there you go i was trying to convince uh, you diddler switch sides lord mick you can't see the uh the joins on, on that screen, unfortunately. Oh, Lord McTheobald, thanks so much for being a free here for four months. Says sending love from Switzerland. Thank you. We'd we'll love to see you guys taking a look at our political system. It has a it, it has resulted in problems. The most stable. No, it has resulted in prob the most stable country. Oh, Switzerland. Apparently. Yeah, that's great. There you go. Uh, Girl Sarah, thanks so much for being a free here for eight months. Says Google. I don't appreciate forcibly making my eight-year-old PSN gamer tag into my handle. My reputation would tank if people found out I was Mexican. I mean, <laughs> mm -hmm. really? Google did something that changed people's uh, PSN gamer tags? Ouch. There you go. I don't know. Uh, Liam Kennedy, thank you for the five pounds, says, I think the only part of this video worth watching is the last section about dysphoria. The rest is just personal experience and anecdotes. I mean, the last part is definitely like the insane part, but. But it's all those cool Catch-22 clips that don't actually add go. up to a Catch-22. There you go. Alex Karras for $5. Hey, Alex. Says, has anyone other than Spoon told Sitch and Adam that 4,500% of one is 45? Is this a reference to our conversation that I've totally forgotten? Uh, yes. Someone did actually tell me that, Alex, so thanks. But, yeah, because it's 100% is, is like, times two, right? Yeah, what are we talking about? The, is it Lisa Lippman? Mm hmm Who does, did the transgender... Uh, Rapid onset gender is for yeah, yeah, is up by, like, 4,500%. So it's one yeah. in 45, not one in 450. I got that wrong on the other live stream. So people corrected me in the comments and thank you. Oh, for doing so. I thought you were saying, oh, I thought you were, maybe you were confusing. So yeah, the total number is up like by 4,500, but mm -hmm. the rate of increase is like 200% a year or something. Right. So. Because it's like 11 years. Yeah. Well, it's not, I think it's like five or six, but not the exact thing. So she went over in some video I saw. Right. Uh, the Libertarian Trap, hey, for thanks so much for being free for two months, says, I once long ago said that the WPATH changes made in 2012 would open Pandora's box. It saddens me just how right I was. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it definitely, uh, definitely can lead down that pathway. <laughs> definitely true. Huh. Uh, yeah, I know who Spoon is. I just didn't, I didn't know what the context of the number was. Soldosh, taking all your FTX money for $2, says rip Jason David Frank, forever the Green Ranger. Wow, the Green Ranger died? Holy shit. Ouch. That's so sad. Don't Why like that. Why did he death. die? 
Death makes me very upset. Uh, wow, he did. Oh my god, he died by suicide. That's unfortunate. Yeah. The White Ranger. Hmm. Uh, Snoopy, thanks so much for joining the Order of the Enlightened. Thank you, Snoopy. Wow. Uh, Mr. Tickle Trunk, thank you so much for being a five month free will seeker with a little heart emoji. Renoro Zoro was here for $20. Thank you. Says, we're screwed in Oregon. Oregon. A ballot measure just passed that'll make affordable health care pretty much a right. What does that mean for people who aren't paying into it like unemployed people? What about people out of state? Yeah, I saw that that ballot measure passed. And I, yeah, what does that mean? I don't know what that means. Like, That'll be an interesting question. They've tried to do universal health care system at the state level several times you you can't do it because the federal government's the one that controls the money supply so right it's really not i mean if a state government does it they're just going to be doing it like a private business well it says okay where's the actual initiative because it just says the short version just says requires the state to ensure that every resident has access to affordable health care as a fundamental right but like what is what does that mean are we defining affordable health care? You know? Yeah. So I don't know. It could be a big nothing. Airplay for $5 says, Airplay documentary here. Just finished the Gamergate documentary Airplay. Would love to show it for you guys. VidCon 2017 plays a big role near the end. Sweet. Were you at VidCon 2017? I feel like maybe I was. Uh, I was not, no. I was at 2018 when no one showed up. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I wasn't at 2017. You were. Weren't I you was, in that? Yeah. You, oh, no, you were almost in that picture, weren't you? The famous No, I picture. wasn't ever close to even getting in that picture. I, was I thought like, you were. Whoa, no. I thought you made the conscious decision not to be in that picture. I did, yeah. That's what yeah. I did. That's what I mean. So you were close. To, you could have been in the picture. Easily, yeah. Right. But I was like, mm. yeah. I'm not really Airplay, check it out. Airplay Gamergate documentary. Check it out. Uh, TB, thanks so much for being a free will seeker for three months. Says, just have more, just have more Sargon, less Kurt on the show. Thank you. I mean, listen, I'm all for that. I'm kidding. Mm -hmm. 100%. I'm, I'm 4,500% on board with that. So okay. how much it's up? <laughs> yes. Any day. I will argue or talk with uh, Carl about anything over Kurt any day. Did week. you see that clip that, I mean, someone sent me a clip. Dave Smith was on another podcast and talked mm -hmm. about us on the other podcast. Did oh, you, really? I didn't say Did you see that clip? No, what did he say? Is he whining about it? He said Kurt is a madman. Like, he, Kurt and Jimmy he, he, took the blame he, for everything. Like, he right. was actually just fine with us. I mean... Okay. Well, it's true. He, Kurt he was nothing. like fucking yeah. out of control. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> they, they, they took all the heat. Yeah. Well, there you go. Yeah. So I was like, oh, okay, cool. Uh, nice. Dave Smith is on for December 4th. So. Right. Yeah. And hopefully. We'll have a, a not ridiculous conversation. Yeah. Uh, we'll see. Yes. Uh, Soldoge for two dollars says Sargon. How far a drive is considered long in UK? Probably like I don't know, a couple hour? hours. I mean, I'd say an hour is a long drive. You can cross the whole continent in like twenty-five minutes. Yeah. <laughs> well, I looked. Actually, I checked. It's like I think I think the UK is like the size of Florida plus like the east coast of Georgia and maybe the bottom part of South Carolina. Oh, really? That's like the UK, yeah. Crazy. Uh, Angry Man, thanks so much for being a free here for five months. Says, I missed Sargon's appearance on the show. Even if it usually results in argument, he usually has an interesting perspective to that. There you go. We didn't argue this time. but Not really. Uh, Donald, <laughs> Donald grabbed him by the pussy Trump. For two dollars says, "Good grief! He used to be a regular handsome dude. Wow, Donald is uh he's upset. He's upset that he lost uh, Oliver. He wanted to get in get in on that." 
Well, no, see, this is, it's funny that towards the end, they were like, he, he's basically saying this is what scares men. And then you have the super chat here from a guy who's saying, like, this guy could have easily killed it with the ladies, and he's totally like, what the fuck are you doing? Which is a completely different kind of sentiment than... Yeah, but here's the, he only wanted to kill it with one lady, mm -hmm. okay? And he lost that opportunity. Contrapoints? So. <laughs> you know why? He had the... I mean, listen, Contrapoints is like, listen, I got Chris Hayes right. just one phone call away. After Chris Hayes has already, you know, sucked you off, you're like, nah... I'm, I'm sticking with Chris. There you go. There you go. Once you have one fat faced, bespectable, bespectacled Wokey sucking mm -hmm. you off, you know, that's all you need. You need two. Yeah. <laughs> Akilin Naya Wasami, thank you for another $20. It says 2012. There you go. 2022, 2012, 2020. What does that so mean? Like, in the beginning, I was saying 20. I was saying, I was adding extra 20s mm -hmm. to things for some reason, but. Gotcha. Listen, listen. NCR Trooper, 1576. Thank you so much for the 20 euros. Says, would you consider having no or Medicare on? Internet free speech stuff with no or, or a GG respective with Jim and Sargon might be interesting. Are Jim and Sargon like Yeah, I thought friends? they were. I thought they had like a falling out or something. Yeah, like I thought Jim and ago. Sargon were on the outs, but. Yeah. I mean, I, I'd talk to Medicare, sure. Sure. I mean, I've never interacted with uh, either of them, so. But. Yeah. Uh, Andrew Clark, thanks so much for the, being a free seeker for six months. Says uh, Sargon doesn't understand luck, but that's okay. I can't wait for Tuesday. Love today's show. A team reigns supreme. Woo! What's happening Tuesday? This Tuesday? Is Andrew Clark gonna like have more? Oh, we could. I told Andrew Clark he could come on on a Tuesday stream. Sure. Oh, yeah. Awesome. You He's got something that. about lock going on. Oh, sure. Okay. Well, do you, I mean, you don't I'm care down. if Andrew Clark comes on a Tuesday. No, right? I like Andrew nobody's, Clark. Uh, nobody's lined up yeah. for this Tuesday, so I just figured, you know, whatever. Well, I'm curious, because what he said about Locke today, I, I, that seemed right to me, so. Yeah. So I'm curious. Do, are you, uh, I mean, did you see Stephen Michael Davis did a video with Christian Watson about. Uh, yeah, I saw they did a video. I didn't watch it, but I saw that it, I saw that it existed. Yeah. yeah. Well, I just I thought I thought Stephen was not a natural rights guy, but Christian Watson is talking about natural rights again, which mm -hmm. I thought was interesting. But anyway, anyway, I mean, I agree with the video, right? Ethan Rogers, thanks for the five dollars. Says, would IG be proper to create a definition a distinction between? What do you mean? Would it be proper to create a definition distinction between civil rights slash entitlements and human slash natural rights? Well, I don't know. I mean, so part of the issue with the whole like when you get into the rights conversation is it's all word game. It's all Sitch's law. It's and it's all like we're trying to define things in certain ways to circumvent arguments in specific ways, which you know has utility to some extent. And I'm totally fine with people saying like, well, these are natural rights and these are civil rights and making all these distinctions. I mean, I don't think that that just because you make the distinction necessitates that one thing should have to be and one thing shouldn't have to be. I think you'd have to make further arguments for that. But well, I think it would definitely the, be useful to, to categorize it that way. A lot of the categorization comes from people wanting to, you know, take away certain justification for certain rights and and bolster justification right. for other rights I mean, that's, that's exactly it right yeah that's why the whole natural rights thing comes into play well it's because in america you know before we had all the woke shit come over with all basically the socialist you know people talked about the rights because we were a liberal society rooted in liberalism and so our rights were very important so that's why you used to hear back in the day Equal rights, equal rights, equal rights, equal rights. Like that was the way which people frame the argument. And so it's like, this happens with any argument. When any argument's effective, people try to twist it around to support whatever cause they want to you know, promote. And so that's why they're now saying, oh, like healthcare is a human right. Mm -hmm. Like it's like a magic spell they cast. 
to try to win an argument. Yep. Healthcare is a human right. It's like, well, I don't know. I mean, is it? <laughs> What's veterinary what you, care? It depends what you mean by that. So, but I don't know. I never, I never like these word arguments one way or the other. Like, just make the argument. You know, you know. I don't need the slogan. I mean, we've talked specifically about what the utility is. Like the whole natural rights thing based in God is there's a lot of utility in that. A lot there of people is, and are that's motivated it. by that. Right. Yeah, that's I mean, I'm fine with the natural rights conception because I think it is uh beneficial to society. Sure. Batman's pet goldfish for two dollars says Sitch Chan sounds like Toad. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's true. My my girl voice just sounds like Toad. That's a good point. Just gotta go with a deep voice. Yes. You want me to transition like this, Adam? You do a pretty good doctor girlfriend, I'm not gonna lie. Hey baby, this is Sitch Chan here. I can just see. I just need to change your avatar. Hey Adam. Are you feeling turned on by hearing me talk like this? Yeah, we're gonna get all the steps. Yeah. I know you're very excited when I do this voice. I'm going to tell your wife, I'm going to say, hey, hey, Mrs. Friended, you got to whisper sweet ASMRs into your hubby's ear like this. Ugh. Like Ugh. you've been smoking 10 packs a day for 20 years. Ugh. Ugh. Uh, yeah. Down the Bruce. Hey, Dan. Well, this is before he came on. For $20, it says, Sargon says he's seen studies that gay monogamy doesn't in fact exist. And because of that, he thinks... David Curtin has a point on wanting to ban same-sex marriage. I'm curious what studies Sargon is talking about. Oh, wow. I didn't even see this when Sargon was. Yeah. Bad Sargon. Bad Sargon. Well, I mean, if it's a study, it's got to be true, right? There you go. But even if it was, even if that was true, what would that have to do with being against gay marriage? I mean, this is, this is truly a catch-22 because... Animal is married and like he could tell us, but I mm -hmm. mean, obviously, he's not gonna tell us if the study's correct because that would mean he's cheating on his husband. So <laughs> <laughs> that's a legitimate uh, catch 22. Uh -huh. So, uh -huh. oh well, no, uh, Demon Runner good. for two Canadians says, Man, she has a cute Adam's apple. Oof. Ooh. Lucifer Thorman, thanks so much for being a free seeker for nine months. Says there are dysphoric kids. There are no trans kids. Uh, yeah, I guess you could kind of define it that way. Solidoge, we fought a war to not talk about the UK. <laughs> for two dollars, says quote says Sargon, do women have a right to female only spaces? I mean, I assume Sargon would say yes. Yeah, I think that's totally yes. Right. Uh, Batman's Pet Goldfish for five dollars says, option four, you deal with it until adulthood or you get over it. Uh, Drew the Dogman for two dollars says, ask Carl if fascism is left wing. We had, I could, we've had this conversation. I don't know if he said fascism is left wing. I could have swore we had an argument where he said the Nazis were not right wing. Didn't, I'm not, we had that conversation on Carl, didn't we? Yeah, and AA's made a video on it, so. If, well, if AA made a video on it, you know it's got to be You know, Carl does respect a lot of AA's arguments. <laughs> yeah, when that's sad. It is sad. Yeah. But, you know, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? I haven't even thought about AA in, like, months. Oh, really? Yeah. I always forget he exists until someone reminds me. Go check I made out a his video channel. about Nazis. Yeah, a long time ago. Oh, this is an old video. Yeah. Okay. How the Nazis are totally left wingers. They're of basically course. like Antifa. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Carl shouldn't make that argument. He understands moral intuition theory enough. Yeah, I don't know why he makes that argument. Uh, Batman's pet goldfish for five dollars says, so parents wrote her about their, quote, trans children dying, but she couldn't even be bothered to fake the emails and black out their names. Lazy. Yeah, there you go. What were those emails? That would have been real, like, emotionally impactful, right? Yeah, so. I, that does seem uh, 
Can you imagine? How do you verify something like that? Mm -hmm. My kid watched your video. Like, I, if I'm a parent and my kid commits suicide because of gender dysphoria, and I don't know, that's a tough situation for me to be mm. looking to Abigail, a person that probably convinced my kid that they're gender dysphoric. Right. Yeah. Did did uh did AA ever forgive Carl for talking to us again? <laughs> I don't know. That's what I'm I want. sure he did. I'm I don't sure know. He if did. He, did he? So much chat probably. Well, they always no, they're no, they're he's on his dream, isn't he? I you have sometimes. to choose between Sitchin Adam and me. <laughs> Let's bring it up. Let's bring up the stream. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> It's good. Nah. I don't want to be rehashing too much. I got show. it bookmarked where he, where he's screaming at me, but I'm like gone from the stream. <laughs> now come back, Adam, 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 come on the stream. Yeah, that was funny. I know it's hilarious. Uh, where was I? Ivarin Gedrix for five dollars. Thanks so much. Says the fact that true scum believing that being trans requires gender dysphoria is an insult. Shows how weak we have been to submit to the whims of the insane. True. True, true, yeah. true. true. Uh, Matrix 07012, thanks so much for the 100 Kazarkazark says, as someone with a progressive genetic disease, oh, I'm sorry to hear that, and a lot of experience with doctors, I find these complaints extremely laughable. Uh, P.S. Sitch, sometimes you have to push against doctors. Oh, no, I, you're completely correct. You do. You do have to push against doctors. Many times you often, have to push yes, against doctors. Often. You should always get a second opinion. That's not right. just a saying. It's a tried and yes. true fact. Yes. Yeah. I've had doctors. I mean, I've talked about on the stream before. I've had doctors fuck me up. So it's not good. It's not good. We should call true scum people that believe that you need to have cancer to get chemotherapy. <laughs> that should be true scum too. Yeah. Why can't I just walk into any place, you know, and just take a spot to get chemo. Like, why do I have to have cancer? Like, I mean, really? That's yeah. that's so, you know, phobic of them. Doesn't that basically make everyone true scum? Yeah. I feel like everyone pretty much has yeah. that position. Yeah. Batman's pet goldfish for $100. Thank you. Says uh, she transitioned to become a Karen. True. Mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Bastard. <laughs> Dr. Funny. Bastard for eight. For two Australians says none of these character analogies match at all. Yeah, no, the whole I mean the whole catch twenty two comparison didn't really work much. So it's more like a Brazil comparison, just having like completely uh you know, incompetence administrators, you know, administrators essentially. Now I wanna see catch twenty two to find out if it really is if if the guy he's calling the bad guy really is the bad guy. I mean, I I recall him from a million years ago when I saw the movie. Like, you're supposed to be sympathetic to to Usarian, but right. But yeah, I would. I'm curious to see the original. I actually tried to find it. It's not streaming anywhere for free. You have to pay extra for it. Ouch. I, like, Lame. Oh, I don't care enough. Uh, R. J. Make Dogelheim for five dollars says Adam. I've seen many people, including you, call Elon's Trump poll a trap for bots. How does that work? I'm generally curious. And A team reigns supreme. Well, I would think that they're looking for some sort of behavior like, I don't know, uh, people answering the poll from consecutive IP addresses or something like that. Oh, I see. I understand yeah. about that. Yeah, I mean, I thought there was probably a lot of people botting the poll results on both sides, but I didn't think like that it would, I don't think it was designed to be like a way to. Well, you know, I did. Trap it, I did see somebody tweeted at Elon Musk that this was a brilliant plot to deal with the bot situation, and Elon right. Musk tweeted back a winky face, which I mean doesn't well, really but, mean anything. But yeah, right. Uh, Aaron for five dollars says, "If Philosophy Tube had been put in front of the line like they wanted, this video would not have been made." LOL. Yeah, <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. Oh, that's so weird. Uh, Mr. Slaughter for five dollars says, just like Contra, Philosophy Tube is all aesthetic and zero substance. If they didn't have their ideology and this trans identity, they'd have 
nothing. I mean, I kind of agree. I really don't feel like there's anything substantive here. Other than no. quote mining and cherry picking. Which I think those are the same thing, actually. In, yeah, sort of. In, um, you know, non-trans videos we've watched of, of Philosophy Tube, I mean, they've been pretty dumb. Yeah. And even, like, usually it's always, like, I mean, I guess it makes sense, because the one time they gave their opinion, it was this totally insane take on gender dysphoria. Because in their other videos, usually it's all just, like, so and so says this. So and so says that. So and so says this. Like it's just very not like none of the information is synthesized in any way that makes it interesting. It's just like kind of this or regurgitation useful. while playing dress up, essentially. Yeah. But we should play dress up more often. You should play dress up more often. Not you. Chat, what do you want Adam to dress up as? I mean, I did Harry Potter once, which was kind of cool. No, that's not exciting enough. Oh look. Wormy's just sitting there in his box. Oh, an adorable kitty. Wormy Cam. Do you think if the nose won in that poll that Elon would have not brought Trump back? Because I don't think so. I don't think it made a difference. <laughs> I, I think it's hilarious. I really do. Mm -hmm. I, w I was very surprised that he just reinstated him. Just, okay, poll's over. <laughs> He's back. I thought I wasn't. I assumed he was always going to bring him back. But I'm assuming that even if the poll was no, because it was going to be close either way. Like even if the poll said no, I'm assuming he still would have brought him back. Yeah, I'd, it's it's kind of brilliant because you have all these people that can't really bitch because okay, well, it was a democratic process. Well, that's why he did it. You know. It was it was persuasion. It was a persuasion technique, but I'm assuming he already made up his mind beforehand. Did you listen to Scott Adams? Was Scott Adams going on about the persuasion angle of it? No, he didn't talk about that really. Okay. At least I don't I don't know. I don't remember him talking about that that much. But Adam should dress as wormy. There you go. What? There you go. Trump turned it down. Yeah. Oh, did he Trump delete his account yet? I don't know, but he still hasn't. I don't think he's tweeted yet. It's It was weird that when it came back, I felt like a little bit of it was tearing off the scab because all of his tweets right on his page are like incendiary shit from January 6th and stuff. Oh, <laughs> right yeah, that's i mean true. yeah you're right so oh, i did right there. i did look at him and i'm like ah, not a good look i mean <laughs> as someone who just announced he's running for president again mm, you're right it's like, kind of like a mixed bag yeah that's why i thought a lot of people were like okay you know i'm never buying a tesla elon musk mm -hmm. is terrible this <laughs> is awful but i just optically i feel like those people I mean, it's a giant win. Like, it just screams, oh, yeah, I forgot this was the guy who was responsible for January 6th. Right. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. I didn't think about that angle of it. Yeah. Mm. I mean, it definitely preaches to the choir, but I don't think many moderates are going to look at that and go, oh, yeah, I remembered. I want to vote for Trump again in 2024. Right. Yeah. Uh, insensitive for ten dollars says all of you guys are forgetting that Abigail Thorne was on a government payroll. That's probably why these e emails were answered so fast. I did forget about that. Well, what, what was her job? What does that even mean, though? I don't know. She, wait, no, no, no. She wasn't. Wait, no. There was. She was okay. Wait. She got paid. I forgot about that. She got paid to do some pro COVID vaccine video, right? Mm -hmm. Though I don't know what that means. Like she could have just got like some, you know, grant from the government. I don't know if that like would grant her accessibility yeah. or not. I mean, it would definitely put her name in a system. So maybe you're right that I guess I wouldn't be that surprised if that helped get some response eventually. These so, government totally agencies that. don't know what one hand is doing. Yeah, but they could look it up. Like if they're like, who is look this person? It up. Come on. Who's this person? They they go like they go, Chalet? Look up who the fuck this 
Abigail Thorne is like keep emailing looking, me. Nobody's looking anything up. Okay. Insensitive for Drew says, ask Sargon about my last super chat. Oh, well. Next time. I assume Sargon knows about that. They probably talked about it in one of his videos. Probably. Uh, Death by Sloth, thanks so much for being a here for nine months, says Abigail demands a lot more beer cuts be added to bureaucracy in order to meet with people who are complaining about the bureaucracy being too big. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. <sighs> I mean, yeah. That's pretty accurate. That's pretty true. Got to shrink uh, this bureaucracy down. Yep. Uh, Dr. Diller for $2 says, worth noting that fast tracking was a significantly larger problem in the UK where they were significantly more cut. Here there's a bigger profit incentive, but also more pushback. Really? That's yeah. a problem. I mean, from Abigail's one-sided view, if she's saying like it's all pushback, but from at least some of the cat, the cash report and some of the other things I read, I mean, they said it was the opposite. So. Yeah. Cool. Uh, Dr. Lou for another $2 says, is it not sickening that people like ContraPoints aren't preaching, quote, just hang in there, it'll be worth it, but instead are saying, quote, if you can't get the meds and don't want to self-medicate, you're going to suffer excruciatingly. Yeah, that's pretty, pretty disgusting, pretty unhelpful, pretty disgusting, and very much creating like a self-fulfilling prophecy for a lot of people, I'm sure. Yeah. So Bring up the doom level. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Lee for $2 says, this is coming off as a quote, I don't care if doctors are busy, I'm special and I'm more important. And if you don't agree with something, it's trans suicide. If I don't get my meds now, I will simul spontaneously explode. Yes. <laughs> Essentially. Essentially. Ouch. Uh, Dr. Lee for another $2, thank you, says, if only the NHS had known that the person that kept pestering them was an entitled cunt <laughs> with no proper <laughs> understanding of how the service works. They could have safely disregarded them. True. Don't I mean? Don't you feel like they kind of did know though? Maybe they did <laughs> like, like a YouTube search, and they're like they watched like a little bit of a philosophy tube video, and they're like, "Oh god, nah, you don't have to. You don't have to search." I feel like, I mean, you can just tell from tone of voice. Oh, I see. You're saying uh, Abigail exudes Karen energy. Is that what you're saying? Very condescending <laughs> energy. Yeah. Yes. I'm right, you're wrong. Well, you know, you said, I, I am curious to see the emails to see if they were hyper condescending or are they like hyper, like, like too polite? Some people are just completely unself aware. Mm -hmm. Which, I mean, that's part of the problem, right? Of course, if they were self aware, they would change, presumably. Yeah. Uh, Nocturnal Guy for $20 says, says, did I seriously tune into the Sunday, Sunday, Sunday stream to find some lefty wacko explaining the horrors of universal healthcare system? <laughs> I feel very confused. That was part of why I found this video so interesting. Is yeah. that the irony, it's not a catch 22, the irony of the entire situation that Abigail is kind of laying out. So, yeah. JV for $2 says, you guys should watch Yes Minister. It's British TV. Yes Minister. Sounds great. I try not to watch proto-American like, content. I do like British TV, though. Yes Minister is a political satire sitcom comprising three seven episodes. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. I'll check it out. Ryan Curtis for five dollars says my personal favorite part of all of her videos is the live captions. They serve as her director's commentary on the video, especially during the credits. Oh, I've never checked out the captions on her videos. So I isn't I that when she puts on the screen super fast all the different things? I, mean, I felt no. like we we're getting in the realm of subliminal. Oh, you're right. Holy shit. No, if you turn on the closed captions at the credits, they like said a bunch of shit. Oh, really? I'll read it. Uh, what do you think of this one? I'm really proud of it. This is what philosophy tube is really about, you know, using education to try and help people. Mm -hmm. It did get quite personal. I hope I clearly indicated what was my personal opinion and what was educational content. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
Uh, they can't all be that personal, but sometimes it's necessary, you know? Why do they keep saying, you know? Jesus. I'm nervous about how this one will go down. Yeah. You should be. You said some crazy fucking shit. I hope the algorithm smiles on it. I've done my best. I meant what I said at the end there. Making this sort of thing on YouTube was an uphill battle. It just doesn't get the clicks, even at my level. Meanwhile, this video has 800, over 800,000 views. So, you know, whatever. What well, didn't even break a million? I know. What a waste. What a complainer. Jeez. The only way... The only way it's financially viable is through crowdfunding. So, yeah, sign up for Patreon if you haven't already. She should have done a She-Hulk video. That, there you go. Can you imagine? She-Hulk is a trans allegory in America. I mean, it's probably going to be a garbage take, but... I like, I like this. It's cool. Like, what mainstream media outlet in Britain would allow this sort of thing to be made to this level of research? None of them. <laughs> This level of research. Yeah, there was not much research here. <laughs> oh I feel my like God. I did more research. Yeah. And I just brushed up. The research for this one took so long. Literally years if you factor in all the time spent chatting to NHS people. Well, I don't know if that counts as research, but. Oh, here we go. I hope people understand why I didn't use real names. I do think these people need to be held accountable, but there's a big difference between facing a board of inquiry and facing a social media mob. Oh, she's just so magnanimous. That's why she didn't name names. Hmm? Okay, sure. Because then you actually have to, you know, back up your claims. Maybe they could fight back and say, I never said this. This person's lying, you know. Magnanimity, you know I mean? no. I'd say it's more cowardice, but. Right. She, it's because she was afraid of her audience. She says, I have an audience of a million. If only 1% of them send abusive emails, that's a thousand abusive emails. With a great platform comes great responsibility. Oh, I'm being so responsible by not naming these people. I'm not coward. I'm responsible. This is like some fucking bullshit high-level gaslighting. Damn. Wow. Damn. Anyway, the finances of this episode are on my mind a lot. It took two days to film, so it's twice as expensive to make. Wow, a two-day shoot. That's just crazy. Jeez, two days. <laughs> Can you imagine doing a two-day shoot for, like, a movie or short film or anything? I mean, you're just <laughs> talking into the camera. I don't see like, what happened. Shoot. Oh, my God. What happened there? I don't know. Well, they had a, they had all those outfits, and they had that that warehouse or whatever the fuck they found. Oh, you think it was a like a rented space? They probably oh. had, well, or because it didn't look like a green screen; it looked like a real place. Yeah, so, I mean, that's probably the majority of the cost. Um. I don't Couldn't think it's just... worth it, but you could green screen it and like no one would care or even probably notice. Hmm. Fucking Contras films all her videos in her house. She's too lazy to go anywhere. Well, I mean, that's kind of good. <laughs> right. So probably one day of filming was, was in like the first like 80% of it and the second day was when she was sitting on her period couch saying all the crazy shit. That was probably the second day of filming. Looks like a different location. Right. Hmm. Uh, Ryan Curry. Oh, I read the one. Daniel Young for two pounds says 25 year NHS ratings low. What happened between 1997 and then? Yeah, I don't know. Sargon says immigration, but I'm not sure. Andrew Clark for $2 says systemic transphobia treats dying people first. That's true. How dare they? How dare they treat all those cancer patients and COVID patients and all that stuff? Akilian Naryana Sawami for the five dollars says the problem is she doesn't see transitioning as a medical issue at all. She frames it as a purely cosmetic, like plastic surgery. Yeah, but that's why she's insane and crazy. And as Kavas said, she wants she wants it all. She wants it to be, she wants it to have the no requirement of plastic surgery. Actually, no, I think plastic surgery is the medical one. She wants to know. She wants to be purely cosmetic, no gatekeeping of cosmetic surgery, but she wants the protection 
of you know a valid identity an oppressed group mm -hmm. can't have both andrew clark for judo says she wants direct access to surgeons no middlemen yes uh, Ag Lahare for 20 euros says, have fun with philosophy tube. I need to go to bed. Oh, by the way, it's classy. It's my nice class. Boo. Thank you. Gemini Semini. Hey, now. What's Thank up, you Gemini? so much for being a discipline equals freedom for nine months. Says Chad Kat Kava. Of course, Danimal would boomer himself out of the conference. <laughs> <laughs> Hilarious. Kind of. <laughs> I know. How do I click a button? <laughs> Wait, Sean. Did you watch Lex Freeman's interview with Destiny? I just saw clips. I didn't watch the whole thing. Oh, okay. I didn't. Did you watch yeah. the whole thing? Uh oh. I just saw oh, a couple okay. of clips. We talked about it the other day. Did we? On stream. What did we say? <laughs> I don't know. What were you doing? What were you doing on Tuesday? We were talking about it. Yeah, because I said he he asked Melania, not Melania. What's her name? Melania what Trump. Yeah, I want to say Melania. Melina. Yes, Melina about like their, you know, non-monogamous relationship. Uh, yeah, I saw yeah. a clip, but it wasn't it wasn't from the podcast. It was some somebody made a meme out of it to kind of insult Destiny. So. Oh really? Yeah. What was what happened in the clip? You know, it was like one of those where it zooms in on Destiny's face and it's like, you know, hello, darkness, smile, friend. Oh, yeah. what did she say? Well, I don't, she was talking about like she's never been in a monogamous relationship before. Oh, right. Which, I mean, I totally had that shit wrong, I thought. I was like, normally when I encounter these polygamous or polyamorous, they call it, but really right. it is like de facto polygamy it's just the guy being like you know i'm gonna sleep around and you know yeah there's like an unsaid law that you're not gonna sleep around or i'm gonna break up with you mm -hmm. but it seemed like the reverse of that so i don't i was told totally i seem like they're both well, sleeping around with lots of people if what they're saying is true but okay well you uh, saw more of it than me but right what well, i'm just saying like in the past they whenever they talk about it so I just this is this is the asymmetry of dating because if they're both sleeping around with a bunch of people, mm -hmm. she has zero risk of getting me too. And Destiny has like ten thousand percent. Like it's certain <laughs> he's gonna get me too. That's true. There is a definitely a risk that yeah. does not exist for her, yeah. So that means Destiny has to really i mean it's almost reversed where the woman used to be the person it was like the choosy one like oh i gotta be very safe here i don't right. want to have sex with anyone who might be a little bit you know insane or something now the guy is like oh shit i'm gonna get fucking me too yeah i gotta well, I mean, do was... like a full background check and like mm -hmm. yeah it's i mean weird, that's huh? what was going on with mr girl trying to dig up some weird thing yeah, him and Anna look, or Lav or whoever the fuck it was. Look, it's so bad. You even got these, you know, des people desperate for attention getting in on the action. They're not even involved in the Me Too. Right. Yeah. Scary times, man. He's lucky, actually, that he doesn't have, like, more people who just don't like him. Who just, like, you know, yeah, well, say that, that, you know, that make up a claim or something. That's probably because he's turning down a lot of sex that's like oh this is gonna get get me in trouble <laughs> don't you think maybe maybe look it's like a double-edged sword it's like oh, right. i got all these crazy girls that want to have sex with me but obviously i can't because they're gonna me to the shit out of me yeah maybe that's a good point it's almost worse he has to get no and listen that's what he does he has a written consent form <laughs> before <laughs> that's not how it goes down though that's not that's not a viable plan i think it's i think it's how it goes down i think there's a drawer somewhere with written consent forms <laughs> uh, that's just uh, that looks even worse if somebody's me tooing oh yeah and he had a written consent form that he pulled out 
I mean, what? Hold on. What does a written consent form even say? It's got to be horrible. <sighs> it has a it has a video portion. Okay. <laughs> or they before anything happens on camera, they have to acknowledge that they're uh, sober and of their own free will, <laughs> acting accordingly. This this is not good. <laughs> it's not, you don't think this is a viable strategy? This is just not. This is a horrible situation. Oh yes, so horrible. Yes. Uh, Dr. Dealer for two hours says, in these, in these scenarios, the obligations of the state outweigh the want of the individual because the individual may not be of sound mind to make the decision, and so the state has to protect them from themselves. True. True. Tell Abigail that, though. Yeah, she's not going like that. Uh, Ghost of Recon for $10 says, as a disabled combat vet, it bothers me that she's framing this in military terms. Oh, that's... I didn't even think about that. Yeah. Like, she hasn't been to war. What she's describing isn't anywhere close to what we experienced. That's true. Yeah. That's true. That's pretty gross. Yeah. That scar on her face. Fake scar, yeah. Pretty fake. Uh, Stuck for five dollars says, do you guys think Abigail's dog stepped on a bee? What does that mean? That's some reference. That I, I don't know. know. Oh, that was the Amber Heard thing. Didn't she say she Amber Heard said something about that? What what was the thing about that? Her dog stepped on a bee? Yeah, well I oh, I don't remember. I don't remember what what was Wait, let me look at that. Sounds crazy though. Uh Amber Heard recalled to the court my dog stepped on a bee before wincing while giving details about the day she and her ex husband dub got into a vicious fight. Hmm. Oh, that's right. And then people were remixing it. My dad had the P, my child split my T. Yeah, okay, I remember this now. Because she made like a face. Yeah. A face. She made like a wincing face. Oh, yeah. Speaking. Yeah, I remember this now. I remember that wincing face. It's pretty, uh, li- pretty bad. Light side dark for 10 Plutonians says, wait, did he literally, wait, did he just literally did source? I made it up. <laughs> I mean, so some parts of the video, yeah, definitely. Stuck for Dollars says, if you're fat and unhappy with it, gender dysphoria. Yeah, that's so insane. This is so insane. Yeah. Stuck for five dollars says Taft Taft seems to be legitimately dysphoric, but she also apparently claims to have AGP, according to Dev. Yeah, you can have so Ray Blanchard was saying that like people misconstrue like that if you have agp you're not really trans and he's saying no 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 like you're still trans and you can still have gender, like you still have gender dysphoria he just thinks it's a different like typology if you have agp versus what he calls homosexual i think he says homosexual transgenderism or whatever term he uses for it well isn't in one case you're being driven by incentives and the others you're being being driven by the stick no they're all None of them are driven by incentives. Well, hold except on. for your sissy boys argument. If you're if you have AGP, you're literally getting off on thinking of yourself as a woman. Where no, so that's where the confusion comes from. If you have gender dysphoria, you're like depressed. That's where the confusion comes from. He doesn't just mean like that you're sexually aroused. Because someone asked the question, I said, "Why would someone who's sexually aroused by being a woman do a surgery which removes their ability to?" get it up like they get their balls removed or something that's a good question and he said and it's part of like this is what i was trying to allude to when psychiatrists talk about fetishes or paraphilias they they don't mean it the way that we like the way we colloquially mean like oh someone's jacking off on a shoe they mean it's like more of like a deeper rooted thing like it's just guiding your behavior in a very specific way Hmm. that is rooted in sexuality but can spill over to a lot of different aspects of your life and so, like, he's not saying that he's saying that people with AGP will have gender dysphoria. He just thinks it's like a different thing, like just a different reason that causes the AG, the gender dysphoria versus other mm-hmm. people. So that's all he's really saying. Hmm. Okay. So, but I would, I mean, I would assume Taff would lose her fucking shit if she saw that end part. With, you know, Abigail just saying like, oh, you know, it's just gender dysphoria is not real. You know, it's just, 
It's just when you know you want to shave or you're not buff enough. I'm assuming people with actual genosphoria would be very upset at that. Because hmm. it really is minimizing their experience drastically or dramatically. So, Well, I mean, like I've had a panic attack before and it's pretty... It's pretty intense, yeah. Uh, yeah, you feel just completely out of control. Yep. So I feel like it's kind of like a panic attack over, I guess, how you present yourself, how you how people. I would assume, yeah, you. something like that, right? Panic attack is really the. I mean, that's like the. You can't live your life with a lot of panic attacks. Like, no, you got to deal with something. Panic attack is no. basically your body telling you, hey, we got to deal with this. <laughs> right. Like now. Right. Yeah. So. It thinks it's going to die. Yeah. Right. Yep. That's the problem. Uh, Cameraman502 for $20 says, on the day the Green Power Ranger dies, Sitch and Dan will have to pick at two of my childhood traumas. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry to hear about that. Andrew Clark for $20 says, Green Ranger Jason and David Frank died today at 49 years old. Yes. Crazy. Wow. Sad. Three people? Like a lot of people enjoyed the Green Ranger. Uh Ginger Must Prime for eight Aussie Bucks says, doesn't all this just reinforce gender stereotypes? It does. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's part of the problem. Well, that's another circle they can't square. Mm -hmm. Is doesn't the fact that a person with gender dysphoria want to become quote unquote feminine isn't that just either a reinforcing gender stereotypes or b possibly saying that gender stereotypes to some extent are biological right because if it's all just learned why would they have to transition to just have a stereotype you know to exist as a stereotype but they don't want to answer that question Uh, Chris King for five dollars says this video broke me. I regularly work fourteen hour days in a freezer, and this woman complaining that people aren't bending over backwards for her. Yeah, <laughs> I Bad know. Anyone I know, who's right? that worked a hard job definitely feels the same same way. Yeah. Uh, Doctor Diller for two dollars says start of the video. Why do government agents have the power to deny you health care? They're not doctors. End of the video. Why does this doctor have the power to deny you health care? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Essentially. Essentially. I was like, I should just do whatever the fuck I want. No one tell me what to do. Bitch. Not much of a character arc, is there? No. Dr. Lou for two hours says, how do we know that more people wouldn't kill themselves if we removed all the barriers? Exactly. They transitioned and it felt like they mutilated themselves. I'm assuming it's more. Therefore, the must suicides argument is obliterated. True. I mean, they already suspect that that's happened to some extent. So right. I don't know why it wouldn't be 10 times worse. Yeah. What's well, so weird? Because they always say like, oh, let's lax the standards. And you say, well, no, that might, that will increase regret. And they say, well, the regret, like, the regret rate is low. And you're like, yeah, but that's with the standards. Yes. <laughs> what an argument. Yeah. Uh, ContraPoints. Hey, thank you so much. ContraPoints gave us $2. ContraPoint says, I must apologize for Philosophy Tube. She is an idiot. I purposely <laughs> trained her wrong as a joke. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> nice. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of shocked that's not like a... Excellent joke. Well, no one's done that meme with the picture. Uh, Dr. Diddler for $2 says, I keep getting Philosophy Tube and Contra mixed up. They all look the same to me. White people. <laughs> there you go. Me. True. Uh, Philosophy Tube for $2 says, if you've got some... Oh, there, Philosophy Tube. Thank you. I guess Philosophy Tube listened to our uh, stream. It says, if you've got some hormones, <laughs> I'll take them. There you go. Has anyone got any extra hormones for Philosophy Tube? Not at the moment. Oh, wow. Academic agent. I guess you heard we were talking about him. Academic agent for $2 says, of course I didn't banish Sargon Senpai. <laughs> he loves me and gives me lollipops when I'm upset. Of course. <laughs> well, so that's sweet. I knew that was the case. That's sweet. Why did you bring up a... <laughs> it's in the eyes, man. <laughs> I love that. It's in the eyes. What do you say? 
He said it was when he was talking to Daryl. Well, you look him in the eyes. No, no, no. He he said like the racism is stupid because it's in the eyes. <laughs> oh yeah, I don't know. It was just such a remember. weird. Come Ian back. being being weird. Uh, let's see. GSP just be one thousand and five for twenty dollars. Thanks so much. Also, did you see Elon's freedom of reach tweet? I didn't like it personally. So I guess that's why I couldn't find Catch-22 uh, streaming for free is because Hulu's the one service I don't have or I can't mooch off someone else. So I guess it's on Hulu. And yeah, it's a miniseries on a movie. Reread uh, and that I did... super chat because you cut out for a second there. Oh, what part? Happy belated International Men's Day. You guys should watch the Hulu Catch-22. It's rather good and particularly good story for a miniseries. Also, did you see Elon's Freedom of Reach tweet? I didn't like it personally. Yeah, Elon Musk tweeted out, people will have freedom of speech but not freedom of reach. And he's planning right. on suppressing people that are just total, you know, anti-Semite, whatever so well it depends what uh like what it is exactly well they don't want ads downplay they don't want ads appearing next to kanye yeah yeah <laughs> hilarious that's what i'm saying it, it depends again it depends on what they're talking about i mean i'm not a big fan of shadow banning mm -hmm. or any of that stuff and I'm, i don't he, like what does that mean exactly does that mean people won't see it or does it just mean like it, twitter won't recommend it to you yeah, you know, I don't know. So I'm not a big fan of it, but I guess we'll see how it plays out. Well, I heard they people talking mm -hmm. about, you know, moderation, and they always bring up, yeah, porn shouldn't be, obviously porn should be part of the moderation process. And I'm thinking, Twitter has porn. What are you talking about? Right. Yeah. They obviously yeah, but it's not, it's probably goes. not... The I'm assuming the porn on Twitter is not um like it's not recommended. I assume. I mean, I've never had porn recommended to me on Twitter. Well, if you follow, I only see it if someone accounts. else retweets it or something. Yeah, exactly. Right. Oh, you can find it relatively easy though if you just. I would imagine if you're looking for it. Yeah, but... search. Something. I didn't. I tried to go back. I had seen a lot. Like whenever she uploaded, it, not so your I covered this video. Mm -hmm. or at least part of this video and i remember watching a piece of it and kind of alerted me to its existence and it went on her channel and i couldn't find it so i don't know what happened to it i don't know if she took it down or or what but because it looks like she doesn't upload her full live streams so i don't know where it, i don't know where it exists she clips yeah because she just uploaded the clip when she talked to us like yesterday and we talked to her a while ago so yeah, we talked to her forever ago, didn't we? Yeah. I mean, it's been weeks, but anyway. Uh, X Hunter zero zero for twenty dollars says, "I just got home from work. Thank you for finishing the video as soon as I started watching the stream. <laughs> uh, glad I didn't get tortured. A team reigns supreme." Well, you're welcome. You can always go back and listen at a faster speed, which is always better. So right. Uh, Anthony Barron for five dollars says, "I chopped wood." And worked out today. Good stream, baby boys. Well, what? Yeah. Glad you got stuff done. That's always good. Chopping wood is the way to go. That'll keep you Chopping in good wood. shape. Yeah, there you go. Do you, you do the thing? Was it what? What Arnold movie is it where he's I've like chopped chopping the wood, wood, and then he like rips the logs apart with his bare hand? Oh yeah, that's always fun. The like commando or something. I always do that. Yeah, of course. Oh, of course. I'm a yeah, macho just, man. Yeah, I just rip those logs in half. Did you check in the new live tab on her channel? Yep. Uh, no, it's not there. Yeah, that's right. There's a live tab now. It kind of like fucks with my head sometimes. Yeah, me too. I just ignore it. I think most people do. We're so. going to start doing shorts soon. It's going to be great. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> I don't Maybe. I don't know. Well, I forgot to post that thing. Um, you were going to post something? You wanted me to post the uh, the clip channel got oh yeah struck with uh, why I guess it was so crazy oh, it was like me me reading 
So Nathan tries the, to clip. The Jimmy running could have would have totally gone viral too. Damn. Yeah, I know. Nathan, um, well, still will whenever he puts it up. I don't know that it will. I feel like it's been everyone knows about it already. Maybe I don't it's know. Old news. Nathan clipped uh, me going over how Dave Smith was incorrect about Osama bin Laden on Joe Rogan, and I was kind of reading from Osama bin Laden's. Uh, text and apparently I, that flagged something that's not true it was, it, it, no? it was an I old that's what video he said. i got it wrong yeah oh okay what was it it was the old video it's like from an old show where you brought mm-hmm. out osama bin laden and read but i think we were responding to some i don't remember ever reading something from osama bin laden oh, except I for do. the one time i do I, well okay yeah so i don't know what show it was then yeah, I don't either. But anyway, I guess so he's I fighting look. that. Sure, I'll just fucking but... look. God damn it. Why do I have to do shit? <laughs> uh, Andrew Clark for two hours says, Sitch, uh, Oregon is pronounced Oregon. Oregon. The E is silent. Oregon. Mm-hmm. The Oregon Trail. I pronounce it how I want to pronounce it, okay? The Oregon Trail. The Oregon Trail. Listen. Oregon? The organ. That doesn't That's how they're saying sense. it's pronounced like organ, like, like, like it's uh, the thing inside your body, or it's the thing you play music on. That sounds weird to me. You live in organ. Hmm. Okay. I don't live in. A, I don't live inside an organ. I live in a place. Okay, like Florida. The clip came from episode two thirteen. Or sit. Then I was right. Solomon what are you one. talking about? Or you were right the first time. 2.13? Yeah. Isn't this like 2.18? Isn't that like... Yeah. That's like 2.13 would have been five, five shows a... ago, which was when we probably talked about when we watched the Dave Smith clip. Oh, the original sense. Dave Smith. The original, yeah, not the conversation. Okay, yeah, you're right. Yeah, the original Dave Smith clip when he was on Joe Rogan. Right. Right. Lame. The Oregon Trail. <laughs> it does sound gruesome. I literally provided it again. I provided the link and. Oh, you did? Where? The climate. Oh, never mind. Oh, you DM'd it to me. Oh, I didn't. I forgot that. I forgot that you DM'd it to me. That's what happened. So thank you for sending it back to me. I guess it was unless I guess you enlisted it or something. But yeah, thanks. I'll check it out. I'll check it out, Sass. Uh, Soldo, we fought a war to not talk about UK for two dollars. Says, did you hear about the G four hiring process and Batman? No. But no. G four is hiring a Batman. G four insane hiring practice. Batman is rich and white. What is this? Wait. Well, that's. I mean, that's true. G4 reportedly asked potential hosts to argue in favor of canceling Batman because he's rich and white. What the fuck? In case there's any lingering... This is from Bounding in the Comics. In case there are any lingering doubts that Comcast recently deceased reboot of G4 was doomed to fail from the start, a popular streamer has alleged that during an interview for a potential hosting position, network representatives were baffling, bafflingly interested in her potential support for canceling Batman. Uh... G4's investment in the same clout chasing quote, Batman is just a rich white guy who beats the poor people argument leveled by disingenuous Twitter users every three days was first alleged by popular streamer and content creator Miss Click on fellow streamer blah, blah, blah's channel. Mm -hmm. During the stream, in light of tragic announcement the day before about the death of Kevin Conroy, uh, she talked about... Because we're talking about this Batman stuff, do you think that now that G4 is gone, I can talk about this stuff? From there, she recalled how being offered a host position by G4, she was eventually invited to go through the network's formal interview process, to which the guy interviewing her asked, so why should we cancel Batman? And I was like, wait, what? And he's like, yeah, why do you believe we should cancel Batman? And I asked, why are we canceling Batman? And he's like, because he's rich and white. (laughs) And she said, I was like, what do those two have to do with each other? Hmm. 
And he's, <laughs> it's a great answer. This, this is basically <laughs> like the interview process. Could you imagine this fucking, you're being interviewed for like a job and someone's like, why do we cancel Batman? You're like, oh, what the fuck? You have to are you answer correctly. About? Yes. And he said, uh, yeah, people just believe that he skates on the law and that if someone of color did the exact same thing, they wouldn't get away with it like he does. <laughs> this was in a, please tell me you started recording this. <laughs> no, they're just telling the story. Uh, the, the person she was talking to, Stun, says, that was a real ass question they asked you, question mark. And she said, that's literally what G4 recruiting asked me. Wow. Oh my God. Wow. That's crazy. And she didn't get the job because she didn't want to ask Batman. She said, I think this is one of the reasons why they didn't pursue me to the next level. Because I was like, well, to be honest, if I was getting like robbed or assaulted in Arkham or something, I wouldn't really care who's saving me. I don't care if he's rich and white. I just care enough that he's like actually saving people because like, are you going to do anything about it? He didn't like that answer. Oh, you know? my God. Holy shit. I want to name names. I want to know who fucking asked you that question. <laughs> How dare you care about yourself over social justice, you terrible person. He said, she said that he continued later asking, okay, besides Batman, what other superhero would you cancel? Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's really not going to let this go. <laughs> She's like, let me think. Hmm, who's white? Aquaman. Captain um, Planet. He's kind of Superman. too pushy. Uh, quote, I literally was like, I don't think I have an answer. And then he insisted that I have to give one and I can't just not. So I said, I think something like the Punisher, even though he was one of my favorites. And he was like, that's a good answer. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Yeah, Punisher's got to go. Though I don't know. Now she, at the end of this, she's saying that she turned the job down based on like the weirdness of this interaction. So. Hmm. Who knows? That's insane. Wow. Okay. Interesting. It's glad they're gone. Because that's pathetic. Uh, Kano for five dollars says, quote, real conversion therapy has never been tried. President hmm. Sunday. <laughs> oh, yeah. There you go. President Sunday's go. got, he's in favor of conversion therapy. Not quite, but he had some sussy things to say about it all right he did say that he was gay so, did he yeah i in missed a, that in a very vosh type way he was uh -huh. like well i can't be in favor of conversion therapy because i am gay oh that's right i didn't You're have right. the did say that. Yeah. i didn't have the heart to tell him that there are a that's lot why of i because i responded that... by saying yeah like milo or something <laughs> yeah i remember that yeah yes that's right there's also a very famous like I think he's a gay Christian or something, and he pushes conversion therapy pretty hard, and he claims it worked for him. So right. Did you yeah. see? Everyone was looking at that clip of Milo and Tim. I mean, I saw he was on Tim Cast IRL. I didn't. It's kind of interesting. Like Tim is basically trying to. He was kind of trying to like you know downplay the whole lack of a red wave thing. Mm -hmm. and how it didn't matter because they still won the house and milo's like what the fuck are you talking about <laughs> oh, he was, oh yeah and it kind of like laid out the whole like perception thing and kind of and i was like oh i think i, I hate to say it i agree with milo here <laughs> i think milo you know has his finger on the pulse uh pretty good at least regarding this i saw milo in that debate with jangles and i thought i mean milo seems like a smart guy to me yeah so he can be. I just I don't think he's necessarily a trustworthy guy, but I think he's smart. Well, I mean, at this point, he's pretty much lost everything. What is he? That's true. Yeah. At some point, you're kind of forced to be. Well, I guess, you know, he might fuck people over. I mean, right. I don't know. Doesn't seem like just going on Tim cast unless. Yeah. He's... Aiden was on Tim pool, too. Yeah. I didn't watch it, but I saw she was on. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Go Aiden. Yeah, great Did stuff. I, oh, I tried to watch Jangles had a debate with Alex Stein. Mm -hmm. it's, un, it's like a, it's unwatchable. How did that go? Oh, God, it's so bad. Alex is like a joke, a, like makes jokes and Jangles makes 
attempts joke. So I don't know. Well, so it was really weird conversation because in the beginning of the conversation, Alex Stein basically lays out that he doesn't have a problem with gay people uh, or like gay marriage. But then Jangles kind of like walks him into this position of attacking gay marriage. And the conversation just becomes really fucking stupid of like of Alex making really poor arguments against gay marriage for some reason, even though in the beginning he said he was in favor of it. And, you know, Jangles just being Jangles. And I'm like, this is unwatchable and also boring and stupid. Yeah, I'm like, why is this like because the conversation was supposed to be something about like, you know, teaching gender identity or gender ideology to kids. Mm-hmm. And gender ideology has nothing to do with being gay. Yeah, of course. And, and it really felt like like Jangles had constructed this way of framing the argument to try to get people down this like like logical pathway in order to try to like win an argument and that Alex kind of just like fell face first for it. That sucks. So I think Alex Stein is really funny. He can be funny, yeah. We should have him on the show sometime. Mm. Why why don't you want to have him on the show? Mm. <laughs> like he's a big he's a big um big content creator. Mm-hmm. B- big boot you just want to ask him about AOC's butt. No, That's I mean I want to have a look, I I believe I saw him on Tim Tim Cast IRL when he first started blowing up and he seemed to have a pretty moderate like centrist take. He didn't seem like an extremist to me and I thought, "Oh, well this is a guy we could talk to." He's kind of all over the place when I hear him talk. Yeah, but we could nail him down on some positions. Which I don't know, like... it just doesn't seem interesting. <laughs> I mean, We'd have 3,000 people watching that show. Right. Alex Stein is huge. Why would people not want to see what would not be? I Explain to me how it's not interesting. <laughs> look, it's a, I just, I it's feel a, like, look, it's the same thing. I feel like we couldn't get into depth about anything. Why? Jesus. I'm just saying from when I've heard him talk to other people, I just feel like there's no, can't get into de- like real good depth about stuff. You're not going to try to walk him into some no i don't even trap. know i don't know what the fuck his positions are on like anything really so yeah that's why the whole that's the whole point of him coming on so you could ask him yeah but i don't really i don't care Sitch, are we content creators i'm kind of oh my god what, i mean i'm just curious oh my god <laughs> what do you mean oh my god Oh my god. Is Dave Smith doing round two? He's doing round two December fourth, which I guess is next next Sunday. So look, we're we're awesome content creators. So it's the that question was rhetorical. Right. Sitch only wants to do more again. Well yeah, no, I don't know. It's just like <laughs> now. You're right, I'm running scared from Kurt. I'm terrified. He is actually running scared from Kurt, so that's actually accurate. That isn't accurate. Kurt never asked to come on. I just said, "Am I going to talk to Kurt again?" Well, you said you would talk to him again, but not. I said I would. Not, ta- you're no, done no, no, being nice to him. That's not what I said. I said I would allow him on the show again, just to mute him to watch him scream <laughs> soundlessly. You would as that, we continue to talk, as we would, continue to talk about whatever we were going to talk. That about. That would make you look so bad, though. It would. Be Why so would you want to do that? Because it, it would be, it wouldn't make me. It would look. It'd be very funny. You people hilarious. love Kurt. I don't. Not in our Kurt audience is lovable. You're, you're so wrong. Our audience is pretty. Even our, even the people that disagree with us, like with Ukraine stuff, our audience is pretty firmly anti-Kurt. Uh, I don't think so. You're so wrong. There were so many people that were like, "Yo, I like Kurt, but he was super cringe in that conversation." That was like a very common reply. Kurt. <laughs> Kurt promoted but, that show on like five different other shows. He was like a bunch of yeah, but people. Those are people, people that are not our fans. Sure, they might side with Kurt. That's yeah, but he sent him to the. He sent him to see it just because okay. it was fun. Yeah, yeah. a lot of people I, liked it. I don't it. understand where you're. Yeah, but okay, I'm not. Listen, I, well, I don't know why you're giving me the simp argument. I'm not simping mm-hmm. for no one. What? 
like, oh, I don't care that Kurt promoted the vid, like the, the oh, show. I know you're so. I mean, that's nice of him to do, though. You got to admit that. Not really. <laughs> well, what do How you is mean? it nice of him to do if 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 he's going to go in the conversation by poisoning it uh, for the other people? Like, I don't. So what? He blows it up so that what they can see like jimmy run away as a coward or in yell all, at me or something like, like in I don't... all honesty dave was pretty nice i mean the the clip that's why that... i said we're gonna talk to dave again that's why dave wants to talk to us again well i mean the clip somebody sent me a clip of him on some other show and i mean he was pretty nice about us and i mean he only really called out kurt and i know that's what i don't know why you're gonna bring dave in the conversation i'm talking about kurt yeah i know okay what is this? I feel like you're trying to gaslight me on this. It's so weird. Gaslight you? How? Yeah, this is very strange. You like Kurt. I mean, <laughs> I yeah, okay. Now, okay. Now I am literally trying to gaslight yeah, you just for fun. Okay. Let me think. How can I gaslight Sitch? Hmm. Right. Why well, just, I mean, I don't, people want, people want us to to debate people and have interesting yeah, but you conversations can't, okay listen stuff. yeah i'm fine with that you can't you mm -hmm. debating kurt is a waste of i've said this like a million times no i mean uh, debating kurt is literally or... a waste of time and i'm glad we I'm, I'm glad he stuck around because the that conversation at the end really illuminated why debating kurt is a waste of time yeah if you're talking to someone and you're like Oh, here's a bunch of articles that prove my point. And they and then they response to that is, well, it's a conspiracy. All these articles are part of a status conspiracy so that people can win internet debates. Mm -hmm. Well, then we're just fucking with this person's crazy at that point. I mean, okay. Do you I mean, want to waste your time talking to someone who when you say, Oh, you're wrong factually, and here's the facts, and they say, Yeah, it's just a conspiracy, Adam. Why would you believe the conspiracy? Whoa. I have all the real information. Watch this video. This random person in this video, they have the real facts. But all those articles that all say the same thing, they're all part of a conspiracy. So that people like you can win internet debates. Well, it's a challenge. <laughs> it's, okay. more, it's more of a challenge. It is. <laughs> okay. I okay, feel like, I look, you know how the elephant rider thing goes. Yes. Well, I feel like we could literally make headway with Kurt if we just you're focus so more insane. on the elephant. You're literally, and you are just as insane as Kurt. If you think you're you're like an you're like an abused spouse, Adam. You've said this like, before. But I know. I feel I did, like I'm it's getting true. A, I'm it's getting abused by true. both my spouses. You're like an, like I don't know what it is. It's so weird. You're like literally like an abused spouse with Kurt. You're like I could change him. I can make him better. And I'm like I'm like nah, girl. We need to get out of that relationship. Well, I mean, it's not. Yeah. Look, I, I don't. Kurt was talk, never my friend. I don't know what you guys. Think I don't talk. I to only Kurt. ever talked to him on stream. I never interacted with him. Like really, I don't talk else. to Kurt like five times a week or anything. I mean, we I talk know. occasionally, and yeah, I mean, listen, I'm not telling. Listen, we I'm DM not a lot, You can be but... friends with Kurt all you want. I'm not. I think it's really pathetic when someone's like. You have to be friends oh, with that's them. The that's, that's the like worst. That's like the most. Yeah. That's the most like seventeen year old. That's like, like fourteen year old girl off the chart. Soy, yeah. you know, academic agent. I mean, it's just such a lame, pathetic oh, yeah. thing to do. Academic agent. That's a perfect example. Why there you go. So yeah, so, no. So. I mean, I'm not. You, you can go chat up with Kurt all you want. Sure, but I'm not arguing with him on show. All of Sitch and Adam's fans Utter. will not be allowed on my channel. Yeah, you will not exactly. be able to comment right. or. It's just a waste of time. I gonna, will ban gonna... you from everything. Listen, I, I know this is hard for you to believe, Adam, mm -hmm. but I only have so many brain cells. <laughs> okay. To waste on Kurt? And and, they, and every time I talk to Kurt, I can feel them dying off. They're committing suicide. They're, they're running. They're running to the, the, the gender clinics, and they're just not getting treatment, and they're just committing suicide. But Kurt definitely has a... a... A unique way of arguing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> That's a nice way of putting it. <laughs> oh, God. Uh -huh. A unique way of arguing. Yeah. What do you think? Do you want to go on Jimmy's show? I think I can get us on Jimmy's show. So, 
if we got on Jimmy's show, I would just immediately start asking about again about why he ran away. Look, here's the here's the question. And he would just kick us out. No, here's the question that I have. I would li there's no way for me to not bring that up. This is this is the thing, okay. And one yeah. of the reasons why I like doing YouTube to, is because wait, to answer your question, I would one hundred percent go on Jimmy's show okay, and you'd one hundred percent kick us off within five minutes. Cause I'd say, Why did you run away this you know, the second I asked you a question? Well, you, you, you can't say that because that's a little Look, one of the reasons why well, I why like is he doing... being a bitch? What do you mean I can't say that? I'm like, Look, why does he get to be a bitch? Off. Look, thanks for oh. inviting us on your show, Jimmy. Let I get just... to be in my hug box. Let me just Ooh, get this out yeah. of the way, Jimmy. Why are you such a bitch? <laughs> well, well, yeah, but for real. Why is he such a bitch? Look, let, I I need to really explain to you how interpersonal relationships work sometime. It'll be <laughs> we'll do that off stream though, when other people aren't listening. The <laughs> One of the things that I like about YouTube is, I mean, it does allow you to be kind of, uh, you know, a producer, like put things together that are more difficult to put together, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, g you know, g getting an invitation to Jimmy's show is could be a challenge, but I don't see it being as, as He's never totally gonna have impossible. Us on. You're, you're, you're so wrong. I, first of all, you're just insane in the first place, but. Like I just I, I don't know why. I you mean, think if I if thing. I, I mean, I'm tempted. You could. To, I'm listen, tempted to you put could get money on, on it. How much money you, do you owe me already for like? You could get how on. How much betting money do you owe me? Like five hundred I, I can, bucks. I can, like I would feel confident that you know, uh, you could get on, but not me, on the show. Because why? Because he knows that I'm gonna fucking put the thumb screws to him. Yeah, but the thing is, I could probably say, "Oh, I'll make sure that he doesn't do that," and then you could. Oh, just... so so you're gonna lie? Well, no, you would tell me that you won't do it, but then you do whatever. You want. <laughs> oh, so I'm gonna lie? Yeah, you have to okay. lie. As listen, long as I don't lie, listen. Lying okay. is the death of being a good producer. You can't. You can't really. Right. You can't lie. Your reputation is everything. So. Right. I mean. You know, you're right in terms of like if I was more clout minded mm -hmm. and I was more had loose morals, I don't I would one hundred percent lie to get on the show and then like attack him pretty immediately. I honestly Just so that when he kicked me out, it would look really bad because you're like, Oh, he's running away again, you know, like Jimmy, where's the door door running again? Like that would be a great clip, but I just, I don't I, have that in me to do that. No, I, I think literally, I think, I don't think you would be that way. If the, if the, like if he was being chill, I think you would be chill. This is here. Here's the situation. Don't pull an Ethan Sam Cedar. Yeah. But that's the thing. I don't. Yeah. I don't look. Him I would Ethan never Cedar, look. But fucking fuck sam cedar and fuck right. ethan that's like the way that they organize that is totally stupid and they should right. lose every ounce of credibility they even had for pulling something like that sure you can't like when we had dave and jimmy and i mean it was a clusterfuck but no one intended to be a clusterfuck we I we're not playing agree with you but okay what do you mean they obviously were not interested in having a conversation and Kurt poisoned the well before the mm -hmm. conversation started. Right. Okay. But I don't think he did it to be like, I'm going to go on their show and, and gotcha all these people. Kurt legitimately likes us. Both of uh -huh. us. So I'm skeptical of that. Look, okay. Kurt just sees it as like a chess game. It's fun to fucking argue on the internet and like no harm, no foul. I don't, I don't listen. I'm fine arguing with people. Mm -hmm. I, we argue. We argue with Carl when he comes on a lot. We argue yeah, with lots of people. We argue back and forth. Kurt argues very dishonestly, and then mm -hmm. he goes back to being schizophrenic when I, I challed him out on it. Okay, uniquely we were gonna say, but <laughs> like this is why. No, it's just this is. I don't understand why you're doing this. I don't even understand mm -hmm. why you brought this up in the first place. Be, well, I haven't even got to the point because you keep like, I don't know. Okay, what was the point? Okay, so Jimmy has his show, and it's just the conflict is over, you know, debate versus, you know, bloviating, right? Jimmy brings people on to his show to kind of educate him on these certain topics. Right. He's bringing on, obviously, Andrew Mate, and I forget the other guy. Aaron name. Mate. 
Okay, Aaron Mott and Max Blumenthal. And Max Blumenthal. And these right. people, I mean, they're shit. They're fucking garbage information. Yeah. They're like I don't, tankies, essentially. Look, yeah. I don't see why Jimmy can't invite someone who has a different perspective on, like you, who mm-hmm. could just lay out that perspective and not in a non confrontational way. And Jimmy could he, just it's be Im- like, It's impossible. You understand? That's literally impossible. Why? Tell me why it's impossible. Because of his audience. Well, no, but Jimmy could step back and say, you know, I don't, you know, I don't necessarily know. Uh, a good example would be uh, Destiny had a guy, had, did a debate with Warren Mosler and some other guy. Mm-hmm. And and Destiny basically said, you know, I'm just here to moderate because I am interested in the information. I don't really have a strong opinion. Yeah, but it's different. Side. Okay, but wait a minute. Wait a minute. Okay. Mm-hmm. I don't even know how you're suggesting this, how you think this would work, okay? Mm-hmm. Because Jimmy Dore does have a strong opinion on this. In fact, he's built his entire, like his entire show is built on his strong opinion about this issue. He, if he, if, if what he, if he did what you're suggesting, where I came on the show and I said, oh, let me tell you without being attacking Jimmy, said, mm-hmm. let me tell you, you know, my thoughts on the Ukraine Russia situation and, you know, all these claims that other people have been making. I kind of go through the whole thing. And Jimmy just silently sits back and lets me like do this whole thing. His audience would fucking go ballistic. Jimmy, why the fuck are you letting this neocon imperialist colonialist shill on your channel just spouting all this stuff without challenging him? I can't believe you're doing this. What the fuck? Have they gotten to you, Jimmy? Are you selling out? Like all this fucking audience would lose their fucking mind. Like I just, I don't know why you think this would go the way you're suggesting. Okay, so... So let's just say that happens, all right? Yes. What's, he, he knows what, that that would happen. I'm saying he wouldn't allow that to happen. So you're saying that he would just not let anyone come on? No, he, no, because you're you're framing it like... I, I think you're thinking about this too naively. Mm-hmm. Because you're thinking like, oh, Jimmy brings people on his show to educate him about topics he doesn't know about. Well, that's... Uh, yeah, I see that but on the show not, all the time. Yeah, but that's not exactly accurate. Mm-hmm. Jimmy knows what they're going to say before they come on. Right. And he knows what their perspective is. And he's not bringing on people that are challenging his worldview or that perspective at all. These are all just people that reinforce this America bad worldview. So a fundamental aspect of his show is America bad. Yeah. Yes. From his audience. And I don't think... I don't think he would, I mean, maybe, you know, maybe he would moderate, quote unquote, a debate between people. Uh, you know, one person ha- has that view, one person doesn't have that view, but I, he wouldn't just let someone have that, who doesn't have the America bad view, who's countering the American bad view. Mm-hmm. He, I don't think he would allow that person to just go on and on and on in a show. I mean, I, I listened to their show after our clusterfuck of a talk, and I mean, it's so weird because they just they talk about the 2014 coup thing just as if it's a fact just a fact just a matter of fact just you know standard common knowledge that's why i'm yeah but it's kind of like like a not like some 9-11 truth or circle jerk where they're talking oh yeah everybody knows fucking 9-11 was an inside job obviously george bush was pulling all it's like do you sound like a fucking crazy person remember the video we watched of um i forget his name he was talking this is like this guy who was talking to these crt people Mm -hmm. this is where correct came from yeah oh i do remember that that he was talking to the crt people and the lady wouldn't even like engage with this guy unless he accepted her worldview oh i know and the presumptions she made about the world that's exactly what happened yeah that's exactly what happened. You won't accept my worldview that the U.S. obviously couped Ukraine in 2014. Why do I even have to defend this position? It's so obvious. Well, the the reason, though, the reason that he sees it as obvious is because he's only had Max Blumenthal and fucking Aaron Mate, who, I mean, mm-hmm. they're only, he's only getting one side of the, no, of you're, the case. You're, right, you're correct, but the problem is that he has become completely captured by his audience. He cannot. He literally could not come out and say, oh, I was wrong. The U.S. didn't coup Ukraine. Or there isn't really strong evidence that the U.S. coup Ukraine. Mm -hmm. Because he'd look like an idiot. He would look like an idiot, and his audience would go Do you think they're so attached to the 2014 fucking coup in Ukraine? 
it's not that specific thing. It's that that's just one more puzzle piece to their worldview that, you know, there's a bunch of American imperialists running around that are trying to, you know, put their finger on the scale to keep everything in check for the American global liberal hegemony, blah, you know, yeah. throw in many fucking buzzwords as you want. And every puzzle piece of that kind of keeps the stability of the worldview. And as soon as someone starts chipping away at that, they flip out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. It's weird. It's super weird. I mean, I don't know. It's I think it's pretty standard for that those kinds of echo chambers. But why? Well, I, I feel like a narrative got established when the Ukraine war break out broke out that just was false and. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. I mean, it is. It's the thing that's weird about it is the weird sort of like. I mean, it's weird that Dave listens to this, and maybe I don't know. Maybe this is why he was interested to talk. Is that I mean, he's fucking libertarian, and he's listening to like tankies. <laughs> well, they're just anti-war. They're just uh, war is just out of the question for. No, but I understand. But he wouldn't listen to any of these people's economic takes. He would assume that they're all fucking crazy if they start talking about economics yeah and so it's like well i mean you should have the same hesitancy when they talk about you know other issues too yeah not saying that they're automatically wrong but you should still have some hesitancy yeah i just think you know factually they're on shaky ground so of but course. dave even in our talk admitted mm -hmm. that even if the coup situation wasn't the case which he seems like a smart guy which you know a second look at the evidence he might even change his mind on that is it's not essential to the overall thesis that we shouldn't be over there no it's not but i'm willing to ex to extend that charity because i actually care about the facts yeah totally so and i've you know i've said that a million times on stream you you can be against it I just understand that it's psychologically harder to and morally hard to, but you can be against it without the coup narrative. The coup is about definitely justification. Right. That makes it our fault. Right. Which... It makes it easier to sort of bite that bullet because you actually don't have to bite the bullet. But Yeah. Andrew Clark for $2 says, Nick Acox died as well. Meg from Supernatural. I don't know who that is. I never watched Supernatural. Yeah, I didn't either. I mean, I just watched Game of Thrones for the first time, so right. I'm way behind on my TV. Uh, Andrew Haskin, thanks so much for being Free Seeker for three months, says, you're the best ventriloquist, Adam. I can't see your lips move when your shadow puppet talks. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I reach my hand mm -hmm. over here. Anyway. Oh, look. Wormy decided what? to get on the... He's in a new spot. Oh, Wormy. Yeah. Yeah. Watch The Sopranos next. I try. I actually, I tried not that long ago to watch Sopranos. I couldn't really get past the first couple episodes. But It's funny how shows are like that, right? Yeah. I mean, I, you know, I like Goodfellas, so... Like it's not like I'm anti mafia stuff, but I don't know. I mean, I feel like it's one of those things you gotta, you know, it's like it's a cultural phenomenon that everyone knows. Mm -hmm. Anyway, anyway, uh, thank you all for coming. Oh, wow, that's it. That's it. So, we're gonna go on Jimmy Dore's show sometime next week. Yeah, okay, sure. <laughs> maybe I don't know. I can dream. Yeah. Thank you all for coming. Thank you all for your incredibly generous donations. Uh, thank you, Sargon, Kava, and Daniel for coming on. And thank you, you who have made it to the end of the stream. You are the true heroes. I'll see you all on Tuesday. Bye-bye! <laughs>